When someone faces danger, he starts looking for God and begging for mercy, be it Lord God, Buddha or another deity. He thinks about the one he worships and begs him for the salvation of his sinful soul. But what happens the moment God himself is in danger? One of the gods found himself in a similar unpleasant situation. He was suppressed by the majority and came under a verdict. When he woke up, he found himself in a place he had never been before. Sitting on the soft grass, he began to remember what had happened, realizing that he had died, or to be more precise, presumably dissipated. God cannot die, because this concept refers to God's creations. Being in a place unknown to himself, he tried to call up the system window, but was refused due to lack of rights. It was malfunctioning due to a conflict with the administrator. Remembering recent events, the guy thought that his divine status, throne and faith were destroyed by force. As a result his divinity was revoked and his powers disappeared. Despite this, his mind and knowledge remained intact. Looking around, the guy noticed someone starting to approach him. It was several people on a boat that were sailing towards him on a small body of water. Mooring to the shore, a tall man in a dark cloak and a large hat on his head appeared. Behind his back was a huge mysterious scroll. Throwing this scroll into the air, he called the condemned guy by the name of Li Chan Sum, addressing him as the former shadow god. After these words, he began to tell his biography out loud, from which it became clear that he was the son of an ordinary human couple from planet Earth, who was born in Korea in 2001. The cautious former gloomy god did not know who he was talking to, he continued to follow the stranger, listening to his words, which exactly described his past life. The man continued his story about the past of the punished god, where he mentioned that for unknown reasons he was sent to the planet Arcadia in 2027, where he became a constellation that killed millions of other deities before being caught and brought to the place of execution. Looking at the guy again, the man with long hair nervously bit his lip before asking the question that was troubling him. But at the same moment, Li Chan Sung rushed to attack. Unexpectedly for everyone present, he instantly found himself next to the man who had brought the scroll. The stranger only managed to react at the moment when he found himself a moment before touching the hand of the fallen god. Realizing the danger, he managed to jump back, avoiding contact with the guy. Once out of range of the guy, the man took up his sword. Watching this, Li Shan Sung's face showed no doubt that he was doing the right thing. The guy was thrown from his throne as part of a conspiracy, so as long as he was conscious, he was ready to continue the battle. Despite the lack of any weapons, he rushed into battle with his bare fists. His blow was so strong that it literally divided the reservoir into two parts. There was no point in fighting a real god so the man with long gray hair decided to avoid direct blows. His full strength was not enough to contain the god, even though he had lost his former status. The guy continued to pursue the stranger and jumped out onto the water to continue attacking. Without any chance of a decent response, the man continued to avoid blows. Jumping into the air, he noticed that his opponent had disappeared from his line of sight using a wall of water. Looking at his opponent, the stranger began to be filled with horror. The shadow god looked like a real threat. Even though he lost his powers due to the majority verdict, he had no intention of stopping fighting. He didn't know where he ended up, but his goal was revenge on those who were to blame for what happened. Having no other choice, the man with long hair resorted to extreme measures and used the artifact. This was the divine suppressive steel. No matter what kind of god he was, these limiters would weaken him to a level of strength even lower than that of the most pitiful creatures. The embittered guy recognized this power, he had not seen them since the day of the divine judgment of punishment, and hoped that once freed, he would not see them again. And yet, finding himself in a hopeless situation, he asked who he was dealing with. Having calmed the fallen god, the man apologized for the late performance, and identified himself as the executioner of the underworld named Yao. The realization that this was the afterlife gave the guy a clear understanding of what was happening. 
The man clarified that the body of water with which he got to this place is called the River Styx. Still, Li Chang's son was full of questions. He mentioned that God, sent to the divine court of punishment, as the ultimate punishment, loses his existence. But despite this, he even retained his sanity, which is why he asked the question about what was happening. The executioner replied that his fate was in the hands of the afterlife, since he had been under their jurisdiction from the very beginning. After these words, he offered to go on the road, promising that he would explain the details later, because the master was already waiting for him. Having no choice, the guy with a murderous look followed his executioner. While in the boat, he clarified that Arcadia is completely different from the native earth of the gloomy god, saying that it belongs to the jurisdiction of the afterlife. As it turned out, in their kingdom, all people have their own life expectancy and fate, recorded in the Chronicle of Life and Death. In addition, the Chronicle can only be found where it was written. Not understanding what the executioner was leading to, the guy continued to listen carefully to his story. The fact is that one of the places where the chronicles are located was lost. Searching for him without success, they even traveled past the stars, but all efforts were in vain. The gloomy god assumed that it was about his second home named Arcadia, and he was right. The man clarified that in addition to the disappearance of the chronicles, Li Chan's son became a god and created a real mess, which is why they had to put a lot of effort into bringing him to the place of punishment. Despite the rather detailed story, there was something that continued to excite Li Chang's interest. Remembering the events after the results of the Divine Court, he saw a schism that cancelled the execution of the punishment. After this, he lost his powers and found himself in the afterlife. Remembering those events, the guy asked why they did it. He believed that if the executioner and his master allowed him to disperse on the other side, they would benefit themselves. The man agreed with his assumption, but clarified that it was an order from above. The decision to save the life of the fallen god and preserve his sanity was made by Thanatos. Thanatos is the ruler of Tartarus and Erebus. He is usually called the only king of the underworld. After telling the story about the local gentleman, they arrived at his temple. Looking around at the condemned twilight god, the executioner named Yal asked him not to keep the ruler waiting. Together, they went to meet the master. Flying past his domain, the gloomy god could see the places of punishment of sinners, among which there was hellfire. As its opposite, an icy hell was also located here for other clients. Other deities, who were very different from ordinary people, were limited by magical artifacts, which is why their fate was to remain eternally inside the wasteland. Noticing this, Li Chang Sung asked who the gods were noting that their level was completely different from the others. Executioner Yul explained that before those prisoners became vile gods, they were considered gods of battle. These poor souls are also known as fallen stars. The fact is that Lord Tithanos judges not only the sins of the dead, but also seals away demons and evil spirits. Even though Li Chang Sung was a shadow god, he replied that he had never heard of it before. The executioner explained this by saying that these things should not be talked about, because this could damage their reputation in heaven. Those sinners who were less guilty than others were sentenced to menial labor as punishment. At the same time, having examined the possessions of the ruler, the condemned god and his executioner reached the meeting place with the master. Finding himself in front of the huge door to the chambers of the supreme being, the man asked the prisoner to prepare and behave appropriately. Turning to the door, he introduced himself as a first-class executioner Yal and reported the successful completion of the task regarding the shadow god. The door began to open and an intangible infinity appeared behind it. Through this distance a majestic voice sounded, allowing the guests to enter inside. The expression on the gloomy god's face immediately changed, even the system itself informed him that the atmosphere inside was extremely tense. As he walked inside, he noticed a pair of eyes watching him from the darkness. Stepping forward, the abyss began to swallow him, and he began to fly. Realizing the danger of the local lord, Li Chan's son suggested with a smile that interesting events awaited him. 
spatial magic transported the guide to the domain of the ruler. Having looked around, he remained on guard, since he did not know what to expect from a deity that was much higher than him in terms of hierarchy. Looking arrogantly at the prisoner, Thanatos became convinced that this was indeed a gloomy god. With a smile on his face, the first thing he did was ask if Chan's son knew where he would end up after death if he remained on earth. Sighing heavily, the guy replied that he had no idea, since he had never thought about it before. Briefly and clearly, the man replied that the guy would have ended up in hell. Not understanding why this would be his end, Li Chan Sung asked to clarify the reason. With a calm face, the man began to narrate the guy's sins, starting from his days as a professional gamer. At that sinful moment, he yelled madly at his teammate because of a minor mistake and the poor fellow took these words so close to his heart that he began to cry. Having mentioned this sin, Thanatos asked Yao what the punishment for that incident should be. The man replied that for such a sin they practiced tearing out the tongue for fifteen days. The next minor sin in the guy's opinion was his refusal to help old friends when he was too passionate about the game. For this, he was subject to torture with knives on the hellish mountain of the underworld. The list continued, among the most petty sins was killing an ant, blaming a dog and other things for which he was sentenced to spend time with poisonous snakes and continue to have his tongue pulled out. Li Chan was simply confused by how vindictive the gods turned out to be, who are responsible for what is happening on earth. After mentioning that he had never held a girl's hand, the guy's patience was at its limit, and he shouted with a confident look that he did not want to take part in such pathetic games with a list of nonsense. Executioner Yal and his lord Thanatos felt the wrath of the fallen god, but this did not affect their emotions in any way. Having finished the satirical story, the man clarified that these were jokes, since Li Chan's son lived an ordinary life on earth. On the other hand, when it came to his life on Arcadia, everything was different. Not to be idle, Thanatos opened the scroll that his high-ranking executioner had brought. The guy's sins were obvious, he destroyed countless gods that were equal to him in status. Not understanding the meaning of what was happening, Li Chan's son directly asked the Lord for what reason he saved him from imminent death. As it turns out, this god wanted his fallen colleague to do important work for him. The fact is that Thanatos was deeply concerned about some gods who, despite their promises, broke their oaths and reached people. He wanted the gloomy god to go in his place to the earthly world and turn the infidels into his subjects with the help of power and authority. Hearing Thanatos' demands, the shadowy god assumed that they were going to revive him. The lord of the underworld agreed with his words, but clarified that it would be more correct to say that he would simply return him to where he should be. Possessing incredible power, he threw his hand to the side and the boundlessness of the universe appeared in the air. These were the domains of the ruler, among which there were many galaxies and individual planets. As this power unfolded, the focus began to change and the surprised guy saw something he had not thought about for a long time. He saw his home planet Earth, where he was born and raised before becoming one of the gods. Thanatos was attentive to his emotions and noticed that until that moment he considered the shadowy god devoid of human emotions. Hearing the words of the highest god in the hierarchy, the guy pulled himself together and stopped showing surprise, saying that he simply hadn't seen his home for a long time. With anticipation, the man replied that Li Chan's son will be amazed when he sees with his own eyes what happens next. After these words, the bishop continued his presentation. The earth began to approach. It was clear that the events took place in Asia. The Lord enlarged the picture even more bringing us closer to Korea. As it turns out, it didn't just show events somewhere in Korea, it was definitely the city where Lee Chan's son was born. At that moment we were transported to one of the streets of the city at night. A guy in a purple hoodie was walking at a lamp-lit road crossing with a bottle of beer in his hand. Worried, Lee Chan's son understood what was happening, he saw himself from the past. Having incredible abilities as a god, he was simply shocked by the superiority of the Thanatos system. The calm man said that he was clarifying this for a reason, 
he was going to send the punished guy to the time and place that he showed him. Clarifying the task, he emphasized that the shadow god should focus on sealing the gods instead of his ordinary human life. This was precisely the proposal for which he pulled Li Chan's son out of Arcadia. The conditions seemed quite possible, but expecting a catch, the guy still decided to clarify why Thanatos himself was giving such an opportunity to him, the accused shadowy god. The man on the throne replied that this was obvious, since the shadow god was considered one of the best hunters in his class. These were not words out of thin air at all, he listened to the opinions of the peoples of Arcadia, Ahura, Daiba and other civilizations with which he maintained contact as the lord of the jurisdiction. He continued with the rationale for the need for the mission of the gloomy god. The fact is that the rupture of the dungeon through which the guy once passed was the action of the gods who took up arms against the general rules. After this explanation, Li Chan's son was fully aware of the meaning of the so-called oath violation and assumed that those insolent people wanted to take planet Earth into their possession. He turned out to be right, because the enemies really targeted his homeland while they still slowly continued to approach their goal. In order not to miss the details, Li Chang asked why the warriors of the underworld decided not to personally deal with this problem. As it turns out, the overlord's charges are fully aware that their enemies are exploiting loopholes in the oath that prevent them from interfering. They have either reason nor desire to act, but if a person from planet Earth intervenes in these matters, then history will take on a completely different character because this was not mentioned in the oath. Realizing the Lord's plan, a sly grin appeared on the guy's face. He decided that Thanatos wanted to make him his own hunting dog, but did not know what would happen next, so he assumed that after the end of this story they would say goodbye to him and complete the ritual of punishment. But the Lord had a completely different view of the situation and called it not a hunt, but correctional work after which he would have the right to remove the shackles from Li Chan's son and give him a new life, despite his sinful past. Taking another look at his restraints, the guy realized that this was a very profitable offer. With his hands folded in front of him in a businesslike manner, with a piercing gaze, Lord Thanatos stated that if the gloomy god doubts the profitability of the offer, then they can make a deal, which, depending on the guy's position, cannot make his situation even worse. Stretching his hand forward and smiling sweetly, he asked his dear guest not to worry and promised that he would reward him. Not understanding what they were talking about, the guy asked how he would like to thank him. The man slyly replied that he had power at his disposal, which would interest the former gloomy god. Despite the sincerity of the Lord's words, Li Chan's son was extremely cautious and asked if Thanatos was sure that he could simply throw away his power like that since this was contrary to the laws of the lower world. Although the guy chose the right words, in response the Lord leaned on his hand and imperiously said that he was the sole ruler of the underworld, so there was no need to worry about it. He invited the former god to perceive his deal as the generosity of the monarch and asked if he was ready to conclude a contract. The guy's smile spoke of his positive attitude. He stated that if he is offered power, then he cannot find any reason to refuse. With a satisfied smile and a sharp rise from the throne, the lord of the underworld declared that in this case the deal would come into effect. Having concluded a contract with the shadowy god, he announced the beginning of his reincarnation under the guise of returning to his home planet. All the gates of rebirth began to gradually open and, satisfied with the results of the negotiations, Li Chan's son went out. Descending the river of the underworld, the executioner decided to give some advice before saying goodbye to the gloomy god. Yal asked the guy to remember that he was returning as a human, so he would have to face some difficulties and start his path all over again, without all the abilities and experience that he managed to gain during his life as a shadow god. Happy to be left with his own sanity, Li Chan Sung confirmed that he understands the full weight of responsibility. The top-ranking executioner also decided to remind that Li Chan's soul, as before, will be sealed with divine restrictive steel, but it will be activated again if something suspicious is discovered. Despite the positive aspects of the future task, the guy was still not in the mood due to the fact that he would not be able to use his power as he wished. 
The advice was exhausted just as they arrived at the outer gate, where it was time for farewell. It was a huge golden gate, on which was depicted a symbol of the balance of yin and yang. Without any doubt, Li Chan Sung jumped towards the exit from the underworld to continue his existence as a human. Before leaving this place, he decided to stop to say goodbye to his saviors properly. He turned to his executioner and thanked him for accompanying him, after which he expressed the hope that they would be able to see each other again under more pleasant conditions. With a pleasant smile on his face, he put his hand to his heart and politely replied that he would eagerly await the return of his lord's new friend. As he watched the guy go, he wished him strength and wisdom. After these parting words, the man mysteriously called Li Chan's son the executioner, who received the power of the king of the underworld. Overcoming the distance, the gloomy god moved greatly away from the underworld and began to receive messages from the system. While in free flight, he learned that he had successfully passed through the gate of rebirth, due to which his status began to resume. The guy enjoyed freedom while his system began to be updated and reconfigured to the new server that provided the structure of planet Earth. His rights are finally back to administrator level. Li Chan's son didn't even notice how his flight was interrupted, and he ended up on his home planet. He found himself in a very crowded place. The guy lying on the grass did not raise questions among those around him, because they were also very puzzled by what was happening around him. Looking at the bright sky above him, the guy noticed a message from the system, which spoke about the acquisition of a new achievement, which was associated with his memory preservation. Thanks to this, he gained an additional five points for each characteristic. Excited people began to panic, they did not understand what was happening, as they found themselves at a gate that they had never heard of before. After looking around, the guy began to recognize the familiar appearance and speech of the people around him. The black hair of strangers and the Korean language from everywhere spoke only of one thing, that the gloomy god had finally returned home. Satisfied with this event, the guy crossed his arms, enjoying this pleasant atmosphere. Despite the pleasant memories that filled his mind, he still found the strength not to be distracted and focus on the goal. A moment later he rose to his feet in order to assess the situation and begin his task. Onlookers around him tried to gather in small groups in order to find out more information about the place where they found themselves. They were all inside some kind of fence circle that was surrounded by trees and wildlife. Assessing the situation, the guy began to understand the words that the bishop spoke to him. Thanatos mentioned that the place where Li Chan's son will open his eyes after rebirth is earth, but at the same time it is not it. It was clear that it would be a difficult task for the shadow god to connect with another place without catching the eye of the gods of another world. These thoughts made him think that he was not quite back home and that he still had a lot to learn about his mission. Before saying goodbye, the Lord mysteriously called it some kind of dungeon in a random gap. Ordinary earthlings could only hear about this from the internet, reading manga. They could not imagine that they would find themselves in a place where there would be no cellular communications and the infrastructure they were accustomed to. Within a moment, they began to be surprised by messages from the air. Unusual for an ordinary person, the system reported that this was a sudden dungeon called Rosewood Forest, in which there were 431 participants. Within a moment, an error related to the appearance of an undetected participant was reported. It was probably about the rebirth of Li Chan's son. The system corrected the error in a matter of seconds and updated the list of participants. With the next message, the system announced the start of the test, specifying that the appropriate level of mission difficulty had been selected in order to adequately judge the individual strength of those present. The theme of the mission was defined as restoration. The forest was divided into five parts. The main mission was to destroy the monsters of the dungeon and climb to the top of the hill on the other side of the location. Among the messages was a warning that the monsters and the required restoration methods differ in different parts of the forest. All present participants gained access to their individual inventory, status window and skill window in order to cope with the mission. While the majority succumbed to panic, among those present there were those who began to quickly adapt and prepare for the test. 
Among them was the gloomy god, whose experience was on a completely different level. As soon as the first part was opened, Li Chan Sung ran towards the forest. While everyone was panicking about the danger of an unknown place, he did not pay attention to it and ran towards the goal. The frightened guys could only look at his back, to them he looked very strange. Thoughts began to cross their minds that he might be familiar with this place and the origin of this phenomenon. Speculation only raised more questions in their minds, but it was clear that if he survived, he would be the most reliable member worth working with. After running a short distance, the gloomy god began to notice the differences between the new body and the one he had previously possessed. Early shortness of breath gave him the idea that he should first understand the state of his body. After opening the system, he saw that he was able to retain his divine name as a shadow god, but the characteristics remained uncertain. The guy really expected that there would be a mess waiting for him inside the system, but he could not understand where the things that were provided to him according to the promise of the king of the underworld were. After a few seconds, the system was updated, his characteristics as a shadow god were lost, but in return he gained power, the skills of which were soul extraction and the execution sword of beginner levels. A skill called soul extortion was described as being able to extract the karma of the souls of slain enemies by burning them in the fires of purgatory. The king of the underworld was known to be highly respected due to his strength, his ability to extract souls giving some of his power to the owner, and even allowing him to use the abilities of the lord himself. Having caught the monster, Li Chan's son will be able to extract its soul in order to gain more experience. When faced with many monsters, he would be able to avoid losing the agility of receiving wounds. If he needs information, he can call upon souls to receive answers based on their experience. Another ability was the previously mentioned Overlord Execution Sword, which carries out divine punishment against criminals who break their oath. With its help, the executioner gains rights to part of the criminal's power, using the effects of divine punishment and extracting the power of the defendant. It is worth mentioning that abilities such as power are divine power, so if its owner uses an item like the sword of execution to seal the gods, then he, like the overlord, has the power to take away the skills of others. Based on this, Li Chan Sun admitted that in theory he could even take an infinite amount of power, and even become omnipotent, placing himself above any deity. Upon learning of his new power, Li Chan Sun even sweated a little with excitement. He was glad that he had not been deceived. Realizing the generosity of the king of the underworld, it was obvious that he was doing this for a reason, so it was logical to assume that Thanatos was really angry with the gods of another world if he had already given such undeniable power into the hands of a murderer. Considering his low level of strength, the gloomy god was sure that the sword of execution was still beyond his control because without experience in battles it was simply impossible to use such abilities. Speaking about abilities separately, he decided that the execution sword was still superior to soul extraction, but everything was not as simple as it seemed at first glance. It was obvious that the demands were too high, and his first serious opponent should be the one who broke the oath. Even if his enemies are these criminals, if he fails to destroy them properly, he will most likely suffer himself. Because of this, he decided to leave the netherworld god's item sealed so he could focus on developing his own powers. Until he gained strength, he decided to only improve his characteristics. A moment after becoming familiar with the system, he ran deep into the forest where he was spotted by a monster called a black mamba. The huge monster immediately attacked the only daredevil who decided to fight inside the dungeon. The battle began. The guy was ready to become stronger in no time, he had a rusty beginner dagger at his disposal, which was more than enough for a participant with such incredible experience from the past. Thanks to his muscle memory, he instantly rushed to the attack and with one attack was able to get rid of the enemy. Even a bad weapon in the hands of a true master is deadly, and the gloomy god proved this in the battle with the first monster on his way. After successfully destroying the novice monster with just one blow, the guy began to receive messages about learning the novice technique and gaining a new level, 
with which his strength and agility increased. Moreover, the success of the most active participant in the dungeon attracted the attention of a divine being, who began to closely monitor the actions of Li Chan's son. The confident guy decided that his immediate goal was to become a beginner, which would make his enemies tremble with fear. Returning to the fact of the existence of dungeons, it is worth noting that people even treat disasters as if they were new opportunities. This also applies to deities, because they use missions to select candidates for priests and priests. In addition, the best candidates are given the chance to become divine apostles to represent their master and faithfully carry out his will. Many people in need of the power of higher beings, thanks to fate, ended up in the dungeon. Despite their faith and desires, not all were able to cope with such ambitions, and most of them died while the gods and stars did not pay attention to them. The harmful gods and stars do not care at all about the pitiful creatures dying a natural death for them, which was the usual order of affairs. Only a few can meet their requirements. They will attract attention if they can show that they have incredible talent and the ability to overcome. Seeing a message that a constellation called a great season for hunting was watching his actions with interest, Li Chang Sung decided that he had won the jackpot with his daring actions. He already knew who he was talking about and the real name of this deity was Pabelsag. She is known to be the goddess of war, enjoying hunting and all manner of killing weapons. Despite her high status, by jackpot Chan Sung did not mean her, but her mother Tiamat, who is known as the original evil dragon. Looking at the bloody murder weapon, the guy was surprised with an anticipatory grin that he had already managed to interest such a large fish. He believed that Pabelsag was happy to observe his dagger technique, which is difficult to see among dungeon newcomers. The next message from the system was that the constellation was interested in what other hunting techniques the promising player could demonstrate. Having learned about this, the guy decided that he would satisfy the interest of the deity of war and show her what she wanted. Moving further through the forest, Li Chang's son felt a strange smell that was spreading in that place. The first half of the forest was filled with toxic air, so I came to the conclusion that most likely most of the monsters were poisonous too. After thinking about his actions, he decided to proceed with Plan C. At the same moment, two monsters of the same species as the Black Mamba attacked him simultaneously. To get a good start, the guy decided to start with snake hunter techniques, because it was the best he could use against such an opponent. Using a low-ranking dagger technique, he once again got rid of weak enemies who trembled at the mere sight of his past guise as a shadow god. Thanks to a successful attack, he again earned experience points. The system continued to notify him of success rewards every time he got rid of an opponent. As a result, in such a short period of time, he managed to once again increase his level and update his characteristics, gradually improving the parameters of his body. The sight of the newcomer's incredible superiority clearly attracted the deity. The system displayed a warning that the guy was destroying the inhabitants of the front part of the forest at high speed. Thanks to constant battles with black mambas, the blade of the low-ranking dagger began to become sharper. Constant levitation improved concentration parameters in battle. The guy's body began to reach a new level. Looking back, Li Chan Sung began to notice that the local monsters had changed their behavior. The system reported that the black mambas began to perceive him as their natural enemy, which instinctively instilled fear in them. At that moment, protection from monsters turned into a real hunt. Light hunting gave the guy the title of executioner of black mambas. Thanks to killing hundreds of monsters, he was able to gain an additional five points of strength and the passive skill of instilling fear in snake-like monsters. Enjoying the battle, the gloomy god decided to continue getting rid of enemies in order to sharpen his dagger even more. He could only experience such awe and excitement in battle. Remembering his life before losing his status as a shadow god, he thought that on Arcadia, the feeling of battle aroused fear in him, but despite it, he also enjoyed it at the same time. He admitted that because of the divine restraining steel, everything went wrong and he was captured, believing that he was only bringing harm to the world. 
He was extremely angry about this and believed that this was not the real reason, but only a cowardly excuse from those who feared his power. In his opinion, the gods were simply afraid that some pathetic mortal from planet Earth might surpass them over time. At first he had no such intentions, but due to recent events, his view of the world began to change. Everything changed. Li Chan's son was ready to become the one whom the cowardly gods were so afraid of seeing that they deprived him of his divine status. After destroying countless monsters, the fallen shadow god had obtained the highest level of low-rank dagger technique. Thanks to this, he gained a mid-rank dagger technique skill, and the divine constellation began to tremble with his exceptional weapon skills. Having opened the system, he said out loud that it was too early to be surprised since he had not yet shown everything he was capable of. The system began to inform him that his stamina was at its limit. Due to the exhaustion of his body, he received an offer to move to a safe zone in order to rest. But the guy had something completely different on his mind. He activated a skill of his power called soul extraction in order to gain all the experience of the monsters killed in battle. As he absorbed the power, he turned to another skill of this pit lord ability. Thanks to the activation of the Fire of Purgatory, he was able to successfully obtain the remains of the Black Mambas and restore five stamina points. Thanks to this, the message about body exhaustion disappeared and Li Chan decided to continue the battle. The guy's behavior turned out to be extremely unusual for a deity. He was puzzled by what system the ability of a talented mortal warrior belonged to. Messages from the system continued to surface emphasizing that the constellation was showing interest in explaining the adventures of a force unknown to it. The guy thought that the goddess Pabelsag would never guess that the newcomer, who had recently entered the dungeon, received a blessing from the king of the underworld himself. He decided that the constellation watching him was thinking about the abilities and attributes that players receive upon awakening. Even if Pabelsag was very inquisitive, he understood that she would not do anything towards the dubious guy due to the limitations of the principle of causality that were installed in the system. He believed that no one was so crazy that he would violate the principle just to see the data of an ordinary beginner. Continuing to fight, the guy noticed that his level, statistics, and skills were steadily growing depending on the number of defeated monsters. He was not worried about Pabelsag's interest since he believed that the data protection system of the afterlife was quite reliable, because if not for it, then the information of his status window would have been revealed long ago. Opening the system window, he immediately received several messages about the destruction of monsters. Having killed the last black mamba in the location, he received a new achievement as a snake hunter, thanks to which he was able to gain additional power points and low rank resistance to poison. Looking at his data, he noticed that his level and other parameters continued to rise steadily. Thanks to his achievements, he has earned points of magical power, so he should think about how to use the acquired skills. The system reported that the player should earn the favor of a god who was interested in his actions. This was good news. Having finished with the Black Mambas, he decided that Red and Bloody Snakes were next in line. Thanks to his low rank achievement, he gained a weak immunity to poison, which in theory should make his battles with new enemies easier. Turning to location data, it is worth mentioning that the Bloody Mamba is considered the main one in the forest, it controls the rest of the monsters of its type. While it seemed that it was impossible for a beginner who had not reached level 10 to defeat her, but despite this, Chan Sung was thinking about destroying the boss alone. This was a great opportunity, and the guy thought that this way he could attract the attention of the gods. A more important reward will be a trophy. The poisonous fang of the Bloody Mamba is known as an item that helps to quickly gain immunity from poison. It is worth mentioning that one of the reasons why the Shadow God lost the war was because his enemies were outnumbered. And also the fact that he was hopelessly weak against curses and poisons. Angrily remembering the curses, he thought that he needed the fang of the Bloody Mamba in order to gain immunity. Within a moment, he noticed how his weapon began to collapse. At the same moment, he received a message that the rusty dagger for beginners had expired. Sighing, he was surprised that despite the number of monsters destroyed, 
this item could last so long. While thinking about where to get a new weapon, he heard a whistle from the sky from an object that was rapidly flying towards him. An object fell next to him that looked like a weapon. Taking a closer look, he noticed the image of a dragon and realized that this was a weapon from the goddess Tiamat. He couldn't believe that the goddess had decided to sacrifice one of her items for the fun of observing the actions of a mortal warrior inside a low-ranking dungeon. After the weapon appeared, the system reported that the constellation presented him with this gift in order to make a bet with him. The condition stated that if the guy loses in the boss fight, then the goddess interested in him will take the gift and kill him. Looking at the daring appeal, it became clear to him that this was a challenge, because the deity from the very beginning began to talk about his death if he lost. It is obvious that the constellation only thinks about itself while ordinary players are just entertainment for them. Because of this phenomenon, Li Chang Sung, as a person, having learned the essence of higher beings, sincerely hated the gods. But despite their arrogance, this time such behavior was to his advantage, because if he played the situation correctly, he would win. If he obtains the dagger of the goddess Tiamat, it will greatly affect his future battles. The bet was accepted. The system reported that the deity was laughing, as he really liked the courage shown on the part of the player. A sudden task was created with bet conditions. Meanwhile, movement began inside the ring of the beginning of the dungeon. A man began asking everyone to gather, which caused indignation onlookers. They were clearly unhappy that he began to pretend to be in charge. The loud man standing in front of them introduced himself as Second Lieutenant Park Hae Sum a C-rank player from the Awoken squad under the command of military defense support. He said that in case of an emergency, everyone should follow his instructions. Hearing his words, the guys breathed a sigh of relief, as they were glad to know that at least one player was among them. On the other hand, they remembered that stranger who ran into the forest alone the moment the dungeon mission appeared. They sincerely hoped that nothing bad had happened to him. Looking into the forest, they assumed that he ran in a particular direction because he thought he would get lucky. Despite the heated discussion on the part of the young participants, a girl was sitting under one of the trees in no mood and was not even going to join the discussion. One of the guys replied that he did not agree with the majority opinion. He believed that the stranger must have a huge amount of money if he was so confident in his own strength. He confidently said that they saw the one called Tyrant, the leader of the ST team. The guys remembered him because of his name. One of the guys said that thanks to his appearance, Tyrant starred in many advertisements, even though as a person he was considered a very unpleasant person. There were rumors that he was the one who was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Those who were aware of his success could not understand why he then went into the dungeon. The all-knowing guy shared rumors that, in fact, Tyrant abandoned esports and became an alcoholic which is probably why he began to experience a lack of money. Another option he considered was his difficult moral state. He believed that having lost everything, the tyrant decided to say goodbye to life inside one of the dungeons. After his daring words, his friend joined the conversation. He warned everyone that the guy in the blue jacket was drunk and could not control his speech. A moment later, all participants began to receive messages from the system that all the black mambas had been defeated. The participants were shocked by such information, because they had not seen anyone who would be capable of such a feat in such a short period of time. One observant girl noticed that all the participants were in the safe zone from the very beginning, so she did not understand who was able to eliminate the novice monsters of the dungeon. The following messages surprised even an experienced player, he learned that the monster called the White Worm and all the Blue Crows had been eliminated. In addition, he was alerted by a message about the destruction of a boss called the Red Mamba. After this, the system reported that the player Li Chan Sung became a berserker. At that moment it became clear who exactly was behind the events. Onlookers could not understand how this could be possible. The words of the guy in the blue jacket turned out to be ridiculous rumors and he was very angry, as he had deceived everyone present. Meanwhile, Li Chan Sung was among the destroyed enemies, thanks to the new weapons, dealing with them was not a problem. 
he began extracting the souls of monsters in order to gain enough experience. Having fulfilled the terms of the bet, he received a message from the system that the constellation deity was interested in finding new apostles and priests who would promote her faith. All the decent priest roles were already taken, but despite this, Pabel Sag found a good offer. She saw the guy as a candidate for the apostles of her personal army. The system warned the guy that he could not be accepted so easily, because first he had to pass a test. He had twenty-four hours to destroy the bloody mamba with a temporary dagger. The condition stated that if successful, he would receive the tooth of an evil dragon and the opportunity to join the selection for apostles. For the guy this was not surprising, because he understood that the goddess was very interested in his abilities from the very beginning. It looks like he had an emergency. He remembered that there had previously been a big conflict between the goddess Tiamat and Marduk, so it was logical to assume that this was somehow connected. It is worth mentioning that Bel Marduk is the strongest zodiac sign among the twelve constellations. It is known as Taurus. The task was not easy, but he was sure that if this was true, then he would be able to significantly improve his level and obtain very valuable items. Looking at the gift dagger, he noticed that it was an unusual weapon. It was known that in order to protect her child, the original evil dragon created a dagger from her fang with its own character. The category of the dagger classified it as a sacred weapon, the power of the attack was impossible to determine. Since he had borrowed this sacred item, he could not use all of its original capabilities until he had it completely at his disposal. This was what was needed, but the greed of the shadowy god forced him to offer the deity another bet. The divine being was at a loss and in order not to waste time, the guy clarified that he was proposing to set the time frame for the mission at thirty minutes. Pabel Sag was shocked by this proposal. The young man seemed too self-confident. Li Chang Sung clarified the details and said that he would kill the bloody mamba in thirty minutes and give the constellation a great show in the form of a mesmerizing battle. In exchange he asked for the best reward from the one specified in the bet. The guy's audacity delighted the deity, and Pabel Sag accepted the terms of the new deal. She also added to the conditions that in case of loss, the end of the participant's life would be painful. Having heard from the system about the positive response of the interested deity, the guy went on a mission. He quickly reached the huge monster, which was the strongest among the snakes, with whom he had fought earlier. This snake did not feel a sense of fear towards the player like less powerful snakes did. She immediately struck. Thanks to his incredible agility, Li Chan Sung dodged in an instant and was able to climb onto the body of a huge monster. As he moved forward towards his goal, he was eager to test the power of his new weapon. Having reached a convenient part of the enemy's body, he took out his gift dagger. The power of this weapon was more than enough to penetrate the bloody mamba's strong defenses. Despite the low level, the guy continued to destroy the body of the enemy monster. Having destroyed this monster in a matter of seconds, Li Chan received a message from the system that he had gained a new level. In addition, his strength had increased by three points. After successfully destroying the snake, he saw flying lizards appear behind him and rush towards him. Switching to a new opponent, the guy easily dealt with the first of them. The system began to report an increase in agility, and that rumors of his bet with the deity began to spread at incredible speed. As a result of his actions, not only Pabelsag, but also several other gods were surprised by the performance. Some of them were interested in finding out how the newcomer had such incredible combat experience. The excitement of the battle brought the guy pleasure, and moreover, he managed to attract even more attention, thanks to which he would be able to get precious items. With a smile on his face, Li Chang thought that the more gods that were interested in his power, the better it would be. In this case, he could count on more rapid development of his own abilities. Meanwhile, Pabel Sag was surprised by the number of unexpected guests, and the system reported that she was persistently warning the other gods that the young man belonged to her. Approaching the new monster, the guy continued to receive messages about leveling up. He hoped that among those watching his performance there would be those who would generously reward his courage and strength. 
At the moment before the collision with the Bloody Mamba, he received a message about gaining the tenth level. Since he had already passed the beginner level, he was given a secret class for completing this task in the shortest time. Moreover, his statistics increased by five points in all parameters. Analyzing the situation, Li Chang thought that in his previous life he had the Spearman class, but this time he does not have the opportunity to choose a regular level. It would be great for him to become the King of Dragons or the King of Darkness, but he knew that it would be really difficult. As we heard earlier, he decided that in this case the best option would be the power of the Berserker. He believed that Berserkers had great attack power, but they lacked common sense. Despite this, he was willing to avoid the ability's side effects with extra precautions. In order to win such an absurd bet, he decided that the unimaginable strength of a berserker would be his best choice. With a sly smile on his face, he planned to use this ability to compensate for his low level, because he knew that even players at level 20 would find it difficult to kill a monster of that level. Opening the interface, he began to choose among the possible options. He began to shiver because after looking through 30 choices, he still could not find the Berserker class. Continuing to scroll through the system interface, the guy could not find the power he needed to complete the bet. Time was running out. He had only six minutes to escape. The final monster was already nearby and it was a matter of time before he noticed the player. Li Chang's son agreed to such a daring bet but miscalculated because he could not find the required ability in the list. Meanwhile, the divine being had already begun to wonder how the player would cope in the remaining time. The three unknown gods also continued to watch. They were impatient to know Li Chang's choice of ability. The guy had only one way out of the situation. It was to change the plan. Looking at the list, the only thing he liked was the secret skill of the rune keeper. He was annoyed by the fact that he would have to draw runes every time he wanted to use this power, but he was attracted to the destructive power because it was superior to a berserker in some situations. Moreover, this skill could probably help him compensate for his lack of combat effectiveness. A determined guy on the verge of failure decided to choose a runekeeper as his main class. His agility instantly increased and magical power appeared, which he did not possess. Among the statistics, new items have appeared, such as intelligence and will. The system also reported that the skill of creating runes of the lowest rank, as well as engraving runes, had been acquired. Starting to get used to the new ability, the system continued to report what the reaction of the deities that were observing him was. The divine being who was trying to gain the guy's power was simply shocked by his choice, while the rest of the observers simply began to laugh. Despite the reactions of observers, Li Chang's son was satisfied with his choice. Looking at the statistics, he confirmed his suspicions that two rune skills appear first. For him, this was more than enough to win, but he had to hurry, because there were about four minutes left before the end of the bet. After using the new ability for the first time, his statistics began to update. As a result of this, an additional 25 points were added to his intellect and will parameter. Meanwhile, the main monster of this location had already noticed the presence of the stranger. The player remained careful, because one blow from the Bloody Mamba could end their fight. Within a moment, Li Chan was discovered and a huge monster rushed towards him. Being in a disadvantageous position, the guy decided to change the location to a more suitable one, taking out a gift dagger in advance. Having dodged the first blow of the monster, it became clear that at that moment he could say goodbye to his life. Having gained some time, the player activated the skill of creating runes of the lowest rank. The system reported that the chance of success will be increased proportionally to the growth of the player's statistics. Holding his sword in front of him, the guy prepared for battle. First of all, he gave himself a small cut in order to use his new abilities. Thanks to the blood, he managed to stain his sword to fulfill the conditions for creating runes. In fact, he never thought that he would have to fight such a strong monster at a low level, so the skill he forcibly learned was just right for him. By drawing blood on the sword, rune engraving was activated, 
with which he could greatly enhance the power of his weapon. The system reported that the player had successfully engraved the explosion rune on his dagger, and preparations for battle had been completed. Despite the enhancement, the bloody mamba skin proved to be too durable, causing the divine being to mock the player's actions. Although the guy was unable to damage the monster's body the first time, Pable Sag began to show interest in the newcomer's knowledge of runic symbols. While using the skill, the guy successfully engraved all the runes thanks to his concentration and will, for which he was rewarded with an increase in the level of his ability. Although he was rewarded with a five-fold increase in the explosion rune for a minute, the magical power was already spent and the player fell into wild hunger. By the end of the battle, there were only three minutes left, and the blood mamba's body had still not been damaged. But Li Chan's son did not give up, because he believed that this time would be more than enough. Another powerful explosion from the use of the ability spread throughout the forest and the dungeon recruits could not help but notice it. Even the experienced lieutenant was excited by what was happening. He thought that incessant sounds of an explosion of unknown origin were coming from the forest, which were gradually becoming stronger than the previous ones. Powerful explosions began to panic the newcomers and they began to loudly discuss what was happening without their participation. Within a moment, they received a message from the system, which satisfied their interest. They learned that player Li Chan Sung had launched a raid on the boss alone. Upon learning that we were talking about a bloody mamba, they were shocked. Such an early raid on the boss raised no less a question than the presence of the name of a known sportsman with a bad reputation. One of the enraged guys decided to sow panic and shouted that Li Chan was trying to drag them down with him, provoking one of the strongest monsters in the dungeon. Angrily remembering the past, he noticed that Li Chang behaved in the same way at matches, he headlong did only what he wanted, without thinking about the rest of the team. After these words, the restless guy turned to the soldier with a request to do at least something. But the young guy's panic did not affect the experienced fighter in any way, he recalled his words that they should stay in their places. He believed that if they disrupted the formation even slightly, then the death of all participants would be inevitable. The excited guy was ready to say goodbye to life, he began to curse the one who went to fight the boss alone. Meanwhile, a more reasonable and experienced fighter began to analyze the situation. Looking at the light above the forest, he decided that it was associated with decisive blows. Without understanding the origin of such power, it became obvious to him that Li Chang's skills were beyond his imagination. At that moment, the thought occurred to him that they still had a chance of survival. Under the illumination of a power of unknown origin, he could only guess what was happening on the battlefield. The explosions continued, the battle was in full swing, and the time for the bet was running out. During the battle, the gloomy god became so immersed in the use of power unimaginable for the participants that he began to lose his human appearance. In order not to lose his own life, he put everything he could into each explosion. After another powerful explosion, the long-awaited calm began. Participants in the dungeon began to receive messages from the system that they had successfully completed the hunt for the first boss called the Bloody Mamba. The worried soldier breathed a sigh of relief. Thanks to the efforts of just one player, their group managed to clear the first zone of their mission. After completing the task, Li Chan's son was able to take first place in the dungeon rankings, collecting the maximum 5,000 points. The system said that rewards will be given according to achievements. After seeing such an incredible fight, the lieutenant decided that there was a possibility that he was witnessing the birth of a new member of the Ten Kings. When the guys began to slowly move towards the outskirts of the gate, the main boss suddenly appeared from the forest. The frightened players could not believe their eyes because just recently they had seen a message that the bloody mamba had been defeated. The terrifying gaze of the monster, which required at least level 20 for a fair battle, terrified everyone who was closer to the forest. Of course, at that moment the guy in the blue jacket and his comrade began to say goodbye to life. They probably cursed Li Chang Su, believing that he had somehow bypassed the system and passed off a false victory as reality. 
Within a moment, the body of the bloody mamba fell to the ground right in front of the frightened newcomers. As it turned out, the monster did not get inside the safe zone on its own. It was just a body that the winner brought. Those who stood behind escaped with only a slight fright. Few of them managed to see in person the guy who, at the very beginning of the dungeon, was quickly rushing into the forest. With a purposeful and cold gaze, Li Chang assumed that he had reached the safe zone where the rest of the players were. The lieutenant was the only one who had the strength to answer. He confirmed the assumption of the savior of his squad. After making sure he was in the right place, Li Chang turned to the onlookers and announced that the boss was finished. After that, he asked the players to clear the forest of weak monsters, which he left so that the rest would have a chance to survive and gain important rewards. Understanding the superior power of the strongest of the squad, the lieutenant took his words not as a request, but as an order. Being grateful for what Li Chang had done, he suggested that he rest while they set up camp. Continuing to drag the boss's huge head behind him, Li Chang refused the offer, saying that the other players would be uncomfortable being in the same company with him. The boys began to doubt whether he really was the one known as the tyrant. He seemed like a completely different person to them, and some players began to assume that a real demon had appeared in their ranks. While the others were thinking about who helped him, the lieutenant began to laugh that the danger had passed. The guy in the blue jacket was clearly not amused, he was still angry, because he could not tolerate the impudent cyber sportsman who acted alone. His anger could be seen from the emotions that he could not hide. Looking at Li Chan's son, he agreed with the opinion that this was a completely different person, and maybe even a demon. After leaving the safe zone, a smile appeared on the player's face, he was amused by the rumors that people were treating him like some kind of monster. Before opening the second part of the forest, he had enough time to rest. The guy stopped in a convenient place and threw the body of the killed monster. To begin with, he decided to try protective ways of using runes and engraved a barrier rune on the stone. Thanks to his new experience, he managed to increase the level of this skill, and the barrier worked the first time and protected his prey from other players. During the battle period, his lowest rank rune creation skill reached the maximum level, so the highest rank skills were unlocked. Separating himself from the others, Li Chang first decided to distribute the rewards. Some rewards were still in standby mode, namely rewards for winning a bet. The guy received a list, after examining which he decided that it was useless to choose prey at a low level, the fawn of an evil dragon was still enough for him. At that moment, the choice seemed obvious and he settled on additional points for achievements. Thanks to this choice, he gained 15,000 karma points. With a grin on his face, he believed that he needed a thing that would unite the world of people and the kingdom of the gods. His plan was to prepare to open a store for the system he was working with. To clarify the details, he opened his interface and saw a number of updates. He reached level 15, tolerance to low rank poison of the fifth level and 50 units of additional statistics. The rapid development of the power level of the Lord of the Underworld was great news, thanks to which the idea of dragging the body of the bloody mamba was relevant. Looking around, the guy noticed new messages from the system. In his possession was one of the rewards from the task of overthrowing the boss. Despite his success in the bet, the divine being was reluctant to share any additional rewards with him, and the other gods changed their attitude and began to take an open interest in the identity of the mortal warrior. After the other gods showed interest in the guy, Pable Sag showed her jealousy and once again warned the observers that if they touched what belonged to her, then they would not be able to escape the wrath of the dragon. After these words, she changed her mind and offered a second reward for winning the bet in a limited time. The list included an Anadazan gold bar, a heavenly cup, and an almighty stone. The items provided demonstrated the deity's generosity, as they were famous dragon treasures. Pabel Sag shared her opinion that if her task is to meet the needs of the future apostle, then no treasure can be too much. The other gods were surprised by the generosity of this offer and were themselves interested in ways to obtain rare items. Despite this, 
The guy had some cunning plan in his head and he simply refused the reward. In response to his action, the system reported that the divine being was confused, and some gods began to question the intentions of the daring player. Due to the refusal of rewards, the system compensated them with one million karma points. By allowing the reward system to accumulate, Li Chang creates the opportunity to dispose of it as he pleases, regardless of the deity's decision. The impudent behavior caused the obvious displeasure of the goddess of war. Despite this, in return she invited the player to become her apostle. But the cunning Li Chan refused the offer for the second time and gained another million karma points. He said out loud that first he wanted to gain more experience, and also clarified that he did not plan to become a candidate. Looking at the results of the first part of the forest, the guy thought that thanks to a successful bet he was able to greatly increase his own strength and amount of resources. He could only smile at the system's continuous messages, which said that the divine being was angry because of the player's behavior, which had disgraced her in front of other entities. Pablesag promised that Li Chang would regret refusing her favor. The gods began to anticipate interesting events, they drew attention to the fact that the player was not satisfied with being just a candidate for apostle. Those who had previously been disappointed in the guy's actions were truly delighted after recent events. The insane number of messages from the system could drive an ordinary visitor to the dungeon crazy, but not a gloomy god. He understood that when you show your real value, many will take your side. He was not aimed at Pablesag, but at something more, for example, at her mother in whose clutches there was much more power. He hoped that the fight with Marduk was not a fantasy, because in this case Tiamat would want to get such a talented player at her disposal. As a result of recent events, Pabel Sag was so angry that she completely turned her back on Li Chan's son. This news only brought a sly smile from the guy, because everything went according to his plan. He thought that with this state of affairs, he could already move on to the next stage of his strategy to regain power. Taking out his dagger, he was ready to use all the monster's resources to the last, knowing that there was nothing superfluous in it for a beginner. As a result, he managed to obtain the blood, tendons and eyes of a bloody mamba, which were considered extremely useful items for beginner-level players. Some gods began to show interest in what the talented guy would do next. Rumors of the bet and how he rejected Pablesag began to spread throughout the skies. The gods interested in his actions began to connect to the dungeon channel one after another. While everyone was trying to take a break from recent events and the nervous stay in the safe zone, the guy in the blue jacket was thinking hard about whether he could change something. He hated the personality of Li Chan Sung, so with anger on his face, he asked his comrade if he himself could repeat what the e-sportsman with a bad reputation had done. The confused guy did not understand what was going on. His friend clarified that he would like to show himself as a player that is not inferior in level to his competitor. The guy in the red jacket couldn't believe the words his friend said. As it turned out, he believed that the achievements of the former e-sportsman could not be great, since he became an alcoholic. Envy of the dungeon leader forced him to believe in himself. He admitted that he didn't know about it before, but he heard that there was a place where a player could awaken his talent. As it turned out, he had already received a message from a god called Owl that he was interested in the talent of the player Yung Chun Jie. The daring guy's friend was surprised, because he knew that he had already passed the talent awakening test. A moment after this conversation, a bright flash appeared in the sky. A moment later something landed loudly on the ground. It was the administrator, a creature of very small size, but with terrifying power. The rabbit greeted everyone present and introduced himself as Harold, the administrator of the dungeon channel. He continued his unexpected appearance with a loud, high-pitched laugh. The positive creature with a gold watch in his hands acted like a child which made everyone present worry about why he had arrived in the safe zone. His sudden appearance puzzled the onlookers and they began to carefully observe the administrator's behavior. While wiping his gold watch, Harold apologized for his behavior, saying that he had disturbed the participants completely by accident. Taking out a long and shocking microphone, 
he asked the players if they were interested in the reason for his appearance. As it turned out, something interesting happened, so he counted on understanding from those present. The lieutenant who took charge of the civilians was worried because he did not know what the consequences of the appearance of the messenger of God would be. Harold began his speech by saying that the administration bureau's policy is one of non-interference and the highest degree of freedom, so they try not to involve anyone during the player's dungeons. Despite this, he was forced to admit that there was a spike in traffic on their dungeon channel, causing the senior manager to start freaking out. He admitted that he was sorry, but due to such events he would have to increase the difficulty of the mission. The already excited participants, who did not even leave the safe zone, began to demonstrate their panic before the tests of increased difficulty. Raising his paw up, the rabbit loudly snapped his fingers, after which the safe zone barrier disappeared. Then all participants began to receive messages from the system that, in connection with the achievements obtained, a new difficulty had been set due to which the safe zone disappeared, aggressiveness increased, and the attack power and power of the monsters increased. The reaction of the participants was quite obvious, because it became clear that now their chances of survival had decreased significantly. The lieutenant learned of these events once he was in a dungeon, which turned into a selection of the strongest. He barely survived that mission and nearly lost his left eye. Most of the participants died or were traumatized for life. It was a real horror that he didn't want to see a second time. The man remembered that at that time, the gods also called upon the administrator to increase the difficulty and find out if there were special newcomers worthy of becoming their apostles. He couldn't believe that he would have to go through this hell again. It was obvious that the gods began to believe that Li Chan's son had great potential. The appearance of a former esports player became a curse for the lieutenant from planet Earth. After a few seconds, everyone in the dungeon began to receive messages from the system that due to the increase in difficulty, the remaining rest time would be cancelled and the monsters would be given greater freedom. They were hungry, so the system prompted the frightened players to launch an attack on the predators. The monsters were approaching, so everyone was advised to split up into groups of up to ten people in order to get profitable equipment. For catching monsters, they were promised a chance to drop fireballs, and to advance to the second part of the test they needed to collect 99 crystals. While leaving the location, the administrator approached the player Park Hae Sun and said his name out loud. The lieutenant was surprised, so he asked the rabbit how he knew his name. The herald replied that he could not forget the only survivor of the evil dragon's lair. He admitted that the bureau continues to monitor him, so the administrator could not lose sight of such a player. Leaving the dungeon, he promised that he would pray for the mortal warrior of the earth. After these words, Harold disappeared, and the system began counting the appearance of monsters. The second part began and screams began to spread throughout the former safe zone. The monsters were quickly rushing to attack defenseless players. These were dogs that resembled Cerberus. With daggers for beginners, the guys began to panic and scatter instead of dividing into groups of ten people. Among them there was also a daredevil, a guy in a blue jacket named Chung Chun Jae who was not going to run away, he was eager to fight. A fire of excitement from the battle appeared in his eyes, he believed that this was his chance to show his best side, because a huge number of gods were watching them. Once in front of the monsters, he received a message that a deity named Owl had sent him her blessing. Meanwhile, the carefree Li Chan continued collecting resources from the body of the defeated boss, and this time he managed to get the poisonous fong of a bloody mamba. Having received an important item, the guy began to rejoice, because by using it, he would have a more advanced immunity to poisons. At the same moment, he received an unexpected message from the system that the second part of the test had begun. The timeout for rest is over, the gods made it known that they are waiting for the further actions of the talented newcomer. In addition, they began to place bets and make bets among themselves. Li Chan guessed that the selection of the strongest had begun, and it was simply impossible to avoid victims. He hoped that he would have more time to prepare and assumed that this was due to the fact that he had won the bet with Pablesag. Looking at the statistics of the dungeon, 
he was convinced that he had received more attention from the gods than he had expected. In addition, health and magic power still had not recovered, and stamina was the biggest problem of all. Since things weren't going according to plan, he couldn't afford to rest and decided to take action. The first monster that came across the path was a huge fire lizard. This was unexpected, because in the first part he met only poisonous monsters, but this time a fire salamander also appeared. He knew that this lizard possessed not only fire, but also a more advanced poison. Based on this information, the guy came to the conclusion that he would have to fight not only with this class, but also with metal poisonous monsters. Appearing before the monster, he began planning to improve his statistics in order to prepare for the next stage. The monster launched its first attack and, based on its power, there was simply no time left to defend, so Li Chang decided to dodge. At this stage, he planned to obtain the monster's power, namely the concentrated power of fire. As expected, the first attack brought some results, and his dagger began to release its real power. Despite this, he was unable to defeat the enemy with his first attack. Since he still had no immunity to fire, every enemy attack could cause him irreparable harm. The wounded fire salamander released a huge amount of fire in order to create a safe zone for itself. Despite the danger, Li Chan's son did not stop and rush to attack again. The only option was to fight at close range, so he deftly climbed onto the salamander's body and began to strike with his dagger. A powerful blow to the neck brought the desired result. The first monster of the second part of the mission in the forest was defeated. After destroying the first monster, the guy noticed that his body still lacked characteristics. He noticed that the stamina of the fire salamander cannot be compared even with the black mamba, so it would be difficult for him to hunt them in the event that several monsters attacked together. Touching the body of the defeated monster, the guy began to use the skills of the Lord of the Underworld. Thanks to this, he managed to extract the fireball, which means his task will be easier. Understanding the mechanics of the dungeon perfectly, he decided to immediately use the captured item. The system reported that Li Chan had successfully absorbed the fireball, resulting in lower rank fire resistance. In addition, he managed to obtain 20,000 points of fire energy. After using the item, he was able to use the fire breathing technique. Moving further, the guy thought that it would be nice to eat more balls in order to fulfill the second condition for gaining immunity to poisons. In addition, he was thinking about an object important for his development called the bowl of eight trigrams of thermal energy. Having met a large crowd of monsters along the way, he decided that now he could collect the necessary trophies. The unique ability of Chan Sung's longtime enemy, Antares, is the constellation Scorpio. It gives him the talent of tolerating all poisons and the ability to recreate them from poisoned blood. Speaking of brute strength, it was safe to say that Chan Sung had the strength to stand up to Antares. But due to the ability of the Scorpio constellation, he failed in the clash against Gaia's curse, which destroyed his divine status causing him to lose the ability to continue the battle. However, by a strange coincidence, he found himself in the afterlife and thanks to Thanatos, Chan Sung managed to study some of the secret arts of the fallen stars. The Lord was kind and gave him the opportunity to learn everything at his disposal. The man stated that this knowledge would be useful in the battle with most of the zodiac signs, which would help the two of them. The fallen stars were considered criminals, so they were exiled to the underworld. The twelve zodiac signs gave everything to get where they are today, and some fallen stars can't forgive them for it. Each of the fallen stars, whom Chan Sung called the Ten Elders, gave him their own technique. To begin with, Li Chang became familiar with the quick way to gain immunity to poisons. One of the deities blamed Antares for the death of his daughter so he was doubly interested in raising a warrior who could carry out the long-awaited and much-desired revenge. And since he was the first to share his skills, Chan Sung called him the first elder. Having collected a sufficient number of trophies from the bodies of destroyed monsters, the guy was able to absorb the fireballs. This time, the power of his breathing had increased significantly, 
but despite this, he was still not satisfied with the result. After assessing the statistics, he came to the conclusion that with this level of fiery energy he would not be able to light an hour of eight trigrams. Therefore, Li Chan went in search of new clusters of monsters in order to find the strongest and get his fireball. Meanwhile, a worthy competitor began to appear among the other players. Yung Chun Jae found the strength to fight the fire salamanders with the beginner's dagger. He literally broke loose and began receiving messages that the deity was interested in his power. Another piece of luck clouded his mind and he began to arrogantly think that with his level of strength he would be able to trample Li Chang's sung face into the dirt, showing his superiority. But when the second stage ended, there was real shock on his face. According to the results of the mission, he again lost to his main competitor, who scored 15 times more points than him. In third place in the ranking was Lieutenant Park Hae Sung, who collected 150 points, which is three times less than Chung Chun Jae. Dissatisfied with the results, the guy could not believe that, despite his efforts, he had lost to some alcoholic. He thought that Lee Chang was using the dungeon speedrun. As soon as he thought about this, the deity approached his interface using system access and suggested doing the same. Chun Jae didn't know if there was a faster way to complete the mission, so he turned to the deity and asked him for more power so that he could fully meet his expectations. The owl agreed to help, so her answer was positive. While Chun Jae was on the verge of gaining incredible power, ordinary players wondered where so many talented warriors came from in their world. They wished to be as strong as Li Chan. The lieutenant was more confident. He continued to analyze the situation and compared his previous experiences with what he had to face this time. He noticed that on the third day of the monster wave, all the players were exhausted, but their envy of the more skilled fighters continued to grow. He could understand the indignation of the other players, because before their eyes, the same ordinary person had achieved incredible strength in such a short period of time. In addition, two people turned out to be effective players at the same time. Returning to his comrades, Chong Chun boasted that he was able to acquire a new skill. There was blood on his face and his eyes were filled with rage. He stated that God had heard his prayers and now they had a real chance of survival. Meanwhile, Li Chan began to approach a monster that they had not seen before. Fire Ram was someone who could easily deal with an ordinary player. Chong Chun thought that at this rate, everyone would die before they even met the Queen of the Mountains. Despite his opinion, Li Chang continued to fight. The daring guy believed that the former esports player was not a person, but some kind of demon, and he could really be understood. Li Chan continued to develop rapidly, and, having destroyed all the fire lizards on his way, he was able to easily defeat a more powerful monster. Having dealt with the fire ram, he managed to find another trophy in the form of a fireball. He continued with his plan, so he took the thing. Having absorbed the next ball, he felt a more noticeable increase in fiery power. But he was distracted from continuing the hunt by the scream of some girl. Looking around, he saw the player that he had probably gotten lost and ended up in a cave in which a huge bear lived. The girl was already saying goodbye to her life, because previously she could not resist anything even to ordinary monsters. This time the faster and larger predator was seriously targeting her life. Only luck saved her because the strongest of those who ended up in this dungeon were nearby. Having dealt with the monster, the confident Li Chan asked the poor fellow if she was all right. The frightened girl began to roar because she almost died because of the monster, into whose lair she wandered completely by accident. Li Chang Sung introduced himself and asked her to calm down, saying that he could keep her safe. When the stranger began to behave more calmly, the guy asked where her comrades were, since he knew that players should be in groups. Remembering the horror that she had recently experienced, he admitted with a weakened voice that they had all died. Moreover, the culprit for this tragedy was not the monster, but a member of the squad named Yung Chun Jae, who brazenly abandoned them and ran into the forest alone. Then the girl showed her hand, on which there was a bloody image of an owl. This mark was the work of Chung Chun, 
She said this name with hatred and mentioned his words that with the help of this he could share the power of the goddess. Looking thoughtfully at the girl's hand, Li Chang answered without a doubt that the vile guy had deceived them and put the mark of a demon on their bodies. He explained to the frightened and tearful girl that this mark meant that the player had sold his soul. As it turned out, the real sadness of an owl piercing the dusk does not look at all like what was depicted on its hand. Continuing his speech, he shared information that when a person with a mark dies, his soul and life energy are taken by the owner of this technique. The life energy of the poor fellows was directed to the host, and the soul to the demon, so it was logical to assume that Chung Chun Jie had become very strong. To the guy's surprise, he noticed that this seal was of too high quality. At that moment, he sensed the danger posed by the new enemy, realizing that this demon was likely superior to even the highest-ranked demons. Despite this opinion, he was confident that even such an opponent could not defeat him. The obsessive girl did not give him privacy and quietly escape, she continued to pursue the guy and begged him for help. It became a problem that the player did not know how to solve. Pointing his finger towards the body of the killed monster, he suggested that the fact that he saved her from the fiery bear should be quite enough. Having a great desire for salvation, the girl said that she would do everything in her power. She was willing to clean, do laundry, and cook just so Li Chang could help her become stronger. Looking into her eyes, the player noticed that the frightened girl began to change. To understand the motives of this stubborn girl, he asked what her motive was and assumed that she wanted to personally take revenge for her friends. Avoiding answering, she pulled out her last chocolate bar and offered it as proof of her good intentions and incredible trust. The girl seemed very reliable. She promised that she would do whatever she was told to do in exchange for a guarantee of protection. Hearing her fighting spirit, Li Chang suggested first putting in place the one who is to blame for the death of her friends. While they were planning their actions, their enemy was becoming stronger, because according to the terms of the contract, he received the remaining life energy of his defeated comrades. Chong Chun was turning into a real demon, gradually becoming stronger and stronger, while Al was happy that her family was growing rapidly. Looking at his comrade, the guy in the red jacket couldn't believe his eyes. The impudent Chun Jie looked at his comrade with a cold and cruel gaze. Such a sight made the guy afraid, so he decided not to bother him. As it turned out, even a close friend was among those who suffered from their own gullibility. Looking at his hand, the guy said that this seal worked strangely and instead of giving him part of the power of the deity, it only limited his actions. In addition, he noticed that Chun Jie began to behave extremely inappropriately. He led a new group of ten people and began sending the poor fellows with seals into the forest so that they would fulfill his requests. At that moment, he realized that his comrade had become a real demon, which had turned them into slaves. He felt helpless and described it as if they were locked in a cage. Having collected everything he needed, Chun Jie shouted to his charges that they should follow him. He wanted to start a raid on the boss. With a terrifying expression on his face, he turned to his competitor, saying that he would destroy him in the near future. Such violent behavior of the vile guy attracted his deity, and the owl enthusiastically watched his anger. Li Chan and his companion continued to complete the dungeon. The girl was frightened by the sight of an unfamiliar phenomenon and began to run away. At that moment, the system reported that many divine beings were closely watching the players and were actively clearing the dungeon. Another escape of a girl with a brand on her hand seemed an embarrassing sight, but despite her desire for revenge, she had no other choice, since her powers were limited. The phenomenon she was running away from was the player's activated skill called Storm Spirit. This skill was not used to harm her at all, as it turned out, there were enemies behind her. It was a whole crowd of zombies on whom the ruin of infatuation for a defenseless girl worked. She performed her rudder, and the two techniques of the shadow god got rid of most of the enemies. Those who lacked the power of the assault spirit fell at the hands of the former sportsman. Seeing this, the girl began to slow down as she realized that she was part of a cunning plan. 
When it was all over, Li Chan approached the girl and noticed that she had a real talent for escape, which is why she still didn't die. He warned her that he planned to engrave the infatuation rune on her body so that it would attract monsters in the area. This proposal worried the defenseless girl, but the guy convinced her that she just needed to run for the enemies to come out of their hiding places. He asked her not to pay attention to what was happening behind. With this tactic, Li Chang was able to effectively spend his time and destroy enemies who practically did not pay attention to him, as they were focused on hunting for the owner of the rune. Having destroyed the last monster, the guy received some energy and called the girl to return to him. She reported that she did everything as her protector asked and attracted all the monsters within a radius of 300 meters to this place. In addition, she completed preparations for the new stage of their overall plan and even made sure that everything was in order. Having heard a positive answer, the guy asked her to run as far as possible since she could not do anything with whoever appeared. The girl instantly agreed to the proposal. Looking into her eyes, the guy saw a heavy burden, but he could tell for sure that she completely trusted him. Li Chang hoped that she would not get hurt, and that everything would go according to plan. At the same moment the girl disappeared from view, a huge dark cloud appeared. What was happening was obvious. A huge amount of poison was approaching him. At that moment, the final boss appeared in front of him, which was known as the Decaying Plague Spider. A huge creature with incredible destructive power struck its first blow. Seeing this sight, the girl was simply in shock. She couldn't believe that her new friend would fight such a huge monster alone. Despite her anxiety, Li Chan had enough time to prepare well for the fight. Covering part of his face, he began to release the previously accumulated magical energy. With these movements, he performed a technique with which he was able to activate an eye that resembled the eye of a dragon. Taking a look at the enemy's body, it became obvious that the zombies they had previously encountered were his personal skill. A huge creature with terrifying power was so large that it was comparable to the tallest trees of the forest. Shouting loudly, the plague spider demonstrated its readiness and announced the beginning of the final battle of this stage of the mission. The powerful force did not frighten the player in any way. As it turned out, earlier he received a message from the system that the serpent entwining the world was interested in the guy's strength. He had a high opinion of him, so he bestowed a new skill. The snake's eyes temporarily became the eyes of a viper, and Li Chan gained new power. The eyes of the viper gave the guy a number of advantages, the word snake, he could instantly determine the location of the victim, as well as quickly assess the territory and determine the main thing on the battlefield. The guy believed that the deity gave him the skill without conditions because he wanted to find out what the player was capable of. He liked the serpent's trust, so he was ready to demonstrate his strength. Using the viper's eyes, it was not difficult for him to calculate the enemy's weak point and choose the time convenient for the attack. Before using his power, he gathered the fiery power of the captured items and activated the immunity to the lower rank poison. The accumulated items increased his level of immunity to poison, and the accumulated fiery energy burned out the poison that managed to get into the player's body. Having activated these skills, the guy received a new achievement for absorbing a huge number of fireballs. As a reward, he managed to get an increase in the fire attribute and additional stamina points. Having prepared himself for the enemy's passive abilities, Li Chan Sung rushed into battle. He found the plague spider's weak points in advance, so he chose one of its legs to attack. With one powerful attack from his dragon dagger, he was able to easily cut through his opponent's body. The monster began to scream from unexpected pain. Seeing an incredible number of rotten zombies under him, the guy thought that he should hurry up with the implementation of the plan to strengthen himself. In order to ignite the flame of the bowl of eight trigrams, he began to select what would burn well. From his experience fighting as a shadow god, he knew very well that poisonous monsters burn the best. Despite this opinion, with the help of his viper eyes, he was convinced that there was something even better. He noticed the plague spider's tonsils and decided they were an even better target. Having aimed at the enemy, 
he saw the most convenient trajectory for attack. Li Chang charged with a huge dagger swing and aimed at the area near the monster's heart. Using all the weight of his body and all the strength of his arms, he struck. Despite his best efforts, this was not enough and his dagger was unable to penetrate the enemy's strong body. This turned out to be too difficult, and Li Chang Sung began to think about how to carry out this plan in a simpler way. At the same moment, he noticed that the plague spider had begun its counterattack. Huge amounts of liquid began to be released from his body, which was an aggressive acid. The guy jumped back and began to dodge since he had no option for defense. The level he had reached in three days of testing was still not enough to withstand such an ordinary boss attack. Sensing danger, the guy with a determined look decided to use a reliable backup plan. Following the example of his girlfriend, he resorted to flight and began to leave the battle zone. Meanwhile, Yung Chun Jie was already approaching the place of the boss battle. Seeing many defeated rotten zombies, he realized that he was too late. He believed that Li Chang was not capable of such a thing, so he assumed that someone else had done it. At that very moment, it was time for reports from the system and the system window popped up in front of him. In the dungeon ranking list, Li Chang still ranked first and had a significant advantage. This time Chen Zhe was inferior to him by almost thirty times. The disappointing results of the third day of the mission caused incredible anger in the guy. He began to get nervous because he saw a message that Ao was unhappy with the results. She contacted the guy using the system and said that he would not be forgiven if he continued to disgrace her name. She warned that this was his last chance. Due to his nervous state, he began to chew his finger until it bled and thought about what was happening. He believed that no normal person could become strong as quickly as Li Chang did. At the same time, he suggested that either there was a more efficient way to complete the dungeon, or that his competitor was somehow cheating. He believed that he could cope with this task alone and the goddess would again recognize his strength, but at the same moment a shocking message appeared in front of him that the player Li Chan Sung had begun a battle with the decaying plague spider, which was known as the boss of the second stage. The angry guy with demonic skills rushed forward, he left his group in order to get rid of his competitor. While he was afraid that Li Chang was about to destroy the second boss of the dungeon, his competitor was running headlong away from the monster, following his reliable backup plan. While avoiding battle, he received a message from the system that the plague spider was extremely agitated by the player's behavior. Remembering the conversation with the girl, he decided to trust her words. At that moment, she swore that she had finished the preparations and even made sure that everything was working properly. Since brute force was not enough, the guy decided to use the same preparations that he and his girlfriend had prepared in case something went wrong. The spider continued its pursuit and was approaching its target. At that moment Li Chang suddenly stopped. This was logical, because after a moment his trap worked and the spider fell through the ground. This result satisfied the player's expectations and he was ready to proceed to the next stage. The entire trap was filled with rune engravings that Li Chang Sung had prepared in advance. The monster fell down while the explosion rune was activated. As expected, a powerful explosion occurred and the fire began to rise. The system displayed a message on the interface that the decaying plague spider had begun to burn. The deity watching this performance began to laugh at the strange trap of a warrior from the planet Earth. At the same moment, the plan continued and the invasion rune was activated. Huge magical stakes began to pierce the body of the boss of the second part of the forest. Seeing this, the divine being was unable to hold back his laughter, the snake laughing at the trap spider, which was considered a huge threat to the player. Li Chang Sung received a new achievement for successful attacks, his reward was increased intelligence and improved skill in setting lower rank traps. The guy jumped inside the hole, grabbing a pre-prepared cable. Rapidly approaching the enemy, he said with a confident look that this was only the first of the traps prepared earlier. The body of the plague spider was tormented, the monster could barely stand on its paws. There was fear in his eyes of the one he considered his easy prey. 
Looking up, he saw a player hanging on a rope, holding a dagger in his hand. Confidently Chan Sung finally began his personal hunt. He knew that he was definitely facing the final boss, who had shed a lot of blood from the players. After that, he cut the cable that was stretched over the pit. During this, a rain of magical arrows from one of the runes fell on the spider. The spider continued to take incredible amounts of damage while making loud screams. Since the monster was cornered, it could not harm its opponent in any way and decided to resort to escape. Li Chang San immediately noticed this. He foresaw this course of events and prepared before the battle began. Approaching the monster, he stopped it with a series of dagger strikes. This time, the weakened shell of the monster could not hold back its blows. Along with the power of the dagger, magic arrows also caused damage. The wounded monster stopped. He could no longer run from his opponent. While Li Chan was fighting the final boss using all his skills, a group of surviving players came running to the battlefield. Their leader stopped the moment he saw the battle. He couldn't believe his eyes. His greatest fear turned out to be a reality. He saw Li Chan fight the final boss, moreover, the former esports athlete was significantly superior to his opponent. Chun Jie understood that if their squad joined the battle, then they would all die. Fearing such an outcome, he decided that it would be better to simply wait until his enemies had time to harm each other enough. He wanted his rival to weaken before he suffered a crushing blow at his hands. The nervous guy began to think about how to carry out his plan. Another crazy idea came into the demon's head which he considered working. Looking back, he looked at his team and thought that if he threw ordinary people at his opponent, then Li Chan would get tired much faster. Plus, he was sure that Chan Sung was not the type who would be willing to harm other people, so this, in theory, should have made his task easier. To make sure everything worked out, Chan Jie began to think about a backup option. At the same moment, he saw his opponent's partner, who would be quite suitable as a hostage. Chun Jie's ideas were extremely sinister. He watched the girl delighted with the battle and thought about how he could use her defenselessness. With a malicious smile on his face, the guy with demon skills thought that his plan was simple and ingenious. While the second-ranked player was thinking about his atrocities, Li Chan Sung continued to fight. The weakened spider could no longer resist so the player's skill and the power of his dagger were more than enough to cause significant damage. Enemy techniques could no longer reach the guy, so all he could do was finish off his opponent. Another powerful blow caused the system to start reporting that the final boss was low on health. A series of strikes led to the system beginning to identify each subsequent strike as decisive. After delivering a series of blows, the law of increasing damage was executed with which Li Chan destroyed the remaining health points of the decaying plague spider. After several hours of preparation and battle, Chan Jie was finally able to destroy the boss. Thanks to this, he was able to get a valuable trophy. In order not to waste time, he immediately began to absorb the remaining power of the enemy. Having absorbed such incredible power, the guy could not stand on his feet. After crouching a little, he began to release a large amount of poison, and the system reported that he had managed to reach the 20th level. The administrator informed the participants that player Li Chan Sung had cleared the last part of the forest required to complete the mission. After counting the points, the gloomy god still remained in first place, receiving 97% of the total points. For his merits, he received additional points from the administrative bureau and a huge number of gods began to show interest in his experience and incredible strength. The dungeon began to close. The system reported that a number of gods were eager to communicate with the strongest of the players, while the divine being serpent sarcastically said that only one of the stages was behind. He turned to the former shadow god and asked him to remember that he was the first to express his interest in his identity. Gathering the incredible amount of power that was inside the trophy, Li Chan did not pay attention to the fact that his ill-wishers were approaching him. Chun Jie was excited about his victory. He thought that his opponent was so tired that he could not stand up. At the same moment, 
he turned to the members of his squad and said that their time had come to fight. He ordered the players from whom he had taken away their power to rush into the attack, while he hid among them. Despite this, Li Chom was focused on his feelings, he was not worried about the possible danger and the fact that the dungeon rift began to open. Seeing his enemy's strange behavior, Li Jie stopped and continued to watch with extreme caution. A confident smile was clearly visible on the face of the most successful player. Chun Jie, considering his dastardly plan to be perfect, was simply infuriated by the fact that Li Chan was laughing while being the moment before death. But after a moment, the gloomy god had already begun to rise to his feet, while the system reported that one of the divine beings was bursting with laughter, as he believed that something interesting was about to begin. After the guy got to his feet, all the attackers stopped, and the system reported that the player Li Chan Sung and those nearby had fallen into a trap. Frightened by the strange phenomenon, Chun Jie could not understand what was happening. His plan began to fall apart, and he began to panic due to the fact that he feared death at the hands of a deity. Having caught everyone in his trap, Li Chan looked at his opponent with a confident and piercing gaze. With a sly grin on his face, he told Chun Jie the bad news that his competitor had made a stupid mistake. An angry Chun Jie ordered his fighters to attack the strongest participant in the dungeon. Despite the number of opponents, Li Chan was not worried and watched calmly. Although it was against his will, he understood that battle could not be avoided. Having no other choice, the guy rushed into battle to free his opponent's pawns. He was rapidly approaching his goal while Chun Jie shouted to his charges to leave the enemy. At that moment, players armed with beginner weapons began to receive a message that they had a new task to get out of the trap. The leader standing behind them was in a panic at how strong and fast the former esports athlete was. Without any doubt, he destroyed the players in front and approached his goal. Having no chance of escape, Chun Jie, enraged by the enemy's success, rushed to the attack. Crossing the daggers, he felt the difference in their power. His opponent turned out to be much faster and stronger, which is why the guy with the demonic skill lost. From a strong blow from Li Chan, his opponent's arm was turned in the other direction, and a deep cut appeared on his shoulder. Surpassing his opponent in all respects, the gloomy god began to laugh quietly and maliciously. From the very beginning this fight looked like a beating. It was because of this that Chun Jie decided to avoid the powerful blows of his opponent and began to run away. Looking around in fear, he shouted to the damned players that they must stop the enemy. But none of them possessed their weapons sufficiently, so they turned out to be easy prey. Considering his opponent to be a real monster, Chun Jie thought that he needed to get even more power. Meanwhile, the third on the list of dungeon leaders watched this performance from the side. The lieutenant understood perfectly well that the gods were just playing with the fate of Chung Chun Jie. He noticed that from the very beginning, they were only interested in Li Chan Sung. Yung Chun Jie was just a pawn, a decoration for the emergence of a worthy player. The distraught player began to exterminate his own comrades in order to gain even more power. Remembering the past, he again felt the horror and cold that at that moment spread throughout his body. What was happening before his eyes was reminiscent of the atrocities of the gods that he had encountered earlier. By killing his comrades, Chun Jie began to receive their remaining life energy under the terms of the contract. But at one point, the effect of his technique stopped, and the system showed an error message. While he was thinking about what was happening, his opponent began to approach. In a matter of seconds, Li Chang closed the distance with his opponent. Finding himself in Chen Jie's face, he without hesitation launched a powerful blow that his opponent could not fully defend against. The strength of the guy with demonic skills was not enough and the strongest participant in the dungeon again seriously injured him. Looking into the eyes of the vile man-man, he smiled slyly and performed the following action. With one powerful swing of his dagger, he tormented the enemy's body and Chun Jie lost his left arm. The defenseless guy fell to the ground. He winced in pain as he could no longer resist his opponent's strength. Moreover, 
the energy of his fallen followers no longer replenished his reserves. He couldn't believe his eyes, but his technique was no longer working properly. The system reported that for unknown reasons, life energy began to be sent to another player. How Li Chan's son was able to change the logic of the system remained a mystery to him. The calm guy decided to give his enemy a rest and began a dialogue, saying that the name Yung Chun Jie seemed very familiar to him. After these words, he paused thoughtfully. The exhausted opponent could no longer continue the battle. He asked if the East sportsman remembered where they had met. But the extremely unethical guy replied that he still didn't understand who he was dealing with. His answer incredibly infuriated the one who sacrificed everything for his own revenge. He furiously shouted that he should remember him, since he was kicked off the team precisely because of the tyrant's actions. At the same moment, sudden surprise appeared on the former sportsman's face. Calming his emotions, he replied that he finally understood what he was talking about. As it turned out, they were previously on the same team. Despite all his efforts, Chun Jie could not live up to the expectations of his colleagues and was expelled. Approaching his opponent, Li Chan called him a crying guy that one day approached him and started complaining about being kicked off the team. Looking at the poor fellow with a cold gaze, he said that he had not changed a bit and remained a pathetic brat. Anger at the words he heard began to overwhelm the guy who was on the verge of death. Disagreeing with the words of the tyrant, he stated that he was no longer the same as before, since he had gained the power of the goddess Owl. At the same time, under the piercing gaze of his rival, he received a message from the system that the divine being watching him considered his pathetic servant worthless. This message was the last straw and the guy completely plunged into panic. All his atrocities were in vain, he realized that he had again become a minor character in the story of his competitor. Before Li Chang struck his final blow, Chun Jie received a message that he had failed to complete the sudden task and had failed the deity's expectations. In despair, all he could do was scream loudly. In the past, he had already been in a similar situation. After being kicked off the team, he watched as his former colleagues lifted the competition trophy. He was sincerely jealous of the one who raised this trophy above himself. It was the team leader, Li Chan Sung. Filled with hatred, the guy, even though his former leader's career was over, still followed him in order to fit in. At that moment, he walked through the gate and became one of the players. Because of his hatred towards Li Chang, he said goodbye to his life. In addition, the system continued to report that he was still awaiting punishment from the deity for non-compliance with the terms of the contract. Yung Chun Jie was punished for his crimes, and his executioner was the one he hated the most. According to the rules for using the brand, his vital energy began to dissipate. The players standing nearby watched as a powerful force began to emanate from Yung Chun Jie. All this energy was directed towards the most effective warrior in the dungeon. The system reported that it would take some time for this power to be absorbed. The surprised glances of the surviving soldiers were focused on the one who had been fighting alone all this time. All this energy was directed to the point on the guy's neck where a mysterious rune was drawn. As it turned out, Li Chang had prepared an advance for the battle with the enemy. While in the cave, using a knife made from a monster's bone, he branded the surviving girl. He explained that she is now the same carrier of energy as Yung Chun Jie. The guy was afraid that when he defeated their common enemy, the amount of strength might exceed all their expectations and the weak girl's body would not be able to withstand it. Therefore, he changed his strategy and drew a path rune nearby, which is capable of distributing energy between the two of them. The divine being watching Li Chang was worried about what was happening, so he advised him to wait until all the energy was absorbed, since it was different from his own existence force. The serpent entwining the world, observing the suffering of the guy, turned to him with the help of the system and said that being greedy is bad and sometimes you need to be able to refuse. In addition, the system reported that the deity was in admiration of the guy's knowledge of how to break a curse of this level. The serpent encouraged the idea of using the rune to ensure one's own safety. The guy was angry at the god's plan, 
he felt as if he had drunk a hundred-year-old elixir, but not of very good quality. At the same moment, he received a message from the system that the unnamed deity had realized his idea and was continuing to think about what the gift would be for such an interesting and fun show. The shadow god admitted that he was definitely being tested, but he couldn't even guess who managed to stage such a scene. The gift was chosen, the system began a countdown, during which the players began to lose vitality. Seeing this, Li Chang Sung realized what was happening. The unnamed god's solution was to sacrifice the rest in order to reward the winner with power. Watching this terrible sight, Li Cham was given a choice whether to agree with the proposal or not. The lieutenant sitting behind a small stone was terrified, the nightmare from the past was repeating itself again. He believed that if Chan Sung did not live up to the expectations of the gods, then it was hard to imagine what their anger would be. He believed that if the performance was not interesting enough, then the strongest fighter in the dungeon would disappear completely. But looking at Li Chang, he saw that there was not a single emotion in his eyes. Based on this, Pak decided that the winner of the dungeon decided to take all the life energy that was offered to him as a reward. The lieutenant feared that he had no reason to refuse the gifts of the gods, he had no doubt that this would happen. Despite his expectations, Li Chan Sung surprised everyone and refused the offer, after which the countdown was stopped. The divine being did not understand the guy's decision, he believed that magical power was a worthy reward. In his opinion, human life is a convenient means for gaining strength. In response, the guy said that he could not trust someone who hides his name. These words gave the lieutenant hope, his reaction to such insolence was positive. At first the divine being was confused but then made the excuse that he did not know that his name was hidden. By revealing his name, he let the player know that he was a great demon haunting the abyss. When the gloomy god found out that he was dealing with Mephistopheles, he was shocked. The deity saw the unusual reaction and asked if they knew each other. The guy screwed up, so as an excuse he replied that he was simply surprised by the terrifying phrase in the name of the deity. Remembering the experience of his past life, the gloomy god could confidently say that he was dealing with the strongest of the great demons. Mephistopheles is so powerful that even the goddess Tiamat would require training in order to fight him. He had heard that the great demon liked to be alone and was known for constantly hiding from the public. The great demon turned out to be quick-witted and replied that he believed that this was not the reason, but admitted that he did not care. He asked the player to say what he wanted as a reward for the performance. At the same moment, another divine being joined their communication, asking the demon to remove his hands from what belonged to her. The appearance of Pabel Sag greatly surprised the guy, because she protected him as if she were her own mother. He didn't know what to do, so he was glad to see her back. While conflict was brewing between the two deities, the system reported that the closure of the dungeon had begun to resume. The countdown has begun. When the guy started to return, he heard the girl scream. She ran towards him, while low-level monsters continued to chase her. Frightened, but grateful for the guy's action, the girl shyly asked him to leave his phone number. In response, Li Chan Sun threw a bone in her direction. The girl caught the object and wondered why her savior did this. The gloomy god explained that on the handle of this homemade knife there is an address where she can completely get rid of the divine mark. Before parting, he admitted that he was not yet good enough at creating them. After that, he suggested meeting again when a convenient opportunity presented itself. Having shared his knowledge, the guy decided not to wait for the girl and entered the rift himself. A bright light blinded the girl while the system showed a message that the dungeon was completely destroyed and the participant's mission was completed. When she woke up, the first thing she saw was the bright light of the sun, there was a lot of noise around her. Rising to her feet, she noticed a huge crowd of people around her. In front of her were several surviving dungeon participants, they were under the bright flashes of cameras. The journalists realized that the dungeon mission had been successfully completed, so they decided to contact their headquarters to publish a rare scoop. The student continued to think about the events that had recently occurred. 
At one point she was distracted. It was her parents. As soon as they learned about the appearance of missing people, they immediately went in search of their daughter. She was happy that she managed to survive despite all the difficulties. At that same moment, she remembered that she was able to survive only thanks to her comrade. After looking around, she couldn't find anyone like Lee Chan's son. The former esports player returned home first and managed to escape. In her hands was a trophy item from the dungeon, and it was the most valuable thing to her, since she received it from her savior. Towards evening, the gloomy god went out into the street in order to retire and enjoy the beautiful moon of his most beautiful time of the day. The system continued to work actively. It turned out that the snake entwining the world continued to watch him. He sent a message saying that it's good to have a busy life, but it's also good to enjoy the quiet night sky. Remembering his time in the underworld, the guy thought that he did not always stick to the pre-prepared plan, but was still able to complete the first part of his mission. His return turned out to be extremely successful. Li Chan Sung enjoyed being in his hometown. The next morning, Li Chan Sung went for a walk. He was accompanied by messages from the system. Pabby Slag continued to demonstrate her indignation. She was hostile against the gods interested in the player. In response to her impudent words, the serpent entwining the world laughed defiantly. Meanwhile, Mephistopheles ignored the communication of the other gods and continued to wait for an answer from Chan's son. Enjoying being at home, the guy did not want to be distracted by the bustle inside the system. To him, being able to attract the attention of two or three deities seemed like an incredible success. But during the clearing of the dungeon, he showed such a good performance that literally the entire audience became interested in him. This was probably the first time the dungeon had been so productive. Previously, no one could boast of such a rapid increase in strength, and the guy's experience was a mystery to everyone. The system began updating the data and prompted the player to choose a guardian god, which would grant him blessings and strength. He also received advice that he should choose someone who will be with him until his death. After this message, Pable Sag stated that she was the best option. Since the player has outstanding hunting skills, she promised him the role of the first arrow. The serpent entwining the world said that he is the same as Chansum, because they both crave power. He promised him the role of a wise and enlightened one, which is considered an extremely worthy reward for his strength. Meanwhile, the great demon Mephistopheles silently awaited the player's response, he promised the talented fighter the role of the final observer. Continuing his walk, the guy thought that Pablesag, Armungand and Mephistopheles could help him the most. Knowing their power, he no longer needed others as there would be no match for those three. Three minutes later, someone who could truly compete with the great gods appeared. It was the owl that pierced the twilight, and she showed him favor even after he destroyed her puppet. The guy recognized the real owner of that seal. It was Minerva. Minerva is a goddess who always fights for justice. He was not surprised that she was still interested in him. The guy assumed that she paid attention to him when he overcame the temptation of the seal to save others. Thanks to this, the cup found its balance and evil only slightly exceeded good. The gods continued to wait for the talented guy's answer that after the dungeon he returned to his home planet. The nine gods were eagerly waiting for Li Chan to choose his guardian. The system said that in the absence of one, he would not receive any blessing or power, which would make him significantly weaker than players of the same level. A few minutes later, the time to choose ran out. Looking at his interface, the guy received a message that he did not have a keeper. After that, he received a new achievement. The system called him an extraordinary person, which rejected all the offers of the gods. The number of angry gods who were tired of his endless greed began to grow. At the same time, the fame of his successes also increased, and his achievements reached 100,000 karma points. The guy understood that at this moment it was more difficult for him than before, when he was in danger of battle. The emergence of a new player could not but affect the World Players Freedom Council. Known as an association, it is an organization under the Security Bureau. 
It was created decades ago to effectively combat the suddenly appeared dungeons and gates that turn the Earth's ecosystem upside down. Sometimes it provides additional measures. For example, international status or the right to investigation. This applies only to the top, which controls the entire association. Inside this tower was a center for monitoring what was happening in the world. They were dissatisfied with the work of the press, which was engaged in their disclosure. They had access to various information, such as the appearance of new gaps. Some of them argued that excessive demonstration of the strength of association increases anxiety among the population. The woman in charge of internal affairs was extremely dissatisfied with their actions, stating that she had not been able to deal with the consequences for more than five days. According to her, she evacuated presidents, put police and military on guard, and taking leaders by the collar, enlisted the support of neighboring countries in case of an emergency. But in the meantime, the work of a third-class association agent named Cha Yian was questioned by the press, which is why panic among the population was rapidly growing. A guy watching information on the internet asked to come closer to the screen to look at the latest article. The press found out about her existence and began to wonder who was hiding under the identity of such a powerful person. With such a busy schedule, this news further damaged her morale. In a tired voice, she asked her colleague where information about her activities could have leaked. Since the guy was in no hurry to answer, the girl showed her strong fist and threatened him with violence. She recalled her words that it was worth carefully blocking all external contacts. The tired man replied that something like that was much easier said than done. On the other hand, he believed that this was just a loud headline and nothing was said about the person known as L. In addition, he drew attention to the news that a newcomer had recently appeared, cleared a second-rank dungeon and disappeared without a trace. He believed that no one would believe such nonsense. The girl was surprised by this behavior of the newly minted talent. She called the stranger a sinister and modest guy. She was angry about what was happening in the country, so she believed that they should contact him faster than the clans. But no matter how they tried, they could not find him even despite checking all the surveillance cameras in the city. The girl's indignation was interrupted quite suddenly. A colleague shouted that they had found a mysterious newcomer. The girl immediately asked where he was. In response, she was briefly and laconically told that he was at home. Cha Yi Woon was surprised by this answer, because he did not at all fit the work chain of command, but her ward replied that he simply quoted the man's words. Li Chang's son didn't lie, he was in the environment that he missed from the moment he became a shadow god. The whole house was filled with the smell of homemade food, which the guy had not eaten since he left Earth. Since he was transported back in time, his appearance did not seem strange. His mother was surprised by his appearance. His son's behavior seemed strange. Looking at the guy with his hood pulled up, she admitted that he looked terrible. In reality, he was simply hiding from the eyes of the clans and the association. In addition, he behaved extremely strangely only because for the first time in hundreds of years he smelled homemade food. He was on the verge of losing consciousness from such an incredible smell that he had not liked at all during his human life. At the same time, the obsessive dog continued to tug at his clothes. The guy picked him up, saying that the joy of meeting was mutual. While he was enjoying the meeting with his family, his mother finished preparing dinner. She invited her son to take a bath while she set the table. Li Chang thought that he was truly happy to return home after hundreds of years of living as a shadow god. The whole family was gathered at the table, but looking at them it was obvious that none of them were in the mood for a pleasant family conversation. Feeling enormous guilt for his wrongdoing, the guy thought that this situation was the reason why he did not want to come. The elder brother could not stand the tension and was the first to give up. His sister rose from the table with him. Li Chan's father's family has several joint companies, so while living in financial prosperity, they all had good positions and high status in society. The head inherited the hospital, so everyone knew their name. At the same time, his mother's family consisted of scientists who were either lawyers or diplomats. Saying goodbye to her children, 
the mother asked when they would return. The busy eldest son replied that it would be late as he had an operation scheduled for the evening. Elder brother Li Chan followed in his father's footsteps and became a physician, while elder sister excelled in music and received all kinds of awards and general recognition. The girl was also not sure that she would be able to return early, since she had a performance planned far outside the city. Li Chan Sung himself loved to compete since childhood, especially in games, so he was treated like an alien. He was not like the more successful children of the family. He was surprised by the family's reaction, because from their behavior it seemed that they absolutely did not care that the youngest son returned home a couple of days later in an incomprehensible form and with the smell of alcohol. While eating home-cooked food, he thought that his family was simply focused on good memories, and after hundreds of years he himself could no longer show similar emotions. While the guy was completely immersed in thought, his father could not stand it, and, after finishing dinner, asked why his youngest son continued to remain silent. Filled with regret for his past, the guy didn't know what to answer, so he silently looked at the table. His mother tried to calm her husband's ardor, but the determined head of the family asked her not to interfere. He turned to his youngest son and told him that when the Gemzo gates opened, his mother fainted from excitement. Everyone who could search for him was looking for him, as they said that he could have gotten inside, where it was very dangerous. His brother called all the hospitals in Seoul, worried that he was in intensive care, and his sister helped his mother look everywhere for him, so she could not go on a business trip abroad. Getting up from the table, he was indignant that a couple of days later his son returned under the guise of some homeless person and, as if nothing had happened, joined their family dinner. The father could not believe the arrogance and bad manners of his own son, who was so different from his successful brother and sister. Raising his tone, he declared that even the meanest children did not behave like him. He was unhappy with his son's lifestyle and said that if he wanted to continue causing problems for his family, he should leave home. The mother, alarmed by the tension, asked him to stop. She believed that her son was behaving this way only because he was sorry. She turned to Li Chan's son with a request to answer at least something to reassure her father, who was so worried about him. The head of the family did not wait for his son's answer and nervously walked towards the exit from the house, saying that he was in a hurry to go to work. The mother tried to stop him, but not knowing the solution to this situation, the man simply ignored her words. Li Chan noticed his father's tears and realized how much his family was suffering due to such a past. When leaving home, the father slammed the door loudly and did not even say goodbye to his wife. After that, the house became quiet. The mother spoke first, it was hard for her, but she still found the strength to say that when the father is angry, he does not watch his language. She was very worried about her son's condition, so she asked him not to take the family's behavior to heart. Having no other choice and not knowing what to answer, he simply agreed with his mother's words. It was only after he took a close look at his mother's face that he noticed that she had many wrinkles. His parents were getting old, and he was too careless and did not think about how his behavior affected their health. The guy admitted that all his life he was just waiting for his family to start taking an interest in his successes, but he didn't even think about being interested in them. Worried about his mother's morale, Li Chan asked her to return to the room, promising that he would clean the table himself. He was very sorry for his behavior, so he asked not to worry and said that he would be more careful in the future. When Li Chang's son returned to his room, he saw a reflection of what he was like in his previous life. There was trash everywhere, alcohol bottles had not been removed for weeks. Regretting his behavior, he couldn't believe it had happened. The situation was more serious than he expected. At the same time, he felt a little support. His faithful friend, the little dog, was not at all angry with everything that the youngest son of the family had done. Picking him up in his arms, he began to enjoy the comfort of home and promised himself that he would correct the situation. He didn't even suspect that he was targeted by the association. Their head, Cha Yian, was already in a hurry to the meeting. She was driving a new model of a sports car, 
there were less than a hundred of them in the country. Her colleague was simply shocked. He could not believe that with her pitiful salary, Yu Wum was able to buy her. The confident girl explained that she had many contracts, with the help of which she earned a fortune in advance. While the guy continued to be indignant, her thoughts were about how much she wanted to know what one of the most powerful players of their time looked like. She couldn't even imagine that this was a former esports player who returned home after another drinking session and began cleaning the room. The hard work was completed, but the system did not give him peace because the gods were watching him. Divine being Pablesag wondered what Li Chang would do next. She offered her help in improving hunting skills. In contrast, the serpent entwining the world reported that, like the player, he considers rest an important part of development. But Li Chang's son was not thinking about their reactions and messages, but about how difficult his family's reaction to the recent dinner was. Deeply concerned about the situation, he decided to show them that he had changed and was no longer an alcoholic and a slacker, because he had become a grown guy who minded his own business. He decided to focus on being a great player because he was sure that if he did, his family would start treating him better. In fact, he considered this start to be even better than he expected. He believed that he could start Plan B earlier than expected. First of all, he should have dealt with the pathetic monk who lived on earth. Before leaving the underworld, Li Chang asked the ruler who he should deal with first. The man replied that the answer was logical, the ruler of the earth should become his victim. Li Chang's son didn't yet know who he was talking about so he inquired with anticipation about the name of the monarch. Thanatos expressed his confidence that the gloomy god had known him for a long time. Hearing that we were talking about Tiger, the guy's expression changed dramatically. He was filled with rage towards this monarch and could no longer wait for the moment of long-awaited revenge. In his final moments as a shadow god, his divine trial included one of his greatest enemies. It was the tiger running away from trouble and Li Chan perfectly remembered the way he laughed, looking into his face. He knew that this monarch was cunning and it would not be so easy to catch him. In addition, he considered his enemy to be strong, like a tiger, the monarch easily catches his prey and has a bunch of minions. Looking at his phone, the guy clarified the information that the monarch founded his own clan on planet Earth. Moreover, on their website it was indicated that in a month they would begin recruiting new players. This organization had a very banal name the White Tiger Clan. The gloomy god knew that at the time when the first gates opened, many gods began to appear on earth. As a result, groups of the blessed and baptized were created, which is what clans are. He thought that the pitiful monarch began his journey by becoming the patron saint of the White Tiger Clan. The name was too lame which made the guy laugh. Only because he is a white tiger, he decided to call his followers by the same name. Analyzing the statistics, Li Chan learned that this was a huge clan with the first rank in all of Korea. The number of participants was simply incredible. Since he did not have enough strength to start a war, he decided to slowly cut off the enemy clan's resources without Tiger even noticing. Therefore, no matter what, he planned to complete all preparations in a month. Li Chang left the house to begin preparations. Before leaving, he warned his mother that he was going for a walk in the park by the river and promised that he would return soon. In order not to waste time, he used a taxi and quickly got to his destination. In fact, he was outside the city, in a forest in which there was no one. He thought that nothing should disturb him here while he completed some pending tasks. But before he could start cooking, he had to stop. An unusual feeling of heaviness in his lower abdomen reminded him of what life was like for an ordinary person on his planet. During his last meal, he got too caught up in his mom's incredible food, so he started thinking about getting rid of the excess with one of his techniques that he used inside the dungeon. On the other hand, he was already bored with such trifles, so he decided to use a long-forgotten familiar method. His body must have been in shock that after hundreds of years he decided to use the toilet again. The process inside is very familiar to us, and after relief, he began his task. 
It was too risky to be so close to the road, so the guy ran deep into the forest. Being on the mountainside, he decided that this place was secluded enough to begin. First of all, he opened his inventory and took out a captured dagger, which he used to make a small cut on himself for easy access to blood. With its help, he engraved his hand into the trees that surrounded him. The concealment rune used created a barrier around him. In this place, he didn't have to worry about being looked at by strangers. He was also concerned that his clothes would remain as neat as they had been before the walk. Having completed the preparation, Li Chan began the fun part. He accessed his system and opened his inventory to get the necessary upgrade items. They used spears and bones, small shields from the skull of a fire salamander, a fawn of a bloody mamba and other trophies that he was able to get in a recent dungeon. He didn't have time to use all the collected items earlier, but to be more precise, he couldn't even do it. In times of constant battle, he was too risky to subject his body to such stress. Fortunately, he has now restored his characteristics and was able to begin improving his abilities. First of all, he used the poisonous glands of the plague spider, which was the main boss of the recent dungeon. While absorbing this item, he remembered the words of the elders that using poison is the best way to summon fire. The wisdom of the first of the elders was contained in his experience. He said that pure fiery energy would fill the player's body, at the same time getting rid of poison and destroy evil. This is called purifying fire. Demonstrating his abilities, he noted that the purifying fire immediately destroys foreign substances that enter the body, burning them to ashes. Moreover, in practice, the stronger this foreign substance, the stronger it will burn. This was the only way to obtain the fire of the eight trigram bowl. The old man convinced the guy that there was no better way in the world to cleanse his body of accumulated garbage. Having gained enough fire, Li Chan decided to start with his heart. His body was pierced by an incredible amount of poison that began to burn, releasing unimaginable power. The newly used poisonous fang joined the battle inside his body and the system reported that the item had penetrated his heart. The poison spread quickly, and the previously activated lower rank poison resistance was too weak and its effect was not enough. The unimaginable pain and severe condition was so dangerous that the system advised the player to immediately get rid of the bloody mamba fang and begin detoxification. Despite such a dangerous effect, Li Chang continued to resist and soon acquired the poisonous snake gene, thanks to which he learned to produce a little bloody mamba venom. For this achievement, he was awarded another 50,000 karma. Despite the success, it was still not enough and the player's body reached a critical state. The system began to report that the burn claws of the fire tiger had penetrated his liver and intestines, from which the guy began to feel unimaginable pain. Goddess Pable Sag watched this carefully. She asked why he was doing this and whether he had anything that could help in such a dangerous situation. The serpent entwining the world was completely shocked that the guy discovered the hidden part. He added that the guy again had hidden aces up his sleeve. He was looking forward to the continuation of his story. Recognizing Li Chan's courage, the owl goddess communicated her favor and support to the system. Meanwhile, the condition only got worse. The burnt claws of the fiery tiger penetrated the guy's spleen and he was on the verge of death. Without fear of the consequences, the already badly injured Li Chan Sung continued to absorb the power of the captured items and this time the tonsils of the plague spider penetrated his lungs, thanks to which he was able to discover the hidden part of the reward. All five important organs of his body were filled with poison, while five different poisons began to suppress each other. Thanks to such unimaginable torment, the system began to notice that the status of the poison began to increase greatly. The poison resistance power of the lower rank was ineffective against such a threat, but the guy did not stop and continued to endure hellish pain. A fire began to ignite in his body. The system reported that if he did not immediately begin treatment, then he would definitely die. The gods advised him to stop this and began detoxification, as otherwise he would lose the abilities of his body and in return would become severely disabled. Li Chang's entire body was paralyzed, but at the same moment, 
he felt that the power of the inner fire had reached the desired power. The manna hidden within him began to turn into fire. At the same moment, his breath turned into fire, similar to the breath of a dragon. His fire awakened and began to rage, which is why he again managed to find the hidden part of the captured items. The fire began to rage even more, but Li Chang did not give up his ambitions. As a result, he was able to complete the preparation and the system congratulated him for successfully lighting the ancient sacred forgotten fire of the eight trigrams bull. The new ability instantly began the automatic restoration of his body, all blood and energy pathways were opened, and the organs of magical power began to regenerate. The guy was satisfied with the result, he received the attributes of fire and poison, as well as a barbecue of magical power. A new achievement called the Phoenix guaranteed him additional stat points, the skill of continuous purification and additional immunity to ten poisons, as well as poisonous blood, which is safe for the body. Opening the system window, he saw the new effects that he managed to obtain thanks to such hellish torment. Next, he planned to start getting weapons. His efforts began to bear fruit, but he could not even imagine what was happening inside his house in the meantime. Once at the player's house, association leader Cha Yi Wung was on guard while her colleague could barely hide his emotions of surprise. They were not the first to hear on the doorstep that the association really lives up to its name and is the slowest of the organizations that works with the issue of new players. These words belonged to one of the fighters of the famous clan. He was surprised that the association had arrived so quickly and greeted the agent, calling her by name. Cha Yian recognized the daring guy, this is Seo Jan Kwan, nicknamed the Sword of Wisdom, and he is the head of the Black Shamshir clan. Next to him was the second head of the White Tiger clan raid team. His name is Wu Yun Gun, and he is known as the Saber-Toothed Tiger. The impudent so began to laugh by saying that working for the state is an extremely unproductive thing. Biting her lip nervously, Cha Yi Wung thought that she had been too careless and made a terrible mistake. Despite such tense events inside his own home, Li Chang was in no hurry to return and went to the Sangso area, where the shoemaker's alley was located. On the way to his goal, he bought sugar-coated cheese sticks. The guy could not fully enjoy the food of his native planet, which he missed for several hundred years when he was the gloomy god of Arcadia. He thought that there was no difference between filling himself with magic and eating. Yet he was not here for street food, but to remind the world that the rumors about the shadow god were true and he was indeed the king of divine weapons. The lord of the underworld, Thanatos, knew about this. During a discussion of the plan, he mentioned that when his loyal subject returned to his home planet, he would need various weapons. He believed that he needed a blacksmith to make whatever the player required. Li Chang was skeptical of his words, doubting that there would be such a person on earth. The man answered mysteriously that he knew where he could be found. Despite the words of the guard of the abandoned shops, the guy was heading for the address that he received from the lord of the underworld. The man assured that they had been closed for more than five years, but this did not bother the player at all. He knew that here he would definitely be able to find the mysterious blacksmith named Oyezi. The guard did not lie and there was a secure lock with a large chain at the entrance to the long abandoned store. Although the weapon store had been closed for a long time, there were still valuable items inside and Li Chang felt their power. He managed to smell the divine fire, which meant that a high-level blast furnace was used here. He was very interested in this place, so he waited until the guard left and took an illegal action. The smell of good steel inside the store forced him to destroy the outer lock to get inside. After opening the store, he was convinced that he was right. In front of him were whole mountains of valuable items that he would need in battle. The system reported that Pablesag was surprised by the guy's knowledge of his own city. She spoke well of the emanating smell of metal inside the building. It was obvious that for the goddess of weapons, this place looked like heaven on planet Earth. The deity was in search of a good weapon. Pablesag was completely delighted with what was around the player. At the same time, Li Chang discovered an item of interest to him. 
When he picked up an old rusty sword, the goddess began to scold him for looking at such a strange and useless object. She asked him to drop the so-called strange thing and asked him to look at another weapon, but Li Chang was sure that he had found exactly what he was looking for. At the same moment, he heard footsteps and a low male voice that asked who burst into his presence. Looking around, the guy saw the silhouette of a tall man holding his large Doberman on a short leash. Looking at the stranger with long hair, he noticed his strange behavior and realized that the blacksmith was blind. While Li Chang's son was getting weapons, his mother received guests as expected in their home. In order to relax the situation a little, the woman brought fruit and offered a distraction. Her elegance and charisma greatly surprised everyone present. Even Cha Yu Wung and her colleague were delighted with how beautiful the actress was that she was the mother of the player they were interested in. The pleasant appearance of Li Chan's mother was interrupted by another impudent phrase from the clan fighter. He suggested that newcomers were in great demand in the association, which is why even their slow leader decided to hurry up with the meeting. The man arrogantly stated that the appearance of several members of their team at the same time did not make sense because they would not be able to get a promising player, being in such a difficult situation in terms of competition with a successful clan. The girl also thought that the clan members were behaving too unusually, because previously they were not even going to lift a finger in order to get a newcomer to the dungeon. She calmly replied that this time the situation was different, since we were talking about an outstanding newcomer. She knew very well who she was dealing with, because Seo Jankwan is the most recognizable face of the White Tiger Clan, the strongest organization of players in Korea. He is also the leader of the dungeon raid team and constantly wears a fake mustache because he thinks that all strong fighters have mustaches. Behind him stood a member of the Five Star Sword Clan. This organization was originally a branch of a large corporation, and then in a short period it turned into a huge clan. He is the head of the recruitment department, the tall man's name is Wu Yun Gun. Based on such company, she decided that the guy was an unusual, outstanding newcomer, so it was logical to assume that Li Chan Sung was hiding something. What infuriated her most was that they all came for only one person. She was sure that if one of them could not hire him, then they would definitely make sure that no one at all, including the association, got it. The pause in the conversation began to strain the situation. So Cha Yi Wun asked what brought such busy people to visit the newcomer. Jang Kwan replied that if he didn't come, then people would think he was a slacker. He was determined to get the young talent, so he asked the girl not to interfere in the affairs of their clan. At the same moment, the girl decided not to give in to the conflict, and stated that the player with the fake mustache had stolen their secrets, and was the first to start these competitions. In response, the man suggested that the agent's actions were an abuse of state power, but the girl with a strong character replied that he was wrong, while his actions could be regarded as interference in the work of the state. Their argument could go on forever and had a chance of escalating into a fight that could destroy the player's house. Mom intervened in their conflict and suggested that they both came to them in order to invite her son to the organization of Dungeon Warriors. Both recruiters simultaneously confirmed her assumption, after which they began to impose their opinion. The White Tiger Clan, the Wisdom Sword Clan, and the State Association began to compete by promoting the benefits of their own organizations. The actress, with incredible facial expressions, replied that she had heard these names and knew how diligent they were in terms of work. At the same time, she asked them not to rush, as she believed that her son should make his own decision. She believed that explaining such an opinion was a waste of time, so she decided to dwell on her own question. Showing their respect, both boisterous representatives of different organizations quieted down and began to listen carefully. The woman was concerned that the agents had mentioned recent events in which her son had spent the past five days in a dungeon. While searching for him, this was the worst scenario that she could imagine, so the mother decided to ask what happened inside that fault and what exactly her son was doing. Let's return to Li Chan's son. He had already started a conversation with the blacksmith, and the man was extremely surprised when he heard that the stranger wanted to make a weapon. He called the guy funny, 
because he believed that seeing his condition would change his mind. Oyezi asked if there were any guarantees that would allow him, as a blind person, to trust the stranger. At the same moment, the system began to display the opinion of the deities on the interface. Papal Sag believed that the blind man was right and the player should abandon such a crazy idea. She reported that the weapons in this place were probably not made by his hands. At the same moment, the serpent also joined the system. He was upset by how noisy the rival goddess was and asked her to shut up. The guy's silence turned out to be unpleasant for the blacksmith, so he went to the door of his office and declared that if the guy came to mock him, then their conversation was enough and he should leave. He said that the forge was closed for a long time, after which he asked his dog not to stop. The astute guy stopped remaining silent and replied that despite the blacksmith's speech about closing the forge, he noticed that his blast furnace was still working. In addition, he noticed that his calluses on his right hand look quite fresh and indicate that the man does not stop working hard on his products. The blacksmith did not like the stranger's impudent and confident speech and asked him to stop. But Lee Chong's son was persistent in achieving his goal, so he continued and suggested that Oh Yezi had some financial difficulties, so he advised him to take up work in order to prevent his dog from starving. The last phrase turned out to be too personal, so the man stopped and could not find the words to answer. To further interest the self-conscious blacksmith, the guy said that he would pay ten million won for each order completed. In addition, he promised that when the blacksmith was finished, he would give him another fifty million won for the quality of the weapon. If it turns out to be even better than he expected, then he will not mind giving an additional impressive bonus on top. Not to be idle, he proceeded to the financial issue and asked the blacksmith for his bank account number. Taking out his phone a few minutes later, he heard a voicemail from the bank saying that he had received a transfer of 10 million won from Lee Chang Sung. The confident son of a wealthy family and former esports player said that this is just an advance, and if this is not enough, then he is ready to pay more. Oh Yezi, sweating from the tense situation, was silent but after a minute of silence he quietly replied that he needed more. The guy was surprised, because this amount was quite impressive. The modest blind man felt awkward, but admitted that he needed another five million won to pay the rent. With a confident look, the guy began to bring himself closer to the goal and sent the money that the blacksmith asked for. The man was surprised by such generosity and began to say that they should discuss the order but at the same moment Li Chang interrupted him with his sudden phrase. He asked the blacksmith to call him boss, which made the blind man very surprised. The self-confident guy said that now the blacksmith is his debtor, while he himself is a creditor. Sitting confidently on the sofa of an abandoned store, he declared that as long as the blacksmith worked for him, he should address him as his boss. Yet his pride as a shadow god did not disappear even the moment he returned to his past. Oh, Yezi sat down opposite his new boss and began discussing the plan. To clarify the details, the man decided to make sure that the order was a five-meter whip, a long spear that would be assembled, five huge axes, one small one, four types of swords and a shield. This huge list was complemented by a bow and arrows and the guy also warned that in the future he might need armor. Having specified the order, the blacksmith could not believe his ears and immediately refused. In response to his words, Li Chang showed his determination and transferred 100 million won to his creditor's account, specifying what the materials were. He was ready to pay even more if necessary, but immediately warned that if O Yezi broke the contract, he would owe him three times as much. The blind man could not believe what was happening, he was afraid of responsibility, and the next transfer of money infuriated him. At the height of his emotions, he called Li Chan a man-man. The calm guy replied that he often hears this, but despite this, he always achieves his goals. To stop doubting the reality of these events, he asked why the guy trusted him so much, reminding him that this was their first meeting. Li Chan's son replied that they were really meeting for the first time and the circumstances were strange, since Oh Yezi at that moment was an unknown disabled person, but had incredible talent. He asked to abandon unnecessary details, 
believing that the blacksmith should not ask questions to his customer. He had in mind cooperation in the format of a profitable deal, when the blacksmith would silently fulfill the order, and he would pay well for the work. After listening to the customer, the contractor agreed to take on the work, but warned that creating such a weapon is a difficult process and time is short. He admitted that he had not worked with hardware for a long time, so he would have to spend some time getting used to it again. In addition, Li Chang had big requests, and he would need additional time to figure out how to implement them. After these words, he asked to pay attention to another problem. Li Chang thought that he had already decided all the intricacies of their cooperation, but another question took him by surprise. The guy asked what else was wrong so he could get to work. The man replied that to work with his blast furnace, he needed a special hammer, which he did not currently have. Hearing that the blacksmith had lost his hammer, the guy assumed that someone had stolen it. Remembering that event, the man's body began to shake. He admitted that his older brother, his father's former student, had stolen his hammer. As it turned out, after the death of his father, his brother joined the large clan, after which he stole the hammer, which was an integral part of their family business. Such an act was low and dirty, so Li Chang could not stand by. He asked which clan the blacksmith's brother had joined. The man answered briefly that it was called Hayoff. Despite the fact that he thought that this was enough, the guy only thoughtfully repeated the name, which made it clear that he did not know about its existence. Oyezi was very surprised by his reaction, so he added that this is one of the top ten organizations. Despite his words, Li Chang assured that he would get this hammer, after which he asked where the blacksmith's elder brother was. The man, frightened by the situation, replied that the boss should not make hasty decisions, because the place where his brother works is very dangerous. The guy rose to his feet and replied that the details of the task were not important to him. He described his plan quite simply. Li Chan was going to just finish everyone off without leaving any traces. Hearing these terrifying powers of the domineering man, the surprised man froze in place. He began to think that he had that same long-forgotten feeling that made him reach out to Li Chan. He didn't understand the origin of this opinion, but he felt that this man who became his boss would be able to overcome all obstacles and give him back his life's work. As a demonstration of his trust, he replied that his elder brother was in Chungriang Cave on Mount Banwa. This was a very rare case when the customer and the contractor swapped their roles. Li Chan Sung went to the suburbs of Seoul, where Mount Banwa is located. This place was fenced with defensive structures and from the very beginning it became clear that this place was protected no worse than a military base. The guy climbed the wall and began to analyze the situation. According to the blacksmith, his older brother is a member of the Hayoff clan. Li Chang believed that there was only one reason why Jean Dae Huan got to this place the discovery of a cave. While researching articles on forums, he learned that Hayoff was known for wanting to clear out the tomb's dungeon. Jean Dae Huan found this place to open the last room of the tomb. They needed a key, so they hired O Yezi's older brother. Looking at the high degree of protection of this base, the guy realized that this was a very valuable place and that a local trophy would probably be given a good reward. At the same moment, he noticed that the moon had already come out, which meant that he had deceived his mother and left home again without warning about the time of his return. In his defense, he wrote her a message saying that he was going to eat at the establishment and then go home. At the same moment, he decided to find out additional information about the enemy clan. As he expected, Hayoff is accused of selling drugs, human trafficking, kidnapping and ordering murders. Based on this information, he no longer doubted that among them there were only scum. He decided that in this case there would be nothing wrong if he destroyed everyone who came his way. Upon learning his intentions, the goddess known as the Owl encouraged his sense of justice. At the same moment, he was given a special advantage, he received the power of an indomitable spirit, which is the blessing of a deity. The effect was the strength of the mind and the iron will of the player. The guy thanked the goddess for her help, but thought it was a misunderstanding. The goddess behaved strangely, 
as she continued to offer him some advantage despite the fact that he had previously refused the eyes of penetration and the dagger with her power. As it turned out, she was simply looking forward to an interesting battle, so she decided to encourage the guy's efforts. In addition, other gods also began to monitor his actions. Li Chang began to think about his safety. He did not want to leave traces for other people, so he decided to hide his identity. To do this, he used Haho's laughing mask, which was also a weapon, because in addition to hiding his identity, it added 50 power points to him. The mask was activated, and the guy, not wanting to give his enemies an easy death, equipped himself with a dagger made from the fur of an ice-flying serpent. This item had the most suitable properties for starting a battle against enemies with a numerical advantage. The poor fellows noticed his attack only at the last moment, so they could not avoid it in any way. Their strength was not enough, so none of them could resist the stranger's ice magic. After the player immobilized the armed criminals of the Hayoff clan, he approached them to continue the extermination. Li Chang took out his captured dragon dagger in order to finish the job he started. A series of powerful cutting attacks destroyed the ice that bound the enemy's bodies. At the same time, the enemies received severe wounds, due to which they could no longer continue the battle. Despite successfully eliminating the enemy forces at the entrance to the cave, the guy was still not satisfied, as he believed that such scum should suffer even more. Approaching the enemies, he cut himself and began to use the poisonous blood skill. During its use the body began to produce icy poison, which further froze the bodies of the enemies. Due to the presence of ice poison in his blood, his dagger received a temporary enhancement. The guy did not expect that he would have to use his newly acquired strength in this battle, but he could not miss the moment of revenge on those who caused such enormous damage to his hometown. Addressing his dying enemies, he shared with them the news that he used not just ice poison, but enhanced blood poison, which is why the effect became much stronger. Without the strength to resist, the attackers began to beg him for mercy, but in response the guy simply recommended accepting his fate and not even trying to get rid of the poison. Watching this spectacle, the serpent entwining the world was simply delighted with the rage of the talented player. When the guy went inside, the system reported that he had entered a dungeon called Bessler's Tomb. Thanks to his mask, he gained invisibility, so other players could not find out using the system where exactly he was. Concerned about the safety of his boss, Oyezi lent him this item in order to prevent the customer from being ambushed. After thinking about the enemy's strategy, Li Chan Sung guessed that the blast furnace was most likely located somewhere in front of the boss so that the keys could be quickly made. He had the opportunity to receive a reward for the boss, but he understood that there were risks that would not allow him to achieve this goal without difficulty. At the same moment, the system reported that the guy had begun a mission to open the tomb and first he had to destroy the dungeon guards. The jewelry was in the last room where the owner of the tomb rests. The entire dungeon is divided into three large sections, and in each of them there are objects that protect the owner's peace from robbers. The guy remained in his place, which puzzled the gods watching him. But soon his behavior became clear, he felt the presence of a stranger, so he looked around and asked the stranger to show himself. No one answered him, while Pabel Sag began to assure that there was no one around. Li Chang's son was sure that he was not alone in this part of the dungeon. Having no other choice, he stated that if his unexpected guest did not show up, then he would contact another administrator. At the same moment, when Li Chang walked further, his old acquaintance appeared. Rabbit Harold, who could not miss the opportunity to work with a talented player, but tried to hide his presence until the end. He couldn't believe that an ordinary person could be so impatient and impudent. The dungeon administrator introduced himself and reported that he was in charge of this dungeon. At the same moment, the system showed a message that Pabel Sag was not satisfied with his appearance and was interested in what he forgot in the place where her future apostle was located. The cunning divine being was surprised by the rudeness of the goddess, so he replied that everyone had long known that he was here. In response to Pabel Sag's misunderstanding, 
The rabbit replied that his words were the absolute truth. After these words, the three deities simultaneously began to mock how stupid the daughter of the mother of dragons was. Pable Sag sighed heavily and declared that this was impossible, while Harold began to enjoy his small victory and humiliation of the pride of a strong deity. After the administrator fooled her, he turned to the guy and admitted that he had not used anything special to hide his presence. The guy didn't want to waste his time, so he seriously turned to the rabbit and asked him to stop chattering in vain. He wanted to know the purpose of his presence in the dungeon, where he went without informing the deities. Li Chang Seng assumed that Harold was here to complete another report. He turned out to be right, and this fact put the creature in an awkward position. The guy explained his knowledge by saying that the system mentioned this process during training. Despite his words, the rabbit did not stop worrying, since he had completely different information at his disposal. He knew that the reports contained information about the target that interested the gods. It was a detailed evaluation sheet from the administrative bureau, so the newcomer should not be aware of its existence. Still, the guy's knowledge turned out to be one of the details that he had to include in the report, so without wasting any time, he got to work, pointing out that Li Chan's son was more knowledgeable than the average rookie or even a ranker. Despite this behavior, the guy's reaction was insignificant, he arrogantly watched the administrator's actions. The recent events inside the dungeon were also something that was worth putting into the report. The excited rabbit wrote that the newcomer the heavens were talking about was too good at understanding the significance of the administrator's job and despite the fact that he tried to quietly pursue his goal, he could not avoid detection. After writing this text, Harold began to worry that he would lose trust, which would cause the right to record to be transferred to another administrator. Tears appeared on his face, he was confused, because he thought that he would not be allowed to get away with such a failure. Noticing the rabbit's strange behavior, Li Chan Sung approached him and promised that he would show interest in allowing him to continue to have the right to record his activities. The guy's sudden words delighted Harold. He couldn't believe his words and called this decision an incredible gift of fate. As it turned out, he was no less cunning than the administrator himself. Li Chan Sung stated that Harold should now do him a favor. The administrator was ready to do everything in his power. He even didn't mind addressing the issue of the newcomer's safety, but the guy said that he would talk about it later. The cryptic nature of the player's answer gave him reason to believe that agreeing to his terms was a bad idea in the first place. Noticing Harold's excitement, Li Chan Sung clarified that there would be nothing complicated in this service, he was going to tell the details before leaving the dungeon. The administrator responded with relief that he had no choice but to agree to the terms. In addition, he admitted that he would not be able to do what was not in his power and asked to be understanding about this. With a smile on his face, the guy replied that he should worry about it, after which he declared that the deal between them was concluded. After these words, a bond was formed between them and the system stated that if the participants broke the deal, then their mana blessing would disappear and they would no longer be able to use magical powers. Harold was simply shocked. He expected that their deal would be only in words, but as it turned out, the guy even knew about the existence of such system functions. He was confident that Li Chan Sung was not just a rookie, but rather a veteran. Having no other choice, Harold began to pursue the guy who began to manipulate his abilities. At the same moment, the system reported that the deity known as the Serpent was delighted that there was a player more cunning than himself. Meanwhile, in another part of the dungeon, the workers encountered another setback. The creation of keys was interrupted again, and he was forced to start the process again. Enraged, Raid Chief Hayoff hit the stone wall with all his might. The man was beside himself with anger. Li Jason began to scold his wards for the fact that they had screwed up too many times and still had not achieved the required result. He was afraid that they would be punished again, and at this rate they would make him a sacrifice for offering. Since another failure threatened his life, he ordered his wards to bring the blacksmith Jean Diwan to him. As it turned out, the guy was their hostage, he begged the fighters to spare him and relied with all his might so as not to meet with the head of the Hayoff raid department. 
Li Jiaishun continued to scold the poor guy for screwing up once again, which was why their players couldn't proceed to raid the boss. Jin Dehuan, O Yezu's disciple who stole the hammer, had no other option but to beg for mercy. He asked for a little more blood and promised that if he managed to get what he wanted, then he would definitely be able to finish making the keys in a short time. His request was perceived as insolence, and instead of the desired blood, he received a powerful kick to the face. The blacksmith could not finish his work, and the raid leader continued to beat him. The man stated that he gave him everything he asked for. The list included people, offerings, and even fire, but despite fulfilling all the conditions, O Yezi's disciple could not achieve the required result. Approaching the blacksmith, he asked why he should spare the one because of whom his own life was in the balance of death. The man replied that the holy fire he was given was used in the new dogma, which did not meet the requirements for crafting an item for the dungeon boss raid. Filled with anger, Li Jiaishun replied that it was not his fault. He started to think that trusting this guy was a mistake. Despite the raid leader's reaction, Jin Dae Huan continued to beg for his life and made excuses that he did not have enough time and blood. He begged for another chance and promised that he wouldn't let him down this time. Having no other choice, Jason clarified whether the blacksmith was really only asking for blood. Jean Daewon replied that he was in the second of the three stages of creating the keys, but the blood ran out earlier than he expected and because of this he did not have enough strength. The man replied that he would trust the blacksmith, but threatened that if he failed again, then he would destroy his family before his eyes. Having begun to resolve this problem, he turned to his wards and asked them to get the necessary items. At the same moment, the system reported that a new player had appeared in the dungeon and had joined the ranking of the strongest. The stranger's name alarmed him, because he believed that they were not expecting guests. Meanwhile, the rabbit continued to work hard on his report. He sent a letter to the administrative bureau saying that he considered Li Chan Sung to be a truly unique player, since many gods and constellations, including Pabel Sag, were interested in his personality. His special fighting abilities have been described as something extraordinary. Within a moment, Harold was distracted from his work and ran after the guy, as he saw that he had cleared the way. Rabbit couldn't believe his eyes that the newbie cleared two sections in less than thirty minutes. According to his observations, Li Chang Sung not only cut the huge rolling iron ball, but also got rid of all the arrows that were flying at him from different directions. The player seemed to remember the location and order of all the traps. Harold was surprised, because in his memory this dungeon could not be cleared more than four times, but it seemed that this player could do everything. While injured due to the player's quick progress through the dungeon, Harold continued to report. He had been an administrator for a long time, so he was confident that Lee Chan Sung was incredibly talented. He believed that his skills and character were ideal to become the favorite of the gods. He thought that the battle for him between the gods and constellations would soon become even tougher, since this player had exceptional abilities. Li Chang Sing attracted the attention of twelve constellations of twenty-eight mansions. At that very moment, he realized what was happening. Looking at the guy's decisive actions, he thought that he knew the feeling of observing such unimaginable power. The guy's unimaginable strength reminded him of a shadowy god. Having thought this detail over carefully, Harold admitted that some gods would not like to read such a report. Despite this, she named the player after the twilight of the gods, whose light spread so far and made the other gods frown. The guy's resemblance to the fallen deity will make the enemies of the defeated shadow god tremble in fear that the rabbit was not worried about this because he knew that his job was to report sincerity and transparency. The player himself did not pay attention to the work of the administrator and continued to go through various obstacles installed inside the dungeon. When he passed the corridor with traps, the system reported that the goddess Pabelsag smelled a terrible stench emanating from the following rooms. Li Chang's son understood what was going on. He could smell the blood that led him forward. An owl piercing the dusk warned him that evil energy was emanating from every corner of this cave. When he went inside the nearest room, 
he discovered the bodies of the dead players. The system reported that the goddess of justice was horrified by what she saw. She ordered the player to administer justice. Remembering the rumors that the clan was going to make the key to the boss's room with his own hands, the guy thought that these poor fellows had been sacrificed. At the same moment, he heard the dissatisfied cry of the players that they were leading another crowd of victims with them. They were so angry because the head of the department was furious about the lack of resources. To hasten their victims, the killers threatened them with slow and painful reprisals. While the bound people begged for mercy, the clan fighters discussed the recent disappearance of one of the victims. They were in a hurry because they were afraid that the head of the clan would replace the victim with one of them. Within a moment, one of the fighters was suddenly covered with a thick ball of ice, which was a consequence of the stranger's attack. Li Chan Sung continued to attack the villains, as a result of which they were all immobilized. Being defenseless against the power of the stranger, the clan members began to panic. But knowing all their crimes, for the sake of punishment, the guy did not spare anyone. He left only one fighter in order to get some information, but that guy turned out to be a rare daredevil and, despite the difference in strength, rushed to the attack. As expected, he was defeated with just one light swing of the dagger. Having wounded him in the shoulder, Li Chang approached to talk, but in response, the warrior began to be indignant at the stranger's insolence, saying that he would pay for attacking the powerful Hayoff clan. But just one look into the eyes of his opponent made him forget about the confident speech he had made. Li Chang's unwavering gaze made him clearly aware that this was a real predator. Realizing the gravity of the situation, the guy began to panic and beg for mercy. The shadow god was not here to play with small change. He knew full well that they were all guilty of the sins of the clan. He left this guy alive only so that he could tell him about what was happening inside, how many fighters there were, and how strong they were. The wounded Hayoff clan fighter immediately replied that there were only thirty people on the floor. Having heard this information, Li Chan assumed that we were talking about thirty fighters who were preparing the ritual. Looking at the statistics, he decided that he should only worry about the guy named Li Jason, because he had the highest level. The guy, scared to death, distracted him from his thoughts by saying that he had told everything he knew and was asking for mercy for it. Looking at the wounded and pitiful fighter, the shadow god's opinion did not change. He equipped himself with a dagger, a sharpened fong of a fiery tiger, and replied that he did not promise to spare him, but only to ask if he wanted to live. Another villain could not escape fair punishment. As it turned out, he was quite strong, because he became the victim that brought the player a new level. At the same moment, the system reported that the serpent appreciated the great joke and asked to stick to the same strategy. Even Mephistopheles himself was amused by the way Li Chang dealt with the enemy. Ignoring the endless amount of feedback, the guy activated one of the skills bestowed upon him by the Lord. This was a soul transfer, under the influence of which the bodies of destroyed opponents began to disappear from the dungeon. All this power began to be directed towards him, and traces of action began to evaporate. The frightened victims were exhausted and could not free themselves, for them, the actions of a brave stranger who made his way into the territory of a powerful organization were a mystery. Li Chang decided not to accompany the poor fellows because he had already saved their lives, which they could only dream of. The incredible amount of power of the stranger caused fear among the victims of the ritual. The two men assumed that a real ghost had appeared before them, since the guy did not at all look like the players they had encountered before. Moving further along the dungeon corridor, Li Chan's son saw a trio of criminals discussing the boss's order to capture him. Looking at the mission results, they could see his name, which after some thought reminded them of a famous retired professional sports player. Due to rumors that Li Chan Sung had become an alcoholic and stopped doing his main activity, the guys thought that he couldn't be a member of the dungeons either, so they assumed that it was someone else with the same name. While they were safely looking for the stranger who had broken into their territory, a predator was already watching them. Their collision was quick and ended with a powerful explosion from the attacker's attack. This noise alerted the head, 
and when he turned to the system to find out the number of people inside the dungeon, he saw that the sacrifice had not yet begun. The excited man did not understand what was happening, so he asked his charges why the work had stopped. Just a moment later, he received a message about the dungeon ranking update, which indicated that Li Chan's son had risen to 11th place in such a short period of time. Another minute later, he saw part of his team disappear and his enemy had risen to sixth place. The man began to panic, because Li Chan continued to quickly advance through the corridors and soon took third place. Seeing him in second place and the lack of data on the successes of the other fighters, it became obvious to him that the enemy was already close. Panicked by the dire situation, he heard a weakened voice behind him begging him to help. This was one of the strongest fighters of his squad. Seeing such a state of his ward, the man realized that the enemy was already nearby. He began to shout to him that he should get ready, but the assistant behaved inappropriately and only continued to beg for salvation. The next sight made him wince in horror. The guy's entire body began to be covered with runic signs, and as he died, he warned the leader that a ghost was approaching. Due to unimaginable pain, he began to scream as his body began to collapse. It became a real bomb, due to the explosion of which the leader of one of the departments of the Hayoff clan was thrown aside. The system began to report that his body was poisoned by corpse and acid poison. The burns began to spread and his stamina was rapidly declining, so he needed to quickly detoxify. Having taken out the medicinal drug, he decided to take it immediately as he was on the verge of death. But another explosion prevented him from doing this. The wary man saw the one who got rid of the entire dungeon raid team. The masked stranger broke through the fire and was rapidly approaching, and the system reported that his death was near. In a difficult situation, he could not dodge the attack, so he took out his sword from his inventory and managed to defend himself from the dagger. If you look from the outside, you will notice that this fighter was not just considered the strongest of his squad, he was noticeably larger than Li Chan and even in this state was able to block the blow. The man shouted that he would get rid of the stranger and began to swing his sword wildly. This was due to the fact that the poison deprived him of the ability to see clearly. Although Li Chan had prepared himself for close combat, he was surprised that his enemy could keep up with him even in such a difficult condition which indicated that he was not bad in battle. Leaning on the heavy two-handed sword, Li Jie Sin held his head, suffering from incredible pain. The system continued to report that his stamina was rapidly declining, which is why he should immediately begin detoxification. Watching the enemy's efforts, Li Chang could not believe that he was only at level 30, so he assumed that he was using some kind of amplifiers. While the enemy was looking for the antidote that fell from his hands during the second explosion, the guy thought about how surprising it was that such a peaceful but dangerous country continues to sacrifice people. Having been a shadow god for several hundred years, he forgot how greedy and cruel people can be. He felt that not everything was so simple in this dungeon. He originally came to this place to make a deal with O Yezi, but due to recent events, he became interested in unraveling the mysteries of this place. He understood that it was time to hurry, because reports of recent events quickly spread and soon reinforcements from the main headquarters of the Hayoff clan would come to the dungeon. He was not yet ready for such a large-scale war, so he did only what he could do. For example, he managed to save the victims. Leaving them, he did not want to waste time on helping so he only advised them to go to the safe room that was located next to them. He asked them to hide and not come out no matter what. Everything happened as he had planned, and defenseless people were already behind a secure door in a room where they would not hear the sounds of battle. The guy hoped that he clearly explained to them how to hide, because he didn't want them to get hurt or hear what would happen next. Time was running out, so as not to hesitate. Li Chan used additional points to strength and agility in order to make his task easier. Unexpectedly for Li Jie Xin, he did him a favor and threw in his direction the antidote that he had been trying so hard to find. The guy's strange act did not arouse any suspicion in the man and he decided to undergo treatment. 
but when he opened the jar, he saw that there were no more pills there. At the same moment, he saw a blurry silhouette that began to approach him. Li Chang was surprised at the enemy's naivety for falling for such a cheap trick. The angry man managed to react and swung his sword furiously. But due to his injuries, he could not keep up with the enemy, and Li Chan easily dodged. The guy in the mask began to launch a series of attacks that were aimed at the enemy's sword. The man could barely stand on his feet, but continued to resist. At one point, he lost his footing and missed a blow. He noticed that he could no longer keep up with his opponent. Enraged, he once again swung his hand to deliver a strong blow. At that very moment, Li Chan's son was ready to end their duel. Pabel Sag stated that she was enjoying the exciting battle, while the serpent declared the player to be the most cunning person on earth and said that he enjoyed watching the battle. Continuing to strike, he created incredible pressure that the wounded Li Jie Shin could not resist. The system reported that the mid rank dagger skill had reached the maximum level, causing the player to advance to the highest rank development. After unleashing a powerful series of blows, Li Chang paused before delivering the decisive blow. The last attack completely destroyed the enemy's huge and powerful weapon, and Jay Sin could not believe his eyes. Having gotten rid of his main problem in the form of the enemy's superior weapon, the player began to take revenge. He inflicted a series of cuts that his opponent was unable to avoid. All preparations were completed and Li Chang found himself behind his enemy. Swishing the blood from his sword, the guy demonstrated that the fight was over. Within a moment, his ability was activated and the poison that filled the enemy's body caused a powerful explosion. Near death, Li Jie Shin wanted to know why he became a victim of a stranger. Li Chang was surprised by this question and replied that it was very strange. Before he left, he told his dying enemy that if you take the lives of innocents, then you must be prepared for yours to be taken too. After these words, he again used soul transfer to get rid of the traces. The purgatory flame was activated and the system reported that Li Cha had successfully taken the soul of the player Li Jie Sung. Thanks to this, his stamina was restored and justice prevailed. The twilight piercing owl divine being was shocked by the player's righteousness but her words could only cause laughter from the former Twilight God. As a reward for an excellent show, she awarded him a privilege called Inner Peace. The system said that the one who possesses it does not hesitate in the face of chaos, but is proud of his wisdom and courage. The blessing type ability had the effects of supporting mental health and ongoing courage. The sudden gift from the goddess surprised the guy. He thought that they were making some kind of apostle out of him since over the past few days he had managed to gain an unbending spirit, and now also inner peace. This situation seemed ironic to him. When he existed as a shadowy god, he was considered eternally cruel and vicious. He was the one who was called a truly evil god. The gloomy god was hailed as a wise warrior god, but contrary to the terrifying rumors, he was still a slob. As word of the privilege spread, Papelsag became alarmed and jealous. To even out the blessings, she began rummaging through her treasure chest to see if she had a privilege she could give him. Meanwhile, the rankings were updated, and Li Chan finally reached the dungeon boss room. He didn't know whose face was depicted at the entrance, even though it was good to study the list of gods in his past life. While in front of the door, the guy received a message from the system that the door to this room was tightly closed. The clue was that the keys were hidden somewhere and needed to be found in order to get inside. Suddenly, he took out a spear made from the rib of a fiery mountain goat from his inventory. Despite his interest in the door, he threw it in a completely different direction without even looking. As it turned out, he sensed that someone was hiding behind one of the deity statues. It was the local blacksmith Jean De Huan. The wounded guy could not escape punishment. Approaching the owner of the stolen hammer, Li Chan called his comrade's former student a rat that hides in the corners. Raising the hammer, the guy understood the reason for the failures of this ridiculous blacksmith. This item is made from a meteor. It was visibly damaged due to the efforts of Jean Dehuan, 
who could not use its power since he was not the true owner. Despite the fact that the task was completed, Li Chang decided to linger to open the door that the fighters of the Hayoff clan had not been able to penetrate for years. He understood that he could not enter inside with the key, since he needed Oyezi to make it. But in fact, he already had a plan, so he believed that there was no need to make a key, because there was a better way. Looking behind him, he called the dungeon administrator. At the same moment, Harold was next to him and from his frightened face it was easy to notice the excitement before the next order. He already guessed what the conversation would be about, so he decided not to show it and worriedly asked why he was called during the creation of the report. The guy replied that the time had come to fulfill their agreement and ordered to immediately open the door leading to the boss's room. The rabbit decided to demonstrate calm even in such a tense situation, so he confidently replied that a newcomer could not know such a detail, but interfering with a mission in the dungeon is against the administrator's rules of action. But the guy didn't even want to listen to such words, so he asked to get down to business. He said that the administrator has enough power to bend these rules as he pleases. The surprised Harold did not know what to answer. In order to speed it up, Li Chan calmly said that the rabbit was free not to fulfill the terms of the contract, but in this case he would have to face the consequences. Sensing danger, Harold decided not to risk it and replied that he would do as he was told. Approaching the door, he began to use his power, saying that most likely he would be punished for such willfulness. He believed that it would be great if the top management limited themselves to just a fine. The stone door was open thanks to the authority of the administrator, and the gods began to laugh at how cunning and inventive the player they were interested in was. Harold was eager to see what lay ahead for the player. But when he saw the terrifying picture, he was scared to death. After what he saw, he decided not to interfere further and reported to the player that he had fulfilled his part of the contract. With a sly look, he suggested not to hesitate while he himself was thinking of running away as quickly as possible. Despite Harold's caution, the guy was not afraid to face the boss of this dungeon. When the door closed, the rabbit began to laugh slyly. The system announced the beginning of the final stage of clearing the dungeon, the player entered the boss room. Li Chang Sung found himself in front of a huge monster that had many eyes, indicating that it was a cultivator. Looking into the eyes of the enemy monster, the guy began to feel pressure, which gradually intensified. The dungeon master attempted to steal the player's body. The system recommended that the guy resist until the very end, after which he would have the opportunity to destroy the golden box on the altar. The boss's voice, with a terrifying scream, ordered the guy to obey and begin to worship. The system reported an increased danger, warning the guy that if he could not resist the curse, his body would be stolen. The player's brainwashing began, for which the hypnosis skill was activated. The boss's terrifying cry began to spread throughout the room. He asked how the stranger dared to try to disturb the peace of the king, and calling him a lowly creature, demanded to give up his flesh. Having run away from the range of the boss's technique, Harold stopped to catch his breath. Based on his experience, he could definitely tell that the battle would not be easy ironically saying that the boss room was quite simple. He laughed until he cried, mentioning the guy's task, who would have to protect his mind from the dead tomb master, of whom only his thoughts remained. From what he saw, he could confidently say that in life, the tomb master was an incredible spellcaster with very advanced hypnosis skills. Having opened the room, he was able to see the very thoughts of the huge Besla, after whom this dungeon was named. To relax, the rabbit began to dance and wonder out loud whether an ordinary beginner could withstand this power. It seemed to him that this was fate. He still could not come to terms with the fact that an ordinary mortal dared to play with him, manipulating his power. Turning to the player, he said goodbye to him, believing that he would never meet the so-called pathetic bastard again. But at the same moment, Harold began to receive messages from the system, which were quite unexpected. The player's unyielding spirit was activated and this blessing began to protect the guy's thoughts from outside intrusions. 
The second skill from the goddess of war called inner peace caused his mind's defenses to strengthen. At that moment, the rabbit realized that his hopes had been destroyed by the efforts of one of the deities. Within a moment, the system reported that the dungeon mission was completed, and the final ranking showed that Li Chan Sung had climbed to first place. The announcement of a reward for the most productive player caused the rabbit to panic. He could not believe that something impossible had become a reality. The entrance to the boss room began to collapse, and the system began counting down the closure of the dungeon. Looking inside, the rabbit understood how the player managed to win this unequal battle. The herald remembered that Li Chang became the keeper of the runes, thanks to which he could use abilities useful for battle. Seeing the guy with the trophy in his hands, he realized that he had underestimated him. The herald admitted defeat and continued to look at the guy, who left this dungeon in a moment. Having completed his task, the guy went to the Xiang Sedong area, where the shoemaker's alley is located. He reported to his blacksmith and handed him the item that had previously been stolen. Despite being reunited with his hammer, the boy was shocked by the state of his tool. Eating a tasty treat to restore his energy, the guy said that he had brought a hammer and now there should be nothing that would prevent the blacksmith from starting the production of the necessary weapons. Oh, Yezi agreed with the boss's words while the guy offered the dog some tasty treats that he bought on the way. The man decided to discuss another problem. He repeated the words that one month would not be enough. He made the excuse that he needed to get used to the hammer, since he had not used it for a long time, and he also planned to clean the furnace. Despite the blacksmith's words, Li Chang replied that he would give him a week. The man was confused, saying that just one crimp would take about two weeks. Hearing this, the guy changed his mind and again returned to the previous offer, saying that he would give him a month, and in addition, promised to pay triple the amount for the speed. Oh, yes, he couldn't find the words, so the guy said that he would take his silence as agreement. On his way out of the store, he grabbed one of the items lying around. From the first visit to this place, a rusty object attracted his attention. Assuming that it was on sale, the guy decided to pick it up. Judging by the blacksmith's reaction, this was not at all the speech he was ready to give. The man started shouting that his father had mentioned that this item had been passed down in their family from generation to generation, so it was not subject to sale. After his words, the guy transferred another hundred million won as an advance. He asked to accept this as payment for the restoration of the hammer, after which he asked whether such an amount was enough. A blind man was shocked when his empty bank account was replenished with a huge amount in just one day. Surprised by Li Chang's audacity, he couldn't understand what was going on in his head. Hearing the joyful sounds that came from his dog, he felt peace in his soul. Still, the recent events were the best that had happened in his life in the past few years. He was finally able to enter the blast furnace room to work like in the old days. His desire to work was so strong that he was ready to say goodbye to the past. Voicing his thoughts out loud, he said that he didn't know what was happening, but he would try to do everything right. Returning home, the guy thought about the conversation with the bishop. Even before meeting this guy, he had heard that O. Yezi was an excellent craftsman, but all contact with him was lost after he created a divine artifact for the Capricorn constellation. Li Chang Sung was surprised when he heard that this blacksmith was not originally a god, but a human, just like him before he became a shadow god. The Lord's words that O Yezi was too old to work were a mystery, so Thanatos set about clarifying the details. When they talked in the past, he said that O Yezi was originally a person's name, after which it passed down to his descendants. Capricorn, without even knowing it, immediately killed O Yezi after receiving his divine artifact. The constellation is still unaware that his successor is still alive. Based on this story, the guy understood that many of the skills of the legendary blacksmith had been lost, as a result of which the Yezi family suffered greatly. The guy was sure that one of those who carries the legacy of the first O Yezi is a man who can cope with his tasks. He heard that his father created incredible weapons that were considered one of a kind. Having finished his business, Li Chan went home, 
realizing that his mother had probably already begun to worry. Meanwhile, difficult times began in the Hayoff clan. Raid head Ko someone was panicked and broke out in a cold sweat the moment he learned that one player had managed to wipe out their entire team and complete the dungeon. He called on his charges to do everything to find this guy and take his trophy, the legendary Pedro Key, from him. He was beside himself with anger because he was afraid of responsibility. As it turned out, he was afraid of the true owners of the gates of Mount Banwa, because if they found out about what happened, then they would all end. They had to make a huge human sacrifice in order to obtain the necessary key, and therefore they entered into a secret contract. Fearing for his life, he ordered his soldiers to prepare their vehicles. The man was going to go to Mount Banwa to find at least some clues there. He could not believe that there was someone who single-handedly destroyed their entire team, cleared the dungeon, which they spent months trying to achieve without success, and even stole such an important key. He thought that he would not be able to avoid punishment from the White Tiger Clan, which most likely was the true customer. His greatest fear was that the news would reach Seo young one That inadequate man could easily kill his entire family because of such a mistake. Let's return to the events that took place in the house of a talented player. As expected, Seo young one did not retreat and was still inside, waiting for Lee Chan. During their boring time, he was distracted by his charge that he wanted to provide important information. The informant's words turned out to be something really important and unpleasant for one of the strongest fighters of the White Tiger Clan, because negative emotions instantly appeared on his face. He couldn't believe the unexpected situation, and most likely it was about the theft of Pedro's key. His rampage resulted in the release of a huge amount of power. The association agent did not understand what was going on. The competitor's sharp reaction made her think that he had won. The player's mother was simply shocked. For the first time in her life she saw such incredible power that came from a person. A representative of an organization interested in Li Chan immediately asked leader Seo to stop the chaos. Hearing his words, the man remembered that he was visiting. He instantly stopped using his technique and calmed down his ardor. Wu Yun Gun turned to his senior comrade with contempt, saying that he should not use the spirit of the evil tiger in the presence of civilians. Looking around, he remembered that being in the wrong place to demonstrate his character. Association assistant Cha Yi Woon decided to take advantage of the situation and stood up for the defenseless woman, which demonstrated the difference between the two organizations in terms of attitude towards people nearby. Despite his sudden rage, the player's mother looked very confident, which suited such an amazing actress. Her eyebrows lowered, indicating she was ambivalent about the mustachioed man who was trying to hire her son. In order not to strain the situation even further, he decided to leave the building, saying that it was already late and most likely Li Chang was not going home today. The assistant understood that her competitor could not give up so easily, so she suspected that something very important had happened. First of all, she asked the player's mother if everything was okay with her. The woman calmly replied that everything was fine. She recalled the rumors that awakened people seem to live in another world, so they do not always notice creatures as weak as herself next to them. Having seen the rampage of one of the leaders of the White Tiger Clan, she personally saw that this was so, so she assumed that her beloved youngest son might soon turn into something similar. Seo Yung Won was obviously a bad example for succession. Despite this, the woman decided to mention her son and described him as quite a rough guy who is good on the inside. She sincerely wished that he would no longer harm himself, but she knew that it would be difficult to avoid now. Looking at the remaining recruiters, she asked them to return home. While going down in the elevator, Wu Yun Gun said that thanks to leader Seo, the negotiations ended very poorly. On the other hand, he didn't realize that none of those present planned to return until they met the mysterious player in person. After these words, he asked what Miss Cha and Mr. Jean were planning to do. Remembering his niece, he thought that she would not forgive him if he could not get the amazing guy named Li Chang Sung. Addressing his friends in misfortune, he said that if they planned to stay in this building, then he would ask his secretary to bring them coffee. 
Jean happily agreed to this proposal and said that he wanted a macchiato. But at the same moment, Cha Yu Wung's superior assistant struck a warning blow, which meant that he should not cooperate with other organizations. It became known that Jean Siakti was a level 41 player, while his colleague was at level 62. Cha Yuyan asked Mr. Wu Yun not to worry and assured that they still had a lot of things to do, so they would have to leave the building and go back to the office. Jean tried to intervene, saying that they had already freed themselves, but the girl did not let him finish his remark and stopped his words with another well-aimed blow. The man accepted her answer, realizing that in this case they would see each other next time. The guys from the association said goodbye and began to walk towards the exit, while Wu Yun stayed put to wait for Li Chan Sung. Jean Siakti couldn't help but notice the strange expression on his colleague's face. He asked what happened, because he noticed her unexpected seriousness. Turning his attention to her phone in her hands, he realized that she had received bad news. To be in the know, the guy took out his phone and began checking the latest information that was available to their office. He was shocked when he saw a message with a red code. They were talking about the events on Mount Banwa, where people who were supposed to be sacrificed were found, which is why they were locked inside a cave. By that time, they had already been sent to the nearest police station, and the association workers began to prepare for collateral damage and were in dire need of help. Assistant Cha Yi Wung hurried her colleague. They were again rushing to the place where sudden and very exciting events took place. Meanwhile, Li Chang Sung, who was the only executor of clearing the cave inside Bangwa Mountain, was returning home. While on the street, he amusingly waved his newly acquired rusty sword that belonged to the Yezi family. Pabelsag, like a goddess known for her passion for weapons, grumbled that she did not understand the guy and the fact that he decided to take this strange thing with him. Despite her opinion, the guy could not believe that the item that was used as kindling in the mythical furnace was only suitable for such a purpose. He thought that there must be some kind of mistake here, because in his hands was a divine artifact called the Yuchan sword. He believed that if the evil dragon's crooked tooth and this sword were used correctly, no one from the game world would dare to come close to him. The Yuchan sword is one of the nine famous blades created by the first Oyezi, called the divine craftsman of the human race. This divine artifact had such unimaginable characteristics that the system could not accurately measure them and since the guy had not achieved the necessary requirements for use, he could not find out all the abilities and detailed information. As a true connoisseur of weapons, the shadow god knew that the nine famous blades that define O Yezi as an artisan were priceless items in the battle world. In fact, after one of the blades appeared in Arcadia, a fierce war began over it. He recalled that as a result of that bloody war, two empires and six kingdoms fell. It was hard to imagine one of these weapons being used to light a stove. The original owner of the Yuchan sword was an assassin, so people say that this blade absorbed the most blood. It is considered an evil sword, full of resentment and tenacity of its victims, but due to the fact that witnesses died, little is known about what this sword looked like before. It was also said that the first Oyezi was called the Divine Artisan because he hated seeing blood. The guy didn't know exactly who made this sword, the first O Yezi or his successor. Despite this, he noticed that all the distinctive patterns had been erased from the sword so that the blade was lost, leaving behind only a legend. Goddess Pabelsag still did not understand her favorite player, and continued to grumble that she did not understand why he was happy to hold such a strange thing in his hands. On the other hand, the divine creature owl, piercing the twilight, looked at his behavior with satisfaction. Having obtained one of the legendary blades, the guy said out loud that it would be nice to collect all nine artifacts if he had such a chance. He wasn't sure if he would encounter anything else of value during his journey, so he decided not to think about it as a real plan. At the same moment, he took out a small bone spear from his inventory. While alone, he noticed that someone was watching him. The stranger clearly underestimated him, so he was too safe. Without waiting to meet the one who was hiding nearby, Li Chang Sung launched an attack himself. The uninvited guest was somewhere in the park, 
which was located near the road that led to the player's house. His attack turned out to be a warning as he hit a tree. As it turned out, he was being followed by Wu Yun-gun. As a fighter with extensive battle experience, he was able to evade the unexpected attack. Addressing the player, he admitted that he was hiding his presence, but still expressed dissatisfaction due to the fact that the guy went too far at the moment when he carried out a surprise attack. At the same moment, Li Chang quickly closed the distance and was already holding his strongest melee weapon, the dragon dagger, in his hand. Seeing the guy's look, the man was amazed. He had never seen such a purposeful and daring guy that he was not afraid to go on the attack before he knew the stranger's abilities. The blade of the dagger was centimeters from the neck of the head of the department, so it was time for action. In order not to lose his life so easily, Wu Yun instantly turned to his inventory and took out a sword. The speed of an experienced swordsman was enough to defend himself in such a short period. He didn't expect to feel a lot of pressure, so he asked in surprise how the newcomer had such a high strength rating. The guy was not going to talk to the strange stranger, so he continued to attack. His speed and agility forced the experienced swordsman to go on defense, and while in the center, he continued to fend off the fast attacks of the close-range fighter. As one of the strongest members of his clan, he was surprised by the guy's agility, but judging his sword style, he described him as a rough and unconventional fighter. The talented player's aggressive style told him that the guy did not pay attention to the generally accepted concept of smooth handling of a weapon. As he fought off numerous series of attacks, he was sure that Li Chang had trained his skills in close combat, and his blade was sharpened for instant killing. Based on this experience of a short battle, he was sure that what was standing in front of him was not some novice, but an experienced fighter. Moreover, the guy's fighting style reminded him of the first-generation players who went through fire and water, learning the mechanics of dungeons in the most brutal way. He unexpectedly approached him to get to know him, but initially hoped that he would be able to evaluate his fighting skills. Despite a clear plan, everything went to ruin due to the fact that the man underestimated the newcomer. He had not felt such tension for a long time and understood that if he made a mistake— he would not be able to avoid shame. Remembering the words of his beloved niece, who with her appearance reminds us of the girl from the dungeon, he was afraid that he would receive harsh condemnation for his actions. But on the other hand, as a true sword master, he was simply obliged to continue this battle using his full strength. He understood that this was his only way to resist such an amazing and daring recruit. The system reported that Wu Yun-gun began to use the ability of his sword and 10,000 marks turned into arrows. Li Chan had expected such an attack. His close-range dagger fighting style allowed him to move incredibly quickly, which matched his agility and speed. A powerful attack from the head of the recruiting department for one of the strongest clans limited the radius available for a melee attack, but the talented newcomer saw the gap and was ready for a quick counterattack. At the most decisive moment, Wu Yun threw down his sword and declared that he was surrendering. The man abandoned the fight and raised his hands high in the air at the very moment when Li Chang was ready to strike the decisive blow. The guy was surprised and even angry because of the enemy's behavior. In a dissatisfied tone, he asked why the man stopped resisting. In fact, he refused to fight not because he was afraid of losing but because he almost lost control in a training match. Apologizing for his thoughtless attacks, he said that he simply wanted to evaluate the newcomer's skills. Li Chang was not very surprised. His attention was focused on the enemy's good weapon. The man bowed respectfully, after which he said that he had played a little too hard and therefore again apologizes for the misunderstanding. The guy did not understand what was happening since he initially suspected that it was his enemy who watched him leave the Banwa cave. Pabelsag, who was watching the battle, highly appreciated the man's behavior, so she set this man as an example for inheritance and looked forward to their new fight. The guy's impudent and disrespectful behavior hurt the man's pride a little, so he sharply reached into the inner pocket of his jacket. At the same moment, he took out his business card and held it close to the player's face which made Li Chang feel awkward. 
It indicated that standing in front of him was the head of the personnel department of the Five Star Sword Clan named Wu Yun-gun. With a pleasant and friendly smile on his face, he clarified that this was the reason for his sudden surveillance, since he loves to find new talented players for his clan of weapon masters. Recalling data from the internet, the guy remembered that the Swordsman clan was under the blessing of a deity named the Nameless Giant God. From his previous life, he knew that his real name was Apwin, and he was known as the God of Wealth who protects the storeroom of the house. For the first time during the conversation, Li Chang decided to give a clear answer. He admitted that he was not particularly pleased with such sudden actions, but asked to clarify how they knew who he was. The man was surprised that the guy was not yet aware of the fame he gained after completing the dungeon. He said that not only they, but also many clans were interested in getting the talented newcomer at their disposal. Li Chang underestimated the power of the clans and thought that the organizations began to take action much faster than he expected. At that moment, he realized that he should not look down on them, as the gods usually address mortal players. His thoughts were interrupted by Wu Yun's words that he would like to talk a little longer, but unfortunately, he believed that he had committed a real mortal sin for which he should receive some punishment. Most likely, it was about his conversation with his niece, and since the matter was important, he said goodbye to the guy, saying that he would contact him a little later. Heading to his car, he asked the guy not to be shy and stated that he could call using his business card at any time convenient for him. At the same time, the system reported the dissatisfaction of the goddess Pablesag, who grumbled because the player allowed a man to leave and suddenly started a fight with him. She stated that Li Chang, as the person who is aiming to become her apostle, cannot afford to lose in battle. Watching the system messages, the guy felt awkward because the serpent had joined them, which began to provoke Pablesag and brought her to the point where she began to offer him a duel. The daughter of the great goddess Tiamat nervously declared that she would not mind tasting snake soup prepared from the body of a defeated enemy. Stopping to pay attention to the ridiculous behavior of the gods, he thought that the man's face seemed familiar to him. He even suggested that he had crossed paths with him while he was in Arcadia. At that same moment, the realization came to him that this man was clearly not the only one who had begun to be attracted to the area of his house. The guy was worried that there might be unexpected guests in his house. He was afraid that his mother was worried about what was happening. At the same time, it is worth paying attention to the fact that there was blood on Wu Yun's palm. It's hard to understand its origin. Perhaps he wanted to use some kind of technique, or because of his interest in a good fight, he accidentally injured himself or used too much force. His body was trembling with excitement due to the recent battle and he himself was tense to the point that he could not hide his emotions. Upon returning to the house, the guy excitedly went to his mother to find out her condition, but the calm woman asked him to take his time and offered to wash his hands and have dinner. The caring woman did not want to pay attention to the sudden news, so she relaxed the situation by asking what dish she should cook. But Lee Chong could not be distracted, so he decided to start a serious conversation. He should have discussed what was happening with his mother in order to make sure that she was not worried about his new line of work. After a serious conversation, the guy returned to his room and began to remember the dialogue from the past. When he was in Arcadia, he had to meet someone similar to Wu Yun. The man was surprised that such a young fighter could have a face full of desire to kill his opponent. Li Chan, as a daring and hot-tempered guy, did not understand what was wrong with his calm and talkative opponent, he invited him to leave if he did not want to lose insignificantly in the battle. The man noticed that the young warrior had a very lousy character, and in response to these words, Li Chan asked him not to talk nonsense and shut up, despite his mood. The mysterious warrior was not against continuing the battle, he wanted to talk only after the daring gloomy god received a couple of blows from him. Li Chan could not forget the smile of that daredevil with a noticeable scar on his face and began to compare his behavior with the swordsman Wu Yun-gun, with whom he had recently had to fight a short duel. The following events take us forward a month. On the morning of that day he woke up from a phone message. 
The reminder said that he had scheduled an interview with the White Tiger Clan. The deadline has come for the fulfillment of his order from the heir of the legendary blacksmith. He decided it was time to get real. In the building where the White Tiger Clan was located, a festive ceremony began in honor of the beginning of their interview with the newcomers. The candidates warmed up and even trained with dumbbells in order to show themselves in all their glory. One of the representatives of the White Tiger Clan measured the characteristics of the candidates. He turned to the participants and said that first they needed to measure the amount of magical power, for which they should place their hand on the device that was next to him. The moment Li Chang reached this stage, it became obvious that his amount of magical energy was incomparably greater than that of the other candidates. The device could not withstand such an amazing amount of power and simply exploded, which attracted the attention of everyone present. An unfamiliar guy in a hood stood calmly at the very epicenter of noisy events. The white Tiger Clan squad member was shocked. The small robot stated that the measurement was impossible. All eyes turned to the young man, who could have caused this explosion. Some people were surprised and thought it was just a coincidence. More experienced fighters suspected that this device simply could not withstand the incredible pressure of a newbie unfamiliar to them. One of the candidates, whose face was covered, paid attention to Li Chang and remembered him as his main competitor. The man did not suspect that his idea was hopeless, so he said the guy's name out loud and asked him to try again to take the measurement. After hearing his name, some players began to think about why it seemed familiar to them. After some thought, they began to remember that we were talking about the same former sports player who, during his career, had created an ambiguous impression about himself. The girl recognized the guy, and despite his notoriety, she admired his achievements and loudly shouted his nickname Tyrant. Her behavior put the guy in an awkward position, because he deliberately put on a hoodie in the hope of saving himself from such attention. The guy admitted that it was too presumptuous. While the crowd was discussing the fact that the guy had left esports and become an alcoholic, one of the players with long blue hair and a spear behind his back continued to watch closely. Some guys thought that Li Chan was not worthy of such attention, especially from girls. They thought he was pale and looked like a nerd, while the opposite sex should be attracted to people like them. A sincere fan of Tyrant said that they should not talk about appearance when they look like two squids. While the girl enjoyed the opportunity to be close to her idol, her comrades did not understand the cyber sportsman's motives, as they believed that he had retired and was no longer going to appear in public. Within a few minutes, a more powerful and modern device was able to produce results. Everyone was shocked, because the newcomer was already level 25 and had an exorbitant level of magical power. At the same time, one of the most interesting candidates was wary. From the very beginning he saw a worthy competitor in the guy in the hoodie, but did not expect that he would be so strong in terms of characteristics. While the confident Li Chang Sung stood calmly in front of the device for measuring magical power, the entire recruiting team began to panic, because they believed that they would not be able to cope with their job. To clarify their actions, they first decided to contact the head of the section, but realizing the importance of the matter, they called the head of the department. Meanwhile, the situation in the second raid team was very tense. The news, which was very unexpected for society, began a heated discussion on the internet. The man was surprised that big scandals that had previously been hushed up began to emerge. The recent murder of Go Sung Won, the head of the raid department of the Hayoff organization, was no exception, because he was unable to complete the task from so. The prosecutors, in cooperation with the association, were captured, and searches of the department's headquarters began. The sacrifice of people for the sacrifice inside Bama Mountain appears to have been happening for the past seven years. A huge number of journalists gathered at the association's press conference to hear speculation about what caused this terrible tragedy. Chai Yun, known as the Steel Witch of the Association, cracked down on high-ranking officials the White Tiger Clan began a large-scale war against the leaders of this world, after which the clan's research on the crimes of high-ranking officials began to be published. 
Looking at the news, the man with the pathetic fake mustache said that the issue of the recent incident had been resolved in the best way for him. Most of the details of the case were classified, but information about the person who participated in closing the dungeon was able to come out. Due to this, people appeared who wanted to show their gratitude to the so-called masked hero Haho. However, all the clues regarding this mysterious hero had yet to be discovered. After learning about this guy, Seo Yung won understood that he was the only one responsible for the fact that his plan was ruined. He had to find the mysterious stranger, since he suspected that this was the man who stole Pedro's key, which was being fiercely hunted by the White Tiger Clan. Suddenly for him, the calm rest on the sofa was interrupted by the opening of the door. A member of the candidate selection team came inside, he excitedly turned to the head, and announced that they had a newcomer with incredible abilities. The man did not want to be distracted, so he replied that during each recruitment there are those who have talent. But his ward replied that this was an emergency, and on this occasion, Director Oh and Director Kim immediately went to the territory. Seo Yung Won didn't understand what they were talking about, so he asked why they would show up for a routine event. The ward said that we are talking about Lee Chan Sunday. The man thought for a moment, realizing that this name was familiar to him. The guy clarified that we are talking about the same newcomer whom the head of the department was waiting for in his own house a month ago, along with the Black Sem Zero and the Witch of Steel. Hearing that we were talking about a guy from the Jamsel Gate, the man changed his attitude to the situation and replied that he wanted to recruit him, but because of the incident with failure, Hayoff was distracted and completely forgot about the newcomer. Intrigued, Seo Yung Won responded to his words with a broad smile of anticipation and asked to share the result. The ward replied that Li Chang was at the top among the newcomers among all the tests and besides that, his rank was equal to the level of 3S with 3 pluses. The interesting man soared to the skies, a real fire appeared in his eyes, the tiger shouted that they were immediately going to the casting, because he had to pick up a talented newcomer before anyone else coveted it. Let's go back to examination area see where Li Chan Sung was. The news of the revelation of the identity of one of the most mysterious players of recent times quickly spread through the media. The sites published an article about the incredible resurgence of the former esports player known as Tirana. He was a rising star, the first triple S ranked guy in Korea in the past 15 years, which appeared quite suddenly. The internet described his appearance as a return to prominence in the White Tiger Clan's qualifying exams, where he, as if laughing in the face of a tornado of malicious rumors, forced the competitors to accept defeat. The public was discussing his appearance. There was no need to hide his identity, so the guy took off his hood. It was hard not to recognize the face of the e-sportsman known as Tyrant. He again found himself in the spotlight, even though he initially did not want it. This seemed unfair to some ordinary visitors, since they believed that Li Chang was already born with a golden spoon in his mouth, after which he also received such a rare and incredible awakening as a player. Many players also showed their dissatisfaction. They were beside themselves with anger due to the fact that the guy came at the exact moment when they were almost finished with the exam. Some guys failed once again, which is why they were afraid that the appearance of such a talented guy would ruin their whole life. Observing the mixed reaction of the public and the obvious envy of the other players, the guy was not very happy. At the same time, the system relayed a message from Pablesag. The goddess was incredibly proud of herself due to the unimaginable amount of attention focused on her favorite player. She thought he was talented since she had her eye on him since the beginning of the dungeon. Looking around those present, the observant and cautious guy noticed two suspicious individuals in burgundy capes who were among the empty seats of one of the stadium stands. Taking a closer look, he noticed something interesting. He remembered that these capes were very familiar, and at the same moment he saw a large amount of magical energy that began to spread from strangers. The system reported that a divine creature called a tiger, which got into trouble, began to study it in detail. It was obvious that we were talking about his sworn enemy. Seeing the man in front of him who had mocked him before losing his divine title, he became impatient to take revenge. 
One of the workers at the recruit reception center said that the test was about to begin. From the look on the guy's face, one could confidently say that he was serious. He had even prepared in advance, since he took with him a case that probably contained runes prepared for the battle. The cunning serpent also observed these events. He assumed that the cunning guy had prepared a plan. The White Tiger Clan representative began to explain the task and said that the test task was to hunt monsters. The guy asked what interesting things they could offer. The man with glasses replied that they would summon any monster he wanted to fight, from a red one to a two-headed orc. The guy asked for the most serious opponent. The excited man replied that their strongest monster was the drake. Without listening to his proposal to the end, the guy politely and calmly asked to call him. At that moment, when one of the clan workers was surprised, the entire audience was in complete shock. The White Tiger clan could not refuse his request, because these were the rules for conducting the exam. A portal formed in the air from which a monster was supposed to appear. The previously mentioned drake turned out to be a monster of incredible size that radiated a terrifying amount of magical power. The bloodthirsty beast, set on the hunt, was in front of what seemed at first glance to be an ordinary mortal guy who had an unwavering gaze and remained calm in the face of the enemy. When the guy found himself in the face of an exam monster, he received a message from the system that the deity at the head of the White Tiger Clan wanted to test the newcomer's abilities. For the first time in their lives, the recruits felt such excitement, they were shocked by the level of danger and were afraid that they themselves might suffer during the attacks of such a terrifying monster. The leader of the organization watching the guy was still as arrogant as when he laughed at the shadowy god. The system stated that the tiger was looking at the player with suspicion due to his immobility. Moreover, he was convinced that Li Chang's son had overestimated himself, and this battle would be his last. The arrogance of the gods was a common thing for the guy, so he did not pay attention to it and simply focused on his goal. His eyes were filled with the desire to destroy his enemies. At that very moment, he couldn't help but remember his main motivation. It was about what he saw before he was stripped of his divine title. That same arrogant laughter of the tiger in his last moments before the court's decision. The hopelessness of the situation only increased the anger of the shadowy god, who could not avoid the false trial. All this time he accumulated his hatred for his sworn enemy. The long-awaited moment was approaching, a gloating grin and murderous gaze demonstrated his determination. He thought that if the tiger wanted to see real strength, then he would definitely satisfy his expectations. The battle began with the movement of the most powerful monster of the organization, which as usual considered the guy in front of him to be an ordinary prey, another guy who overestimated his capabilities. The monster was eager to attack but the approach of its terrifying power did not at all alarm the guy with aces in his pocket. It's time to use what he brought with him. The guy beautifully threw his object up, preparing for a retaliatory strike. As it turned out, it was not a case with previously prepared runes at all. He got it from Oyezi's workshop, it was a product that he had been making for this month. Li Chang was surprised that when he visited his shop, he saw him there. In addition, the guy noticed that the blacksmith looked very tired. The man looked exhausted. He replied that it was not worth mentioning whose fault he had brought himself to such a state. Still, it was not easy for a man who had not practiced his skills for many years to complete such a huge order in short lines. The guy asked where the item he was interested in was located, after which the man handed him the case. In contrast to the thin and emaciated man, his Doberman had undergone an incredible transformation over the past month, and from the look in his eyes one could understand that he felt that the impudent stranger had the main influence on his diet. The calm boss inquired about the quality. The unexpected question infuriated the man, and he invited him to take a look at what he was producing without rest. Apparently, it was the previously mentioned spear. Along with him was a mysterious bracelet which the guy immediately put on his left hand. Pabel Sag instantly reacted to this item. The system reported that she opened her dragon eyes wide in surprise and announced that there was an exceptional weapon in front of them. The inventory began to update. The unnamed double spear was an infantry type, 
its attack power was equal to 200 points, and its effects included cross damage and increased blessings. The artifact belonged entirely to the guy, so if it is transferred to others, its effects will disappear. The creator didn't give him a name, so the system suggested the guy do it himself. Swinging the spear, the guy tried to feel its balance. The system noted his high level of mastery of a spear, while Pable Sag was shocked by such unrealistic skills in wielding various weapons. She was also amazed at how a blind mortal could create an incredible item. Oh, Yezzy stood opposite the guy. He couldn't watch him check the weapon due to his blindness, but he heard fast movements and felt the air cutting around him. This was the result of a month of his work, and he hoped that there would be no questions about quality. Having released the weapon, the public began to speculate that Li Chan was in fact the spearman. The guy was ready to start the battle, the huge face of the monster was approaching him at high speed. The audience watched in alarm, everyone was in such shock that they watched the fight with their mouths open. The monster's attack raised a lot of dust, causing some to speculate that the former esports player's wild attempt to wow the public had failed. But after a moment, the monster's head rose sharply, and in its eyes were parts of the spear that the talented newcomer was using. The rest of the candidates were shocked, they did not have time to notice how their competitor pulled off such an incredible trick that it caused irreparable damage to the strongest monster of the White Tiger Clan. The tiger watching the battle was wary of what had happened. No one expected such a performance from Tyrant. The leader of Team One of the White Tiger Clan, Park Sang Ho, watched with delight the actions of the newcomer. He noticed that Li Chan had agility that was not typical of his level. As he watched the battle continue, he could confidently say that his accuracy also exceeded all expectations. With a satisfied smile and a purposeful look, he promised himself that he would get such a fighter into his team at any cost. Meanwhile, the guy began to use his second weapon, which he placed on the wrist of his left hand. It was an unnamed nine-section whip created by Yezi's heir. This artifact did not yet have a name, so the system, not paying attention to the battle, offered to choose a name for it. The spectators were puzzled. The clan representatives realized that the guy was using an incredible weapon, which only at first glance could seem like an ordinary spear. Using magical power in his whip, the guy was able to grab the spear that had previously pierced the monster's body. Thanks to this tactic, he could return his weapon at any time, which consisted of two parts. The guy could not only fight at close and medium range, but also throw a spear and then return it back to his hands. Pulling the whip, he continued to put on an incredible performance. The guy literally mocked the monster, which was considered the strongest in the range that the White Tiger organization had. The tyrant continued to show off the aces that were still hidden in his pocket. Grabbing two parts of the spear, he jumped up, ending up above the monster. Before the next blow, he combined his weapons and concentrated on the monster, which he could only feel the presence of the player, because he was blinded after his first attack. Showcasing the versatility of his spear, he swung hard, aiming for his opponent's head. A powerful blow pierced his durable body, causing incredible damage. After this attack, the monster began to growl in pain while Li Chang Sung jumped back. The battle took place at such a speed that Drake could not even keep track of the player. The next target of the guy with the mysterious spear was the monster's tail. It was difficult to follow his fast movements. Those present could not believe that the former esports player was able to acquire such an incredible weapon that is also very difficult to use. They couldn't believe that the guy in front of them was only level 25. All the effects applied to the enemy were golden, and the hits were critical, making people wonder if he was a mortal man like them. The guy's murderous look spoke of one thing, he was at a level significantly superior to Drake. Starting the next stage of bullying the strongest monster of the White Tiger Clan, the guy activated the blood poison skill. The paralytic poison began to spread throughout Drake's body causing him to be unable to move and only suffer in pain. At one point, the system reported that he was completely paralyzed and, in addition, he began to die from severe bleeding, since it did not stop. 
the guy's look said that he was determined to end this battle. He put more force into the next blow to make it his last. The powerful spear attack was so fast that only experienced fighters of the White Tiger Clan could notice it. Together with the use of the effect, he achieved the destruction of the body of the immobilized monster, after which the system reported that Drake was completely destroyed. The guy's level continued to increase along with his spear technique skill. Pablesag was delighted with this performance. She praised the player, saying that his hunting skills were getting better day by day. Looking at his sworn enemy, the guy received a message from the system that the tiger, who was in trouble, was greatly impressed by his battle, he expressed his desire over a new fawn. Mr. Park was satisfied with such an incredible performance, he asked his ward to immediately bring the player to him. At the same moment, he felt the activation of a technique familiar to him from one of the members of the White Tiger Clan. He was furious because he didn't expect this to happen. The calmly Chan son was still in the center of the arena, but he felt that someone was approaching him. The desire to fight on the part of the stranger was enormous, but it was impossible to surprise the shadow god with something like that. Within a moment, there was a roar from the collision of two monsters, and the arena began to be filled with powerful magical power, which made the newcomer's legs begin to shake. After the destruction of Drake, the former East sportsman had to face the leader of the White Tiger Clan, Seo Janquan. Filled with the desire to fight, the man was delighted. He could not believe that the newcomer would not dodge the unexpected attack. Moreover, he was looking forward to a good fight due to the fact that Li Chang blocked his attack called Tiger Disaster, and even his Tiger Evil Spirit. The man shouted that the guy standing in front of him was even better than he expected. At the same moment, the guy with a cold and purposeful look felt disgust towards the enemy, so much so that the disgusting smell of the god had emanated from him, which filled the air in the arena. Seo Janquan, being extremely delighted, shouted that he liked this newcomer, after which he offered to serve him and promised that he would teach him well and give him the opportunity to reveal all his abilities. Continuing to throw blows that had to be blocked, he declared that he would teach him what a real tiger should be. At the same time, the guy was in a very awkward position, the enemy's strength was quite large, and he was thinking about whether he should counterattack this leader. He was afraid that this would attract even more attention from Haju, but on the other hand, he was thinking that he needed to take the trophy from the dark red mountain. At the same moment, they stopped at the words of Mr. Park, who stated that this was enough. Unexpectedly for the fighters, he delivered a powerful cutting blow which stopped the battle and took both players to a safer distance. Dissatisfied with this behavior of his colleague, he asked the leader of Park what he was trying to achieve. With a serious expression on his face, he shouted that compared to the uneducated leader of the second team, his attitude towards the elders was the same as always. After these words, a verbal spat began between the two leaders of the White Tiger Clan, in which they discussed manners of communication and what the player's choice should be. Real madness began in the arena. The guys were shocked that the leaders of the raid teams were on the verge of a fight just because they wanted to recruit a promising newcomer. At the same time, Team 3's leader Kong Sunwoo, known as Homotherium, as well as Team 4's leader Yu Hyun Jin, known as Dino Felix, also appeared. They had no choice but to get involved in this battle for the incredible newcomer. A real conflict began before the guy's eyes, the fault of which was his incredible strength and transcendental skill. With an expectant smile, he hoped that soon they would see real carnage between the fools he hated so much. Over time, the conflict between the leaders only continued to worsen, and it was unclear how all this could end. The newcomers and the public were in danger, because their battle at full strength could completely destroy the arena. Watching such a primitive resolution of the conflict, the guy thought that all those players who received such a strong blessing from the god Kaja should be exterminated. At the peak of the conflict, a voice that made the body begin to tremble seriously inquired about what kind of chaos the white tiger leaders had caused. Kaja's magical energy began to overflow the arena in incredible quantities. 
such a powerful pressure from the presence of a person with an incredible level of power was so overwhelming that even the clan leaders could not resist. It was clear that the jokes were over and their conflict was over. From such incredible pressure, even the strongest clan fighters began bleeding. In the center of the arena, the silhouette of a man with long hair appeared, to whom this terrifying power belonged. The executive director of the White Tiger Clan, Mr. O. Shinwan, came to put an end to the conflict between his colleagues. Li Chang's son was waiting to meet him. He was a little further away from the others, so he could resist the pressure of Haji's spirit. A man showed up to meet them, who was in second place after the god Kaju himself. Due to his approach, Li Chang Sung began to feel pressure, causing his nose to suddenly bleed. The goddess Pabel Sag, observing these events, reported that she sensed the enormous power of this mortal old man. Looking at this man, he realized that his rank was far superior to everyone else. Despite his combat experience, with the current level of cultivation, he could not see a single hole in his defense. No matter how many times he imagined their duel, he was never able to calculate his victory. Approaching his charges, the man asked how the clan leaders allowed themselves to fight in front of everyone present in order to get a recruit. Turning to Sango, he condemned his actions, saying that instead of joining his younger brother's quarrel, he should have reconciled them through his position. The appearance of the CEO made it clear to the men that their stupid jokes had reached their logical conclusion. Despite this, Seo Yung Won was looking forward to the moment when he would have the opportunity to embellish team leader Park's smug face. Addressing his colleagues, he urged them to leave, while at the same time thinking that he could not miss his chance at obtaining a rare recruit. Relaxing the release of his energy, the old man approached the young man to make sure that he was the very guy who was the cause of the commotion. He believed that if he took sides, then the division between the leaders would only increase so he decided to take it for himself. This turn of events was something shocking and too unexpected for the leaders. They could not believe that the old man could outplay them all. Together with the executive director, Li Chang went to his office. Mr. O oh suggested that the guy change his clothes since he was covered in blood. Observing this process, the system reported that the goddess Pabel Sag was drooling because of how strong his body looked. She screamed at all the other watching gods to get out, as she could not hide her jealousy. Looking around, the man noticed that the young man had an incredible body. He understood that this was a body that had been through a lot of battles, making his muscles look like they were made for battle, without anything extra. Despite his incredible experience, he admitted that he had never encountered such talent before. Based on this, he could not even imagine what a difficult life this young man lived. When the guy finished, Director O turned to him and said that he was already aware of the recent news. What he meant was that their patron god Kaju was interested in hiring the young man, so he admitted that in this case he should be frank. He asked what exactly the young man wanted, after which he suggested that his goal was money. The guy with a cold and purposeful look replied that he had so much money that he would not spend it in his entire life, so he added that he did not come to the White Tiger Clan for something trivial. After demonstrating his seriousness, he announced that he wanted to join their clan's strategic planning department. In addition, the guy clarified that he had previously heard that it was Director O who was responsible for his activities. He wondered if the man thought they would need to create connections with the authorities. The guy's daring and unexpected speech took the old man by surprise. In response, he began to laugh loudly, having no control over how much his enormous magical power spread. Hanja's spirit filled the room. Such a display of power had a noticeable effect on Li Chan's son's well-being. The guy with incredible skills, but still a weak level of development, admitted that just from this old man's laughter, his body was already shaking. With a piercing look, he turned to the guy, saying that, apparently, he would not be interested in joining the clan if it were not for his connections with the authorities. Despite the young man's strange motive, he was not against it, and said that in order to become a member of the White Tiger Clan, one must at least have at least the level of ambition that Li Chang demonstrated. He continued his speech by saying that the strategic planning department is, so to speak, 
the backbone that holds the head of the white tiger. In this case, if the guy really wants to get into the previously mentioned department, then he will have to prove that he is worthy of it. With anticipation of the answer, he asked how the guy would show everyone his worth. Without any doubt, the confident Lee Chang Sung replied that to prove his strength, he could break the record in the blackish red mountain range dungeon. He continued, explaining his option by saying that he had heard that all newcomers go through this array as interns. He wondered if breaking the existing record would be enough. Remaining calm, the man did not show his surprise and asked if the guy was sure that he really wanted to prove himself not in training, but in a rank dungeon. Without any delay, the guy confirmed his intentions. Hearing such a clear answer, the old man replied that in that case no one would dare to oppose such an option. Analyzing the old man's behavior, the guy could not understand the sincerity of such an answer. Based on his experience, he could guess that Director O was doubtful. In that case, he began to realize that there was something else he wanted. The answer seemed obvious, so the guy took action. Continuing the conversation, he caught the old man by surprise with the phrase that he was ready to completely clear the dungeon. The surprised old man turned to the guy with a smile on his face, after which he replied that it would be wonderful. He admitted that this place is quite old so he was already thinking about finding another training center. After the old man's answer, the guy began to think that there really was something interesting in that array. He believed that he had hit the weak point of Executive Director O. Continuing to prove his determination, the guy promised that he would close the doors to that place on his own. After hearing the opinion of the former sports player, the director replied that it was logical to believe that from now on they would have a lot to talk about. Satisfied with the result of the conversation, the guy calmly thanked the man for his answer, but made it clear that there was another speech that he would like to discuss. He said that he would like to use the clan's library before heading to the mountain range. The old man liked his words, because he always paid attention to those who are hunters of knowledge. He replied that the White Tiger Clan's library was considered the best in the world. He didn't want to oppose his desire for knowledge so he said that Li Chan Sung could use their library as he wished. Meanwhile, news was spreading online that the famous former esports player Tyrant had returned to the public eye, becoming one of the top recruits of the White Tiger Clan. Among the interesting materials were reviews from those who were in the same dungeon with him. Miss Plum, a little embarrassed, said that Uncle Chan Sung was the one who saved her when she was in danger. Second Lieutenant Park Haesung was also included in the interview, he admitted that he saw his actions live and was still in awe of his strength. After the guy left the office, Seo Yung won headed there. With tears in his eyes, the leader begged Director O to put the guy in his favor. He stated that Lee Chan's son was not some kind of game thing. He was sure that with a mentor like him, the guy would be able to reach the top of this world under the banner of the White Tiger Clan. The old man was surprised by the confidence of the young tiger and said that most likely it would not be about the peaks, but about burial pits. He stated that they were in a clan and if Seo jung Wan didn't watch his words, he would lose his position as team leader. The confused man tried to find out from the director why he continued to refuse him. The old man replied that the young man had volunteered to join the strategic planning department, and it became obvious to him that if he didn't get what he needed, he would simply leave. He could not send such a person to the second team. He suggested that the team leader wait a little. The man said that as soon as his training ends, he will become his pawn. Of course, he was going to schedule him on missions the way he wanted, so he didn't mind pairing him up with Seo Yung Wan more often. The answer turned out to be satisfactory, and the team leader began to pick the old man's brain about how much he loved him. The man said that he knew this would happen so he locked him in the place that Seo jung Wan hates the most. A few days later, the White Tiger Clan's Hope training camp began. News that Tyrant was preparing to independently write a new legend spread across the internet, because everyone was wondering how far the pride of a newly minted fighter with the rank of 3S with 3 pluses would go. The system reported that the guy entered the dungeon of a blackish red mountain range. His task was to completely cleanse this place. At that same moment, he noticed something strange. 
a silhouette appeared at the top of the mountain, emitting purple magical energy. It seems that Li Chan Sung has begun to understand what is happening. Meanwhile, from the bushes, someone was watching what the young talented player would do. The powerful monster attracted the attention of everyone who entered this complex dungeon. Before Li Chang Sung appeared, the White Tiger Clan fighters were unable to complete this mission. The guy was satisfied with this opportunity, since here he would be able to significantly increase his level in a short time. Looking at the flying monster, the guy was convinced that his goal was here. Since ancient times, the blackish red mountain range has been in a refracted state due to negative magical influences. The system reported that the guy's task is to find the culprit and eliminate him to return the ecosystem to its proper state. The mountain range is divided into eight zones. Each of them is inhabited by unique heteromorphic organisms that cannot be found in ordinary dungeons, which indicated that this place was quite dangerous. Looking at the territory, the guy understood that the name of the mountains fully corresponds to their appearance. Even the shadow god admitted that this place was terrifying. It reminded him of what he saw in Arcadia. At one point, the observant guy sensed the presence of a stranger. Some guy was following him not very carefully and cautiously, and upon meeting the young man's eyes, he realized that he had failed. The man was angry because he knew that he would have to indicate this in his report for which he could be reprimanded. After making sure that he was being followed, Li Chang realized that the White Tiger Clan had been eyeing the newcomer since his visit to the library. It was not clear to him what Executive Director O was trying to do with such actions. The first strangeness on the part of the organization appeared a few days ago in the library of the Ferocious Tiger. Looking at the size of this hall, the man remembered the words of Thanatos that this huge place was filled with knowledge important to the player. During their conversation before the mission to planet Earth began, it was said that Kaju was the one who caused trouble in the heavens. Having learned about this, the ruler inquired what tendencies the followers of this god would adhere to, having received his blessing. The guy suggested that most likely they would also form enemies in many places. Thanatos believed that the guy's answer was not complete enough and added that they would extort, exploit and make an exhibition out of them. He believed that they would take them as their trophy, declaring that this was a great deed that would elevate their patron above the world. Mentioning the library of the ferocious tiger, he said that he could make a list of quite useful items. Despite the bishop's expression of interest, the guy replied that he would do it himself. Thanatos asked if the guy was confident in his answer, despite the fact that his list would definitely include those items that the shadow god would like. Sighing, the guy agreed to listen to him. The man replied with interest that we would talk about the movement techniques of the Zodiac Sagittarius. Li Chang Sung could not even imagine that the White Tiger Clan had acquired such knowledge. The gloomy god knew that we were talking about a Sagittarius named Ruckwart and his six combat techniques, which seemed to allow him to become the light himself. It was about his incredible divine powers, embodied in the form of knowledge. The ruler sitting on the throne began to talk about what techniques the guy could gain access to. It was about a huge list that Li Chang had previously heard about. The interested player couldn't believe that Hanju had one of these techniques. He understood that the war had not yet begun, so the Sagittarius was not yet aware of this. The guy asked where the ruler got such information, the mysterious man simply ignored this question. Having not heard an answer, the guy assumed that they were talking about a shooting star. Looking at the incredible size of the library, the guy thought that finding information about the technique of the advancing step would be very difficult. The coming step is the divine ability that allowed Sagittarius to become a zodiac sign. Before he became a star, he was on the list of old stars and was known as God Ex Machina. The divine ability that he learned was obtained by stealing it from the treasures of the kingdom. It is known that he can capture a certain space in the blink of an eye and spread his deity there, which made it possible for him to become an absolute being. Li Chang thought that if he could get this, then he would be able to awaken his divinity after overcoming the limits, and no one could stop him. On the other hand, 
he did not overlook the risk that problems might arise during the implementation of such a plan. At the time of his search for the necessary knowledge, the system reported that the divine creature Tiger, in trouble, was studying him every step. One of Director O's wards was also inside the library. He said that Li Chang would only be able to use their library for a week. It was open 24 hours a day, so he was allowed to enter at any time and anywhere, with the exception of the first and second level libraries. In addition, the man noted that books cannot be taken outside the library. It was the same member of the White Tiger Clan who continued to spy on him even inside one of the most dangerous dungeons in their organization. With admiration, he asked if he could get an autograph from a famous former sports player for his girlfriend. This request had nothing to do with what the guy was thinking about, so he simply ignored the player. He thought that in order to avoid Director Owen Hanju, he had to be extremely careful. During their conversation with the Lord, Thanatos mentioned that after seeing the Kaju Exhibition Hall, the guy tried to repeat the skills of the one Horn tribe. He was sure that learning was a fun process in its own way. To make the task easier for himself, the guy turned to his skills as a player and activated the skill of an unshakable mind. After this, he turned to the power of peace of mind, which he received from one of the goddesses watching over him. While indoors for several days in a row, the player continued to learn valuable knowledge. The man watching him had no idea what Li Chan Sung was up to. He had to watch him all this time, and instead of something interesting, he only saw that the guy was actually reading. According to his observations, Li Chang does not select books according to any specific criterion. He noticed that he was interested in books on spear skill, as well as some knowledge about using a sword. His set also includes books on divine law and books on simple breathing techniques or deification. Despite the fact that this was quite important knowledge, the man noticed that Li Chang simply skimmed through it. Addressing his subordinate with an order, Director O asked him to closely monitor the new recruit and report anything that he considers suspicious. The ward of the executive director of the White Tiger Clan was in despair, because he did not know what he should tell the director after several days of spying on the target. Recalling the recent events, he thought that the result of the last days of observation and study was the conclusion that the reason why Chana Song locked himself in the library was because he wanted to expose himself to outsiders. He was surprised to think that talented people also did not neglect learning. It seemed to him that there was nothing more picturesque than the behavior of a recruit. Despite this, he mentally begged him with tears on his face to finally give up and return home. The guy's behavior did not allow him to have a decent rest and concentrate on his work, which put him into a state of depression. While the insufficiently experienced fighter of the White Tiger Clan tried to find at least some interesting detail, Li Chang continued to work. The system reported that he was in a state of concentration, he was completely focused on reading, so he was able to understand and remember all the contents of the books he studied. The rate of knowledge acquisition has only increased. Due to constant study of materials, his skills began to grow rapidly but the system reported that he was beginning to enter a state of insanity. She warned him that he had received too much information and that it was giving him a headache. Some of the knowledge was too much, and the question was whether he would be able to process it. But the confident guy continued to work and as a result, he got an achievement called Book Maniac, which added points to his stamina and intelligence effects. Pable Sag and the Serpent continued to watch his boring activities, the goddess stated that she was tired of his endless reading. Without being distracted by the system's messages, his understanding of the god Kaju continued to increase. As it turned out, the tiger himself, who got into trouble, watched him with pleasure. Having learned about this, the guy considered the behavior of his enemy stupid and naive. As it turned out, getting an offensive step was not his only goal. He was also interested in Kaju's karma. In other words, he was interested in his skill line. The Library of the Fierce Tiger has from the beginning been a place created by the White Tiger Clan to demonstrate the greatness of their patron, but for the clan's members it is also a sanctuary that provides the teachings of the Hanju. There are a large number of hidden books here that created him as a deity.
the guy needed to find them, collect pieces of knowledge and reunite them into the big picture. After this, he will be able to find out not only the abilities of Kaju, but will also be able to find out the weaknesses of the people behind him. Using the knowledge gained, a new type of skill was created. The system reported the process of combining skills. To defeat his longtime enemy, it was important for him to acquire the martial art of destruction of Haju. Having studied everything that interested him, the guy decided it was time to leave. By working with knowledge, he learned the limit of information he could obtain about destruction techniques in the third level library. This meant only one thing in order to obtain the rest of the knowledge for the skill combination, he needed to get to the first and second levels of the room. Despite spending several days in this place, he was unable to satisfy his interest. He examined this place lengthwise and reproached it three times, but did not find the offensive step technique. By the end of the allotted time for working with the library, there were about three hours left, so he thought that it would be a good idea to look around again. All the while, a calm mind stabilized his wavering concentration and his willpower continued to grow. I touched the books, he could know in advance what exactly is there. At one point, he felt a trembling from the realization that the necessary material was there. He was excited to advance the skill combination process. The guy was not entirely sure that the book with a strange wrapper about cooking contained knowledge about the divine technique he needed, but it was obvious that there was something remarkable in it. He turned it over and began to use a special way of reading to learn everything that the author wanted to convey to him. At one point he realized that this was different from what exactly he was looking for. Here was information about a man who had lost everything. The mysterious book told the story of a man who left behind a deep grudge. The author of these lines addresses the reader with the question of whether he knows the bitter feeling of betrayal by someone whom you treated like a brother. He meant that he personally knew this feeling, and it was given to him by a child named Munson. These words evoked memories for the guy, because he knew who he was talking about. This child's real name is Kam Jango. This is the man who created the White Tiger Clan with Director O. He is recognized as one of the nine greatest black tigers in the world, and in addition, he is the patron apostle of his clan. It is logical to assume that he is one of Kaju's trusted representatives, which has an incredible influence on the lives of ordinary mortals on planet Earth. The information that the author claims that their relationship was almost brotherly was also alarming. It was logical to assume that Kam Jango was somehow related to him. It is known that Khan Jango was almost the only mercenary whose name spread in the gaming world. He went through countless difficulties to create his own martial art. And Hudson, who was watching him, took him as his apostle. But if you believe this book, you can find out how everything really happened. This true story was narrated by Master Han Yu. He was Munson's mentor. In the next line, he clarified that he is no longer one. He trained his swordsmanship for a long time in order to become the successor of the Ilmen clan. But one day something happened that changed his plans for life. The master brought to him an apostle, with whom they had a big age difference. It was clear that he had high hopes for this young man. The master was losing his health day by day, so Hanyu treated this preacher like a brother, he taught him to hold a sword and trained him as his own student. At this time, he had to abandon his intentions to glorify his clan. He completely devoted himself to training his younger brother. All this time, he had no idea what thoughts were ripening in the quiet youth's head. He also did not know what their protective spirit Kaja thought about their clan. The author shared the idea that, quite expectedly, as the deity's name suggests, Kaju is a chaotic god who thrives on battle and fear. Based on this, he did not approve of the clan's choice to maintain peace and go into hiding for training. Of course, he could have found another apostle. The problem was that it was their clan that best implemented the Kaju doctrine. Defending his interests, Hanyu was forced to fight. His strength was something that took his little brother's breath away. But incredible sword skills were not something that a god couldn't handle. Yet, due to the loyalty of their clan, 
He could not simply choose another preacher, so he continued to show his teeth all the time. Han Yu was forced to resort to force. Defending his interests, his clan and his younger brother, he did not notice how he opened his back to the enemy. The young man was always silent and mysterious, despite this, he could not arouse suspicion in him. Revealing the details of this book, the guy understood that Kaju's power was sealed on purpose. He had heard about this before, because there was a time in history when his strength was deliberately reduced. This explained why such a war-obsessed spirit did not appear for almost a century. Li Chan theorized that this was related to the Omen clan, of which Kam Jango was a part. Ultimately, the more magnificent the fate of the tiger deity became, the more chaos was created in the world. The author of the book, named Han Yu, must have simply been against unnecessary bloodshed. Because of this, he chose Kam Jango over Nanya. The guy watching the player was alarmed by what was happening, he did not suspect that Li Chan was using a special method of reading ciphers, so he decided that he was only pretending to be smart and was now behaving extremely ridiculously. According to Han Yu's teacher, Munson's ambush must have been years in the making, since So was physically unable to hold a sword that day. As it turned out, his younger brother hounded him day after day to achieve results. Betrayal came from the side where he did not expect, slowly but surely, the guy achieved his goal. But he ultimately decided not to take his life, perhaps out of respect. The young apostle cut the veins in his lungs and blocked his magical center, trapping him in an underground cave in Ilman's domain. Munson's betrayal was the most difficult stage in the life of the book's author. Moreover, the divine spirit was no longer protecting him, but had sided with his younger brother. From that moment on, Kam Chong Ho became the new priest. Han Yu could only watch as his clan was built on the site of the former Ilmen clan. After the teacher ignored the master's instructions to never go out into the outside world, he became unable to do anything except observe the chaos happening around him. But at one moment something happened that was different from all previous monotonous events. The exhausted man wrote that he heard a voice. The guy didn't understand what was going on, but reading this book caused him great stress. He never had time to find out which voice was being discussed, because the code inside this book had ended. It was clear that this was just part of what he was trying to tell the reader. The guy looked around, realizing that a sequel must be hidden in the library. At the same moment, the system reported that he had read the hidden part of the information. The remains of the unknown subject's willpower became a seed that entered his body. As a reward, the completion rate of one of the player's skills increased. The skill combination reached 51% completion. The Shadow God didn't expect this to happen, as he thought it would take him a lot of time to complete the skill, but suddenly he achieved a 12% jump due to finding a hidden piece of information and then analyzing it. Suddenly, the system reported that there were still hidden pieces inside the room that needed to be found and connected. It was clear that the person who did this was not at all unusual. There is no way that an ordinary mortal would do something like this. Li Chan Sung suggested that at some point there was divine intervention and this was the very voice heard. At that time, he only had two hours left before the end of access to the library, so the guy decided to hurry up. He had no way of knowing where exactly the rest of the pieces were hidden, but given that the author had deliberately encrypted his story with riddles, it was clear that the mysterious stranger clearly wanted someone to solve them. It was clear that he had to make sure that Kam Jango's followers would not be able to find this information, so it would certainly be difficult to find. Han Yu probably did everything so that by solving one riddle, the reader could solve all the others so the guy assumed that the remaining parts were in the section of the seventh level of the room. At the same time, Hadja said that he believes that Li Chan will become a faithful priest. The guy realized that his sworn enemy still did not understand what was really happening. Watching the player's efforts, the snake looked at him with an all-knowing gaze. Continuing his search, the guy came across the continuation of the story. The author continued this story and named his student as the person who said that he was the same as his so-called elder brother from the Ilian clan. As a result, 
Hanyu was betrayed by the priest and imprisoned in a remote place. A long time ago, he was swallowed up by his own child and endlessly wandered through the underworld. The author addressed the reader and stated that they both hated a common enemy. Reading these words, the guy was shocked. He assumed that the monarch of the void was his child. He realized that an unrevealed part of the story had fallen into his hands, and the guy trembled. This was one of those things that the void monarch wanted to hide, so it could be said that Li Chang had found his weakness. Continuing to read, new details of the story were revealed to the player. The author wrote that the man said that the one to whom his master and himself had shown respect for so long was the god Kaju. To become a god, he had to become a real monster and swallow his family. The stranger told him that he only wanted to return everything to its place. That man will teach Hanyu the method by which Kaja can be destroyed. Using it as a base, he was able to regain his strength and return energy to his body. After that, he avoided strangers' gaze and trained again to regain his former power. And as that man taught him, he was able to fully focus on recovery. And on the day that priest who had wandered the world returned, Han Yu made a decision. He understood that just as he had been betrayed in the past, he would rise up and take the path that would lead him to murder. To overcome the tiger, who was in trouble, he again raised his sword. But the first thing he thought when he arrived in Korea was doubt as to whether he could cope with such a crazy idea. While traveling, he continued to ask himself various questions. He didn't know if he could get rid of the one he raised and taught everything like his own child. That is why the guy left his will in these books. He prayed that the grievance he shared with that man would be passed on to the next generation. The system reported that the player had successfully found all the particles of the hidden message. Because of this, the strong will of a person whose name he did not know began to burn in his heart. The player who received the grievance of the ferocious tiger was able to acquire the skill of the first claw of the monarch of the Black Mountains. Using this power, Han Yu launched an attack on the White Tiger Clan's base. The overbleeding effect caused the opponent to bleed out causing them to die in the blink of an eye. Another ability of this skill was a chain attack that extended to nearby enemies. In addition, the attack power when using the skill increased with successive hits. During his attack on the White Tiger Clan, he also mastered the combination of skills, which resulted in an increase in the power of normal attacks. The bitterness of betrayal was what drove the man forward. He decided that calling him the Black Sky Tiger was ridiculous, so he turned to his younger brother named Munsiang. It was unlikely that the new priest of the tiger deity had expected such a meeting, but he was ready to repeat what he had done years earlier. Analyzing the assortment of weapons of the enemy clan, the guy remembered that the first claw of the Black Mountain Monarch was one of the many skills they had. This skill is somewhat similar to a counter. In this battle, he was more practical than it might seem, since it came from the same root as the White Tiger's skills. Li Chang believed that to date, no one remembered the skill of the ancient god, but he could not even imagine a stronger hatred than this. Reviewing the characteristics of this ability, the guy swept up some weak points. He noticed that this skill used too much magical power at once. Only for a one time activation will he need all his strength. Still, he expected that he would need as many elixirs as possible to fight against strong opponents. He was going to get them from the training institute. After reading countless books, he knew that he would have to come to this place again, since he was still unable to find the skill called Offensive Step. Returning to the guy's presence on the blackish red mountain range, it was safe to say that this was a dungeon of brutal difficulty. Despite this, Director O still wanted the talented newcomer to clear out the place. The guy understood that some important secret was hidden here, so he decided to find the answer to his question on his own. Using the weak wind skill, the director's ward continued to follow the guy. At that moment, he decided that first he should get rid of the annoying guy. Li Chang didn't think that he would follow him from the library itself and even into the dungeon. At the same moment, the director's ward turned to the player and asked him not to pay attention to him and just focus on his training. 
Despite the incredible level of mastery of his weapon, the guy thought that with his current level of skill he would not be able to catch Song Yiyun. So he decided to get rid of that guy the moment he got the right opportunity. After exploring the surrounding area, Li Chang returned to the safe zone. The rest of the recruits who were called to training were also here. They were shocked by the presence of the former esports player and began a heated discussion about his new career. Some thought about what lay ahead, while more cowardly players simply planned to stay out of his way. Analyzing the abilities of the other newcomers, the guy confirmed his expectations and saw only a few useful guys. At the same moment, his sincere fan, who was also at this training session, noticed his gaze. She was incredibly happy, while Li Chang considered this situation shameful. Continuing to watch, he noticed someone more interesting than the previous fighters. This was the same guy who closely followed the former esports player. He was completely focused on his task, so he didn't look around. Looking at his badge, Li Chang learned that he was a white tiger clan trainee named Bek Jaiwul. The guy believed that this mysterious stranger had received a blessing from another god, which only led to more questions for him. At the same moment, one of the director's wards turned to those present and asked them to gather around him. He stated that from that moment on, the 26th training of the White Tiger Clan trainees began. While reading the latest news, Wu Yun Gun learned that Li Chan Sung, whom he was interested in, had joined the White Tiger Clan and had already begun his training as a trainee of the organization. The man began to get nervous, believing that now everything would become more problematic. At the same moment, he communicated with his beloved niece. He was distracted from the conversation by recent news, so he continued completely from where they left off. In response, Heizen's niece started screaming and declared that she hated him. He never managed to justify himself, because the confused man heard the sound of the end of the call. Getting up from the table, he grabbed his head, fearing that he would soon become depressed. He cursed the incident when the gates to the dungeons opened in the Jamzo region. Previously, he listened to everything his niece said, he was happy to see her grow. But at one point, his wonderful life turned into horror, then he found out that Heizen was in a dungeon. He learned the news when he saw her parents begging God to give her a chance to survive. Having a huge team of excellent swordsmen, he wanted to send a rescue team after her, but there was only one way out, and that was victory. Therefore, he could only hope that everything would be fine. He prayed day and night to his patron to protect his niece. On one of these days, his ward came running to him and shouted in an excited voice that the head's niece had returned unharmed. Hearing his words, the man felt such sincere joy that he could not hide his tears. When he met with Heizen, he learned that she survived only thanks to the actions of one skillful guy. The man tried to find out his name because he wanted to express gratitude to the one who saved the most precious person in his life. The girl replied that his name was Chan Sung. She also added that he hid at the same moment when the mission in the dungeon ended. She believed that the guy simply didn't want unnecessary attention, so she suggested waiting until he decided to open up. With a smile on his face, he invited her to find Li Chang Sung as a thank you and recruited him into the Sword Clan. The girl replied that her uncle was the best, the joy of her niece was the best reward for his efforts. Remembering that conversation, he understood that he had failed, but at the same time, he believed that he simply could not talk to him normally in order to thank him for his action. The moment of their meeting was indeed not suitable for having an adequate conversation. He was interested in seeing with his own eyes the strength of the one who saved her niece. But at one point, he got so carried away that he almost began to fight at full strength. Reviewing his recent inboxes, he realized that the guy had never thought of calling the number listed on the business card. The man was in despair, because he realized that he had made a terrible mistake. He couldn't even imagine that Li Chang Sung would go straight to the White Tiger Clan, throwing his business card away. In addition to this, he was surprised by such a high class of player that he had never met in their country over the past 15 years. It was clear that Li Chan Sung was a true genius, 
so Wu Yun-gun began to blame himself for not noticing it sooner. Now it didn't seem surprising to him that the newcomer turned out to be quite strong in the duel. As he hit the table, he thought about how after that his niece started calling him countless times a day, telling him that she hated him. He believed that the reason he failed to get this recruit was because he did not pursue him properly. His older brother, his wife, and even the group president, his father, and the others continued to observe his actions. He admitted that he could not deny that he had taken the matter too lightly, but as it turned out, the fact was that he was busy and could not do anything. Moreover, all this time he thought that Li Chan's son was hiding from all organizations. He was having a hard time concentrating because of what happened to the Hayoff clan. In addition, the difficult question was how he could recruit Li Chang's son, who in a short time became a real beast. At the same time, the tyrant fan continued to drool over her idol and thought that if she died in this dungeon, she would no longer regret anything. He was clearly unhappy with her behavior, but could not influence it in any way. He believed that his girlfriend could no longer be stopped. Still, it seemed incredible to him that at the end of the test they received excellent results, while their leader was never able to pass the casting. Looking at his second comrade, he could not understand what was wrong with him. The guy didn't move at all and looked at one point. His friend asked if everything was okay with him, and from these words he returned to reality. The confused guy asked his friend not to worry and replied that everything was fine. In order not to attract unnecessary attention, he justified that he thought that the rules of the training camp were now being explained to them and therefore their group should go closer to the white tiger clan worker. The bald man in huge glasses continued his speech. He decided to once again emphasize the most important rule of this training. Participants in the training were given the opportunity to learn some common skills in their clan, and in addition, those who make it to the top five of the dungeon will receive the right to a blessing from their patron. Finally, he addressed everyone present and stated that they can do anything that is not considered a crime, after which he asked the participants to concentrate. He stated that he would show them the three main skills of the White Tiger Clan. There were three scrolls in his box. These were the Aura, Step, and Tiger Calamity skills. Taking these items into his hands, one of the three members of the strange group thought that he finally had the opportunity to acquire such valuable knowledge that would give him the opportunity to become part of the strongest clan in Korea. After all the participants received their scrolls, the man shouted that they should tear them up. When the guys followed the order of a member of the White Tiger Clan, the system began to tell them that they had successfully acquired three basic skills. They began to be overwhelmed with energy. The guys were surprised that everything turned out to be so easy. After the instructor was sure that everyone had acquired the skills, he decided to show the subjects how to use them. He asked everyone to be careful and take notes on the position in which he uses his strength. At the same moment, he stopped the instruction because he saw one of those present raise his hand. It was Li Chan Sung, and he stated that he already knew how to use this power. The instructor was surprised. He did not expect that the talented newcomer had already become familiar with their basic fighting techniques. The rest of the participants did not understand what they were talking about, because they had only recently been able to acquire this skill. The guy continued his speech and said that he had heard that by showing the skills he had learned, the owner would be able to bypass the safe zone. At that moment, the guys began to discuss that he could have received the scrolls before the others, which seemed very strange on the part of the organization. Even though everyone thought the player was an experienced guy, they thought it was impossible. The most interesting of the recruits for Li Chan Sung, the guy with burns on his face began to carefully monitor what would happen next. The three strange guys continued to make very strange facial expressions, the only girl from the squad could not contain her delight at the behavior of her idol. At the same time, the red-haired guy thought that there was no reason for him to be angry with the talented rookie, since he was sure that Lee Chan's son would fail. As it turned out, his father is a member of the White Tiger Clan, he shared with him information that the three skills did not fall into the hands of the tyrant. The instructor asked the guy to demonstrate the use of skills. 
At the same time, the red-haired guy thought that Li Chan Sung was becoming arrogant and began to underestimate the importance of training. Looking at his comrade's younger sister with a devious smile, he began to hope that he could win her heart if Li Chang Sung humiliated himself by failing to use the clan's skills. All attention was focused on the former e-sportsman. Before using these three techniques, the guy calmly took a deep breath and exhaled slowly. His next action shocked the red-haired Wisher. He could not believe that Li Chan Sung had not been bluffing all this time. The system reported that the guy had activated his step and tiger aura skills. A terrifying amount of magical energy began to spread throughout the safe zone. Looking at his face, one could see the same tiger stripes that the clan leaders had. The guy who was jealous of his popularity couldn't believe that Li Chan Sung not only learned these skills, but also performed them in his tiger form. He was in despair as his hopes had failed. The last of the skills, called Tiger Calamity, was also performed without much trouble. The tiger form was so clear, it was as if he had been practicing it for many years. The guy's strength seemed so incredible that even Beck Zhou was very surprised. Under intense pressure, the three-person team could not hide their surprise. Swinging his dagger, the guy used the skill to carry out an attack. Suddenly for all the recruits, his blow was aimed towards the instructor. The man did not have time to dodge, but fortunately for him, he was not the target. The player's cut was not a simple show of force. Everyone observed the huge flaming mark of the tiger's claws that remained on the ground. As it turned out, the guy was targeting a monster that was heading in their direction. The instructor could not hide his surprise, because his own strength was not enough to contain the power of the amazing recruit. Li Chang Sung himself didn't fully understand what was happening, he just wanted to try to use this skill, but unexpectedly for him, it worked exactly as planned. The frightened instructor could not squeeze out a word for a long time. Those who previously considered themselves his competitors looked at the talented player with exactly the same look. In an instant, their shock turned into hatred and envy towards the strongest fighter. At the same moment, the one who had been watching our hero all this time appeared. Unwilling to acknowledge the rookie's superiority, he nervously asked if his strength in using a skill was the reason he didn't do anything in the library. Without hiding his emotions, he could not believe that there was a genius in front of him, capable of learning the skills that had taken ten years of his life. Li Chang's power absorption opened his eyes to why Director O asked him to spy on the new recruit. Addressing the guy, the director's ward said that it turns out that Li Chan's son was slacking only because he was a genius. In addition, he stated that the recruit worked hard in places where no one would see him to improve his skills. In front of everyone, the man admitted that he previously believed that Li Chang was only pretending to work in the library. Bowing respectfully, he asked the principal student for forgiveness and called him an amazing guy for whom he had gained respect. The man's sudden behavior had no effect on the tyrant. The guy didn't know what to answer, so he simply remained silent. Hearing the words of one of the director's wards, the guys were surprised that Li Chan's son turned out to be not just a talented, but also a hard-working guy. They began to think that the day when they would be able to catch up to his level most likely would not come. At the same time, the system began to report that Kaju was looking at the player with satisfaction from his deep understanding of the doctrine. He was starting to like the guy's behavior, so he promised to give him a higher rank if he continued to impress him. Because the tiger deity always wanted to give him some kind of reward for his loyalty, Pabel Sag was filled with indignation. Li Chang Sung believed that he had already proven that he was ready to fight alone. The instructor could not refuse him so he allowed the talented guy to go forward. In front of the surprise participants, the tyrant, superior in strength to them, walked towards the test. Without any hesitation, he left the safe zone and went to meet the monsters. The rest of the training camp participants followed him with their gaze. Among them was a group of three men whose eyes were filled with hostility. Some time later, Li Chan's son entered the first zone of this dungeon. 
the system reported that Kaju was looking forward to his achievements in the dungeon. Besides, he was already eager to find out whether his claim about clearing the dungeon was true. At that moment, the guy realized that his sworn enemy was watching his conversation with COO. Moving further, the guy began to notice that the air here was very thick and with every breath there was a feeling that his body was getting heavier. Previously, he was told that the ecosystem of this place was changing due to the influence of an unknown magical force. Purifying the air with his eight trigrams flame skill, he admitted that it would be difficult for ordinary players to endure such a test. After a moment, immobility was activated, the guy began to concentrate on his surroundings. Using his intercom, he took out his spear. To begin with, he decided not to divide it into two parts, so as not to reveal all his cards. Pable Sag looked at him with interest. She expected to see new techniques that the guy was going to use in battle. At that very moment, he noticed the monster's movement. To satisfy Hadge's interest, he resorted to using the White Tiger Clan's skill. To deliver an extremely powerful blow, he added tiger-style magical energy to his spear skills. Using the tiger step, the guy struck from a distance. Powerful energy was directed towards the enemy. A moment later there was a powerful explosion. As it turned out, one of the monsters was in that direction and was defeated by the first attack. Li Chang's son expected a similar outcome of events. He knew that there was a large accumulation of magical energy in that direction. This was the habitat of one-legged ghosts that began to rush into battle. He was sure that the thing he was looking for could be found here somewhere. At that very moment, he decided to try the power that he could gain inside the library of the ferocious tiger. He combined it with the clan's skills, causing the power to become increasingly terrifying. It was about using the skill of the first claw of the ruler of the Black Mountain. Combining his skills, the guy looked at the monsters that were heading towards him. It was a force created to destroy his archenemy. Using his spear, the guy launched a blow that hit an entire area. Having hit one of the monsters, the chain reaction continued to destroy the rest. Just one blow was more than enough to deal with such a habitat of one-legged ghosts. After a successful attack, the guy canceled the use of the skill. At the same moment, the system reported that Kaju was delighted with the power of the claws released, so it was logical to think that the patron of the clan had not yet realized what kind of skill the player was using. However, he could no longer demonstrate this power, because, as he expected, he consumed too much magical energy. Feeling somewhat tired from just using this skill, the guy thought that he should increase his amount of magical power at any cost. Continuing to move deeper into the forest, the guy thought that the item he needed was in the habitat of one-legged ghosts. Unexpected monster attacks were not a threat to him. Using his whip on his left hand, he easily disposed of the one-legged ghost. To make it easier to find a goal, he turned to the gift he received from Pablesag. As he continued to destroy monsters in his path, the goddess watching over him admired his fighting abilities and recognized his path of seeking knowledge that made him so good at using her gift. Using the gifts of various deities, the guy quickly cleared the settlement of one-legged ghosts and received several trophies for this. At the same moment, being among the bodies of defeated monsters, he activated the sucking of souls. The Lord's ability was replenishing his strength. At that moment, he noticed something interesting. It was a flower that had eyes. As soon as he noticed that the guy was looking in his direction, he immediately hid the signs of his activity. This was exactly what Li Chang's son was looking for. Looking at the flower, one would think that it began to shake with fear. Without any doubt, the guy pulled out the plant he needed, catching him by surprise. The system reported that he had acquired something called a screeching flower. Information appeared on the interface that this is a flower that grows in Siakon between life and death. It often begins to squeal spontaneously, and also has a potent poison, so careless use can lead to illness. It was an item that was used as an ingredient. During another meeting with the elders, the guy turned to one of them with a request. 
because of which the old man called him crazy. Li Chang Sung wanted to transform the fire of the eight trigrams, and he heard that this man knew how to do it. He didn't intend to use this skill just for the sake of recovery, so he looked for ways to improve his strength. The elder named Iroh couldn't believe that the guy was so power-driven. He assumed that Li Chang was going to remake the skill for chaos and destruction. Despite his indignation at the guy's insolence, he had no choice but to help. Still, nothing stopped him from telling his student all the details. According to him, everything is quite simple, he asked the guy to increase the power of the flame, but this time using not fuel, but fire itself. This was not about a weak flame, because such a flame would simply be consumed without a trace. The man spoke with admiration about something vicious and cruel that could transform the skill of his student. He asked Chan Sung to find a monster called Ijuk or Jigui, as only then would he be able to obtain the flame of the end of the world. This flower was just a preparation. Earlier, when the guy was simply exploring the dungeon area, he managed to find what he came for. There was a monster flying in the air, better known as Jigui, exactly the one that one of the elders remembered. He was looking forward to their fight, which would give him the opportunity to rise to a completely different level. However, instead of simply leaving it to smolder in the fire of the eight trigrams, he wanted to turn it into a raging fire. He decided to do this along with the flower growing in the settlement of one-legged ghosts that was used as his food. The poison of death began to spread throughout his body, but thanks to his immunity, his resistance increased. Thanks to this, the fire of the eight trigrams began to burn even brighter and soon purified his body, while his magical power continued to increase. As he continued to eat these plants, he was satisfied that he could continue to light a fire in this place and at the same time increase his magical power. Moving forward, the guy continued to clear monster settlements, improving his characteristics. Watching his actions, some deities began to get bored. At that time, his magical power continued to grow. After some time, the guy reached the mountain where he had previously seen the monster he was interested in. The guy climbed to the very top of this rock, but did not see what he came for. In front of him was only Jigva's nest. At that moment, he remembered his conversation with Iroh. Li Chang Sung was wondering what type of monster the previously mentioned monster was. The elder replied that without a given body it would be inappropriate to call it a beast, but since it has a body, it is not a spirit, but most likely a rather strange monster. His words seemed strange and the guy assumed that Jigwa was a lifeless creature. The strange old man thought for a moment and replied that most likely it was a large pack of spirits that formed the body of the monster. The silhouette of this monster is known to depict flames and death. Li Chan's son asked where the monster's core was, but the old man replied that the spirits didn't have it, but they had something similar. The point was that Jigwa has a special right eye. It contains the bile of tens of thousands of ghosts and, under the influence of high temperature, it was greatly compressed and turned into a precious eye. This eye was the item with which Li Chang could greatly change the fire of the eight trigrams. Since this strange monster had left its nest, the guy decided to take the time to place his trap. Meanwhile, in the safe zone, the white tiger clan fighters were analyzing the results of the first ten days. They were surprised but in front of them was a report about the best result for the entire training period. 40% of all participants passed the standard within 10 days, which made them seem motivated by Li Chang Sung's performance. At the same time, ill-wishers continued to follow in the footsteps of the most talented recruit. They saw traces of the tyrant's battles, the habitats of monsters had been cleared. Continuing to pursue the talented player, they planned to catch him and torture him in order to obtain valuable information. Using one of the clan's skills, which they had mastered quite well, the guys began a conversation in which one of them shared the unpopular opinion that Li Chan Sung was nothing of himself and was just trying to seem cool. His friend did not fully agree with these words and asked whether the man really thought that it was possible to pretend so well. It seemed to him that the white tigers had given him something worthwhile 
which made him now superior to all of them. This was the only way he could explain that their enemy had mastered the skill in less than a day. The third member of their squad was less confident that their plan would work, so he cowardly asked what might await them if the white tiger's keepers found out about their intentions. The guy with dark hair and a scar on his face responded mockingly that although white tigers claim to be super fair and comply with all sorts of business standards, all this is nothing more than a bluff. As it turned out, he considered them the same as them. These were killers from the remnants of the Hayoff clan. They were not simple killers and their interests had another meaning. They were ready to do anything for the sake of money and entertainment. The leader of their squad asked his comrades to proceed on the assumption that the white tigers shared their strength with the recruit. On the other hand, if we deny this opinion, he believed that during his career as a gamer, Tyrant was able to earn good money, especially since everyone knew that Li Chan was the child of a rich family. He was going to take everything from him and believe that having carried out his plan, they would definitely not be left empty-handed. The cowardly and slightly overweight guy didn't quite fit into his squad. He was afraid that if they touched a guy who didn't do anything to them, there would be dire consequences after that. His whining angered the two guys in front. The guy noticed their discontent and began to think about how to justify himself. The squad stopped and the cowardly killer began to justify himself, saying that if they started smoking for no reason, then their plans would go wrong and they would find themselves in a far from better position. As it turned out, their main task was to participate in the training of white tigers and steal the sphere of illusions. He believed that even though the Hayoff were driven into a corner by the white tiger, the sphere of illusion could become the trophy that would help them change the whole situation radically. For him, the main priority of this raid was to obtain such a powerful item. The dissatisfaction of the senior colleagues turned into a verbal skirmish, and the man with the scar on his face felt that their junior comrade was worried that they would not be able to cope with some newcomer. The man with a short black beard thought that their comrade dared to look down on them. One of the killers came closer to the cowardly guy and invited him to do the job without further ado. The frightened guy had no choice but to agree with the words of the more experienced member of the Hayoff clan. To cheer up a colleague who was succumbing to doubts, a more experienced guy gave him a light bream and said that if he started talking such nonsense again, then his head would end up in the stomach of a one-legged ghost. After these words, the guys began to use one of their clan's techniques and took off. Gathering all his determination, the cowardly killer also resorted to using force to continue completing his main task. He took flight to catch up with his more experienced and greedy comrades. Meanwhile, the previously prepared traps began to go off, and the exposed evil spirit fell into one of them. With just one trap, he was able to apply several effects to the monster, causing it to be defeated. As time passed, several more monsters fell into the traps and were instantly destroyed. Thanks to this preparation of the battlefield, the guy again raised his level. Despite the positive news, he never met a fire ghost. Instead, various fire-type monsters fell into traps. While Pablesag admired the spectacle of the massive activation of traps and the subsequent explosions, the guy thought that in ten days he never reached the nest, but during this time he managed to rise to the thirty-second level. Looking at the nest, he thought that the fiery ghost had left. This was a real problem, and the guy was thinking about how to find this monster. As he went down, he felt the presence of another player. Within moments, he met his rival, a mysterious guy with Burns named Beck Jewel. Stretching his spear forward, he was clearly in the mood for battle. Not fully understanding the motives of one of the strongest fighters on the training mission, Li Chan directly asked what he forgot in such a place. Without waiting for an answer, he began to release his magical energy using his white tiger skills. The reason for the uninvited guest was unimportant to him, since he could not allow him to tell the others about what he was doing here. With a determined look, he told his rival that he would have to kill the witness. Within a moment, the blade of the former cybersportsman's dagger was on the forehead of a guy with burns on his face. Despite such a quick attack, Beck managed to deflect the blow using his spear. Analyzing the enemy's fighting style, 
Li Chan noticed that Bek Chaiwo was able to use a spear more than three meters in length, which suggests that he has good skills and must be somewhere around level 35. A fierce fight began between the two fighters, in which Li Chan, using a dagger, kept up with all the attacks of his opponent's long spear. During this battle, the guy realized that Li Chan's sung is very fast and accurate, and even though he tried to control him and keep him at a medium distance, the player constantly made his way towards him at point-blank range and aimed straight at his neck. The confident guy rushed to the attack, once again reducing the distance. It was too dangerous. Beck realized that he could not cope with such a fast opponent using only his spear. At that very moment, he resorted to using a blessing, from the sight of which Li Chang began to feel something familiar. After parrying the player's attack, he immediately attempted to counterattack using his palm covered in magical shadow. Even though he didn't waste time on unnecessary movements, Li Chang was too fast and managed to dodge. In addition, he even managed to turn to his inventory and take out one of the legendary artifacts that was created by the hands of the first blacksmith Oyezi. The rusty sword was pointed towards the neck of the mysterious player, and he had already begun to say goodbye to life. Even though Li Chang could have easily ended their battle, he decided against killing and stopped at the last moment. Bek Ji Vul did not understand the intentions of his enemy, while the thoughtful tyrant was ready to ask his question. He was unable to kill his opponent because he wanted to know why he was able to use the secret shadow art. The man could not believe what he heard. In response, he was surprised to ask the former esports player how he knew the name of this blessing. Li Chang Sung could not answer this question because it was directly related to his past. Once upon a time there were times when the entire life of the shadowy god consisted of enmity and war, so he could only rely on faithful allies. Despite their long battles together, they abandoned him due to his madness, taking with them the memories and relationships he held dear. We were talking about several deities, and it's worth starting with the goddess of massacre and destruction, which in its title corresponds to the thirst for war of the shadow god. The next companion was the one known as the dragon who slept for a thousand years. The third comrade was a faithful comrade, a god named the iron-blooded lion and the last one, Xerxes, better known as the Wandering Shadow. The secret art of shadow, this is what Xerxes generally called all his skills and powers that made up it. He addressed the shadowy god as a friend, telling him that his power was very unique. All other gods possessed multiple powers of divine power, while the Wandering Shadow used only one power. A god with one power, Xerxes was one. The secret art of shadow was a special term that only his comrades knew about, so it was logical to assume that Beck had something to do with it. Oddly enough, Hadju wondered about the skill mastered by his clan's trainee. Still, Li Chang understood that there was a big difference between the power of a god and the secret shadow art developed by an ordinary person, and therefore he wanted to hear Beck's answer. Enraged by his powerlessness, the player repeated his question but the calm Li Chan reminded him that he was not in a position to demonstrate his emotions. In response to this, the guy with burns all over his body began to use the secret shadow art again and shouted that he would have to force him to answer the question. With the help of his blessing ability, he decided to complement his fighting style with the use of a spear and rushed to attack. Despite this, the former gloomy god managed to track all his furious attacks and successfully dodged. Buck was furious, he shouted to his opponent that he must immediately answer the question while he still had the opportunity. Li Chang knew that simply dodging would not be enough, so he decided that he would fight until he found out about the secret art of shadow. Laying down his weapon, Li Chang switched to using a spear. Beck did not expect his opponent to resort to using the same weapon. He was shocked at how well he wielded this weapon. The pressure from the more experienced player continued and Beck was forced to go into defense. He couldn't believe that the tyrant had such incredible power. Demonstrating the seriousness of his intentions, the former shadow god began to use his magical power. In order to please Kaja, who was watching the battle, 
he resorted to using the skills of the White Tiger Clan. To begin with, he activated and combined Disaster and Tiger Step. After that, he also activated the Tiger Aura. Due to the masterful use of these skills, his strength reached an ideal state and Beck Jiwil could not find a single flaw in his defense. The fast and powerful attack did not allow him to dodge, so the guy continued to defend himself. Despite using the Shadow God's blessing, Beck was still unable to resist. He flew back and hit his back on the rocks. There was no point in continuing this fight, because Li Chan had demonstrated his superiority. He once again pointed the blade of his weapon at the enemy. As expected, he was determined to hear the answers. The tyrant's superior skills in using the spear and such incredible possession of the tiger's strength did not give his opponent any chance of victory, which is why Kaju imprinted him in his memory again. Looking at the defeated opponent, Li Chang said that he was a half-ghost and this was the reason why he had a special ability. This name is mainly applied to a person born from the connection of a human and a ghost. Due to their special origins, they have a hideous appearance and special abilities. The confused guy couldn't believe his ears, so in a trembling voice he asked how Li Chang knew about this. As expected, the gloomy god could not answer this question. He was the only one among the recruits who knew that all these scars on Beck's body did not appear from the fire, but simply because he was a half-ghost. Moreover, in this case, it became clear that he did not learn the secret art, it was simply his innate ability. Yet it was logical to assume that the traces of divinity he had sensed earlier were a gift from Xerxes. Despite this, he could definitely tell that the Shadow God's life force had weakened greatly. He didn't know what happened and why he abandoned his son in the mortal realm. Still, he had no choice but to take it with him. Moreover, he had no guarantee that Beck Jaioval knew anything about his father. Looking at the exhausted player, Li Chan assumed that he had decided to try to heal his curse with the help of Jigui's eye, and then asked him to leave this idea, saying that it would not work. The guy still didn't trust his recent opponent, but Li Chan noticed that he knew a lot more and this should have become obvious after he learned everything about him after just exchanging a couple of blows. He continued by saying that most likely the guy with the scars thinks that he got all these burns because of the parents of ghosts from the fire category, so he had to dispel this myth by saying that Jigui's eye would never heal them. His words destroyed the guy's last hopes and he began to lose any desire to fight. Li Chan stated that his parents are not a fire, and although the scars on Beck Jaiwal's face resemble burns, this is not so, because otherwise he would not be able to use the attribute of darkness. Another argument to convince the guy was the mention of well-known information regarding Jigvi. It is known that this monster is closer to death than to fire. He also mentioned to the confused guy that the creepy aura of this monster is much stronger than that of ordinary ghosts, so trying to eat its power would be tantamount to suicide. The player's last words hit the nail on the head. He suggested that in this way Bekji will hope that he could quickly get rid of the ugly scars. His guess turned out to be true. Being in what he considered a hopeless situation, Beck could not hold back his tears and turned to a more experienced fighter for advice. Li Chang calmly replied that he would cure him. After these words of hope, he offered to make a deal as proof. Beck Jai Wu couldn't believe that Li Chang was ready to resort to a deal to confirm his words. As it turned out, Li Chang was interested in his knowledge about the nature of the monster Jingwei. He asked to share knowledge and lend his strength in order to cope with him. The Shadow God was sure that Beck was researching information about this monster like a man-man, so this guy must definitely know what he himself might have missed. The unexpected statement from Li Chan took the guy by surprise, but having calmed down a little, he asked why he should trust someone he had known for less than an hour. Li Chan calmly replied that he could prove that he could indeed cure his curse. Without waiting for the confused guy to answer, he asked him to extend his hand forward. Treating horrific injuries was a lifelong endeavor for the guy who was half a ghost. Noticing his indecisiveness, Li Chang decided to rush things and caught his hand. Before starting, he asked to be patient a little, saying that it would be hot. 
After these words, he began to use the fire of the eight trigrams, which quickly spread to the guy's body. From severe pain, Beck could not keep track of his movements. The calm Li Chan asked him not to open his mouth, because if he inhaled this fire, he would disrupt the circulation of magical power inside his body. The powerful fire continued to spread and the system reported that the semi-ghost state began to change. The curse began to fade and his misfortune came to an end. The guy felt his entire body and how his features began to disappear. He knew that if this fire reached the center of his features, or rather his heart, then all his torment would be over. But at one moment, he felt the fire begin to weaken even before it reached his heart. Despite the fact that he could not completely get rid of the peculiarities of his body, with the help of the strength of his new comrade, he achieved something that he could not even dream of before. Li Chang Sung used a large amount of magical energy, but he believed that it was worth it. He invited the guy to reconsider the offer of cooperation and, as proof of his promise, invited him to look at the result. Beck Ji Vul observed a miracle that he could not even imagine before. His skin became the same as that of other people. At that moment, the system reported that Pablesag decided to better study the effects of the flames of the eight trigrams. Returning to the failure to return the guy's heart to normal, Li Chang said that with his current abilities, this is the limit. He clarified that Beck will constantly need treatment, but even so, full recovery is not guaranteed. The guy with long hair agreed with his opinion and asked what they should do next. Li Chan asked him to help defeat the monster Jigui, because then they would have more fire power in order to fully restore the player's body. In order to eliminate the issue of trust, Chan's son invited his new comrade to enter into a mana contract. Despite his lucrative offer, Beck decided to show his gratitude and said that the help with the burns was enough for him to agree to cooperate. The former esports player was surprised by this answer and thought that this guy was more naive than he expected. With a purposeful look, Beck asked how he could be useful. But despite his sincerity, Li Chang suddenly asked him to switch to a more polite tone first. In fact, he simply couldn't stand the idea of his friend's son talking to him like they were the same age. Still, hundreds of years of being in Arcadia changed the young guy and he was no longer the same person he was before. Beck Ji Vol was confused by such a request, so he hesitantly agreed. Going closer to the monster's nest, Beck began to share his observations. First of all, he mentioned that in order to cope with Jigui, you first need to understand her habits and how she behaves. He believed that this monster in some sense resembled a crow. When they began to examine the nest more carefully, they managed to find a gap that led to the treasure of this greedy monster. In front of them was a whole mountain of valuables that had been brought to this place by an unusual spirit. As it turns out, most of these are trophies from her own victims. According to Beck, Jigui loves not just shiny things, but truly precious objects. She is able to somehow recognize cheap stuff at a glance. In fact, she doesn't need all this at all and soon she forgets about all these things. While looking at things around, Beck Ji Vo mentioned that this bird usually flies around the surrounding area in a certain order, so if they look closely at the collected trinkets, they can understand where it is going next. As time went on, Li Chang also did not stand idle and managed to notice something that interested him. It was a white dove's bow. Taking this object in his hands, the guy learned that it has the property of piercing a target, with the help of which he will pierce through absolutely everything he hits. In addition, it also had a quintuple arrow strike effect, capable of firing five arrows in succession with one attack. This place turned out to be full of interesting things, so he decided to pick up a few items for himself and sell the rest. At the same moment, he felt incredible power emanating from the strange sphere. The smell of death began to spread and it seemed familiar to him. The system reported that it was an illusion pearl made from a certain proportion of death flowers, destruction flowers, and something else. This was the very object for which the killers from Hayoff were sent. It was stated that the grievances of those who died from smallpox were felt from it. This disease was somehow connected with events from the past, 
so the guy assumed that he had found something related to the White Tiger Clan. This item was no doubt sent to inventory. At the same time, Beck said that he knew where the monster they were interested in was located. With a confident look, he said that it was even easier than he expected. As it turns out, Jigwi was focused on eating for quite a while, so she used quite a bit of her power, which made their task a little easier. Li Chang suggested that in this case, she most likely climbed deep into the mountains, to a place where mystical creatures and monsters with strong souls live. Beck turned out to be very useful in searching for Jigui. Li Chan decided to continue their journey and suggested immediately going in search of the monster. Their journey took approximately four days. As they approached the monster, they saw more and more bones of animals that became its prey. Earlier, one of the elders mentioned that this spirit has enormous hunger and pity. Approaching the monster, they only made sure that this information was true. At one moment, both players felt the presence of incredible power. In front of them was Jigui, a monster of simply incredible size. Pable Sag was looking forward to a fun hunt for such a huge phoenix. The guy decided not to waste time and not give his enemy time to recover, so he took out a bow from his inventory and activated the viper's eye. Using his eyes, he was able to figure out the monster's weak points in order to inflict as much damage as possible from a surprise attack. Within a moment, the system reported that Haju was proud of the two members of his family who were spreading his name, so he gave them a gift. Li Chang Sung couldn't believe that he could gain new power so easily. At first he noticed that the range of his vision had increased, but after a moment he realized that all his senses had reached a new level. Instead of arrows, the guy decided to use his spear, dividing it into two parts in advance. Due to incredible jealousy, Pable Sag did not want to give up the player to anyone else and made her move, granting him power. The gift and power of the goddess of the hunt was presented. The skill ensured that the guy would not miss the target he had chosen. Using the granted power, the guy launched a surprise attack. His spears flew towards the body of the huge monster with incredible strength and speed. With his first attack, he dealt massive damage to the monster as his combined lightning explosive and lightning network skills caused a temporary lightning storm. Watching such an incredible and well-thought-out attack, Beck Ji Vo was in admiration of the strength of his comrade. Nevertheless, such effectiveness was guaranteed to him by the powers presented by the deities. Pable Sag proudly declared that no other person would have ever received such strong power in his life. Li Chang Sung was finally able to regain the fighting feelings that he had been missing all this time. All his senses were focused on the enemy. He also became much better at predicting her movements. In order not to lose his advantage, Li Chang went on the attack. Bek Ji Vo began to run after him. He thought it was crazy, but despite this, it seemed to him that they could really win. He was confident in himself and his comrade. At the same moment, the guy felt the approach of the holders of the skills of the White Tiger Clan. The system reported that an intruder had appeared who did not have the right to join the raid. Two men landed in front of the player to look like White Tiger Clan fighters. One of them turned to the recruits and declared that this was a security zone. Since only relevant raid personnel were allowed into this area, he emphasized that the trainees should retreat. While an obstacle appeared in front of the guys in the form of fighters of the White Tiger Clan, the spears continued to cause critical damage to the spirit. Additionally, several lightning attack abilities continued to level up based on the damage dealt. Although the wards of the White Tiger Clan did not allow Li Chang and Beck to go further, the battle continued against their background. A bald guy with a huge sword in his hands warned that the territory was under protection, so the recruits should leave it immediately. Beck Jival could not come to terms with the fact that they were trying to steal their loot. He had been planning this attack for years and believed it was his key to a cure, so he tried his best to get justice to end the hunt. But in response to his request, he heard a warning that no one except authorized persons could be in the closed area. 
The loyal dogs of the White Tiger Clan said that if the recruits do not listen, then they will have to use force and everything that happens after will not be in their area of responsibility. In this situation, Beck felt powerless. He was afraid that if they used force, they would not be able to avoid the consequences from the clan. At the same moment, a powerful explosion sounded in their background from the fall of an exhausted fire monster. Jawa tried to sneak away, so Beck began to worry that they might miss their chance to win. He began to move forward, explaining to the clan fighters that if they missed the monster, then it would be impossible to catch up with him. Despite this, the two warriors' opinions did not change and they gave a final warning before using force. Gathering his last strength, the spirit headed upward to escape the range of Li Chan's abilities. Despite the emotionality of his comrade, Tyrant was very calm. Looking around, he noticed that he was still being followed. Song Yu Zhong thought about the director's order not to interfere, but was worried that in the worst case, he would have to resort to force. The presence of the loyal subordinate director O indicated that this place was something very important to the clan. Analyzing the situation, Li Chang decided that the executive director was trying to hide some traces here, using fighters from the laboratory. He believed that the tracks of this monster were somehow connected with the pearl of illusions that was in the bird's nest. Moreover, it was logical to assume that the monster himself killed someone who was related to the secret of their organization. That is why the fighters are trying to take over or destroy the remaining street, which means that Jigvi may be hunted by other people involved in this matter. The guy understood that if he delved a little more into the reason for this situation, then there was a chance that he would stumble upon something more valuable at the disposal of this dungeon. In order not to go into battle, which could lead to unpleasant consequences, the guy clarified the rules of their actions and suggested that they were allowed to do whatever they wanted but outside the designated area. They told him that this was true, so the guy convinced them that they should not worry about violating the rules of the training camp on their part. At the same moment, the huge monster turned around and began to rapidly approach them. This incredible power caused concern on the part of the clan fighters, because they understood that in the event of a battle, they would not be able to withstand. Just a moment later, there was a loud explosion as Jigui collided with the surface. After that, Li Chang extended his hand towards her and began to use the power of the Lord of the Underworld. At this moment, he began to absorb the power of the dying monster, pulling it towards him, into a zone where he was allowed to act at his discretion. Absorbing the incredible power of the fire spirit began to enhance his eight trigrams power. He was enveloped in power, from the fact that the new source of fire was rapidly being absorbed with the help of the power that was at his disposal. This was part of his plan he had prepared in advance to prevent the monster from escaping the battlefield. Being among the remains of the creatures destroyed by the spirit, the guy suggested that Jigvi could have left the chick. He was sure of this, since he believed that there must be some good reason why the bird left its nest. Besides, Consuming its fire had serious consequences. He believed that there was absolutely no point in this if it was not about food for the child. This was the key to defeating the monster, so it was clear that if they used this knowledge well, the benefits would be immeasurable. In addition, the guy knew that Jiggly is a mystical creature, a spirit that is very difficult to hunt alone, so they need serious preparation. Beck admitted that he had some ideas earlier, so he prepared a little for the battle. Despite this, he was afraid that even if everything went as expected, there was no certainty that it would work. At the same time, Li Chan's son continued to analyze the information obtained. He understood that since the chick hatched, then the monster needed a food source. Thanks to this, the movements of the spirit will be much easier to predict. As planned, he was the first to reach the desired location and set traps there using rune control. At the same time, as Li Chan used his power as an overlord, the spirit of Jigbi continued to absorb the souls of his victims in order to replace his lost power. Despite desperate resistance, the fire of the eight trigrams continued to engulf the monster's body, continuing to absorb its power. During preparation, Li Chan noticed that the monster's behavior was not due to the fact that he was carried away by hunting, 
but most likely because, for some reason, his excessive hunger left him no choice. That is why the corpse of one of the animals was used as a welcome dinner. Having absorbed it, the spirit was at the disposal of the player, since earlier he had applied runes and his blood, which was saturated with icy and paralyzing poison, to the body of the prey. Watching what was happening, Beck was delighted, because he understood that Jigui would not be able to do anything against the poisons that his comrade used. Despite the sudden appearance of the White Tiger Clan, everything happened as planned. Jigui continued to absorb the souls of her victims, using them as fuel to fuel her flames of death. But at the top of this food chain was Li Chan Sung. He did not tell Beck Jul that he did not extract the spirit of the destroyed monster, which served as food for their main goal. This spirit entered Jigli's body and became part of her flesh. When the huge bird tried to escape, it was this same spirit that was used to pull the monster back. Once the fires of purgatory were lit by a spirit, they quickly spread to other spirits. The flames became too fierce to be stopped. Jigli is a collection of spirits, so there is no way for her to escape the flames of the eight trigrams. All of her power will be what takes the player to the next level. The flame of the eight trigrams turned out to be the natural enemy of the spirit, with which it was most incompatible. The ability continued to continuously absorb fire, destructive properties slowly began to be added to its regenerative capabilities, and the overall level of the ability continued to grow rapidly. From the unimaginable amount of power that was absorbed at that moment, Li Chang began to lose control of his ability. The system began to warn that continued use of power would cause him injury. At the same time, his mana vessel size continuously increased. Li Chang was nearing the end of gaining new power. The system reported a new achievement. As a reward, he received additional characteristics of intelligence, will and magical power. His skill level in sucking the souls of victims had also increased, causing the process to speed up. Despite the inevitability of the completion of the eight trigrams flame, the monster, following its instincts, continued to resist. The fighters of the White Tiger Clan could not influence what was happening in any way, they could only watch the situation with shocked looks. When the power of the flames of the eight trigrams began to acquire distinct destructive properties, the player took out his legendary artifact. This was exactly what he needed to use the sword made by the first Oyezi. The eternal flame began to engulf the fish gut sword. The guy successfully fulfilled the hidden requirements of the divine artifact and was one step away from gaining full power over this legendary item. The guy thought about one sure way that would allow him to finish the job faster. He was going to completely remove the seal from the fish gut sword. To do this, he needed to use a huge amount of all-consuming flame, which the artifact absorbed with unimaginable greed. In addition, he decided to add one more ingredient that the greedy blade desired, it was blood. These two things could completely release the artifact that had been dormant for a millennium. The fish gut sword was passed down from the first Oyezi to his descendants, always being closest to the brazier. Since the marks of generations remained on the sword, it was only natural that fire would take its place within it. Also, before this furnace fell into the hands of Yezi, he visited countless murderers, absorbing an incredible amount of blood and was nicknamed the Demonic, or Sword of Death. The blood that had seeped inside it could not be washed off so easily, and this affected the character of the blade. All the requirements for gaining power over the artifact were fulfilled and after it absorbed the fire and blood of Li Chan, the sword became completely subject to him. Frightening power began to spread around the artifact, and its appearance began to change. A certificate of the new owner of the blade was engraved on its blade. The sword was released, it had its own personality, so it immediately wished for the new owner to take it into his own hands. In addition, after the seal was removed, the souls that were imprisoned in it began to be released. Following the example of the sword, they began to impose themselves on the guy in order to become part of his power. Beck Jayavil did not fully understand what was happening. He had not previously seen the ability to interact with souls, which Li Chan's son demonstrated. 
the souls began to approach and grab the guy's body. At the moment when they almost captured him, the guy imperiously ordered them to shut up. After that they retreated, and the sword remained in his possession. The system reported that he became the owner of a blade made from fish guts, in addition, they literally became one. The new sword began to become covered in fire. The guy used his magical powers to deal a decisive blow to the powerful spirit. From just one blow, the monster received an incredible amount of damage. Satisfied with the result, the guy was looking forward to what the result would be after intensifying the attack. To do this, he pleased Kaja and used the abilities of the White Tiger Clan. After this attack, the spirit's body began to collapse, but he continued to resist, using the previously absorbed souls of the victims in return. But that was not all, and the guy resorted to a skill that he learned from hidden information in the library of a ferocious tiger. This time, he activated the Black Mountain Monarch Fang skill. It only took one blow for him to end this battle. Using an incredible amount of magical power at once, he destroyed the monster's body. The remnants of the power of Jigdi's souls were absorbed with the help of the power of the Lord of the Underworld. As a trophy, the guy was able to get Jigwi's right crystal eye. The system reported that having this eye, one can observe changes in the human world, as well as in the afterlife. In addition, he was a vessel for an incredible amount of fiery energy and magical power. Due to Li Chang's son unlocking the fish gut sword, the system reported that his sword understanding had increased and his dagger skill had reached its maximum level. Seeing this item, Pablisag could not hide his great shock. She nervously said that she could not even imagine that the poker could be a divine artifact. All the gods watching the guy were shocked by the appearance of the masterpiece of the divine blacksmith Oyezi. This item is known among the gods as one of the nine famous swords that the first Oyezi forged, nicknamed the Sacred Sword due to the length of its blade. It can be used as a dagger, and after releasing its true form, as a long sword. In addition, traces of use endowed its owner with mystical powers. The system also reported that the famous nine swords are organisms that cover each other's shortcomings and enhance common virtues. The more of them the player has at his disposal, the more they will synchronize with each other, which will open up new abilities and enhancements for the user himself. After use, the runes that were engraved on the sword were transferred to the owner's hand, and the blade itself began to be absorbed by the player's body. This legendary sword and Li Chan's son became one, the guy even noticed how his hand became heavier. At this moment, he noticed that his dragon dagger began to react strangely to the appearance of a rival blade. In the course of absorbing Jigui's power and gaining power over the artifact, Li Chang increased his magical energy reserves threefold, allowing him to use the Black Mountain Monarch's Fang more freely without worrying about his reserves of power. After the terrifying battle was over, the White Tiger Clan began to think about what they should do next. It was hard for them to believe that Jigvi was taken away from them so easily. The guys understood that although Li Chang did not violate their warnings, they should not pretend that nothing had happened. They were afraid that during the attack on Jigui, the guy was able to get his hands on an illusory pearl, which their department was hunting for. A fighter with a huge scar on his face said that they had no choice but to teach the recruits a lesson. His comrade was not sure that it would be too difficult for them. He saw with his own eyes that this guy not only extinguished the flame of Jigui, but absorbed it with his own powers. He believed that defeating such a monster was far from an easy task. But his comrade was of the opinion that this, on the contrary, was the most convenient moment for an attack. He believed that Li Chang and Beck were tired from fighting Jigui, and even if Tyron had absorbed the all-consuming fires, it was obvious that he was exhausted from the battle. The fighters planned to defeat the talented recruit and find out whether he was able to get the illusory pearl. If he didn't give up valuable information, they weren't afraid to simply get rid of him. Their confidence was so unshakable because they did not agree with the CEO's opinion that Li Chang's son was capable. It seemed to them that he was just constantly lucky. At the moment when they wanted to attack the exhausted recruits, a low male voice of a stranger addressed them, 
surprised by the unexpected meeting. These guys alerted not only the White Tiger Clan fighters, but also the players who ended the battle with the boss. The killers of the Hayoff clan were able to track down those they were looking for. The guards of the White Tiger Clan investigation area had long been familiar with who could threaten their safety. The surprised guys asked how the killers were able to enter the territory of their training camp. The man with a scar on his face and a smug grin replied that they just walked in through the front door like everyone else at the training camp. At that moment, the fighters began to realize that there was some kind of flaw in their checks, due to which the embittered killers of the destroyed Hayoff clan were able to sneak into the list of recruits. They knew very well who they were dealing with. The guy with the scar on his face was Yang Xinghe, known as the Iron Mace Demon. Standing next to him is an equally brash fighter, Park G.I.P.O., better known as the Player Saw. And the last member of their squad, the cowardly Bei Wu Jin, nicknamed Crimson Target. The main problem for the White Tiger Clan fighters was that instead of the Hayoff assassins going to another dungeon, they sniffed out information regarding the training camp and came here in search of the thing they needed. Their appearance meant that they had already learned about the research centers here. One of the fighters decided not to waste time, he began to use his skills and took out a chain to which a mace was attached. Taking a look at his incredible technique and terrifying speed, the superiority of the assassins over the white tiger fighters became obvious. The ordinary fighter believed that if they faced these three killers, the result of the fight would be quite obvious. He decided to resort to a separation tactic in which one of them went for reinforcements while the other stayed behind to buy some time. But as it turned out, they underestimated the skills of their opponents and Park G.I. instantly found himself in front of one of them. A fierce battle began between two clan fighters who were previously in an alliance. The assassin's pressure made the difference in their strength clear. Even though Park G.I. could easily destroy his enemy, he decided to prolong the fun. At the same moment, the guy who went for reinforcements was reached by the killer's mace under the name Yang Xing. The man could not dodge due to the enormous speed of the attack, so he decided to block this blow. The strength of his sword could not compare to the strength of his opponent. Due to the destruction of the sword, the white tiger clan fighter found himself unarmed. He couldn't dodge such fast attacks but there was no way to block either. Because of this, a combination of mace attacks knocked him out of the game. Having destroyed the enemy, the man began to furiously yell that the clan fighters were too weak. His comrade asked him to be careful and not to simply kill a valuable lead again, but Yang Xing replied that they had no reason to worry, because they had three witnesses left at their disposal. Because of his words, Park Ji was forced to hold back so as not to accidentally be left without information that was valuable to them. While the White Tiger Clan's fighters were on the verge of a crushing defeat, Beck Jevil covered his comrade, who was still recovering from a recent battle. An assassin of the High Fong Clan named Bei Wugum was approaching them, Beck asked what they wanted. The fat guy replied that although he had no particular desire to fight, he had to get rid of the witnesses. In response to his words, the calm and confident Li Chan ironically replied that he was not going to die at all. Seeing his comrade's gaze, Beck was convinced that Li Chang still had the ability to fight. Even though he had the most talented newcomers of the White Tiger Clan in front of him, Bei Wu Jen was still arrogant. Using Hayoff's skills, he said that he didn't care who he killed. In response to his words, Li Chang imperiously raised his index finger into the sky using a mysterious skill. After that, he turned to the Hayoff fighter with a sly grin and promised that he would think about the offer to fight if Bei Wu Jen could evade this attack. Within a moment, the self-confident Mace Demon's face changed. Those who had previously fought began to sense the real danger posed by the new recruit. The killer of the Hayoff clan, Pi Wu Jen completely forgot that he was going to destroy two recruits of the White Tiger Clan with his own hands. A threat loomed before him, casting doubt on their chances of survival. The system reported that Boss Jigui had appeared in front of them. With a terrifying look, Li Chang said that it was incredible luck that these monsters laid eggs. 
With anticipation, he asked the rowdy guys from Hayoff for their opinion on how the female Jiggy would react when she learned of the death of her partner. A huge spirit with incredible power shouted loudly in memory of his beloved. After this, fiery lightning, launched by the spirit, began to move towards the players. Powerful explosions over a huge area created a kind of assault that was difficult to dodge. The unimaginable power of this monster took the Hayoff fighters by surprise and they had to retreat. One of the fighters turned to Yang Xinghe and asked him to take care of the monster. He wanted his comrade to drive him in the other direction. But as it turned out, it was already too late. Jigvi closed the distance and was ready to strike. Within a moment, a series of powerful explosions sounded, and the Hayoff fighters began to scream in failure. They could not dodge such a sudden attack of unimaginable power. Li Chan expected such a turn of events. He explained that the female protects the chicks, and the male gets food. Since her partner was in danger, it was very natural for her to come to the rescue. Bek Jayavo was shocked by the knowledge of his new comrade and did not understand what a difficult path he had gone through to gain such experience and knowledge. Li Chan was about to move on and his half-ghost friend asked what he was planning to do. The tyrant replied that he wanted to get more crystal eyes from the female Jigvi. Buck was a little worried about the state of his comrade's health, since it was obvious that after a hard battle he needed rest. But the guy replied that he was already much better, and his endurance indicators had noticeably recovered. He still had options on how to regain his strength. He still hadn't used the crystal eye he'd gotten from the first boss. He has his own methods of renewing and obtaining power, so the guy decided to get this power. Previously, he had wondered whether it was worth absorbing the crystal eye after absorbing Jigui's lights. He believed that he would grow his own lights, so creating an artifact from the eye would be more effective. Despite his assumption, the elder replied that the crystal eye must be eaten in order to move from simply adding attributes to core transformation. In addition, the old man mentioned that once the guy swallows this trophy, he can become the monster Jigui himself. The properties of his power began to change noticeably, and now his body purification skill has turned into more destructive power. He has become the all-consuming flame of the eight trigrams. Due to the fact that the guy was able to use Jigui's features, he managed to increase his agility and strength parameters. The system reported that as a result of receiving the power of the spirit, he mastered the method of using the flame of spirits, comprehended poltergeist and pyrokinesis. Using his new strength, he took off to claim his prey. The guy gained spiritual wings, his appearance noticeably changed the moment he changed into the form of a magical bird. With terrifying speed, he rushed straight towards his goal. The Hayoff fighters continued to resist while the guy from the White Tiger clan was on his own and simply trying to avoid death. But at one point, Li Chan's son joined their battle and ended the battle using the Fong of the Black Mountain Monarch. With a cold gaze filled with the desire to kill, the guy began to approach his wounded prey. The previously confident mace demon had lost all his strength, his wounds made it impossible for him to continue fighting, so he simply begged for this suffering to end. Li Chang's son was not interested in him, so he listened and finished what he started, after which he absorbed his soul and strength. The next step was to absorb the power of the female Jigui, which he was also able to eliminate thanks to the chain reaction of the power of the Black Mountain Monarch. Using a large amount of magical power at a time turned out to be as effective as possible, so the guy quickly acquired another crystal spirit eye. By absorbing this item, he again greatly increased his magical power. The all-consuming flame of the eight trigrams and poltergeist have been strengthened. In addition, the system recommended using the first form of all-consuming flame with distrust in order to subdue this ability much faster. This time he received much less magical power, its amount approached the 300-point mark. Most likely, this was due to the fact that he absorbed the trophy for the second time and certain limits were triggered. Due to the continuous receipt of the power of the spirit, the guy acquired the title of the Vessel of Jigvi. Having become Jigvi, a clot of fire and spirit, he was able to use her attributes at his own discretion.
he could plunge the earth into the flames of death and capture the heavens. The dungeon rating was updated, and in just two weeks, the guy climbed to 9th place, while more successful participants spent more than ten years of constant battles for a similar result. The guy understood that messages from the system about the fall of the two rulers of the Black and Red Mountain range must have created real chaos among the rest of the White Tiger Clan fighters. But he still had unfinished business, so he turned his attention to an injured member of the Hayoff clan named Bei Wu General. He was suffering from burns he received due to a surprise attack from rookie Li Chang. Li Chang's son decided to take the opportunity and offered the guy to ease his suffering in exchange for all the information he knows regarding the situation between the Hayoff clan and the White Tiger clan. Meanwhile, Bek Ji Vol reached the scene. Looking at his comrade who had mastered such incredible power of fire, he felt as if Li Chan had moved the core of the sun towards himself. To start the conversation, the guy mentioned that he already knew that the White Tiger had hired their clan to open the Black Red Mountain Range. The exhausted, cowardly guy confirmed his words. At the same moment, Li Chan thought about the fact that the strongest organization in Korea began to grow dramatically about 15 years ago. This was related to the seven mysterious writings of San, consisting of seven scrolls. White Tiger unearthed these divine artifacts twenty years ago in an unnamed dungeon. White Tiger was able to find only three scriptures, but even they were endowed with unimaginable power and significant results could be extracted from them. Clan Chief Heavenly Swordsman Mun Sung is now considered one of the strongest swordsmen in the world, but those who follow him are not that extraordinary. However, after a sudden explosive growth, they gained enormous fame. They even became a clan known throughout the world, and it all happened not so long ago. Even on the verge of painful death, the guy adhered to the code of honor and did not want to tell all the secrets of his organization, but Li Chan cruelly replied that he would decide for himself whether to listen to the pleas of the victim or not. The guy had no other choice, so he agreed. He revealed that each of the scrolls belonging to the seven mysterious writings of San had different contents, and was known to each teach how to call upon the power of different ancient constellations forgotten in their days. Li Chan showed great interest in understanding the power of the forgotten stars. It is known among the gods that when light was first created at the beginning of the cosmos, there were not many constellations in the sky. Back then, they were as weak as the cosmos but they possessed colossal wholly destructive power. Although over time, each of them found its place in accordance with the laws of this world. Traces of their existence littered the cosmos and the world, gradually gaining a certain balance. The gloomy god knew that they were called forgotten stars, but previously he could not even imagine that there were still opportunities to borrow their power. It became obvious that the ruler of the abyss kept this a secret from the other deities since this was his ace in the hole. As it turned out, of the three retinues found by the white tiger, they were only able to open two. Bei Wu Jiang heard that the most important one is still not revealed. After these words, Li Chang realized that this was due to the fact that they were unable to obtain Peter's key. It became clear that this scripture was revealed precisely with his help. Having learned this information, the guy inquired about what the motive of the remnants of the Hayoff clan was. He understood that they were unlikely to come only for revenge or the murder of recruits. The exhausted guy replied that their goal was to find an illusory pearl. It was about the very object that Li Chang was able to discover in the bird's nest. He really thought that the deep dislike of smallpox that he felt hid some secret relationship between the two large organizations that had previously collaborated. P. Wu Jen continued his story, from the first scroll the clan borrowed a way to create an unrivaled warrior. Of the seven mysterious scriptures, the first was written about a man who lost his soul after being possessed by starlight. People who have lost their soul also lose their ego, but since this emptiness is filled with starlight, they become amazingly powerful warriors. Thus, they are reborn as holy knights, faithfully carrying out the orders of the stars. To create such powerful warriors, you need wild flowers from the flower beds in Siakon, as well as crying and laughing flowers. With their help you can create an illusory pearl. 
Since all these ingredients were in one dungeon, it became clear why the White Tiger Clan made this place a training camp. The Black and Red Mountain Range was geographically similar to the flower beds of Siakon. Moreover, it is great for testing new members and selecting capable ones in order to obtain powerful warriors. It was possible not to even mention that the people who disappeared here did not listen to the instructions of the instructors, went beyond the safe zones and fell victims to monsters. These guesses led the guide to the idea that the person overseeing this and leading all these projects is none other than the second commander of the White Tiger Clan, Executive Director O. However, after Besla's tomb disappeared overnight and Peter's key simply flew away, the situation for them changed for the worse, so Li Chan gained precious time to implement his plans. Continuing to extract information from the Hayoff fighter, Li Chan some guessed that they were going to reveal the true face of the White Tiger thanks to the illusory pearl. In addition, he believed that they had other evidence that would add weight to their argument. Most of the secrets came true, but it was obvious that there was something that this guy could not know. Having heard everything he needed, Li Chang complied with his enemy's request. Noticing that the White Tiger Clan fighter was still alive, he decided that it would be nice to find out some more information but from another organization. He wanted to know the location of the research center where they created the illusory pearl and cultivated powerful warriors en masse. The guy approached the fighter and offered to help him in exchange for the information he needed. The man understood that this was one of the recruits in front of him, so he asked in shock why he was not afraid of the wrath of their patron god. In response to his words, the guy with a serious look asked if the ward of the White Clan was sure that the patron was on his side. After these words, the fighter, scared to death and disappointed in the situation, received a message from the system that Kaju had lost interest in the believer, that he had achieved nothing. Looking at the sky, Li Chang stated that the tiger, who was in trouble, wanted to get a more persistent and strong believer, whose strength he could count on. Watching the player's impudent speech, Haju began to laugh disgustingly and maliciously. Having learned the necessary information about the location of the laboratory from the White Tiger fighter, Li Chang proceeded to fulfill his promise to his friend's son and suddenly tore off his clothes. After that, he asked the guy to sit in the lotus position. Ashamed of his own body due to the fact that he was despised all his life, Beck Jevil excitedly asked if the tyrant could do this after difficult battles. Li Chan's son gave him real hope and replied that he was now able to heal his comrade. It was a difficult process, so he explained that studying the residual energy of a ghostborn would take some time, while it was very easy to lose track of the process. Moreover, Beck will experience more difficulties, because even if in the real world the whole process takes several hours, the patient will feel that several weeks or even months will pass. Due to the pacification of such hysterical energy, after healing he will be exhausted, so he will have to restore his strength. Although the process is difficult, he reassured Beck that it will definitely end at one point, so there is no point in giving up. Beck Jayaval already knew that if he even thought about retreating for a second, he would be demonized, which meant that he would turn into a monster or a ghost. Li Chang's son reassured him that if he noticed even a hint of this, he would immediately get rid of his body without even thinking about it. He remembers that the consequences could be unimaginable, since there were times in his life as a shadow god when this recruit's father, Xerxes, walked around freely, and it was an absolute disaster. Overflowing with confidence in his comrade, Beck Jevil was ready for any test and asked him not to worry. At that moment, Li Chan noticed that Beck was very similar to his father, because his will was as unshakable as that of the divine being of shadows. After discussing all the details, Li Chang's son began to release the flames of the eight trigrams, which changed its appearance as it acquired destructive properties. The system reported that the ghost born was covered in flames, the fire of the first form of the end of the world flame began to envelop his body. Li Chang mentally turned to him wanting not to lose himself and not give up, no matter what. A moment later, Beck felt his consciousness being transported to another place. He saw himself as a child, remembering those terrifying times, 
he would not want to repeat that nightmare. In this vision, some unfamiliar guy picked up his weakened body and dragged him with him. Beck realized that this was his memory, and he himself was in the world of his subconscious. He didn't want to remember those times. The guy who saved him from the cold brought him to the shelter, where he was immediately thrown out into the street, calling him a terrifying monster. To survive, the little guy, covered in burns, had to eat malnutrition. He didn't have a safe place to stay, so he lived on the street while the other children harassed him because of his terrible appearance. Since these were still his personal memories, he could confidently think that he was still alive. A moment later, he heard the voice of a shadow that appeared in front of him. The entity stated that it was looking for him, after which it noted that the winds in this place were cold and they should move on before the winter became even harsher. The ghost extended his hand to him and offered to go together, saying that Beck would never be alone again. At that moment, the guy remembered the words of his comrade that he should not lose control of himself. At the last moment, he removed his hand and prevented the ghost from gaining control of his body and mind. Beck began to run away from this entity, realizing that he did not belong here. After that, he began to feel Li Chan's presence more strongly, and the system reported that the goddess of justice Minerva smiled at the righteous heart of the talented player. Despite all the difficulties, they overcame a key moment. Chan Sung noticed that the ghost's son is very persistent, and this is his admirable trait. He thought that if this guy began to be demonized, there was no guarantee that he would be able to get rid of him even if he gained access to Jigui's entire vessel. Still, this was not strange, Beck had incredible potential, since most likely he was the son of Xerxes himself. While he was trying to catch his breath after treatment, Li Chan decided to finish some business and use runes that hid the guy's location from outside observers. He was ready to look at the pearls of illusion of the research center, but before that he had to complete one task that had been started for a long time. Activating his beast sense skill, he went in pursuit of the witness. Li Chang couldn't let Song Yu Jong tell the executive director what he saw. Yu Yun knew that he had to tell COO everything, no matter what the cost. He tried to run away with all his might, as he understood that Li Chang was concentrating on treating the second promising recruit. But at one moment, he felt the presence of the one from whom he was trying to hide. Li Chang's son was able to catch up with him and throw him to the ground, which is why the invisibility of the director's ward was revealed. The guy lying on the ground understood that he could not hide from such a monster. Li Chang's gaze was cold and full of killing intent. Having no other choice, Song Yu Jong decided to draw his sword and begin to defend himself. But his opponent was significantly superior to him in speed and within a moment he was wounded in the shoulder. To prevent his opponent from escaping, Li Chang pinned him to a tree. The player had finally reached the level at which he could confidently defeat the director's ward, who used advanced surveillance skills. When the White Tiger Clan fighter asked what Li Chang planned to do next, the guy replied that at first he wanted to quickly finish off the hound dog of the White Tiger Clan, but changed his mind because he did not want COO to suspect him of this. Song Yu Jong was concerned about the hopelessness of the situation, but after these words he began to hope that they could come to an agreement. But unexpectedly for him, Li Chang took out an illusory pearl and said that he had an excellent way to improve relationships, so there was no need to choose the difficult path. After these words, he forced the guy to swallow this object, which will make him lose his own ego. The system reported that his thoughts were paralyzed, the ego was eliminated, and he fell into a hypnotic trance. To check if everything really worked as it should, Li Chang ordered him to stand up. Hearing this, Song Yu Jong rose to his feet without hesitation. From this pitiful sight, Li Chang was forced to say that losing his soul was very sad. The former ward of the general director has become an ordinary shell, a body that is capable of carrying out any orders. Moreover, he did not think at all about how dangerous this order was and was even ready to strangle himself. This was more than enough, seeing the loyalty of his new toy, Li Chan asked him to stop. 
Without any delay, Song Yujong stopped. Taking a look at the results of the illusory pearl, Li Chang agreed that the White Tiger Clan had indeed done something incredible. They were able to pull something similar out of low-level ingredients, so it was hard to guess how strong the other items were. Addressing the body without an identity, Li Chang ordered him to inform General Manager O that no abnormalities were found regarding the recruits. He also ordered him to act as usual, as if nothing had happened. Hypnotized, Song Yujong accepted the order and began to carry it out, while Hanju, observing his actions, became interested in the player's aspirations. Without answering the deity, Li Chang asked the hypnotized fighter to return. The guy with no identity accepted a new order. He began to use his technique to move without a trace. At that very moment, Li Chang changed his mind and asked him to stay a little longer. He asked his puppet to teach him a technique that he uses for surveillance and undetected movement. Li Chang thought that she actually seemed more useful than he had previously thought. In addition, he believed that she could be a great match for Beck Jiavil. With his index finger raised instructively, Song Yu Zhang declared that this was the lagging storm of the flying tiger. He said that Li Chang could use the wind for invisibility or camouflage, and since this technique was derived from Tiger Stride, the recruit would be able to use it. The player asked the fighter to teach him this technique. Sun Yujong replied that he did not have a skill book with him, so it would take quite a lot of time. Li Chang replied that he would figure out how to master it himself. But doubting the orders, Song Yujong proceeded to demonstrate this ability. Watching the actions of the hypnotized man, Li Chang began to understand the essence of this ability. His puppet was shocked that the rookie was able to recreate these movements just by observing them. After acquiring this power, Li Chang improved the basic skill of Tiger Walk and gained an ability called Flying Tiger Lagging Storm, which surpasses the basic skill in terms of speed, agility, and stealth. Song Yu Zhang was hypnotized, but due to the order that he should behave as usual, the body could not help but be surprised and he stated that he had been mastering this power for several years, while the rookie was able to learn it after observing the use. Once again, Song Ying stated that Li Chan Sung is an amazing person. Tired of these compliments, the guy gave the order to the guy to move on. After this, Li Chan Sung also began to use new abilities, and using invisibility, he went to the place of interest to him. Watching all this, Haja laughed, in absolute shock. The system reported Pablesag's opinion that the player's movements were great for hunting skills, so she thought about which one should be given to a talented guy as a reward for his performance. Li Chang stopped near the place where the female Jigui arrived on the battlefield. From Beck's words, he learned that a pair of Jigwis lay an egg once every hundred years. He discovered this bird's nest. Although an egg is laid once every hundred years, it apparently took even longer to hatch. Observing the behavior of this monster, Li Chang learned that Jigui has three forms, but since he is a clot of spirits, he actually does not have a physical body. Since their ancestors chose the bird form, their descendants also stick to it, but can change it based on their environment. In addition, the guy understood that it was possible to redirect the nature of this creature in a good direction and increase their intelligence. The balance of the egg's power and the fact that it was underdeveloped seemed like a great opportunity to test his theory. Still, the guy believed that it would be better for him if this monster became a spirit bird. The guy began to absorb his power, while Haja became interested in how he was going to hatch the egg. Without waiting for an answer, God advised that instead of the crude form of a winged animal, choose the form of a rare monster, perhaps even a tiger. At the same time, Pable Sag joined the discussion and first suggested choosing a hunting dog, and then a young falcon and a tengu. The guy thanked them for their advice and thought that the dragon's daughter had finally offered him something truly reasonable. At the same time, a conflict began between the two deities and the system noticed that their relationship had deteriorated significantly. They were like a cat and a dog who could not reach a common opinion. Having absorbed the spirit chick, the guy began to use his inner flame to raise it into the desired monster. Having finished this matter, the guy went to the research center. Meanwhile, 
Things were quite hectic inside as unexpected guests from the government were heading towards them. Despite this, the executive director asked them to just wait, saying that everything would be resolved soon. He was afraid that despite all his achievements, he faced the risk of losing everything. To gain his glory, he used the illusory pearl to create a divine warrior, and with the third-level basic ability, he developed star coordinates, various divine ornaments and artifacts. Despite all that he had achieved with the white tiger, the man did not understand why the authorities sent an inspection department to him. Apparently, he did not see any crimes behind him. In his opinion, this was due to the fact that he appropriated a small amount of the budget that was allocated for the development of some government projects. Fearing the consequences, he contacted Executive Director O a bunch of times to get instructions, but in response, the old man simply told him to wait. The inspection council said that the inspection would come specifically on this day, and third-rank management would come to them on an official visit. Addressing his artificial soldiers, he ordered them to destroy all documents that could expose them to suspicion. Returning to one of the most suspicious projects called Jida, the man remembered that his customer and chief engineer was the executive director O himself, which is why the authorities were so interested in whether everything they did was legal. For such a controversial scientist, attention from the association was especially dangerous. In addition, he was close to receiving the White Tiger rank for his contributions to the organization. On the other hand, he was able to instantly calm down after thinking that all the members of the White Tiger clan were people with incredible influence, so he would definitely be able to earn a huge amount of money. To eliminate possible risks, he wanted to make sure that he could always have emergency exits. Returning to the Divine Warrior Project, he thought that it would be nice to get the bodies of the two most effective recruits. He didn't know where they were, since the connection had suddenly been cut off, but he thought that it would be nice to replenish his collection with such strong specimens. As it turned out, as a victim, he had already used one of the strong newcomers, with whom Li Chang began his mission. Returning to the problems of information leakage, he began to yell at his subordinates, for still not being able to return the illusory pill. In addition, those subordinates who were sent on this mission have not yet returned. While the conflict between the deities was only gaining momentum, Li Chang reached his destination. He immediately noticed that this place was an attractive location for creating a laboratory, because nearby were the screeching flowers that were used as an ingredient to create an illusory pearl. The entrance was well guarded, so it was impossible to enter without hiding your presence. When using this disguise, even the sounds he made instantly dissipated into the air. Li Chang headed towards the entrance with great speed. He rushed past the inexperienced fighters, so they were unable to notice him. Despite this, one of the fighters felt something strange. It really seemed to him that something flew past them, but his comrade reassured him saying that it was just his imagination. They dismissed this strange feeling as excitement and anxiety due to the fact that the association's inspection department was scheduled to visit them. Moving along the corridors, the guy used not only camouflage, but also the eye of a viper, with the help of which he managed to identify all the traps along the way and bypass them. The serpent that encircles the world could not hide his delight at the player's ability to use the abilities he had bestowed upon him. At the same time, the guy was interested in what all the employees were so worried about. Seniors hurriedly gave orders, while their wards hurried to hide some details of their activities and hid documentation. To find out what was going on, the guy enhanced his hearing with the help of the beast's sense skill, thanks to which he could pick up all the sounds in the area despite the high speed of movement. He could hear them talking about how they had a lot to do, but they had to be interrupted by a sudden visit from people from the state association. In addition, everyone was worried that the fighters sent to retrieve the lost illusory pearl had not yet returned. A moment later, their panic intensified as they saw a message from the system that the male and female Jinghi had been defeated, while the bodies of the exhausted fighters were discovered next to them. Despite this news, they were still puzzled about how to clear the premises of their atrocities before the inspection department arrived. At the same time, 
Li Chang Sung finally discovered the location where the Illusory Pearl Production Facility was located. While at the entrance, he began to smell a strong smell of poisonous herbs. Around him were many divine warriors created with the help of illusory pearls. The head of the tiger disaster closely watched the rookie's actions. The guy was not afraid to be in a place filled with fumes of poisons, because his immunity to ten poisons was enough to neutralize all the harm. He was forced to stop when he encountered a door that required proof of identity. To enter, he had to enter the pattern or code word needed to open it. Simply kicking down the door was the easiest option, but at this stage Li Chang couldn't make any noise. He began to think about what the key could be and at the same moment, the only logical answer seemed to be Peter's key. The guy was not sure of his guess, but it seemed to him that the object that he constantly carries with him could be a clue. At the same moment, he changed his mind about getting the valuable thing, as the ruler of the abyss continued to watch him. He assumed that just the connection with this key would be enough for him to move on. As it turned out, his assumption turned out to be correct and the gentleman's identity was confirmed, after which the locking mechanism turned off and the door began to open. Li Chang Sung couldn't believe that the item he was able to obtain from the mountain dungeon had such incredible power that it could deal with such things instantly. The system reported that Haju was a little confused by how quickly the mechanism opened. He even had a few questions for the player about whether he had a talent for picking locks. After the player went inside, he found what he came for. Around him were countless test subjects who had begun their transformation into divine tiger warriors who had gotten into trouble. The guy considered what the researchers of the White Tiger Clan were doing was an abomination. At one point he noticed that the system began to report the dissatisfaction of the goddess of justice. The goddess burst into anger and prayed for justice, after which the guy received an unexpected quest. Owl was extremely disappointed with the villainous and dark influence that Kaja had spread in the human world. She felt sorry for those who lost their lives while trapped in the machines, so she began to pray to the player to give the victims peace and tranquility. The reward for this was her blessing, befitting the results. No matter how angry she was with the abyss ruler, Li Chang still didn't think she was really ready for such a step. The blessing corresponding to its results meant that Li Chang Sung would be able to receive powers from her. Haju waited with curiosity for the guy's answer, which he understood that if he accepted this quest, then the ruler of the abyss would turn his back on him. However, on the other hand, he understood that if he refused Minerva's plea, then the goddess would completely renounce him. The choice was really difficult. At the same moment, Minerva watched the player with tension. But instead of choosing between which deity's inclination he would have to lose, Li Chan's son came up with a cunning plan. He turned to Hajj and stated that he wanted to ask something from the patron of his clan. Hajj cordially agreed to listen to the guy. So Li Chan continued, saying that the patron probably knows the reason why he is in this place. The patron nodded his head in agreement and suggested getting straight to the point. He realized that both deities wanted to get his power, so he gave a vague tip and stated that he was going to take everything that was in this laboratory. In addition, he added that he does not intend to allow others to have what he himself does not have. After these words, he asked what the tiger who was in trouble, thought about this. Chan Sung believed that the ruler of the abyss was very interested in him. In addition, he was a very sought-after candidate for priesthood, so it was unlikely that they would refuse him due to disagreements within the laboratory. In response, Haju began to smirk at the player's obvious intentions and then said that he still liked him, even though he was trying to fool one of his family members with his acting. In the end, the deity promised that he would not suppress the recruits' wild ambitions. Li Chang received a sudden quest called Tiger Robbery. Kaju stated his passionate desire to see what the new priest candidate was capable of, so he specified in the conditions that the tyrant must take everything he sees, after which he should consume these spoils. If successful, he will be able to additionally receive a new blessing from this deity. His plan worked, and now he can satisfy the interests of both deities. Minerva was delighted with the decision the player she was interested in made. 
Having discussed all the details and accepted the quest, the guy was ready to begin collecting an incredible amount of powerful items. But suddenly for him, he missed how he stopped using disguise and was noticed by the divine warriors. In any case, he was going to use the destructive power of the doomsday flames of the eight trigrams urn, which would leave no trace after eliminating the enemies. In addition, he equipped the vessel with Jigvi. The magical power of the previously absorbed monster began to spread throughout the room. The powerful fire caused panic on the faces of the men, who had everything under control for several minutes. Li Chang decided not to delay the destruction of this disgusting place, so he summoned a hurricane of fire spirit flames. Within a moment, its power spread throughout the entire building. Those outside witnessed a sudden explosion of incredible power. The fighters who could use ice magic began to extinguish the flames from afar. Their efforts turned out to be pointless, since none of them could compare with the destructive power of the flames of the fire spirit. Real horror was happening before the eyes of the head of the laboratory. He was in despair and did not understand what was happening to the place where all his achievements were located. Addressing his charges, he was interested in what the security service was doing and how they allowed this to happen. A few seconds later, another powerful explosion completely destroyed the entrance, and the fat man flew to the side. The concerned ward asked his boss if everything was okay. The man was simply shocked and, first of all, asked how many people they had lost. It was not easy to answer this question. The remnants of their forces tried to leave the building. They were badly injured and in addition to burns, many of them received reports that they had a burn infection. The system recommended that they leave the danger zone. It was obvious that Li Chan, as always, tried not to leave any traces behind him. A moment later, the destructive fire of the eight trigrams flame began to catch up with them. The boss of the laboratory could not stand by. Noticing the stranger, he immediately rushed to attack. Li Chang stopped his attack and noted that this attempt was not bad. The scientist immediately moved on to questions. He was wondering who created all this chaos. He assumed that he was sent by the survivors of the Hayoff clan. Besides, he was wondering how the guy could control Jigui's doomsday flames. Looking at the guy again, he recognized the strongest recruit of their training camp. At that very moment, he realized that the situation was not at all under their control because they had previously been informed that Li Chan's son should be in a completely different place. Having seen the recruit in person, who looked like a promising vessel for him, he completely forgot that his laboratory had been looted and destroyed. He believed that by having such warriors at his disposal, in five years he would be able to create a clan like the White Tiger, which would bring him an incredible amount of money and power. At that moment, when the man... Filled with greed, delved deeper into his dreams, Li Chang began to use disguise in order to escape from the sight of a powerful enemy. The scientist could not miss such a great opportunity, so he launched a blow in his direction, enhanced by magical energy. At the same moment, the flying tiger skill was forcibly deactivated and the stealth was revealed. The guy was forced to dodge this attack. Just a few seconds later, a large explosion occurred behind him. It became clear that the strength of this fat man should not be underestimated. Without hesitation, he immediately rushed into close combat using his huge two-handed sword. Looking at the man's face, the guy realized that he had become a victim of his own experiments. The scientist turned out to be one of the warriors sent by God. Continuing to repel countless powerful attacks from this monster, Li Chang realized that not only ordinary soldiers, but also leaders had become warriors sent by God. Since this happened to the organization's chief scientist, it could be assumed that some of the other white tiger leaders also underwent similar changes. On the other hand, it wasn't so bad, because he had the opportunity to test his strength against such a strong opponent. To change the course of the battle, the guy decided to distribute additional points in favor of speed and agility. After this, the scientist began to feel the pressure increase. He was forced to go on defense as the rookie continued to unleash a rapid and precise series of attacks with his dragon blade. 
Li Chang was able to gain a slight advantage, so the scientist went to a safer distance. He couldn't believe that this was really a beginner and not an experienced fighter. The guy left one of the clan leaders no other choice, so he resorted to using ghostly energy. His magical power became denser. Watching this, Li Chang received messages from the system about the danger. A powerful area attack was directed towards the talented player. Li Chang had no choice but to leave the affected area. He was really annoyed by the ghostly energy, which was reminiscent of Hajj's power. When the guy tried to move to a more advantageous place, artificial warriors appeared behind him. They were furious about what happened to the laboratory, so they were ready to give their lives for the director. Li Chang couldn't believe that even they were also gods sent warriors. To deal with their numerical advantage, Li Chang resorted to using blood poison to enhance the doomsday fire barrier. He protected himself from these monsters in order to gain some time. Despite the power of his technique, he was unable to stop the gods sent warriors. The enemies managed to break through his barrier. It was dangerous to fight further, so the guy decided to take a desperate step. He acted wisely and decided to flee in order to divide the enemy forces. Continuing to move through the corridors of the remains of the laboratory, the guy stopped and stopped using his disguise. The stupid cloned warriors shouted that they managed to trap the enemy. But the guy's cold and purposeful gaze said otherwise. Of course, the scientist was wary of his calm behavior. He was furious because he realized that they hadn't actually cornered him. He had just deliberately brought them to this place so as not to have to fight multiple people at the same time. Noticing the guy's movement, he shouted to his charges to immediately bend down. But it was too late and the scientist could only watch as his fighters fell one after another. While in a narrow corridor, Li Chang resorted to using his razor-sharp whip, which was saturated with magical energy. By destroying his enemies, his power began to increase and his accuracy increased significantly. But at one point, the guy was so carried away by the extermination of his enemies that he did not notice how the director himself approached him, who was the most dangerous among all. In an instant, the man was able to catch the guy by the neck and lift him up, pressing him against the wall. He shouted that he had finally caught the naive recruit. The arrogant scientist shouted that he was far superior to the tyrant at all levels and in all characteristics, so he should immediately surrender and become his puppet. But instead of confusion and panic, there was a confident smile on the recruit's face, with which he asked whether the scientist was really sure that since he was able to catch him, he would be able to do whatever he wanted. The arrogant man thought he was in control but he was proven wrong. Within a moment, he saw that there was a seal on Li Chan's right hand, which had a huge amount of energy concentrated. A legendary artifact, a fish gut sword, began to appear from his right hand. At the same moment, a dragon tooth appeared in his left hand. With a cold gaze, he said the name of the technique. The twin sword sounded with a loud scream. At the same moment, the dagger called the crooked tooth of the evil dragon awakened. When it comes to divine artifacts, it is worth noting that O Yezi earned eternal fame after he created his first masterpieces. At the same time, the demonic blacksmith Tauti created countless ingenious things so that the title of blacksmith would be associated only with him. Even among the gods and stars, these two are considered known opposing forces. It is impossible to decide which of them is the best craftsman. Because both are valued for different things, and the eras and places they worked in are different, making them not compete head to head with each other. However, now, at this very moment when Li Chang has revealed the power of both legendary blacksmith's items, it is time to decide who is the best. The fish gut sword that has quenched its bloodlust is sparkling like never before, and the evil dragon's crooked tooth has in turn begun to show its true value. Li Chang fulfilled the necessary conditions, and legendary events took place before the scientist's eyes. The Shadow God, as an expert with killing weapons, was able to unleash the full potential of the evil dragon's crooked tooth. It is known that the blade that the guy received from Pablesag has the effect of prolonged bleeding, 
but other effects cannot be determined, since its owner has not yet fulfilled some of the requirements. Crossing his swords, the guy took a deep breath, the sound of the twin swords causing his opponent to tremble. Pable Sag could not believe that the player she was attracted to was able to hurt her divine artifact, bestowed by the goddess Tiamat. The two famous blades also attracted the interest of other deities. Facing such a monster as Li Chang, the scientist began to turn to his bestial instincts, which he received from his patron. It told him to avoid this guy at all costs. The guy only slightly swung, and at that moment, his enemy felt that if he did not avoid these blows, he would immediately die. Having no time to dodge, the scientist decided to go on defense, he relied on his huge two-handed sword. The first attack was blocked, but the man began to feel exhausted, and he flew several meters back. After delivering the first test attack, Li Chan noticed that the sword made by the first O Yezi began to cry and complain that he did not want to end the battle so quickly. The hunger of the fish gut sword was understandable, since this item had been sealed hundreds of years ago. At that very moment, Dragafan decided to join in the fun. This sword begged to be seen what it could do. Li Chang couldn't refuse him and swung it towards his enemy. An incredible amount of energy was directed towards the scientist, who was not able to fight against such power. He tried his best to hold back the attack, but the pressure was too much. At one point, his two-handed sword broke. While the fish gut sword showed off its shiny blade, the prey thought that in order to survive, it must immediately flee the battlefield. In the middle of the battle, Li Chang was forced to choose between his two blades, both of them were proud and eager to make the final blow. While the guy was thinking about which legendary artifact to use, the scientist was already running away. Li Chang could not let go of this leader, because this threatened him with problems within the White Tiger Clan, which would disrupt his plans. In order not to have to choose, the guy struck a double blow with his best blades. In addition, he decided to make sure that this would be enough, so he decided to take out the enemy using the Black Mountain Monarch Claw skill. It was impossible to escape from such incredible power. Looking around, the scientist managed to notice the inevitable collision with the mysterious force of the mysterious newcomer. A powerful explosion ended this battle and the enemy was defeated. The system reported that the scientists began to experience severe despair, he still had a thirst for life, but he was doomed. One blow from the legendary blades, enhanced by the destructive power of the flames of eight trigrams, was enough to destroy the warrior sent by God. In addition, the fire of the end of the world continued to intensify as it fed on the anger of its owner. The scientist's regrets and desperate attempts did not escape the player's attention. He did not understand where this man was trying to crawl away in such a hopeless situation. He walked slowly behind him to find out what purpose his prey was pursuing. The system reported that player Yasang One has been eliminated and is no longer in the dungeon ranking. As it turned out, he was heading towards the door that led to some kind of hidden laboratory. Li Chang recalled his sword and approached the mysterious entrance. The door was locked. The player wondered if he could get inside again using the power of Pedro's key. With his hand, he was again able to bypass the laboratory's defenses. The master's identity was confirmed and Li Chang gained access to another laboratory, which contained the secrets of the terrifying scientist clan of the White Tiger. At that moment, the guy realized that this key was suitable for opening anything that was protected, no matter whether it was a door or a complex mechanism. When he went inside, he saw a large mechanism with a girl on it. Her entire body was connected to sensors and mechanisms that were causing her changes. Li Chan headed closer to see what Ye Sang Wen was really up to. The guy saw that one of the recruits had become a victim of the experiments of a man-man. Most likely, the scientist believed that she would make an excellent warrior, sent by God. Li Chan Sung began to remember who she was. It was not difficult, because the scientist's victim was his faithful fan, who had shown interest in the tyrant's personality from the very beginning of the training camp. Looking at the list of participants, he learned that her name was Xin Yunxiu. 
the guy assumed that she had already been turned into a warrior sent by God. To make sure what condition she was in, the guy took her hand and began analyzing it using his system. As it turned out, the scientist used a completely different method of transforming the player. He noticed that something stronger and more fundamental was used here, a force that even surpassed the warrior sent by God. The results of experiments on people were what he had to observe inside the laboratory. It was no longer strange that the local white tiger clan warriors tried so hard to hide the documentation from the eyes of the commission representatives from the association. To create the real monster, these vile scientists used data from the bodies of demonic beasts, goblins, and even jigui. It became obvious why executive director O tried so hard to hide this place from the others. Looking at this girl, Li Chan thought that the warriors sent by God were only a step on the path to the perfection that Xin Yunxiu became. Thanks to the beast sense he received from Haju, Li Chan discovered her resemblance to the leader of the goblin army, whose name was Gildel. Using the viper's eyes, the guy learned that her transformation was 40% complete. This was too little to consider her a warrior or leader of the goblins. However, her physical body has become so strong that it is simply ridiculous to compare her to the ordinary person she was before. Her muscle fibers had become strengthened and in her current state, she would be able to beat most of the players that arrived at the training camp alive. It was lucky that the hypnotic pearl and brainwashing were not used on her, so the girl's identity was preserved. While Kaju was watching the player's actions, waiting for his next actions, Minerva asked him to help the poor girl who had become a victim of the mad scientist's experiments. Without hesitation, Chan Sung began to turn off the equipment that continued to change the girl's body. Using the doomsday flames of the eight trigrams urn, he began to purify her body. Minerva was satisfied with his choice. She ordered the player to hurry up and move the girl to a safe place, and then give her first aid. The power that was put into Shin's body and the first form of the end of the world flame clashed in fierce resistance. Li Chang tried to destroy all the negative aspects of this experiment, leaving only the positive aspects that would be useful for the poor girl's future. He could only watch, while Shin Yunxiu had to show persistence and desire to live. At that moment, Kaja began to wonder where the ambitious desire to take everything for himself and leave disappeared. He mocked the player for choosing to heal this child instead of using her to increase his own power. In response, Li Chang said that he still had not given up on his intentions. Kaju did not understand what he meant, while the guy began to use the power of the Lord of the Underworld, with the help of which he began to absorb the power of those whom he destroyed inside the laboratory. The power that was absorbed at that moment began to improve the player's characteristics and became the material for the flame of the end of the world. While Hanju laughed uncontrollably, Li Cham continued to improve, absorbing incredible amounts of power from the destroyed God-sent warriors. The ruler of the abyss behaved like a real scumbag, even such a cruel person as the gloomy god could not understand his behavior. At that moment, he thought about how the preparations for the visit of the association representative were going. Since they were being followed, it was obvious that the executive director's opponent must have come along with the crime surveillance department. It was about Quan Hyo. This suspicious guy decided to come to the laboratory of the White Tiger Clan, so it was logical that Chief O was considering measures to eliminate him. The player's idea of closing the dungeon was only supported by a superficial mana reading, so he could not even imagine that Director O was planning to remove his political opponent here. Most likely, the ruler of the abyss was laughing at this very situation, so Li Chan realized that he did not have time to hesitate. The clan fighters who remained outside watched all these explosions and thought about why their leader did not rush outside. They knew that the inspection department had already entered the dungeon, and it was only a matter of time before they reached the hidden laboratory. Just a moment after this reasoning, they felt a powerful vibration. The laboratory explosion spread to the place where they were located. As a result, among the witnesses there was no one left alive. This incident ended Li Chang, without leaving a trace behind himself, began to use the form of the spirit in order to get to a safer place. 
The inspection department was late. They could only watch as the laboratory continued to explode. With all this chaos, the third commander of the old Tiger Fangs, Quan Haiyan, could only watch helplessly. Addressing his charges, he asked if they could find out what happened here. One of the agents came forward and replied that it appeared that there were a lot of explosives stored underground, but they were unable to find out what caused them to detonate. Using reconnaissance abilities, one of the fighters was able to see traces of the use of several divine powers at the same time, which indicated that the laboratory was destroyed as a result of the battle. In addition, after analyzing the area, they were able to find out that the fire was created by the end of the world flame of the monster Jigui. The Fang commander was aware that this entire situation had been planned. Addressing his charges, the man suggested that the laboratory workers were waiting for him to enter the building in order to blow it up along with all the evidence. But he was curious why the fighters did not wait for his visit. He thought that a sudden battle had begun. He stated the fact that Executive Director O was cunning and could not make such a mistake, so their plan was influenced by outside influences. It was obvious that there was another factor that Mr. O did not take into account, but what exactly happened, the man could not understand. The man ordered agents to continue to search the area for evidence. In addition, he clarified that several mysterious people left the laboratory before it was completely destroyed. They were afraid that they might know information that would threaten the safety of the White Tiger Clan. The agents bowed and announced that they would begin to correct this situation. Leaving the dungeon, the man turned to his patron god. He thought it would be great if Hadju would give him a hint, but he knew that would never happen. In response, the system reported that god was pleased with the chaos filling this dungeon. Quan Haiyuni had no choice but to leave empty-handed. But despite this, he was determined to deal with such an arrogant executive director himself. He was sure that Kaju also wanted this. While agents of the old White Tiger Clan squad were dealing with the consequences of the incident at the laboratory, Beck Jevil began to regain consciousness. He didn't know where he was, but he felt it was safe here. In front of him was Li Chan, in his arms was some girl. The player smiled slyly towards his friend. It was too mysterious and Beck began to wonder who this stranger was. He assumed that his comrade had his wife in his hands. In response, Li Chang threw the mirror directly at his forehead. He said that, apparently, Beck had fully recovered since he started talking such nonsense. Instead of meaningless assumptions, he invited him to look in the mirror and see the result of his efforts. Taking the mirror in his hands, the guy sighed heavily, because he was not ready to see something so important to him. When he looked in the mirror, he saw that there was no trace left of his burns. He could not take his eyes off the results of the work and the help of a good person. With a smile on his face, the gloomy god calmly told his friend's son that he had done a good job. Remembering the difficult path that he had to go through for the sake of recovery, Beck Jevil could not hold back his tears. A moment later, the guys heard that the girl was beginning to regain consciousness. She tried to say something vaguely. Opening her eyes, she heard the guy's voice asking if she was okay. Suddenly for the guys, Shinyensio jumped from the arms of her savior and moved a little to the side, after which she lay on her back. She said out loud that she was dreaming all this, since it was hard for her to believe that the tyrant himself was holding her in his arms. She continued her sleepy story, saying that at such moments you don't want to wake up. The girl's behavior seemed strange and the confused guys began to look at each other, realizing that they had no idea what was happening now. Within a moment, the girl realized the situation. The guy sat down next to her and she began to ask him about what she said when she first began to regain consciousness. Despite her strange behavior, Li Chan was calm because he understood that she did not remember anything about the kidnapping. Communication with her idol seemed like a real dream for her while the guy thought that it would be nice for her to provide psychological help, but at that moment there was no such possibility. Hearing from the tyrant that she did not behave provocatively, the girl sighed with relief. Since everyone was fine, Li Chan Sung decided to pay attention to the situation 
and said that they should hurry up and leave the place as it is not safe. In response, the girl suddenly asked what his blood type was. Li Chang's son did not understand why this question was asked, but he briefly answered that he had a third blood type. After that, she began asking a series of leading questions, which were reminiscent of a female test for similarity with guys. Taking advantage of the moment, she talked with her idol and recalled moments from his career where he mentioned his hobbies. She knew him as the embodiment of the word rudeness, so she could not believe that this was the real Li Chan Sum, because he would behave differently and would not be so kind to some stranger. The situation became incredibly difficult. The guy stepped aside and began to think about leaving this crazy girl and, together with his more adequate friend, finally leaving this terrible place. Seeing the idol's reaction, the girl began to laugh loudly, she said that in front of her was really a tyrant. Turning to Li Chan's comrade, she said that she was able to identify him by the displeased expression on his face. This daring girl drove the player crazy. To support her hypothesis, she said that only a tyrant would abandon a person because he pissed her off. Beck agreed with her assumption and said that there could be no mistake. Then she went forward and, considering herself part of the team, asked where they were going to go next. Despite the madness that was going on around him, the guy was satisfied with recent events. He managed to get an incredible amount of trophies, and as a reward for completing sudden quests, two blessings from Minerva and Kaja at the same time. He started this dungeon on his own, but made friends who seemed loyal and sincere. Brother Shin didn't yet know how much had happened to her sister in the past two weeks. He continued searching, worried that something might have happened to her. At one point, he came across a well-organized group of players who pounced on him and warned him to stop. Four fighters said that the guy had entered their territory, and if he took even a step, then he would not be able to avoid a fight. It was obvious that the excited guy was in a hurry. He respectfully asked the guys to let him go and let him go further. After these words, I'm Yohan, Mr. Lim's boss, appeared in front of him. This man with a katana on his back apologized for the behavior of his subordinates, which was unnecessarily rude. He said he didn't know why the player wanted to move on, but clarified that they couldn't allow him to do that. With a hypocritical smile on his face, he replied that they would look for his sister themselves after which he asked the guy not to worry and go back to the safe zone. The man was unhappy with the appearance of the stranger, because he believed that this would only give him more work. As it turned out, he was closely monitoring the ranking of the dungeon and could not come to terms with the fact that Li Chang's son had already risen to second place, while he himself was in 121st place. He was immersed in competition and thought that the more time passed, the more difficult it would be to catch up with the strong recruit. He considered it his duty to close the gap with the former esports player. The excited guy seemed like an obstacle to his goal, so he continued to refuse him permission to go further. The arrogant guy could not allow this player to kill even one monster that was in this forest. He was greedy for every point that could bring him closer to his competitor. But Brother Shin had no choice but to ignore the team's warnings and run ahead to find his sister. The man was furious and perceived the player's decision as unprecedented insolence. He believed that the guy had entered his hunting grounds in order to steal his glory. In response to this, Im Yohan drew his katana and shouted that the new recruit should think twice before entering the forest. The guy wanted to justify himself but it seemed that the leader of this team was not going to listen to him. Using his tiger skills, he swung to strike the unarmed and exhausted boy. At that very moment, Shinyuncio herself appeared behind them. The girl quickly rushed towards them and shouted that the idiot with the appearance of a squid should stay away from her brother. The girl came to the defense of the agitated guy, so Im Yohan could not strike. The man was shocked by what was happening. He jumped back in order to hear the justification of such insolence on the part of the insolent people. The girl started the conversation. She asked the arrogant man where he got the courage to raise his hand against her brother, and then asked him to leave. He seemed to harbor a deep resentment at her words, and his comrades began to anticipate battle. With a calm look, 
the girl repeated her words that they should stay away from her brother. But the man replied that it was not these words that hurt him, but those that she had uttered earlier. Remembering her welcoming speech, the girl understood what was being said and began to laugh slyly. Instead of apologizing and ending this conflict, she just started adding fuel to the fire by saying that I'm Johan looks like a nod squid, or even a dried and twisted sea anemone. The man was extremely angry. He nervously replied that their team would not forgive her for such rude words. In response, the girl began to prepare for battle and said that his fighters were the first to attack her brother, and she began to regard this as intimidation or abuse of power. The narcissistic M. Johan and his team could not tolerate her answer and rushed to attack, threatening that they would tear out her insolent tongue. But the girl was not afraid of this, even though the enemy had a numerical advantage and her brother was unable to fight back. In an instant, the player's battlefield was filled with her powerful tiger aura. Beck and Chan Sung were nearby and watched what was happening. The healed guy thought that they should join in the fight and help the girl who had recently been unconscious. But Li Chang asked him to take his time and just observe. He added that there was no need for them to interfere at this point. The guy was thinking that the tiger aura in Shin Yuncio's use had exceeded Jida's rage and was now filled with royal tiger calamity. This was an unimaginable power for a rookie and it was obvious that the girl was completely unfamiliar with this, but despite this, she subconsciously skillfully wielded these abilities. It was as if this power had belonged to her from the very beginning. Li Chang Sung could gain some benefit by staying away. He assumed that if he continued to observe her, he would be able to understand what Ji Dao was like. In this case, he would even be able to notice the negative effects of this power. Attacking the girl, the entire team of players was left without weapons, as their blades were instantly broken. They couldn't withstand the shield that Shin subconsciously used. In addition, there was no particular surprise on her face, she was enthusiastically eager to fight. As she progressed in her tiger stride skill, her strength and speed rapidly increased. Ordinary players could not do anything against such incredible power. The girl calmly dealt with their numerical advantage, striking with a huge shield. No one could resist her power, the blows caused their weapons to break. One of the more agile fighters managed to enter the girl's blind spot and was ready to stab her in the back. But as it turned out, the girl managed to notice it. Without doubting her abilities, she began to use her magical power and delivered a crushing kick. Beck couldn't believe that the previously weakened girl could use the skills of the White Tiger Clan so skillfully. At the same time, Li Chang assumed a similar outcome, so he continued to watch in anticipation of something more interesting. The girl's next weapon shocked the enemy team. Her tiger weapons included not only a shield, but also a huge halberd which a weak and defenseless girl could hardly handle. Confident Shin decided to ask if M. Johan was confident that he could make her apologize for the insults. The guy, scared to death, could not move, while the girl, filled with anger, once again asked him to repeat the recent threats. Observing this, Minerva began to support Shin Yuncio, seeing true justice in her actions. The girl's strength was significantly superior to her opponent's. M. Johan had completely lost control of the battle, all he could do was still arrogantly think about how some scoundrel, whose rank was much lower than his, could so easily deal with his team. After seeing this, Beck agreed that there really was no reason for them to interfere in the battle. Li Chang was satisfied with this spectacle. As it turned out, when Xin regained consciousness, she warned him that she managed to remain calm even after she understood the powers that were previously unfamiliar to her. Her real talent was her poise and determination. In addition, the gloomy god noticed that she has superhuman strength and feelings that outshine the flame of Jida. At the moment of battle, her hidden potential blossomed, it complemented her physical attributes. The guy was excited to watch her power level without awakening expecting to see something more likely in the form of the real Jida. At one point, he thought about an important detail that he had previously missed. He realized that C.O.O. was not the only one who wielded such power. 
Although he did not know what one of the clan leaders should strive for, he was sure that his ambitions were certainly not small. Li Chang's son was able to pick up something interesting from the altar, so he wanted to confirm the information that was related to the mysterious thing he was thinking about. While the guy was thinking about the girl's limitless potential, and Johan received the final blow that ended this battle. The girl was many times superior to him in brute strength and skills, she did not intend to kill her daring opponent, so she hit him with the blunt side of the halberd, causing him to lose consciousness. The brother watching this battle could not understand what had happened to his sister during this time that she had changed so much. She cryptically replied that it was something strange. Meanwhile, her comrades appeared and calmly watched the beating of the self-confident players. The guy probably wasn't very happy to see the one who stole his sister's heart. With a satisfied smile, the girl said that her brother should not worry, because her idol Li Chan Sung was the one who saved her from danger. In addition to the tyrant, the guy was also worried about his companion. He couldn't understand who it was. Beck had really changed a lot and the player couldn't even guess where he came from, since he didn't notice him among the students. Beck Jayavil joined his new comrades. The girl looked at her idol with a loving gaze, while the son of the shadow deity asked what Li Chan planned to do next. Folding his hands in front of him, the tyrant replied that this was obvious, since they were in a dungeon. Beck realized that we were talking about complete cleansing. The guys could not hide their surprise and concern. At the same time, the girl admired the plans of the former sportsman. The excited guy thought that Li Chan simply did not know that in this place, depending on the zones, there were levels of varying difficulty, where each of them represented such a great danger that the White Tiger Clan abandoned the raid and was now using these lands for training. They were allotted only 100 days. Li Chan observed messages from the system that had you doubted whether it was possible to complete this within this time. At the same moment, the goddess of the hunt Pable Sag showed support towards his favorite player, believing that he would definitely will cope with this. The other deities noticed that Li Chan Sung is quite a cunning person, which means that he is most likely capable of this. Beck understood that there was no point in dissuading such a purposeful guy. His desire was quite expected, so the player could only clarify how much time it would take. Li Chang did not understand what they were talking about, so the confused Beck added that this was a very difficult location, so they should prepare. The guy with long hair misunderstood his comrade's words, releasing his magical energy. Li Chang Sung calmly replied that he would handle it before the end of the day. His calm words and terrifying strength gave the team confidence and interest in new adventures. The guys moved on to finish what they started. At the same time, and Johan was still lying on the ground, his head haunted by thoughts of how he had been beaten by some impudent girl. The poor fellow could not accept reality and come to terms with what happened. Resentment over those events sank deep into his heart. The beaten guy couldn't believe that that weakling dared to fight him without hiding the appearance of something inhuman. Justifying his failure, he thought that Shin had used some kind of trick. Considering himself a skilled fighter, he believed that it was a matter of some kind of strengthening, because if the fight were fair, he could defeat even Li Chan Sung. Looking at the sunset with hope for better times, he thought that soon he would be able to expose the true nature of that scoundrel who dared to violate his honor. Believing her to be a demon incarnate, he looked forward to the moment when he could make sure that she would never be able to walk in the open in daylight again. After some time, his team also began to regain consciousness. Because of recent events, he was worried that it would be difficult for him to explain what had happened. He believed that even though a dishonest girl with terrifying strength was fighting against them, his position in the dungeon should remain intact. He was thinking about how to get rid of witnesses to that awkward situation that could undermine his reputation. An Yohan grabbed his bruised, stupid head and began to think about what the news headlines would be like after he defeated those attackers. Obviously, he is the type who seeks easy fame, so it was easiest for him to assume that Li Chan Sung was also a half-demon, which would spoil the good name of the White Tiger Clan. With a crazed expression on his face, he shouted that he would destroy these two villains and gain incredible glory. 
He didn't have much intelligence even before the battle, and so it seemed like Shin had knocked the last bits of brain out of him. Suddenly, he received a message from the system that the dungeon had been cleared and the raid rating would be announced soon. He couldn't believe that the time to improve his situation was over. In addition, Li Chan's son was able to take first place, he received twice as many points as the priest of the god had you named Munxiang. This dungeon was defended for so long that it became possible to build not only a laboratory, but also an observation post. The god sent warriors who worked in this place could not believe that the cleanup was completed. First of all, they decided to find out what happened to the man who was watching the most challenging recruit. Those outside watched as the gate to the dungeon began to slowly close as the mission was completed. Against the bright light of the gate, they could see the silhouettes of two recruits. These were Beck Jiaville and Li Chan Sung. Watching this, Hadjur reveled in the chaotic environment, which was to his liking. He enjoyed the spectacle that the ambitious man gave him. The rest of the players who participated in this training camp were no different. Thanks to the justice of the tyrant they hated, they were able to save their lives, because if the guy had not intervened, there was a possibility that they would have been made into vessels for artificial warriors. Watching all this action was a man with long blonde hair. This was the Sword of the Heavenly Tiger, better known as Munson. The guys returned to the White Tiger base, while a heated discussion of recent events began online. Many people believe that this was some kind of conspiracy since it was hard to believe that one person was able to cope with a dungeon that an entire clan could not cope with for more than twenty years. As expected, all the questions were asked of the leader of the small team of newbies. The warriors sent by God were concerned about the situation and tried to put pressure on the guy so that he would take responsibility for what was happening in the information space. They shouted at him for not taking their words seriously. One of them even began to threaten with violence. In response to these words, the impudent guy in the eyepieces caught a blow to the face. Li Chang was surprised because someone from whom he did not expect it stood up for him. It was one of the leaders of the raid team, Seo Yung Wan. The impatient man could not bear to watch how impertinently they treated the recruit in whom he had taken a special interest. One precise blow to the face was enough for the guy to start making excuses to the commander of the second detachment. The man with the false mustache could not believe that the fighter would allow himself such insolence in his presence. Trying to rectify the situation, the ward, with a trembling voice, asked why the head had come to them. Seo Young Wan replied that he wanted to take the guy with him, which created a lot of noise around the closure of the dungeon. The fighter replied that they still had not completed the investigation, but his words had no weight in this situation. Showing his tiger aura, the man asked if the fighters had any objections to his decision. The beaten guy was an example that no one would dare to go against the decision of the commander of the second team. Wild Tiger decided that the investigations department was no longer interested in pointless interrogations, so he asked the new recruits to follow him. Li Chang Sung was serious, while the rest of his squad looked rather strange. The girl, head over heels in love with Tyrant, asked her brother if he thought Li Chan was cool. The guy could only confusedly agree in response. Still, he had no reason to answer otherwise. Previously, he believed that Li Chan Sung was bluffing when he said that he could clear the dungeon in a day. As a result, he saw with his own eyes the incredible power of this player. It seems his opinion of his sister's idol has changed dramatically, and it was logical. At one point, Seo Young Wan stopped and asked the guys to follow his team members, while Li Chan Sung was to follow him. They walked through the corridors of the building in silence for several minutes, but the leader of the second team was filled with questions. First of all, he said he believed that the members of the team he had assembled at the training center were with him. The guy answered briefly and laconically that it was so. Demonstrating his leadership qualities, the man gave the inexperienced guy advice that the team should be a collection of people who got along with each other, led by the smartest. Li Chang agreed with his obvious words and then asked where they were going. He understood that they were not heading to the office of Executive Director O. 
The man was surprised that he forgot to warn the guy that they were going to the meeting room. He clarified that the head of the clan said that he wanted to listen to the amazing recruit in person. Hearing about this, Li Chan Sung became wary, because it was about Yung Hong Lun. At the same moment, the one whom the guy remembered earlier appeared in front of them. The executive director said that Li Chang had changed noticeably and now looked better than when they last met. Despite his words, the feeling of his presence was not so calm. The system reported that the eyes of a furious tiger were peering at the player. Li Chang was sure that at this moment the executive director was interested in many things, for example, closing the dungeon a little later than blowing up the research center. Although Director Quan remained fine, the old man had to receive a report from his charge that he knew nothing. He had no doubt that the old man suspected him of some problems in the dungeon, since clearing it in a day was simply absurd. Despite the fact that there was no sincerity in their communication, the leader continued to maintain a calm and pleasant conversation. He said they couldn't have done it without the recruit's abilities. Furthermore, he described the recent events as pure chaos, adding that because of this, all the team heads from the raid department started fighting among themselves just to talk to the young talent. With a smile on his face, he explained that there was confusion even regarding what to do with the reward that the guy received for clearing the dungeon. Probably because the gossip spread beyond the clan, they even received a couple of calls from council members. Looking into the guy's eyes, the old man asked if he still had the same opinion as the day they talked after the entrance exam. Li Chang sighed and replied that he would like to talk about this topic. The guy calmly said that if he didn't get into the division he was offered for, then he could just give the executive director a letter of resignation. The old man replied that if Li Chang is a man, he should be able to handle things the right way. He stated that the entire company doesn't plan to just let him go, so they will fight for his interests as well. In addition, he heard that the head of the clan wants to personally see the one who completed the dungeon. Before meeting with the head, he asked the guy to forget about what the head thinks about the clan, since he has little interest in worldly matters. After these words, they began to climb the elevator, inside which silence began. The place they ended up in was very different from the floors of the clan office building that we saw earlier. Li Chang began using the snake's eye to analyze the area. At the same time, the beast instincts warned him of danger. He heard that Kaju raised a good apostle, although his ability and talent were lower than that of his patron. While in this place, he met someone dangerous for the first time in a long time. The guy entered the Azra flower garden. In front of him was a path that led to the temple of the head of the clan. Moving towards the meeting room, the old man noticed that the place where the head of the clan was located was connected through another dungeon. As it turned out, he called the magicians to move the gate in this direction. Previously, this was the territory of Kaju, so the system reported that the deity was interested in the people who made their way into his abode. Addressing the man sitting on the roof, the old man reported that, at the command of the head, he had brought the recruit he was interested in. Li Chang's son was focused and extremely careful. The man with long hair looked at the clan disciple surprised that this was indeed the child called Tyrant. Seeing Moon Sung in person, the guy's gaze instantly changed, he was on guard. After this, the apostle said that lately their god had been taking a special interest in the personality of the recruit. For the first time in recent memory, Li Chang Sung began to feel this kind of anxiety, he realized that the apostle was warning him. At the same time, the system reported that Minerva advised the player to be careful as things were getting serious. Still, he attracted the attention of the stars from the very beginning. Therefore, he expected to face envy and danger emanating from believers with their blessings. He understood that God, too, could play tricks to take possession of him. It was somewhat similar to what he encountered in the Arcadia treasury. To relieve the tension from the situation, the guy lowered his head and quietly introduced himself. After a short pause, the man with a piercing gaze replied that the young man did not look like a bad person. Following his words, Li Chang suddenly stated that he found it very funny that he was greeting a ninth-generation sword master at this moment. The apostle did not understand what exactly amused the recruit in this situation, 
so the guy clarified that just a couple of months ago he could not even think that he would find himself in such a place. Li Chang was calm but cautious. He understood that the apostle could not know what happened to him in the underworld, so he could only think that there was a very lucky recruit in front of him. But still, such a loud event inside the dungeon caused too much noise as if it were just a coincidence. Since Li Chan had become incredibly popular recently, he believed that this must have hurt the apostle's ego. He wondered if the man was ready to put up with this, or if he would take up arms. Analyzing the enemy's strength, Tyrant was sure that he was of a high level, even above ninety. One glance was enough for Chan Sung to understand that if they had to compete, he would not defeat him. On the other hand, he could count on the support of the gods and stars that were interested in him. But even if they did nothing, he would still have a chance of escape. Based on this logic, he did not have to worry that his journey would end in this place. He could only wait tensely to see what the apostle would do. While the guy was thinking calmly, the man suddenly disappeared and within a moment was next to him. The suddenness and cold gaze of the apostle were the things that for the first time in recent memory caused a shiver to run through the guy's body. The man had no intention of fighting, instead he reported that their patron had given the amazing recruit a gift. He entrusted it to Xing Wan, so he asked the guy to pick it up on his way back. After that, Mr. Munson opened the exit and silently walked towards it. Li Chang Sung was very puzzled by how the apostle behaved. He did not ignore the player. It seemed that Moon Sun did not consider at all. The king of the void abandoned him. In addition, the man looked as if he was confident that the connection between him and the patron was strong enough and would not be weakened by the intervention of a talented newcomer. Looking at the apostle, the player thought that his strength exceeded all expectations. He understood that whether it was the god sent warriors or Jida, Moon Sun created something and expanded his community, so the ruler of the abyss could give him the antidote of the sanctuary or something similar. To find out more information, the guy used the ability of the viper's eye. Noticing this, the snake deity stated that he had read the player's thoughts, which seemed interesting to him so he gave him strength and his skill level increased significantly. The information around the mortal ward of the deity was displayed on the system interface, and the guy saw that the oppressive calamity of the royal tiger was swarming around him. Seeing such unimaginable power, Chan Sung no longer doubted that the level of the apostle was far superior to Jida's. Noticing the surveillance, the man stopped and turned slightly to the player, and said that he would prefer that Li Chan stop peering so closely into his soul. The guy couldn't believe that the man was able to determine the use of a special skill bestowed by a deity. To soften the situation a little, Li Chan's son bowed deeply and asked to be forgiven for his rudeness. The apostle's teleport closed and it was time to return to the clan office. But Li Chang was puzzled by what he saw, so he continued to think about the situation. The guy noticed that Moon Sun is several times stronger than Jida, but even despite this, he creates only those artificial warriors who are lower than him. This meant only one thing, the apostle intended to monopolize this power. The recent situation seemed well planned to him, most likely, the ruler of the abyss just wanted to see his reaction, and Moon Sun was playing along with his patron. Most likely, Haja still believed in his priest but during a recent meeting the guy realized that Moon Sun himself was looking at something even higher, but what exactly interested him was hard to guess. After meeting with the head of the White Tiger Clan, Li Chang returned to the office with the leaders. The old man encouraged the new recruit, saying that the head of their clan was a difficult person in many ways. Li Chang replied that he had a feeling that Moon Sun was living in another reality. At the same time, the guy thought that the power of Jida that was produced in the Silver Fox Research Center was nothing more than an unnecessary thing for the apostle. Moreover, Li Chang did not rule out that the head of the clan could know about the idea of Executive Director O. Then the clan members continued their conversation and the old man admitted that it was still difficult for him to understand the innermost thoughts of their leader. In turn, Seo Jan Kwan turned to the manager and asked him not to take him into the meeting room anymore because due to the head's visits, he began to tremble all over his body. 
Li Chang asked the executive director what kind of gift they were talking about. At the same moment, the system reported that Pablesag believed that it did not matter what kind of gift it would be, since it would still not compare with her gifts. The man remembered this important thing and replied that the guy was given a choice of two. The first option was access to the clan's arsenal, and the second was access to the library. In both cases he was allowed to use the second level of clearance. Seo Jankwan was delighted that Li Chan had received such advanced access, and then asked the guy to take him with him to the armory. The leader of the second team believed that he would be able to see the divine weapon, but the old man understood that the player had decided not to benefit one of his subordinates. In order not to seem strange, Li Chan Sung replied that he should think about it, since this news was a real shock to him. But the old man is not simple, he called the recruit's answer eloquent, but noticed that he looked completely calm. In his defense, the guy said that we were talking about the unprecedented generosity of their patron, because he already received an incredible reward for his personal task in clearing the dungeon. The old man did not want to argue, so he simply hurried the student with his choice. Seo Jankwan began to rejoice, anticipating the player's obvious choice in favor of the arsenal. But the guy replied that he was interested in learning a large number of useful abilities, explanatory works about which are at the second rank. He thought that he should not miss the chance to work with the second rank of library access, since he still had not discovered the necessary constellation technique. The old man with a smile took out the key to the library, he foresaw the choice of the young man, that from their first meeting he had diligently strived for knowledge. After this, Executive Director O recalled the rumors that Li Chang Sung still had not chosen his patron. The guy did not know how to answer this question, he was not interested in associating himself with Kaju. The shock leader of the second team couldn't believe what he heard. He believed that the manager's words were nonsense, since he did not believe in the existence of the player that he had gone so far without choosing his patron. The guys had to move on, but the commander of the second detachment continued to bombard the old man with questions about how this was possible. The guy didn't know what to answer. The old man was also silent. Perhaps this information also seemed a mystery to him, which aroused suspicion. Seo Jankwan was in real shock and couldn't hide his emotions. The guys could only wait for him to calm down. Once he had come to terms with this information, it was time for reflection. He could not even imagine how much more serious everything would have been if the guy had chosen his patron. This was not strange, since he thanked a tiger who had gotten into trouble for his strength. Before him was a genius with whom it was difficult to compare, the man was probably worried that his potential surpassed all commanders. Returning to the discussion about the patron, Li Chan Sung mentioned that the tiger in trouble is interested in his strength. The old man replied that it was not only about him, he said that neither he nor the other deities had yet given up their intentions to get such a talented person. The CEO's proposal was unexpected, so the guy mentioned that there was no point in this, since many gods had previously asked him to become their apostle. The old man's gaze became much more serious. Looking into the guy's eyes, he asked if he understood how unreasonable his refusal was. In response, Li Chang began to manipulate the situation and said that if his reward was simply becoming an apostle, then he would not mind signing his resignation letter. He stated that he was already receiving enough privileges, even more than he could wish for. Sighing heavily, the old man resigned himself to the guy's obstinacy and ironically said that there really was no one like Li Chang's son. Still, the player was not going to change anything. Meanwhile, the system began to report another conflict between the gods regarding which of them would receive such a talented apostle. Having no influence on the recruit, the executive director recalled the words that greed and ambition are a characteristic of youth. With a cold gaze, he warned the youth that one day his ambitions might turn against him. His words did not hurt the pride of the talented player, so he simply remained silent. After a short pause after a tense conversation, the old man moved on. He asked Yu Zhong to wait for them on the first floor, so that's where they headed. After these words, the old man decided to warn the guy that their god is not as patient as it seems at first glance, 
so if he cannot get his power, he will make sure that no one can do it. At that moment, Commander Seo Young Won felt that the atmosphere was too tense. He approached the guy to cheer him up, because he believed that at that moment, he had a lot of thoughts in his head. The man with the fake mustache told him to think positively, adding that if he stayed with their clan, he would be able to do a lot of interesting things. After these words, the commander of the second detachment ran forward cheerfully. Looking at the backs of these guys, the arrogant gloomy god thought that the leaders of the White Tiger Clan were pathetic people. Next, Li Chan Sung met with Song Yujong. The executive director's ward was the one who was entrusted with escorting the guy to the library. He said that for the sake of security, starting from the second floor, their organization divides all the cells into categories, and you can only enter and exit them with an assigned key. The guy listened carefully to the hypnotized man, but decided to clarify which category of cameras he could enter using the key that the executive director gave him. He was worried that it would be a nuisance if he couldn't access all the cameras. After this question, the agent became a little confused and replied that he himself did not know the answer to this. While watching the guy go, Song Yu Jong said that the player has six hours to use the rooms. Li Chang Sung entered the second rank room. At the same moment, the system reported the Tiger God's statement that the player had entered a place that was a real treasure. To tempt the talented player, he said that if Li Chan Sung became his apostle, then all this would belong to him. After looking around, the guide began to notice that each room had a signature. By walking inside each of them, he will have the opportunity to acquire tiger skills, which corresponds to the name of the room. The guy understood that all these abilities are particles that come from the techniques of the main tiger. The system reported that the player received a reward for completing the quest from the deity. In front of him were nine different paths, each of them had its own image of a proud tiger. However, according to the offer made by Haju, Chan Sung will only gain access to all the rooms if he decides to become one of the apostles. With a sly grin on his face, the guy thought that he was annoyed by these conditions, he didn't care about the title of apostle, since he wanted to one day take away everything that was in this room. Approaching one of the rooms, his key transformed. He chose a path that brought condemnation from Kaju. The system reported that the snake deity began to ridicule the tiger, saying that with his empty head he would not be able to understand the choice of a talented player. The tiger began to grin with irritation, after which he turned to the player and said that it was still not too late to change his mind. As it turned out, the guy was interested in the path of the half-blind tiger. In other words, a half-blind tiger is a tiger with one eye. Its observation abilities are obviously worse than those of a tiger with two eyes, but at the same time it has a stronger will to live than its competitors. The guy understood that we were talking about a cruel and rude beast, a killer who did not need a shield. The reaction of the ruler of the abyss was expected for him. He believed that Kaju was looking for life away from himself, so he would choose the last of the nine brothers. He thought that everything would go well with Jigui, the claw of the king of the Black Mountain and the flame of the end of the world. Despite his choice, Li Chang Sung really wanted to open the other doors using Peter's key, but he knew that no matter how simple the ruler of the abyss seemed, he would not allow it. Even though God was watching him, the guy was going to fleece him in a way that Kaja couldn't even imagine. After these thoughts, he began to study the abilities, and the door to the room was closed. Waiting for her friend was boring and long, so the girl began to worry. She could not find a place for herself, because she thought that something wrong had happened. Her brother said that the tyrant would not die so easily and would return without her worries, after which he suggested that she sit down and stop getting on her nerves. Shimnyuncio corrected her brother and asked him to call the best player by his name, and not by the nickname from his eSports career, which was a thing of the past. Having calmed his sister a little, the guy thought that while they were making noise, the man who was on the team with them was, as usual, quiet and calm. He couldn't believe that this was really the same Beck Jevil, the gloomy guy with whom he had started the training camp. He remembered that earlier this player's face was covered in burns, but now he had turned into a real handsome man. 
The guy was worried about what was going on with these guys while he was looking for his sister. It seemed to him that he was missing some important detail. He wanted to find out what happened, and it didn't matter to him whether it was something good or bad. His sister behaved extremely inappropriately. He understood that in order to protect her, it was worth finding out more about their new team. Suddenly, he received a message from the system that one of the gods was interested in him. The snake deity entwining the world said that he was thinking too loudly and was disturbing the gods. The guy literally got goosebumps from what he read. The deity clarified that even if the guy puzzles over this question for the rest of his life, he still will not be able to get the information he needs. Despite the guy's reaction, the snake argued that there is nothing difficult in reading thoughts when they are all displayed on a person's face. She unexpectedly invited him to become her priest when a convenient situation presented itself. They were distracted from such a tense situation by the appearance of a guy who hypocritically feigned a joyful reaction to their appearance. This was one of those who was previously in their squad, but refused to help in the search for Shin. Looking in his direction, the girl ran forward with a smile, but when the guy got his hopes up, she simply ran past. Her brother began to laugh at the lying player. At that moment, the traitor decided to look around to find out who stole his happiness. As expected, Li Chan Sung returned to them. The enraged player could not accept this situation and boldly caught Shin's hand. Not understanding his behavior, she asked what he was doing. With a feeling of deep resentment, he replied that she had never treated him the same way as the guy she was actually going to see. Li Chang Sung didn't understand his emotions and decided to just watch. The angry player stated that Xin Yunxiao only recently started playing harder to be with him, but suddenly disappeared because she found herself a new boyfriend. The girl could not believe the impudence of this guy to distract her from such a long-awaited moment. But after a moment she remembered how it all began. After that, with tears in her eyes, she rushed towards her idol. Li Chang's son continued to silently observe such unimportant events in his life. The angry guy boldly asked the former esports player why he was staring at him like that. Although Chan Sung was not interested in this pathetic conflict, he decided to take a moment to test his new ability. He instantly found himself behind the girl and grabbed the guy by the neck, lifting him into the air. The player, scared to death, could not understand how this happened. He probably wanted the conflict to escalate into a fight, from which he would come out beautifully victorious, but such an instant outcome was impossible to predict. He had no other option but to make a threat, mentioning that he was far from the last person in this city. But seeing the cold eyes of the real killer, his blood froze in his veins and he could no longer utter a word. After that, he was able to see the raging aura of an incredible player who had acquired a new ability as a reward for clearing the dungeon. The previously daring guy began to feel that he was being held not by a person, but by a wild animal. The system reported that he was caught by the eye of a half-blind tiger. This skill belongs to a special class, and its effect is to fill with the lust for killing, which instills fear in people, because this is a tiger with only anger and the desire to kill. The guy turned out to be prey. He could no longer control his emotions and tears suddenly appeared on his face. The system reported that he was infected with fear and was in a state of severe shock, due to which there was a possibility that his mental state would be irrevocably damaged. After this, the fighter could not hold back his urination, which happens in cases where a huge amount of adrenaline in the blood does everything so that a person can mobilize his strength for salvation. At that moment, all sorts of onlookers came running to the scene, unable to understand what Li Chan's son had done to this poor fellow. Having tested its ability in practice, the predator released its prey. After such a terrifying performance, he coldly and succinctly invited his squad to move on. Despite his rude and cruel behavior, the girl's love did not weaken at all and she agreed to the proposal without any doubt. It is unlikely that this guy will be able to find the strength to continue bothering his comrades, whom he betrayed earlier due to his cowardice. Those who remained were worried about what was happening and did not know what to do with the guy next. Wanting to take the relationship to the next level, 
The girl suggested that the cold guy go out to eat since his workout was already over. The skillful guy sadly dismissed her proposal without any hesitation. While leaving the White Tiger Clan's office, Li Chan Sung came across the journalists and their blinding camera flashes. They wanted to know how the guy felt after clearing an unexplored dungeon in record time. They were also interested in what plans the clan leadership had for such a talented guy. Li Chang was not very happy that there were so many prying eyes in front of him. The guy's cold words took the girl by surprise, but thanks to this she remembered that the tyrant had always been such a person. Questions about the guy's prospects in foreign clans and his plans within the strongest organization in Korea continued to flow from the lips of journalists, but Li Chan's son did not pay attention to them. After a brilliant career as an esports player, he was accustomed to the blinding flashes of cameras, so the purposeful player did not pay attention to them. As it turned out, not only journalists from all over the country gathered at the entrance to the building, but also loyal fans of the rare talent. The girls were crazy about his calm expression, which caused the jealous Shin to begin to lose control. When they approached the road, the guy invited his comrades to get into the car. The guys were shocked, because executive director O provided the guy with a limousine along with the driver. This thing was an integral part of such a fast-growing star. While inside, Lee Chan asked the brother of the violent girl what exactly he wanted to tell him earlier. The confused guy was thoughtful and did not understand what was going on. Lee Chan reminded him that when they left the lobby, they had some kind of conversation planned. He couldn't help but notice it, because he looked extremely restless. Sighing, he decided to tell him what had been worrying him lately. The guy mentioned the name of the deity that was trying to get him as a priest. Businessman Chan Sung replied that he was familiar with him because it was one of the deities that interested him. At the same moment, the system reported that the snake coiling around the world began to bang its tail in protest at the chatterbox for mentioning its name. The concerned brother admitted that the deity spoke to him and asked him to observe every action of his squad leader and report everything interesting that he noticed. In response, the player demonstrated that he could not even think about it. The guy once again confirmed his words, after which he added that he was specifically asked to report in every detail about what could be secret. Shocked by these events, Shin Yuncio attacked her brother and said that he should not have waited so long with this news. She almost tore his ear off, so the guy began to make excuses that not much time had passed. Throwing his leg up importantly, the guy thought that his team was full of simpletons. His behavior seemed strange and the girl asked if he would be angry with them for what happened. Shin admitted that at the moment when the system began sending him messages from the deity, he experienced conflicting feelings. Continuing the conversation, Li Chan asked if the guy was able to find out something. He answered excitedly that it was absolutely nothing. At that moment the guy felt as if he was under interrogation. After these words, the talented player simply sighed. To reassure his new comrade, he said that he had done nothing wrong, so he had no reason to feel guilty. This behavior of a very rude former esports player was very unusual. At that moment the simple guy thought that a man with a capital M was sitting in front of him. In fact, he was more interested in finding out what exactly the deity offered in return. A little embarrassed by such a conversation with the participation of a pet, the snake said that this was not funny and buried its muzzle in the ring of the body. Concerned, Gimwi replied that the deity promised to teach him black magic. These words surprised the player a little and judging by his facial expression, he was interested. Feeling somewhat tense, the guy replied that apparently the snake thought it suited him best. Unexpectedly, Li Cham gave him a very contradictory proposal, which left him in shock. With a smile on his face, the player said that if the deity asked him to watch him and report on anything interesting in exchange for this power, then he should accept the offer and fulfill this request. It is obvious that with this move, Li Chan outplayed everyone. The system reported that the previously mentioned deity began to blink his eyes in confusion. Li Chan decided to share his knowledge that the black magic that the snake owns is one of the best disciplines called the Uroboros formula. 
He suggested that the guy learn the basics, since it is extremely difficult to fully master it. He also mentioned that the fact that the deity offered to teach him magic meant that they thought highly of him. Li Chang Sung felt that the snake definitely saw the potential of the brother of the strange girl and their squad. At that moment, the snake opened its mouth in shock, surprised by the words of the shrill young man. While Jimu was wondering whether he really had some kind of hidden talent, the deity began to grumble, telling him not to be too happy, because there were more than enough people willing to study her magic to circle the earth several times if they stood in a row. To instill confidence in the nervous newcomer, Li Chang advised him to act immediately. Having finished the conversation, the guy who had a limousine at his disposal asked the driver to stop the car. When the guys left, the guy admitted to his sister that from that day on he was also a fan of their leader, whom he had previously been very biased towards. The joyful girl waved her hand and said that her stupid brother had finally realized the greatness of the tyrant, after which she said that she was ready to share with him the details that interested him about the life of the former e-sportsman. The guy replied that he would not act like a crazy sister, because it was a matter of respect. Continuing his pleasant ride, the guy began a conversation with the deity. The snake asked how exactly he acquired such information, and the guy replied that he also had some secrets. Satisfied with the events, the guy thought that he himself wanted to study the Uroboros formula, but rune magic turned out to be so difficult that he simply gave up. He understood that if Shinjemi taught him this formula, it would be very nice. Remembering that he was not alone here, the guy remembered that Beck had previously said that he lived in the Noriangjin area. Taking a piercing look at the guy, he realized that something was wrong here. Averting his eyes, he coldly said that this was a lie. Jayaville was confused, after which he admitted that although his place is very cramped, he lives in the Gashuan area. Clenching his fist menacingly, Li Chang replied that when he asked politely, he should only tell the truth, otherwise he will follow him, and if he discovers that the guy lied, he will blow off his head. After such frankness in terms of the seriousness of his intentions, Chan Sun learned that the guy did not have a home, and since he needed a weapon, he had to give up his rented apartment. Li Chan was worried that his friend Xerxes was so stupid that he didn't even know what kind of life his son was leading. He believed that he should help him fully understand the ghosts born. Sighing, the guy realized that he had only one way out of this situation. Concerned Beck could not even imagine what was going on in the head of this amazing player. Li Chan's son replied that he would stay at his house for the first time, after which he added that they should buy some clothes first. Buck could not contain his feeling of joy in response to such an immeasurable service from his first comrade in his entire hard life. The guys went to the house of a former cyber sportsman. The fact that Li Chan would return home so early came as a surprise to his mother because he had previously told her that he would be away for more than three months. The guy replied that his training ended earlier than expected. Mom was happy to see him, but she wasn't ready, so she didn't prepare much food. Li Chang didn't want to bother her and said he could order delivery, but her mom was against it and said they should eat together. After these words, the guy turned to her with a request. Beck Jayaville stood shyly at the entrance so Li Chan hurried him to come closer and introduce himself. This guy changed a lot after putting on some pretty stylish and formal clothes. In an uncertain voice, he asked to be forgiven for such a sudden visit. Despite his fears, the woman was delighted to see her son's friend, after which she invited him to quickly enter the house. With a smile on her face, she asked him to relax and make himself at home. Mom led them further, while Beck admired the incredible size of his new friend's apartment. This place was luxurious. He was surprised by the place where he was, but expected that Chan Sung must be living in good conditions. At the same time, the guys noticed the latest news on one of the TV channels. As expected, the media shared information that Lee Chan Sung and his team, who were with him, cleared the dungeon, which was considered impregnable for twenty years. Such unexpected popularity took the guy by surprise and he was a little embarrassed to watch the report about the event in which he took part. Within a moment, 
he froze in place at what he saw. A beauty was lying calmly on the sofa in front of the TV, eating snacks carefree. The sleepy girl caught the guy looking at him. Realizing that she had caught the stranger's eye in this form, the girl immediately jumped off the sofa and asked who came with her brother. Instead of any explanation, the emotionless Li Chan simply pointed his finger at the TV. The girl realized that he was not very pleased to see that news. She immediately turned off the TV and made an excuse that she was just switching channels and accidentally stopped at this one. Li Chan replied that he didn't care, after which the girl took off and walked towards her room, saying that her younger brother was annoying her. The dissatisfied daughter slammed the door. The mother did not understand why she so suddenly rushed to her room, since they were going to have dinner. Such a harmful character of the girl was unclear to the woman. She wondered where she got such manners from. Addressing her son with a smile on her face, she admitted that it was difficult to understand from her sister's behavior how much she was worried about him, because in fact, the girl watched a video on YouTube every day from his entrance exam. The older sister was furious and, opening the door, shouted that everything was wrong. While the girls of the Chung Sun family were arguing about how worried they were about Lee's absence, the guy asked his comrade not to pay attention to this household item and suggested going to the room. When they walked inside, Beck couldn't contain his admiration. Li Chang suddenly asked him to change his communication style from respectful to intimate, allowing him to address him as a brother. The guy was shocked. It's a pity that Xerxes didn't hear his son's words, but Beck said that this room is larger than his previous house. The eyes of our player's friend's son began to wander because there were a lot of interesting things around him. Just look at the gaming computer of the guy behind whom Li Chan gradually earned his fame as an esports athlete. Most of all, Beck looked at the game console. He couldn't afford to buy something like that, but he was always excited about games. To relax the situation after difficult events and excess attention, Li Chan invited his friend to play what he would like. All the benefits of this house were at the disposal of a guy who had never even had his own permanent home. Beck enjoyed the huge bathtub where he could wash his transformed body with hot water. He was very grateful for the opportunities that Li Chang gave him. After this, it was time for dinner, where at the table there was an unimaginable amount of varied food. Like any housewife, his friend's mother was worried about whether he would like the food. The sincere guy couldn't hide his delight. The woman tried very hard to surprise the guys, so his praise seemed to her the best of rewards. With tears in his eyes, Beck said that she should open her own restaurant. Pleased with the praise, the actress drew attention to her son, who ate without any emotion, and said that it would be nice if he also learned to say pleasant words. At that moment, she couldn't distract herself from how good his son's friend was. His manners were a joy to her, so she suddenly said that she would like to adopt him because she was sure that he would make a better younger son than Chang Sung. The guy was instantly confused, so the woman apologized and added that it was just an inappropriate joke. Communication with this pleasant woman brought back memories for him, because Beck rarely saw such an attitude towards himself. He wondered who that faint sound of laughter belonged to from his memories that never left his mind. With a smile on his face, he guessed it was most likely his mother's laughter. The change in his friend's behavior was something that Li Chang couldn't miss. After dinner, they went to the room to sleep. The two men couldn't sleep on the same bed, so Beck slept on a mattress that lay on the ground. He was constantly tossing and turning, and Li Chang assumed that he could not sleep. Beck really did not sleep and replied that he was haunted by obsessive thoughts. To make sure everything was okay, Li Chan asked him to be open if he felt uncomfortable. The guy began to make excuses by saying that everything was fine and he was enjoying his stay with his brother. Since Beck couldn't sleep even after a day of hard training, the high-pitched player said that he was most likely tormented by some questions. The white-haired guy couldn't just answer, he didn't know what was going on. Li Chang asked him to think carefully. Otherwise, he would not be able to help him. 
After these words, Beck G. Ville gathered all his courage and replied that he was simply wondering if he had the right to feel comfortable. Hearing such uncertain words, Li Chang Sung replied that no one has the authority to decide for him, so he himself must decide how to treat any situation. Such words were a mystery for an antisocial guy who had spent his entire life hiding from sharp glances because of his appearance. Li Chan Sung added that he himself must define his worth and if he considers himself pathetic, then other people will do the same. After this, Beck thought about how he felt about himself. Li Chang Sung knew his situation not only from observation. Looking at his brother, he thought that Beck Jayavo resembled his past. As a shadow god, he was obsessed with fighting, which never demonstrated his true worth. Only after losing everything and reaching rock bottom did he realize his biggest mistake. Turning to his brother, he admitted that he did not want Beck to repeat his mistakes. At that moment, Li Chan felt awkward because such conversations should be conducted by a father, and Xerxes did not pay attention to his son at all. Late at night, the deities were still watching them. Pabel Sag was shocked, and Minerva only looked at their interaction affectionately. The next morning began not with a pleasant conversation at breakfast, but with the indignation of the older sister. She asked her mother not to interrupt, after which she called her younger brother a loser, who suddenly began to behave extremely strangely. The caring mother did not understand what was going on, because her attitude towards her son never changed. The dissatisfied girl explained her words by saying that after passing through the Jamshil gate, Chan's son became a completely different person, he stopped drinking and controls his emotions, and also ignores her when she tries to make him angry. The mother held her head at her daughter's words, the girl continued, saying that it looked as if her strange brother had suddenly matured, and perhaps even developed more talents, although he remained a rude asshole. As it turned out, this was not all that worried her so much. Turning to her mother, she said that she was missing an important detail in his behavior. The sister was surprised that her brother was able to find good friends. Besides, she even thought Beck was quite cute. She didn't even notice how her mother decided to have a teaching moment. The woman was unhappy that her daughter allowed herself to say such rude things about her younger brother. To stop the crazy woman with character, she had to say that she was not finished. Mom thought that her daughter was going to say something stupid again, but the girl justified herself that this time she was serious. The point was that his friend's appearance was completely to her taste, and she wanted her mother to inquire about whether Beck was in a relationship. She was sure that if he could tolerate her brother's temper, then he must have a great character. Her words did not reassure the mother at all, and she continued to raise her daughter in her exquisite way. At the same moment, the guys left the room and distracted the girls from their conflict. Mom asked where they were going, at that moment as her daughter turned away and began to tidy up her hair in order to appear in front of the handsome man in her best form. Li Chan replied that they were in no hurry to go to training, so they would go to some restaurant to eat. At one point, the guy noticed something strange. Mom looked as usual, she asked them not to overwork themselves but what was unexpected was that the older sister began to look charmingly in their direction and even carefully paraphrased her mother's words. Li Chan sighed heavily, while Beck was a little confused by the beauty's attention. The guy asked not to worry, while his friend bowed and said that they would be back soon. After leaving the building, Beck learned that Li Chan was planning to change their weapons. Beck Jayavil was a little confused so his brother explained that he didn't want him to continue using that shabby old thing. When the brother with long hair said that he did not have the money for this, Chan Sung reminded him of the words about the value of a person. In addition, he explained that weapons are needed to protect oneself and kill monsters, but if a person is uncomfortable holding it, then he can only half realize his potential as a warrior. This also applied to armor, amulets and stones that players use. Li Chang asked his brother not to say unnecessary words, as he himself plans to equip him in order to see his true power. However, the shadow god became very attached to his friend's son, the first turning point was when he cured this ghost-born boy. To achieve this goal, they went to the blind blacksmith, 
where Beck could only watch in confusion the conflict between the two guys. Oh Yezi was not ready to fulfill the order, so Li Chang did the same as before and motivated the work with good pay. A man in sheet clothes, which were even on his Doberman, began to make excuses that it was not about money. Beck was simply shocked, because his brother paid one hundred million won twice for this blacksmith to make a weapon for him and not show off. His charisma was incredible, and Li Chang reminded the blacksmith to always address him as his boss. Having no other choice, Oh Yezi agreed with the rude guy's proposal and inquired about what kind of weapon he was talking about. Li Chang Sung said that they need a spear. When Yezi heard about this, he said that he would break the guy's skull if we were talking about the same advanced weapon as last time. The player calmed him down, saying that he shouldn't bother himself so much and that a long, mid-level spear would be enough. When the man inquired about the length of this weapon, Li Chang began to point with his hands, but the blind blacksmith could not understand what he was talking about, so he asked for a normal order reference. In order not to complicate the task for himself, Li Chang asked his brother to take his spear out of his inventory. Taking the weapon in his hands, the man set to work and took upon himself the analysis of the spear, which would be most suitable for the fighter. He walked up to Beck and took his hand, while asking the guy's weight and height. With his advanced senses, he was able to notice that Beck used his left hand more often. Examining the young man's body, he continued to talk about how he fights. The man said that Beck Jeeville does not wield a spear, but uses it by rotating it to increase his strength. He admitted that this was not stupid, but it seemed unusual that speed was important to the player even when using heavy weapons. He was even interested in the muscles of his legs in order to find out what stance he used during battle. Watching the blacksmith, Beck could say with confidence that his previous blacksmiths were proud, while now in front of him was a real master of his craft, which made it obvious to him why his friend's weapon was so amazing. After analyzing the fighter's body habits, the blacksmith asked the boss what rank the weapon should be. Li Chang replied that it should be comparable to black or cold metal that has been refined at least a hundred times. The man was furious at what he heard, after which he casually suggested that Li Chang was preparing for war. Unexpectedly for him, the guy replied that the situation was somewhat similar to what the blacksmith had suggested. After this, bidding began for the lines in which the order should be completed. Initially, the blacksmith stated fifteen days but the impudent player corrected him, saying that he gave only ten. The man was beside himself with anger. Believing that his boss had gone crazy, he did not want his arms to fall off due to the fact that he would forge without any adequate rest. As a result, their trading stopped, and it was decided to fulfill the order in twelve days. Despite his efforts, Oh Yezi again went along with his impudent customer, which is why he could hardly contain his anger. After visiting the ancestor of the legendary blacksmith, the guys went to the training camp. Beck Jeeville couldn't stop thinking about having his own weapon. Noticing his behavior, Li Chang asked why he was so self-absorbed. In his defense, the guy replied that he was just a little nervous, but was ready for a productive workout. At that moment, the gods were watching their sparring and Kaja said that he was bored watching a fight that was not fought to the death. Li Chang thought that in a moment he would bring popcorn and drool. Starting training, Li Chang asked his brother how much spiritual energy he uses. The indecisive guy thought about it, so it became clear that he was not very good at doing this. Li Chang sighed and said that in this case the reason is clear. Beck Jeeville was surprised and asked what they were talking about. An experienced fighter with knowledge from a past life replied that his magical power should be used differently than normal. According to the Shadow God, a ghost born is a child born between a shaman and a ghost, which means that Bak has the character of demonic and evil energy. But the problem is that now he is no longer a ghost born, as he has succumbed to purification. He wondered if it would be even stranger if the energies moved according to his wishes. Chan Sung believed that his brother simply needed to use different ways of circulating energies, and not the only one he used before. 
This meant that Beck had to change everything from his breathing to the smallest habits. The player understood that Beck had shadow energy, so he should make it his talent or special skill. He couldn't think of anything better than turning the guy into a copy of his father. Li Chang Sung cryptically said that Beck Jiaville should give up everything he knew before and become his shadow. At that moment, he decided to repeat the experience he had encountered in the past. Being a shadow god, he knew that Xerxes did not have a physical body, which retained a certain appearance. This was quite logical, since he was a shadow deity. Xerxes said that he cannot even exist as a ghost, since his existence is closer to a non-existent god. Neither the great god nor the constellations could sense him, but the gloomy god turned out to be different. At that moment, Li Chang did not understand what the deity was leading to, so he asked him not to hesitate. Xerxes explained that in order to preserve the body, he pulled the shadow from the body of the gloomy god, created an artificial shell and became saturated with it. He would not have been able to appear in the material world if the second energy, the guy's shadow, had not left his body. These words made the guy think and he took a closer look at his future friend. At that moment he decided that in this case Xerxes was parasitizing on him. Although the shadow deity did not like this word, it was close to the truth, it was more acceptable to describe it as cooperation. Worried by the complex explanations, Jeeville asked what he needed to do. The guy replied that first, Beck must learn to control the shadow energy that he possesses. He mentioned earlier that shadow energy needs to be handled differently than others. Therefore, he said that Beck should open a passage through which the shadow energy could naturally circulate, and to begin with, he suggested doing this only in one direction. The player's speech was quite heavy, so Beck clarified what he meant when he talked about the energy passage. While in front of the light source, Li Chang asked the guy to try to put his feelings in the shadow. He advised to think about attracting his shadow to you. Beck Jayaville understood what was going on so he concentrated on what he had planned. Meanwhile, Li Chang continued to give advice, saying that you should not try to pull it by force, because it is better to imagine yourself unraveling the tangle and gently pulling it towards you. A little worried, the guy listened to his brother's advice. Concentrated on the shadow, he began to work with its shape. He actually managed to make it begin to change its shape. At the moment when the shadow changed, Beck was surprised and stopped. Seeing this, Li Chang shouted that he had to pull himself together and not lose concentration. Ji Vil took his words into account and began to take his task more seriously. He had real talent because the progress of shadow control was simply incredible. Despite this, he still could not fully control the power. At that moment, Li Chang intervened in the process shouting that Beck should not allow his shadow to consume him, he advised him to suppress the shadow by all available means. Threads of shadow energy began to tangle, causing chaos. The guy began to lose control, because this was not an easy task at all. He didn't like what he was doing, because the shadows connected him with the past. At that moment, Beck wondered what the shadow with which he was associated for the first time was. Previously, he did not have special skills to control his ability, but he understood that if he failed now, he would lose everything he could gain. Just a moment after these memories, he no longer felt strong pressure. The shadows began to retreat, they united as one, as the guy finally gained the upper hand. At that moment, a shadow approached him, which he abandoned when he carried out the cleansing. She stated that the guy should do better since he chose not to follow her. He asked him to take responsibility for the difficulties and humiliations that would come his way. Her visualization wanted to make sure that Beck had internalized his words. The guy with a calm look replied that there was no need to worry. After this, the absorption of new power began. The system reported that Beck Jevil had acquired the skill of creating a shadow puppet. He managed to completely acquire his brother's shadow. Li Chang Sung calmly watched as Beck gained control of his shadow energy. The skill was created and the system began to summarize the results. 
Beck Jayavo gained control of the energy, which transformed his appearance. At that moment, he learned that he now had the power to use some of his brother's skills, but the system told him that he should find out more information about the player so that he could more skillfully imitate his power. Li Chang's son continued to explain the details of this energy to him, saying that its main feature is the desire to imitate, so it is necessary to create an object to imitate. After that, Beck understood why it was about his brother's shadow. Li Chang's son was satisfied with what his friend had achieved. He came closer to him and said that the more he understands the object of imitation, the more accurately and powerfully you can control shadow energy. Therefore, he asked the guy to continue to imitate what he sees. Beck Jayaville was ready to study while Li Chan Sung retreated to a safe distance. He still used the spear, as he knew that Beck had to use his new weapon wisely. All his movements were instantly read by shadow energy. Beck Jayaville felt stressed by how heavy his brother's strength was. The guy continued to demonstrate skills so that Beck could imitate them in his own battles. The god showed incredible interest in his use of weapons, Minerva praising the affection of her favorite player's new comrade. After this, the system reported that the tiger deity who was in trouble would like to make sure that the player properly mastered their divine ability. Without hesitation, Li Chang began using the half-blind tiger's aura. Kaju watched his achievements with pleasure. After a few moves, Li Chang unleashed his newfound technique. At that moment, Beck Ji Vil was under incredible pressure and did not understand how he should imitate these movements. The system reported a difference in levels with the owner of the shadow, but Li Chang did not pay attention to his brother's condition and asked him not to hesitate and take up the spear. Experiencing incredible difficulties, Beck decided not to stop and took up arms. The incredible sight pleased the gods but the greedy tiger regretted that Li Chan had not visited more stone rooms, believing that this would have had a dramatic effect on the player's strength. Releasing even more energy, Li Chang suggested to his brother to begin the imitation. The half-blind tiger's aura began to increase, and its power increased rapidly. Haju was shocked by the power with which Li Chang used his ability. Within a moment, the system reported that the half-blind tiger had been replaced with a ferocious tiger. After an unexpected change in the aura, the system reported that Haju began screaming in bewilderment that he did not understand what Li Chan was actually doing inside the library. Meanwhile, a meeting began at the White Tiger Clan's headquarters where Executive Director O wanted to discuss how they should deal with the new batch of bannermen. The leaders present were worried. As every day the news got worse, they could not ignore the recent events even though they had not had time to deal with the past recruits. The man in the purple jacket wondered what their director was thinking. He believed that there would be fewer problems if at least half of all training had already been completed. Due to such confusion, they all thought that they would have to provide a new training method. At the same time, there was incredible tension between some of the most powerful leaders of this meeting. The man who was investigating the activities of the laboratory inside the recently closed dungeon behaved calmly and reservedly. This was an unusual thing to observe, so those present did not understand what could have changed Director Kwan's behavior. Kim Yong Song, one of the directors of the White Tiger Clan, believed that it would be a good idea to try to unite with the Hayoff Clan. Due to the conflict that arose between these organizations, Executive Director O did not understand what his colleague was going to do. The man shared rumors that the future strategy unit had found the location of the Phantom. Because of this, he thought that they should join the Bannermen to capture the Phantom. He believed that since they had already completed all their basic training, there could be nothing better than participating in an actual battle to gain combat experience. Executive Director O asked what they would do if the decision ended up being challenged. Kim Yong Song answered without hesitation that since the management is people from Hayoff who know the things they are supposed to do. Therefore, students will simply have to deal with small fry, which does not pose much of a threat. In addition, he believed that no one would believe those demonic creatures that commit unforgivable atrocities against gods and people. The words of this director made sense 
and the old man decided to turn to one of the commanders. The conversation turned to the commander of the first detachment. Pack listened attentively to his commander's question. The old man asked what he thought about Director Kim's proposal. The fighter replied that he considered it quite reasonable. After that, there was the question of what the possibility would be that this strategy would end up doing more harm to the fighters. The man believed that if the recruits could not cope with this task, then it would be ridiculous to call them real tigers worthy of the clan. Director O took his opinion into account and decided to act on Director Kim's suggestion to replace the remainder of the training with an extermination operation. The grade and position of the students will be set according to their achievements. In addition, he stated that Lee Chang Sung will be separated from the students and transferred to a future strategic unit. Hearing this, the silent director Kwan smiled, as he understood exactly how the old man planned to leave the game. After these words, the meeting was over. Before leaving, the old man stopped director Kim. He told him that he wanted him to stay and talk to him alone. Addressing his ward, he stated his hope that the management was not planning any nonsense. The old man sternly asked if they could be trusted, the man was a little confused and hastily declared that he could be counted on without any doubt. The conversation was serious and the executive director warned the guy that he was not the kind of person who valued his subordinates. He perceived them as tools that could be used to achieve goals and thrown away. After these words, he admitted that this time he discovered the instrument that he liked. He wondered if the person in question turned out to be unworthy. Would he feel disgusting? Pressure from the executive director put the man in a difficult situation. To prove his loyalty, he knelt before the old man. After that, he bowed to the ground and shouted that he would personally make sure that the tool that the executive director planned to use would never deteriorate. For this he was ready to make all the necessary preparations. Executive Director O took into account the leader's determination and dedication that he tried to convince him of his worth with such a plea. The following events take us to Director Kim Yong sungs office. Inside was already his son, who looked like his father. As it turns out, this is the same player who previously had a conflict with Lee Chan sung The guy was shocked by the state his father was in. The man's forehead was bloody from having so diligently begged the CEO to believe in his good intentions. With incredible anger, he asked his son to kill his competitor. The guy was confused and asked why his father made such a decision. Director Kim replied that at first he wanted to say that Lee Chan humiliated him and therefore he would like to see revenge. But then he chose a more suitable reason and named the competitor as someone who would get in his son's way and overshadow his glory. This order was a preventative measure to ensure that Li Chang could no longer harass his beloved son. The guy agreed with his father's words. He believed that his words were true, because in order to become a real man, you need to be much tougher. After that, he asked if his father knew that Li Chang's son had humiliated another person. It was about him Juhan, a fighter who created a team called Mr. Lim. While the small fry tried to figure something out about the growing threat from one of the new recruits, Li Chan Sung continued to shock the patron of the White Tiger Clan. Kaja asked threateningly what exactly the guy was doing inside the library. There was a reason for his anger. During the training, Li Chan Sung demonstrated other abilities that can be obtained at the second level of library access. He mastered the techniques of the Furious and Urban Tiger. The rest of the gods began to stand up for the player. They believed that Kaju was worthless, because he underestimated the recruit that they liked. Although Li Chang Sung was dissatisfied with their behavior, he could not deny the fact that they were right. As a result, Tiger, who got into trouble, reported that his obsession with the player only continues to grow. Li Chang understood that since Haji showed such great interest in his personality, now he would definitely not let him go. Meanwhile, the training progressed at an incredible speed. Beck Jevil perfectly mastered the use of shadow energy and was already able to use the techniques of the owner of the shadow that he had acquired. Li Chang Sung didn't expect his new shadow warrior to do so well. Taking out an unknown scroll, the guy was thinking about whether he should test the item stolen from the destroyed research center of the White Tiger Clan. 
The system reported that this unknown scroll is an ominous tightly sealed object that is fraught with many unknown curses. If it were in the hands of an ordinary player, it would bring mortal horror to him. Since Li Chang discovered Jid, he no longer doubts that the clan's secret activities are connected with the seven mysterious scriptures of San. He knew that demonic documents usually had special properties. Using the viper's eye, he tried to check the contents. The result was unexpected. It revealed the incredible power of the royal tiger scourge. The guy was surprised. He didn't think he had discovered this power in this scroll. At that moment, he realized that in front of him was not just a recording, but a real object. Kaju watched this situation with admiration, wondering how the guy would overcome the king's tiger scourge. This force was in a hurry to swallow the player whole. Li Chang was at a loss. He couldn't believe that CEO would do such things. The situation worsened and the power of the scroll began to exceed his resistance. The only way out of this situation was to use Peter's key. The guy didn't want the ruler of the abyss to discover him, but he had no other choice. Kaju was completely stunned by the appearance of the key in the hands of the player he was interested in. He burst into loud laughter and said that he knew that one day this item would be in his possession. The system reported that Peter's key was able to find a keyhole in an unknown scroll. The locking mechanism was broken and the guy was freed from the terrifying force. The system reported that the Royal Tiger disaster had been suspended. After this, the hidden contents of the scroll appeared in front of the player. At that moment, the sentences in the scroll began to twitch, looking for a way to disappear. Li Chang Sung managed to obtain the information and the system reported that he had acquired the fourth scripture of the seven mysterious scriptures of San. Excited by the events, Beck could not contain his emotions and turned to his brother, asking if everything was okay. In response, Li Chang simply extended his hand in his direction, as if wanting to stop him. The guy wielding the shadow understood what was going on. He decided not to interfere, trusting his only friend. Reading the description of this scroll, Li Chang learned that currently the fourth fragment personifies the power of the forgotten stars and contains a lot of secrets and tasks, but only together with the other fragments can be confirmed. At that moment, the guide believed that this was exactly what he was missing. He suggested that Director O himself found and hid the fourth fragment. This is most likely the reason why everyone forgot about Jid's power. While examining the scroll, the guy thought that since it was the deity who created the protective royal tiger disaster, the contents must be extraordinary. He understood that Kaju would not tell him anything, but at the same time, he could not keep this sinister thing a secret. The system reported that Mephistopheles was waiting for his answer. The guy could not believe that this deity had been waiting for an answer to the proposal since his training. Mephistopheles claimed that he was ready to make concessions and could give the player incredibly valuable things. In order not to be idle, he gave the guy an advantage effect, thanks to which the player had the opportunity to understand what was written in the scroll. Kaju considered this whole situation ridiculous, while the other deities watched with interest. The first thing Li Chang could read was the constellations appeal to those who want to be reborn and follow him with the help of this power. He could not understand this text completely, since the beginning was missing, but on the other hand, he had one assumption, which he considered crazy. The system reported that the player received a new task to find a hidden fragment. The guy began to think about the proposal related to deciphering the seven mysterious writings of San. At the same moment, he remembered his meeting with the head of the White Tiger Clan. He could not forget those feelings and now he had something to compare it with he realized what power Moon Sun had. Li Chang Sung believed that he must complete this building in order to gain the power that surpasses Jidu. It was about the light of the forgotten stars that the apostle of the tiger deity used. With a sly smile on his face, he remembered that Director O had also mastered it, but used it too superficially. At that moment, Li Chang realized that the Lord of the Abyss gave him this scroll because he decided that it would be of little use in the hands of the executive director. Determination drove him to action, so he turned to his brother and asked him not to interfere, 
no matter what happened next. Concerned by the request, the player asked what his friend was planning to do. Li Chang did not answer this question, only asked if Beck could do him such a favor. The player loyal to him agreed without any dispute. He believed that his brother was a rather mysterious person. He was sure that Li Chang possessed mysteries that he would not be able to understand and most likely his plan was one of them. He decided that in this case, he would be like a shadow, blindly following him without questions or doubts. Seeing faith and devotion in his friend's son, the guy accepted a sudden assignment from the system. The system informed him that he would soon be invited to a random dungeon to complete a quest. The goddess of justice Minerva wished him a great victory and gave him the rewards that she had previously put off. The system reported that the player's unyielding spirit and inner calm had combined. Li Chang's son turned to his brother and promised that he would return, after which he disappeared. The system reported that he had entered a random dungeon called the Reckless Demon's Cave. Before embarking on such an important stage of his development, the guy thought about his defeat as a shadow god. More than anything else, he dreamed of returning to the past. He wanted to start his journey again from the moment when, during another walk with a beer in his hands, he saw a sudden bright ray of light in the sky. The opening of the gate threw the former East sportsman into the thick of a random battle. Then he gave up everything, he continued to fight not just to survive, but to see the heat of a new battle. Before he knew it, he had conquered many constellations. Some called him the god of battles, while others called him a vile god. But since he fought only for the sake of fighting, he was the only one of all his comrades who managed to survive. Among those he lost during the battles, the blue-haired girl was no exception. To save him, the player's beloved sacrificed her own life. He was angry with himself for his weakness, because of which he was unable to protect the people closest to him. Despite this, he did not change his mind to achieve his goal. Driven by rage, the gloomy god challenged the twelve constellations. Although he went through incredible battles, one of them turned out to be his last. His defeat was due to his weak immunity to poisons. By combining their powers, the vile gods overpowered him and destroyed his divine status through divine judgment. He could only think that if he returned to the beginning of his journey, he would also go to war against the constellations, but with thorough preparation. Destroying his enemies was the only goal for which he did not lose hope until the very end. The impunity of the gods was what fueled his rage and desire to destroy. The dungeon mission began, its task was to survive and fight. Li Chang's son was deeply cursed by the king's tiger scourge. The system said that this curse would invite him to the tiger led ghost's lair every 24 hours. The ghost's lair is a labyrinth that consists of nine floors. Guiding wraiths instinctively despise humans and do everything they can to kill them and turn them into their subordinates. The player had to survive countless attacks from guiding ghosts, and in order to completely remove the curse, he had to capture all nine floors. The guy was careful, he calmly examined the territory that would soon become a battlefield. As expected, he started from the first floor. The first task was to survive for six hours. Li Chang Sung believed that the royal tiger disaster was the remnants of the energy of the first owner of the scroll, in other words, it was starlight. He knew that if the tiger disaster caught you, then your soul would turn into a guiding ghost, your body would be infected, and you would become a dakini or goblin. The guy believed that in this way Moon Sun gained his strength. The system reported that the tiger deity was curious about how the guy would get out of this dungeon. But despite his words, Li Chan was confident in himself and was not afraid of being exhausted from fighting every day for several hours. Besides, Minerva gave him something good. Soon the first ghost appeared. Seeing a man, he began to call the rest of the monsters to battle. Pable Sag immediately began to turn her nose up at this vile creature and advised the player to get rid of it as soon as possible. Li Chang's son was in no hurry to fight, since wasting time on just one opponent was boring. He was glad that he was able to acquire several useful abilities, and the first of them was the power that the goddess of justice gave him. 
although he initially did not consider the piercing eyes or the blade and blade of the goddess to be something bad, it turned out that they were indeed useful. He knew that if the fight dragged on, it would be difficult to stay focused and his body would become heavy with fatigue. But the power called Kalokagathia, which Minerva gave him, frees him from this time. He was ready to test his strength against such unusual monsters. One of the ghosts was already nearby. He wanted to taste the taste of meat, which he had already forgotten. Li Chan Sung ignored his opponent until the last moment. The monster struck and the guy calmly blocked it with his dragon blade. As it turned out, the ghost could talk, he recognized the strength of the enemy, but added that he would still end up in his stomach. He shouted that even though the man was able to block his blow, he was gradually absorbing the poison, which would destroy him in a few minutes. The self-confident monster continues to speak, wanting to get the human body for lunch. His task was to make the enemy the same guiding ghost as he was. But despite all his efforts, he could not achieve the desired result. Although the ghost thought he was dominant, he suddenly lost his arm. At that moment, he began to understand that the man was just playing with him, and he would not be able to make a ghost out of him. The monster was destroyed, and the system reported that immunity to ten poisons had purified its blood. The victory turned out to be very easy, but during this time the player realized that the monsters were talking and this was how information could be obtained. Before finishing off the enemy, the guy asked if all the monsters were as strong as him. The monster could not answer. He began to feel fear before the man's eyes, which were filled with the desire to kill. The system reported that the low-level ghost saw had been killed. After that, the guy absorbed the royal tiger disaster that was in this ghost. His physical body began to change, but the change was still not complete, and he needed to absorb a lot more of this energy. Li Chang knew that if the royal tiger disaster overcomes him, he will also become a ghost or a goblin, but if he wins and becomes its owner, he will follow a different path just like Moon's son once did. But unlike the apostle, he was not going to stop there. If the royal tiger calamity turns out to be a subtype of the ghost, then he will be able to adapt to it as much as necessary. After this thought, the guy activated the first form of the end of the world flame, the king tiger disaster began to fight back. After intensifying the destructive technique, the tiger's power could not stand it and was purified. Li Chang became the king who swallowed the royal tiger disaster. Because of this, his appearance began to change when using the fire of the eight trigrams and he began to take on a demonic appearance. Kaju was shocked by this unexpected turn of events. At the same time, the snake deity watched with enthusiasm and said that the starlight from the forgotten star had turned into a new light. Li Chang Sung successfully absorbed the purified power, and his magical power began to evolve from Jigui to Bivi. Satisfied with the result, the guy was looking forward to fighting with this form that no one expected to see. The Bivi are an imaginary race known for devouring the souls of tigers, and since this is associated with the ruler of the abyss, it can now be said that he has become his enemy. The monsters began to notice his presence. Everyone was horrified when they saw a man with such incredible power. At the same time, Li Chan Sung began to genuinely enjoy the fight. Countless monsters began to fall one after another. The ghosts were frightened by the power of their enemy, which at first seemed like easy food. Using his new strength and an unimaginable amount of magical energy, the guy quickly moved on and cleared the first floor. While fighting, Li Chang used the techniques of the White Tiger Clan and Hadji carefully observed his elaborate movements. A player with the strength of Bikvi managed to cope with the first floor without any problems. Without any delay, he went to the second floor. In order to quickly improve the characteristics of the new form, Li Chang decided to use it on an ongoing basis, combining magic with the martial arts of the spear. His gaze was cold, he was eager for battle. As soon as the guy entered the floor, a whole crowd of ghosts appeared in front of him. But none of them were going to fight, they were shocked by what they saw, fear was spreading rapidly. The enemies were infected with chaos, 
At the moment when the player slowly approached them, they thought that this was not a person, but a real monster. Before he could reach the enemies, he received a message from the system that his time to fight had expired. The assessment of his battle was at the highest level, so he was expected to receive the best of the rewards. After this, there was a return to reality. Li Chang Sung couldn't believe that these fun six hours passed so quickly. To find out the difference in the flow of time in both dimensions, Li Chang asked how much time he spent in this state but his brother suddenly answered in confusion that Li Chang had literally just told him not to let anyone inside the room. After these words, it became clear to him that nothing had actually happened. In addition, Beck Jaiville noticed that after these words, his brother's aura suddenly changed. Li Chang Sung realized that only a few minutes had passed in this world and this could be very useful. In the future, he may try to hide and rest in this way if he receives a critical wound. He wondered what the curse of the remaining six scrolls would be. It could be anything, a repetition with ghosts, or a completely different mission. Moon's son received three mysterious scriptures and three more were not found, so he believed that he simply had to find them. He assumed that the leaders of Hayoff would have some information about these scrolls, but he could not even imagine where to look for them. After these thoughts, he was distracted by an unexpected call from Director O. Li Chang Sung went to a bar in the Nanhian area. The old man looked very unusual, he greeted his charges. In order to have a productive conversation, the player asked his brother to wait until he finished. First of all, the director, who was drinking whiskey, asked who Li Chang came with. The guy replied that this was Baek Ji Vil, the player with whom they had their last training session. When asked whether he could be trusted, Li Chang replied that he trusted him completely. In addition, the guy said that he had begun to assemble his own group and a good number would be an advantage. The old man agreed with his words, but clarified that they rather needed tools that they would not mind sacrificing, rather than people. Returning to the topic, he handed the player a transfer application towards the guy. Executive Director O also decided to mention that tomorrow they will announce a new training for recruits because unlike Li Chan, the other rookies have not yet taken their first steps. After that, he clarified the details and said that the training would take place with the remaining Hayoff forces. They had found out their location in advance, so all that remained was to lure out their fighters. The mention of this clan was unexpected, but very good news. Li Chan was happy about this because he was just thinking about how to get valuable information from the enemies of the White Tiger clan. After this, the guy asked whether this task would be dangerous for a beginner. The old man replied that most of the raid team would be on this mission, as well as the association and other clans that had agreed to help them. He reassured the guy by saying that the recruits would only eliminate the remaining enemies and this would be a good experience for them. But clarifying the details, he said that unlike the other recruits, Li Chang would be part of the copper assault team. This team would have many experienced fighters, but despite this, the directors were still not convinced that the decision to take a talented player with them was a good idea. Director O didn't want to treat Li Chang like the rest of the trifle, because he had personally seen the guy's incredible skills. He attached information about Hayoff's hideout to the transfer document. The old man also said that they were leaving in five days, so all preparations should be completed before then. Having finished his speech, the man put on a coat with a picture of a tiger and put a beautiful hat on his head, saying that he would communicate the remaining details closer to the operation. Before Executive Director O left the bar with his charge, Li Chang asked if he could fulfill one of his requests. The old man replied that he was ready to listen to him. What was discussed will become clear later, after a conversation with Director O. Li Chan Sung and his brother decided to have some street food. People around could not understand whether this was really the tyrant known throughout Korea. It seemed to them that such a popular personality would not eat at street stalls. Looking at the information about the enemy's lair, the guy learned that we were talking about a dungeon called Abominable Bigfoot Hill. Addressing his brother, Li Chan Sung suggested not to stop there, since both of them still have a long road to strength ahead of them. 
Beck agreed to this proposal without further hesitation. Four days before the operation, Li Chan's son again went to a special dungeon, which he gained access to thanks to a quest related to the discovery of the knowledge of the scroll. All this time he fought against monsters who feared his strength and felt unimaginable fear. He continued to do this in the following days. There was only one day left at the start of the operation. Li Chang's son was no longer interested in ordinary ghosts, which seemed too boring and weak for him. When the ghost squads began to run out, the guy decided to change his tactics and took out a bow. This time he wanted a real test worthy of his new strength. Li Chang Sun aimed straight at the Goblin Palace. It hit the target, and at the same time, the lightning burst skill was activated. There was a powerful explosion that was able to disturb the larger enemy. His instincts turned out to be correct, and he was able to hurt the king of the monsters he had fought earlier. The main monster of this floor was surprised that the man was able to track down his location. He was intrigued by the strength of the stranger. The situation seemed very interesting to him, so he ordered his charges to bring him weapons and armor. With a smile anticipating a good battle, the king turned to his charges and said that they were free, since only he could deal with that person. This monster with long red hair and a red beard was previously a child of the Frisia family, the greatest family of Arcadia. Now he has become nothing more than an assassin from the curse of the seven mysterious scriptures of Shang. Although his body had become almost worthless, his will and resentment remained as strong as before. His plans were to subjugate all the lairs of the ghost and return home for the long-awaited revenge. He was going to collect all the light from the scriptures in order to regain divine status. He had heard that some fool had invaded their lands with such grandiose plans, but he didn't even know his name. For the first time in a hundred years, the king felt that his blood was boiling not like a strategist, but like a warrior. Li Chang Sung smiled as he was also happy about the battle he was on the verge of. The furious king looked into the system and learned the name of the man who had invaded his domain. He answered in a terrifying voice that his name was Jin and he was a descendant of Frisia, blood relatives of the famous family of the demonic kingdom. Not paying attention to his charges, the huge monster went to meet his enemy. He was going to become the real and only king of this dungeon, so he was not going to spare the enemies on his way. In his hands was a huge sword and gladiator armor with a red cloak. Filled with rage, the demon jumped from his palace, releasing a huge amount of terrifying energy. He had a personal vehicle, one of the huge ghosts, that could support his weight and move quickly. His majesty summoned the ghost of Hun, and all his charges began to run away to avoid being hit during the fierce battle against the invasion. With incredible speed, he headed towards a stranger, against whom strategy was powerless. Within a moment he found himself in front of a stranger whom he was about to destroy. When the guy saw the enemy in front of him, the system reported that the boss of the second floor, the bard king of assassins, had appeared. For the first time in recent memory, Li Chang felt the presence of a monster whose power seemed very convincing. Filled with a desire for revenge, the king was ready to fight. Li Chang, Sung and Jin began to fight, spear and sword crossed. Their incredible power scattered all the ghosts that were nearby. Pablesag shouted at the player to destroy the selfish demon while Hanja happily watched the interesting fight. The whirlwind of the battle had incredible destructive power. This time, Li Chang Sung could not rush into the attack mindlessly. He decided to be more careful in order to adequately assess the enemy's strength. He had less than an hour left to fight, in front of him was a monster that could not be compared with the one he had fought here before. Jun was amazed that the man was able to block his blade even though he had imbued it with the spirit of Hun, the monster he rode to the battlefield. The player's cold gaze indicated that this was not all he was capable of. The guy switched his ability from fork to ferocious tiger and rushed to attack. Seeing the stranger's gaze, the demon was sure that in front of him was not just a warrior, but a fighter, obsessed with the process of combat itself. The battle between the monsters continued with terrifying force, 
and they both rushed to attack. During their fight, the entire floor was filled with loud sounds of explosions that were constantly repeated. The ghosts watching this terrifying spectacle could not believe that an ordinary person could resist their king. They understood that with his abilities they could never win without his majesty, even despite the numerical advantage. Approaching the enemy, the guy decided to use his artifact in the form of a long rope saturated with the magical energy of Bevy. As he approaches, he strikes quickly. The king did not have time to deviate from all the trajectories of the enemy's attack and another cut appeared on his face. The movement of this weapon began to cut the rocks that were around. Closing the distance with the enemy, the king began to scream furiously. Li Chang was ready for close combat and swung his dragon dagger. At that moment, the player had to block the attack of both King Jin and the Hong monster at the same time. It's time to decide how to deal with the two of them. Li Chang decided to start by striking not at the rider, but at the monster that was below. Slashing with the dragon tooth blade, he used the lightning net skill. The incredible force of the blow, supported by the magic of Biwi, instantly removed Hun from the battle. But his rider was already in the air, swinging before a powerful attack. Li Chan Sung miscalculated and the enemy's weapon was already aimed at his back. The beast's sense skill warned him of approaching danger. At the last moment, Li Chan realized that it was too dangerous to block. Activating the flying tiger training storm and body clothes technique, he dodged the attack. A blow from a huge sword with terrifying destructive power could easily cause critical damage to the guy. Now their battle had turned into a more fair one-on-one -on -one duel. With a smile on his face, the monster admitted that it was bad that the guy avoided, because he intended to catch him in his mistake. Due to the long battle on this floor, the guy did not notice at all that his stamina had dropped below 15%. He had less than four minutes left until the end of the allotted time for the battle in the dungeon. Being in this state, he felt that he was fighting not with an enemy, but with an impenetrable wall. He wasn't sure he could defeat this opponent without enough energy, but he wasn't ready to end the fight either. The trembling in his body from the excitement of a fun battle was what drove him forward. With a sly smile on his face, he turned to his sword, irritated by this situation, he tried to force the player to use its power. Although the guy did not want to reveal even more trump cards, he had to resort to this in order to win or to survive this battle. King Jun carefully watched his actions, he asked what the man was going to do. Li Chang shouted that he had something funny on his mind. After that, he made a cut on his right hand. The powerful energy of one of the nine legendary artifact Oyezi began to be released from his hand. Feeling this, Tiamat's dragon tooth blade began to tremble with excitement. Li Chang turned to the fish gut sword and shouted the words howl and fight at it. After that, he created a sword resonance, and the system reported that the ferocious tiger had finally revealed his true fangs. The king's eyes began to glow with excitement. The man said that he was planning to do something fun, and he believed him. His interest began to increase rapidly. The system informed the battle participants about the resonance of the evil dragon Snaggletooth, and the fish gut sword. By releasing Biwi's energy reserves, Li Chan Sung further strengthened his body and weapons. Despite exhaustion, he was quickly eager to fight and the king was ready to reciprocate his feelings. The man with incredible strength had no intention of running away. The genie was looking forward to the continuation of the battle, he did not even know how much time the player had left. Li Chan Sung was right above him. Before striking his blow, Chan Sung switched from his status as a ferocious tiger to his status as a wild tiger. As a boost, he activated the wild tiger chaotic strike skill. This was unexpected and the king noticed that the attacks began to dissipate, exposing various parts of his body to the danger of injury. He didn't have time to dodge, so he moved back and blocked the attack that was still aimed at him. The sound of a powerful collision spread throughout the entire dungeon. With his incredible speed and agility, Li Chan instantly found himself behind the king. The genie noticed this, 
while the guy changed his status again and began to use the power of the forked tiger. He was ready to strike at the king, who was distracted by his first attack, but Hans suddenly appeared in front of him. The king believed he could have stopped this attack, but when Hung intervened, he furiously shouted at him to retreat. With the cold gaze of an assassin, Li Chang changed the target of his attack at the last moment. It was the monster Hun that fell under his blade. The system reported that the guy was able to instantly defeat this enemy, and he began to turn into a concentration of the power of the royal tiger disaster. By absorbing his power, Li Chang's son also received the trophies, Hun's three ribs and the killer king's leash. Looking at the genie, the guy did not expect to see such a reaction. He thought that the fact that a player killed his precious pet would affect him more but the king showed that he did not care. The demon's attitude towards the battle changed dramatically. Jun became serious. Li Chang Sung sensed danger from him. King Jun rushed at his opponent. A strong attack was approaching and the player began to doubt that killing the pet had no effect on his behavior. Now the king's desire for revenge has spread to a person previously unknown to him. The player with the twin blades prepared to fight back. Feeling the strength of a worthy opponent, the mood of both fighters changed. Li Chang's son did not pay attention to his condition and quickly rushed into battle. There was a collision that the second floor had not previously seen. The rocks around their battlefield began to crumble from the power of the demon and the man. As a result, the king was wounded in the shoulder. But as it turned out, he was able to hit back. They exchanged blows and Li Chan Sung received a critical cleaving wound to his body, causing his stamina to drop below 5%. At the very moment when the exhausted guy could no longer continue the battle against the king of the floor, the system reported that the time given to him had expired. The player's return to reality has begun. Seeing his brother's blood, Beck Jiaville was shocked by his condition. The White Tiger Clan's strongest recruit's expression was so confused for the first time, Beck suggested that he go to the hospital immediately. At that moment, Li Chang's son noticed his brother's concern and took out a large healing potion with his trembling hand, after which he assured that everything was fine and that it would be enough. Seeing the injured player's condition, Beck said he would do it himself. He poured the entire potion straight onto his brother's huge wound. Li Chang Sung breathed a sigh of relief. For the first time since returning to Earth, he was on the verge of death. After using the potion, his stamina increased by 50% and his condition improved greatly. When asked by his brother about what happened, he asked him not to worry and replied that everything was fine. In the fight with the king of the second floor, it initially seemed to him that they were on the same level but at one point he realized that he was still far inferior to him in strength. The second floor turned out to be quite complex, so it was difficult to imagine what awaited him next. In order to pass them normally, he believed that he would need to get a blood mine and reinforce bones. But at the moment he could not get this item, since there is no way to find unicorns. Of the options available, only reinforced bone was available. With its help, he can gain the ability of indestructibility. But the problem was that in a day he would have to face the king of killers again, so he had to act immediately. It could help him that the Hayoff dungeon is located in a snowy region. He decided to concentrate on this information to gradually come up with a solution. At the same moment, he received a message. Executive Director O oh said that Li Chang Sung was scheduled to arrive at his destination the next morning so he should hurry up with all the preparations. While leaving the White Tiger Clan building, he was suddenly caught by a journalist who wanted to catch up. The reporter immediately rushed towards him, he managed to introduce himself before pressing the button. But it was too late, the guy's murderous gaze was directed in his direction. The target turned out to be a camera, the flash of which Li Chan Sung did not want to see after such a hard day. Using his strength, he managed to avoid the uncomfortable moment, and the arrogant journalist lost his camera. Looking around, he thought with fear about what kind of person this talented newcomer was. He realized that the players were not ordinary people, 
he believed that they would be a serious threat to society if they were monsters. After training, the guys went straight to Oyezi since he had already made a spear for Beck Jayaville. The guy was crazy about the result, he really liked the simple and convenient design of this weapon. Li Chan, as usual, decided to play a joke and said that it looked boring and should have engraved something on it. After these words, he sent another 100 million won and asked the blacksmith if everything was fine. Addressing the boss, the man said that he was worried that he had made a serious mistake about the weapon of his respected customer, and therefore would not be able to complete the task in less than two months. The player immediately asked what exactly happened. The man replied that he would need more time because the materials had run out. Li Chan's son guessed that we were talking about cold steel. Yezi replied that this is so and now it can't be found anywhere. Besides, not every steel is suitable for such a heavy order. Going into details of his work, the man said that the weapon that the boss ordered required cold steel that had been cooling for decades in the ice. Only in this case will it really withstand even very intense heat. The main problem was that even the small reserves of steel that were in the country were used up and Hayoff was to blame for this. As it turned out, the dungeon, where the remnants of the Hayoff clan live, has the main reserves of this material for Korea. In addition, Li Chang was interested in that place to obtain basic materials to strengthen bones. When the conversation turned to materials, Oh Yezi admitted that there was an interesting person who wanted to talk to the boss. The guy looked thoughtfully at his charge. Still, he did not refuse the offer and met with a man named Choi Hingil. This man is the executive director of a large trading company. Li Chang immediately noticed calluses on his hands, which is why he concluded that he is a blacksmith. Looking at the business card, the player noticed that we were talking about a large company. Seeing the surname the same as that of his own blacksmith, the guy asked what the connection was between them. Hengil replied that Choi Beong, who is the ancestor of the first O Yezi, is his older cousin. O Yezi did mention that he had a supplier, but it turned out to be a representative of a large company. Now he understood where the blacksmith got such rare materials from. Li Chan Sung asked what the purpose of the meeting was, and Hien Gil replied that he came to him with a request. With a sly smile, Li Chang said that most likely it would be about something from the dungeon of Bigfoot Mountain. Hengil noticed the guy's insight and moved closer to the point. First of all, he asked whether the player was aware of the reason why the Hayoff group made a refuge there. Li Chang briefly replied that he did not know the reason. Then the blacksmith explained that the king's icy breath was in that dungeon. This meant nothing to the player because this was the first time he had heard such a name for an item. The man replied that these are the best crystals of all, and some masters call them endless ice crystals. Hearing this, Li Chang couldn't contain his shock. This was what he was looking for. It seems the guy has a new goal. In the past he has already discussed this rare material with the wards of the Lord of the Underworld. Then they discussed a body enhancement called Strength in Bone. One of the elders explained that it is the main component of the legendary bones of the gods, such as the divine limb and the dragon skeleton. To obtain a reinforced bone, you had to obtain a flaming heart and a coat of arms engraved with frost. During the conversation, the man mentioned that Li Chan already knows how to kindle a flame, with which he can improve his heart, so he only needed to acquire the so-called coat of arms which would protect his physical body from the heat of the flame. To do this, he needed an endless ice crystal, which absorbed the pure energy of the moon for a long time, so it would serve as a good ingredient for the coat of arms. Previously, the guy believed that he could get this rare material only in a dungeon located in America. To justify his strong reaction to the mention of the material, Li Chang replied that he had not heard of the infinite ice crystal before but now understands that we are talking about something important. As an example, Hengil explained that thanks to it, the levels of ice mages can be greatly increased. In addition, Hayoff, who are located in that dungeon, believe that it will help them get stronger and get out of their desperate situation. After understanding all the details, the man asked how much would be enough to pay for such a heavy order. 
Li Chang Sung replied that he had enough money, so he asked for a favor. After this conversation, Heng Gil and his brother Baeong met on the roof of the building where the man was resting after a hard day. The younger cousin noticed that ancestor Oh Yezi looked quite sad. The man replied that he simply did not want to be in debt to his boss. But Hengil had a completely different opinion about this situation, and with a sincere smile on his face said that his older brother had finally found a good friend. The sudden situation put the blacksmith in an awkward position. Hengil admitted that Li Chan's son agreed to take on the case, and they made a deal. True, he was excited by the conditions, he still could not understand why the guy needed the breath of Agni, a fragment of the Divine Sons, lunar records and a flower dew drop. Moreover, the famous guy was interested in the whereabouts of the Nine Great Swords. It was a mystery to him how his brother found such a person and whether Chan's son could cope with the task. The next day, the operation began and the combined forces of the Korean player organizations gathered at the entrance to the Bigfoot dungeons to get rid of the remnants of Hayoff, which had gotten out of control. Representatives of the association were also on site. They were concerned that there was still no news from the first detachment, which was the rear one. The steel which suggested that they had failed and this was the only explanation that could come to mind. A comrade from the Five Swords organization decided to decorate their tense moment. He brought the agents their favorite coffee, and Cha noticed that he had an excellent memory for such details. Turning to the agent, the man said that the situation was not going according to plan at all. The girl agreed noting that the resistance was stronger than they expected, or the dungeon turned out to be too difficult and their preparation was not enough. Noticing that he came alone, Cha asked where his niece was, who always walked nearby. With incredible sadness, the man replied that Habin had gone in search of a young man from the White Tiger Clan that interested her. She really wanted to see her savior. The girl was delighted that she finally had the opportunity to meet an amazing guy after such a long wait. At the same moment, the one who was to blame for the heartache of the leader of the swordsman clan appeared. Cha Yiwun looked around to find the one who had been making a lot of noise since his appearance. Troops of the White Tiger clan arrived at the site of the operation, which was located in an area where devastation reigned. Li Chang Sung walked alongside the clan's high-ranking fighters, accompanied by his team. Due to the fighter's inexperience, he was constantly pestered with inappropriate advice. Shim Jinho, the head of the future strategic detachment, turned to the guy and asked him to concentrate, threatening that if he ruined his and Director O's reputation, then he wouldn't just let him get away with it. Hearing the words of the impudent leader, his wards began to laugh impudently saying that such words could frighten a recruit and wet himself. In response, Li Chan's son only unexpectedly smiled and remained silent, which greatly shook the pride of the arrogant tigers. One of them immediately rushed towards him and grabbed him by the clothes, after which he called the guy a scumbag for laughing at the words of his seniors, as if not realizing that the situation was very serious. In response to such insolence, Li Chang Sung ordered him to let go of his clothes with a cold gaze. The behavior of a guy with a lower rank was what hurt the fighter's pride even more, and he began to shout about his own. At that very moment, Li Chang Sung could not tolerate such an attitude. The head of the future strategic department instantly sensed danger. He shouted to his charge to move away from the recruit. But it was too late and the screaming man suddenly did a somersault over the player he openly despised. There was snow on the ground, but the fighter's landing could hardly be called soft. All the attention of the Allied forces was focused on the conflict between an experienced white tiger clan fighter and a rookie. To restore his pride in front of the rest of the clan, the man began to put power into his fist before punching, shouting that no one dare treat Kam Wuchang's thunder fist like that. Within a moment, his self-confidence visibly weakened. Li Chang Sung was not going to ignore such treatment. He activated the status of the divided tiger and also rushed to attack himself. The guy was serious, as his colleagues, filled with envy of his popularity, wished. Li Chang Sung struck with the fingers of his palm to counter Korea's famous thunder fist. 
The result was not long in coming and the bones of the man's hand broke in an instant. For the first time in his life, the arrogant white tiger clan fighter saw his vaunted might be rendered useless. Feeling the pain of breaking bones, he screamed loudly. At that moment, the guy understood that their conflict would not end there, so he decided to call it a day. At that moment, a third person suddenly intervened. Shim Jinho couldn't afford to lose his comrade because of a joke that got out of control. The concerned man said it was enough of a mess. Li Chang Sung calmly replied that this person was the first to threaten him. Self defense measures sent the recruit's senior comrade for treatment. As Li Chang walked away from the manager, he said without turning around that the strategy department seemed to value age and status more than skill. Haju, who was watching the event, found the situation funny, and his follower Seo Jang Kwan laughed loudly, saying that he was Li Chang Sung, just as crazy as himself. The girl standing next to her said that they were completely different, and it was noticeable. She believed that Li Chang was only pretending to be so rude, because too many people did not believe in his abilities and such an ostentatious trick could muffle conversations. After these words, the leader of the second team realized that among them there were a lot of scoundrels who were waiting for the recruit to fail. Because the guy beat up Master Kong Wu Cheng, Jan Quan continued to laugh, believing that they were similar to the player he was interested in. After the battle, no one dared to bother the recruit, but at one moment a girl he had known for a long time ran up to him. She asked if he remembered her, Li Chang, without any hesitation, realized that it was Wu Hubing. Minerva, watching their reunion, said that she was very touched by this moment, after which she wished them good luck in their love affairs. For the girl, the fact that he remembered her was a real relief, since she was worried that Li Chan wouldn't be able to recognize her after she became a player. Li Chan's son admitted with surprise that the girl had really changed. In fact, he hoped that she would have a normal life as an ordinary person. After a few minutes of pleasant conversations, a ward of the Five Star Sword Clan suddenly joined them. Turning to the lady, he said that the head of the department urgently wanted to see her. The girl was unhappy that her stupid uncle was tearing her away from such a long-awaited meeting. Having no other choice, she was forced to say goodbye due to problems regarding the clan, after which she added that she would wait for a new meeting. It was only then that Li Chang's son realized that she was the niece of that strange head of the five-star clan whom he met at his apartment at the beginning of his journey. He could still hear the conversation between Habin and the head's ward. As it turned out, their clan was in pursuit of assistant director Hayoff, who was spotted nearby. This news seemed a little strange, because they were going to meet with enemies already inside the dungeon. Still, the guy was not worried about Wu Habin as he saw that she was able to adapt to her new life and was doing well. Then he turned to his brother and asked him to get ready. Ji Vil immediately began using his technique. Having mastered his energy, he could easily fit inside his brother's shadow. A real turmoil began among the warriors of the combined forces. They found the assistant to the head of Hayoff and could not understand why he was here and not inside the dungeon. A fighter with incredible experience named Kwok Downen, better known as the Scarlet Ghost, was waiting for his enemies to arrive. He received orders via radio communication to divert as much attention as possible to himself. His task was far from easy, because the Alliance significantly outnumbered them and his deity, a sadly weeping spirit, looked at his followers with pity. With a smile on his face, the man turned to his dear God and asked him not to spare his faithful follower. He admitted that he chose this path himself, so God should just watch his strong faith. The system reported that the deity began to nod silently while the man began to concentrate on his enemies. The alliance fighters did not stand still and began to rapidly rise towards their goal. But they made a terrible mistake. Having underestimated the enemy, they had to become acquainted with his famous fist throughout Korea. The man turned out to be a real monster, he did not care about the skills of the players, because he could cope with him using only his brute strength. Landing on the ground with incredible speed, he scattered the inexperienced fighters of the alliance, significantly reducing the numerical superiority of his enemies. 
Within a moment, strong magical energy began to rush towards him. The Scarlet Ghost felt that it was the form of a tiger, which meant that the White Tiger Clan was already in place. Within a moment, he had to cross a blow with the insane leader of the second raid team of the White Tiger Clan. The crazy warrior shouted that he had long wanted to compete with the Scarlet Ghost Hayoff, but did not expect that such an opportunity would actually present itself. With his appearance, Seo Jan Kwan aggravated the situation for the assistant leader of the Hayoff clan, he did not understand why this crazy tiger was among all sorts of weaklings. At the same moment, the silhouette of the leader of the Five Star Sword clan appeared, the man was incredibly angry due to the fact that from the very beginning of the meeting with the enemy they had lost many fighters. Wu Yun Gun was serious, he said that he would not allow the Scarlet Ghost to remain alive. The experienced fighter of the old school continued to madly fight with his fists with the commander of the second White Tiger team. At one moment he threw back his young opponent, the old man was glad that the outstanding talents of the nation were welcoming him to the battlefield. Heading towards the swordsmen, he shouted that he wanted to see what they were capable of. While the Scarlet Ghost was drawing the main attention, Li Chan's son was heading towards a more real problem and Jiavel showed him the way. He understood that the old school fighter was just a decoy. He was quickly heading to where the real problem was, threatening the forces of the entire alliance. At one point, the Scarlet Ghost, covered with scars, found himself surrounded by his enemies. Seo Jangquan didn't want a legend like Kwok Downen to die, so he asked him to surrender. The old man's calm calm seemed too suspicious to the leaders of the organizations. Using his technique, the man replied that it was too early to give up, he declared his intention to lead the alliance through the same hell that the Hayoff warriors went through. After his words, Mr. Wu felt an incredible danger. With a terrifying smile, the battle-hardened warrior activated a pre-prepared trap that was placed on their battlefield. The spiral cloaking began to separate the combatants from the rest of the forces, while the seal of the labyrinth of illusions absorbed those caught under its influence. Combining reports from the battlefield and map data, the association agent was furious. Cha Yi Wung was not furious. She couldn't believe that they had made such a terrible mistake and fallen for the enemy's trick for the second time. The enemy's motive became clear to her for fooling them with such an intriguing trick. Throughout the area there were spellcasters who were rune masters. Seo Yunquan was one of those who was the first to fall under the influence of the enemy force. He could no longer respond to the cries of his charges. The old man continued to destroy his personality. Speaking in a terrifying voice, he told the leader of the second team that it would be better if the killer of his own mother had not been born. It is unknown whether these words are true from his life or just manipulation. To avoid being influenced by enemy technology, Li Chan began to use the power of mind immunity. With the help of the viper's eye, he was going to track down the targets of interest to him, among whom were the spellcasters who controlled the trap. Wu Habin was also imprisoned by enemy illusions. There were tears in her eyes, because the technique demonstrated universal hatred towards her. It seems that it was about her past as a player, when her entire squad was destroyed and only she was able to find her savior. At one point, someone was found who could save her. The illusions began to collapse and the girl realized that she was under the influence of technology. Looking around, she saw her savior. It was Li Chan's son again. He asked if she was okay. When the girl replied that she felt fine, Li Chang ordered his brother to deal with the enemy spellcaster. Beck Jiavel stepped out of his brother's shadow. It was too unusual and unexpected. Wu Habin had not seen her savior's team before and therefore did not know what unusual skills they possessed. Using his shadow energy, the guy headed to the roof of the nearest high-rise building. The focused caster continued to keep his technique running. But a moment later, his body was bound by threads of shadows that belonged to a fighter of the White Tiger Clan. The shadow binding was activated and the Hayoff clan member could not resist. Beck G. Vil immediately pulled him to the captain of the squad. 
The enraged member of Hayoff shouted that he had no idea how they figured out his location, but despite the superior strength of his enemies, he would not tell them anything. The calm Li Chan asked the fighter if he was sure of his decision. In response, the caster shouted in panic that he was not afraid of anything and would remain silent until the end. By activating the tiger's aura pressure ability, Li Chan's son caused a terrifying fear in the enemy. Seeing the deadly look of the unfamiliar guy and his sword with a terrifying aura, the caster began to lose self-control. Having learned the necessary information, Li Chan Sung finished the case. He was able to find out that the Hayoff had prepared well and placed nine spellcasters around the perimeter of the battle zone, which strengthened the single seal of the runes. As it turned out, Li Chan's son noted the location of these spellcasters in advance, because if he had done this after activating the technique, it would have been much more difficult to cope with. It became clear that this place was too dangerous, so the decision was made to take Wu Hubin with him. Until they went further, the girl found the courage to call the savior amazing, she believed that the guy did not see the monsters around him, she wondered if she would one day be able to reach his level of power. In response, the guy asked why Haben believed that he did not see the illusion that surrounded all the fighters on the battlefield. He was surrounded by those monsters that were defeated by his hands, in addition, the huge eyes of the monsters were constantly watching him. At one point, paying attention to the illusion, he noticed a familiar face. Among the not very distinct people, he saw a man with blonde hair, a scar on his face and a spear in his hands. He turned towards the player and looked him straight in the eyes. Although all the illusions of the players were evil and threatening, this man was satisfied with what Li Chan Sung was doing. He admitted that he was proud of him, and then admitted that since the guy had grown and changed a lot, he could now rest in peace. The power of pure reason began to tremble for some unknown reason, but this did not affect the guy at all. He smiled when he saw his old acquaintance. It seems that the man was closely associated with him in the past, most likely during the time when Li Chang Sung was a shadow god. When the illusion ended, the guy's ability returned to its original state, and with a pleasant and friendly look he invited his team to move on. His behavior took the members of the temporary squad by surprise. They had never seen Li Chang Sung smile before. Meanwhile, in another part of the battlefield, among the endless destruction, Wu Yun-gun was desperately trying to find his niece, who could have been affected by enemy equipment. The worried man kept a clear mind, he hoped that nothing happened to Haben. Within a moment, he felt a man with incredible strength appear behind him. It was the brutal Seo yun Quan who fell under the influence of an illusion. He rushed at his colleague. yun Gun managed to jump away from the ferocious blow of his comrade. He couldn't believe that the wildly growling man was going to fight him. The head of the swordsman clan tried to protect himself and bring his comrade to his senses. Two monsters clashed in battle. yun Gun did not understand how the head of the white tiger team could fall under the influence of the illusion. The scarlet ghost watched their battle with pleasure. He smiled evilly due to the fact that he could simply control his targets with demonic energy. All he had to do was wait for the battle to end and finish off whoever survived. The swordsman's patron, the nameless giant watched his follower with excitement. The man was more serious than ever. Since the enemy was strong, he warned the tiger that he would have to use all his strength and in this case he would not be able to defeat him without causing harm. At his words, the hypnotized junk one could only growl like an animal. Things were bad and Mr. Wu could not avoid the battle. The head of the second team of the White Tiger Clan went on the attack and blood was shed. Wu Yun Gun had no other choice, he defended himself by piercing his comrade's chest with a sword. The delighted Scarlet Ghost could not hide his surprise. Trying to guess the winner of the battle, he made the wrong guess. Despite the mistake, this did not change his plans and he decided to join the battle by jumping from the roof of a tall building. Seo Yunquan regained consciousness and the embittered heads of various organizations waited for the moment when one of the strongest fighters of the enemy clan fell into their trap. The old man was shocked, 
only after the jump he was able to find out that he had fallen for a trick that was invented in order to lure him out. The Alliance fighters began to rush to meet their enemy. Commander so complained that his comrade had thrust his sword too deeply, but Mr. Wu did not understand his anger, because it was impossible to deceive an experienced warrior in any other way. Because of this ghost, Yung Kwan was seriously injured and directed all his anger and rage towards the enemy. Instead of a surprise attack, the Scarlet Ghost was forced to resort to defense. A powerful blow from one of the strongest fighters of the White Tiger Clan sent the man flying into the air. He had no choice but to accept tactical defeat and take the fight against two. Just a moment later, he was shocked by a message from the system that the seal of the Labyrinth of Illusions had been destroyed, and therefore the fog began to dissipate. The leaders of the two organizations also received this message. They could not believe that someone managed to do this without their help. On the other hand, they could only rejoice for this and concentrate on their main goal. Encouraging each other, they rushed to the attack. The situation worsened. In addition, the Scarlet Ghost could not recognize the arrogant confidence of his enemies. Activating his skills, he shouted threateningly that he would now show them why he was nicknamed the Scarlet Ghost. After this, a fierce battle between two young warriors and a distraught old man began. As expected, Li Chang Sung was the one behind neutralizing the enemy spellcasters. The fog had already cleared and he began to observe what was happening on the battlefield. The battle between the two leaders of different organizations ended and Seo Yun Quan lost sight of the old man. Everyone went in search of a Haifang warrior named Kwok Dawan. He was seriously wounded and was hiding underground. The deity's sadly crying spirit looked at his wounded follower with pity. He wanted to watch with sadness the last minutes of the life of his faithful follower. Over the radio, a female voice said that the Scarlet Ghost has no right to return to the clan alive, especially if he wants to make amends for his mother. With a smile on his face, the man replied that he would not be able to return alive but would help his interlocutor get what he wanted, even if he had to flash his scarlet flame for the last time. Within a moment, he received an unexpected message from the system that he had fallen into a trap. The scarlet ghost shouted to the stranger to show himself. At that moment, a tall guy with a mask on his face appeared from around the corner, hiding his identity and presence. Seeing him, the old experienced fighter was confused realizing that he was dealing with the culprit of all the problems of his clan. Li Chang Sun, with a smiling mask on his face, asked if the man was embarrassed by his appearance. At first, the old man just called him a bastard and began to silently observe. Relaxing a little, he sighed and smiled. The hatred in his eyes continued to grow. Despite the exhaustion of his body, he had long wanted to take revenge on the one who was to blame for the fall of the Hayoff clan. According to the fighter Hayoff, all the subordinates of his clan were just toys in the hands of this cruel manipulator, who destroyed their plans and made them enemies before the country. Their position was determined precisely by his activities. Despite being seriously wounded, the Scarlet Ghost mustered his last strength to destroy his sworn enemy. Looking at the system, he felt even more angry because of the disrespect, because a guy who had not even mastered level 40 dared to set a trap for a veteran, one who had level 70. Turning to his enemy, he shouted that he would fall because of his own arrogance. Rushing into the attack, he shouted that he would tear him into pieces before he accepted his death. But after a moment the guy suddenly took off the mask from his face. The enemy was puzzled by his laughter, he assumed that the confident, impudent man had foreseen his actions. The powerful blow of the Scarlet Ghost was stopped without much difficulty with the help of one of the legendary artifacts from the tooth of the goddess Tiamat. The old man was at a loss. His low-level opponent was able to cut his destructive jade fist, which is known as one of the sacred objects. Despite this, he tried to attack again. He missed and the blow with his only hand landed on the surface. The player escaped the enemy and activated the Jigui vessel, causing a firestorm to erupt. Seeing this, the man became wary of the presence of the incredible aura of his enemy. 
Taking the matter more seriously, the guy did not want to take risks and immediately took out his second legendary sword. A furious battle of two blades against one fist began. The Scarlet Ghost thought that he had previously been close to becoming a high-level ranker. Because of this, he could not afford to lose to some brat. But peering into the terrifying aura of the recruit, he felt that this was not an ordinary scumbag, but a real monster. He knew that if he could get rid of him in this place, then he would cause a lot of problems for his daughter. At one point, his powerful blows simply pierced the air. Li Chang changed his physical form and flew around the man. The Scarlet Ghost suddenly lost sight of his enemy. A moment later, the guy was behind the high veteran and struck him with his blades. The old man screamed loudly from the pain of this wound. But the guy with the cold gaze didn't want to end there. His next target was the wounded man's other arm. After losing the battle against the white tiger clan player, the man could not believe that his career was over. Using a radio transmitter, he spoke his daughter's name, Eugene. After this, the man fell into the water. Li Chang Sung was satisfied with the result of the battle. He admitted that he had changed and confirmed this by being able to defeat a high-level ranker. Returning to his normal form, he thought that he was already strong enough even though he had not read any of the seven writings of San. At that moment, he confidently thought that now he would not allow anyone to take possession of him, not even the gods. The Scarlet Ghost asked the player to end his life, while Minerva stated that evil people must be punished, and then began to praise him for this act. The guy calmly answered the old man that it was too early, since he needed to extract some information from him. The proud Scarlet Ghost replied that it was foolish to assume that he would tell him anything after he destroyed his children overnight. Li Chang Sung responded that Kwok has used people for his own gain so many times that it's funny to hear how he wants to discuss justice. With a smile on his face, the man said that nothing could be learned from him. Li Chang Sung expected this to be the answer, so he said that he would ask someone else and reached out with his hand to the radio transmitter of the Hayoff fighter. After that, the man began to furiously stop him, but other than words he was unable to do anything else. Taking the radio transmitter, the guy heard a female voice trying to contact the deputy head of the clan. She realized that she was not dealing with a member of the clan. Li Chan Sung calmly assumed that she wanted to save the fighter Kwok Downen. Hearing this, the girl thought. Within a moment, she heard the cries of the Scarlet Ghost. He turned to Eugene and asked her to switch off and not listen to the one who destroyed their clan. The talking head was ruining the guy's life so he put his foot on him and said that his time for talking was over. After that, he turned to Eugene again and said that the information would help save this old man. He asked directly what she knew about the seven scriptures of San. Hearing this, the girl assumed that she was dealing with a spy from the White Tiger Clan, but then corrected her words, realizing that they would not ask about it. Li Chang Sung told her that he was sure that she knew where the fifth scripture was and then asked her to answer. The girl thought about it. Sighing with a sly smile, she found this situation funny. She believed that the guy was bluffing, and if he needed information so badly, he would not kill the prisoner. Confident in her theory, the girl briefly answered the guy to kill the scarlet ghost. She was shocked when the guy calmly replied that he would do it now. Her manipulation did not work, the guy returned to the radio transmitter again saying that he did as she asked, after which he offered to end their conversation. The stranger's impudence began to infuriate her. She was filled with rage. Absorbing the remnants of Kwok Dowen's power, the guy thought that since he provoked her, then the Hayoff would definitely come for him at any cost. There was no point in continuing the conversation anymore. The system unexpectedly reported an increase in the soul extortion level due to which he was able to acquire the enemy's ability. Moving on, he was glad that he had acquired this power, since he needed the ability for hand-to-hand -hand combat. After destroying the Scarlet Ghost, Li Chang received a message from the deity whose follower the veteran was, despising him for stealing the gift she gave to her faithful disciple. It was the deity of the sad crying spirit. Chan Sung knew it under the name Lamashtu, 
In fact, he did not want to spoil the relationship with her, since she did not support the twelve zodiacs in the war against him in life during his time as a shadow god. He thought that if he had the opportunity, he would definitely apologize to her. Meanwhile, somewhere in heaven, Lamish too was crying in agony over the loss of her valued and loyal follower. Her grief would lead to inevitable consequences. Alliance troops began to return to their strategic center. Seeing this, the agent, stunned by his success, turned to the foreman to look in that direction. The entire crowd was discussing that the trap set by the Hayoff clan had been disarmed by the famous newcomer of the White Tiger clan. They believed that the guy was a real monster, because he personally eliminated and captured all the illusionists who supported the seal. When asked how he did it, he simply replied that he was lucky. They believed that his esports title of tyrant was also his characteristic as a dungeon player. Association agent Cha couldn't take her eyes off the mysterious guy. She had never seen his power in person before, but she understood that he was a key character in neutralizing the Scarlet Ghost. Another tense situation began in the crowd of surviving fighters. The arrogant leader approached the new recruit from behind and told him that he shouldn't become arrogant just because he was Director O's favorite. With an evil smile, he began to threaten, saying that it wouldn't be strange if Li Chang's son died fighting with his elder with swords. The calm guy thanked the man for the remark, after which he admitted that he would also like to speak out. He directly asked the senior in rank to stop showing off, after which he said that he was not a very good warrior in sword fights because of which he could accidentally let go of the weapon and it could accidentally blow off the impudent man's head. The cold and confident speech of the recruit infuriated the man and he nervously bit his lip, peering at the back of his enemy. Just a moment later, one of the recruits approached him, who was also the one who truly hated Li Chan Sung. Addressing the head of Xin, he stated in a serious tone that he had some information about their common enemy. The man was very interested in what secret this guy had learned. From the very beginning of the operation, Li Chan Sung continued to make enemies. Eugene thought that her father sacrificed himself, he always did what he wanted. Within a moment, she felt the appearance of divine energy. The girl stood up and saw a message from the system that the deity, a sadly crying spirit, was wondering if she thirsted for power. Hope appeared in her eyes when she saw that Lamashtu was claiming that he could provide her with the opportunity to take revenge on her enemy. With a crazy smile, she asked the deity what she needed to do for this. Her patron began to worry, but Lamashtu ignored this and granted new power to the daughter of her dead follower. Eugene was crazy about receiving an incredible gift from her father's patron. Having cleared the outside, the Alliance warriors entered the dungeon under the name of the Mountain of the Abominable Snowman. On an endless snowy plain stood a castle, a winter palace that had to be captured to complete the mission. The temperature of this dungeon exceeded all expectations, even winter clothes could not help the unsuited players. The snowstorm turned out to be so strong that the front troops were disoriented, as they could not see where the road went. The entire alliance was led forward by the Myung clan. All the warriors were determined to put an end to the country's enemies once and for all. Only Cha Yi Un could analyze the situation. She understood that if they continued in the same spirit, the advanced troops would fall into the traps of monsters. The matter was difficult, and she could not say for sure whether they would be able to complete this task properly. But among the fighters, there was one who could suddenly change the course of the battle. In her opinion, Li Chan's son was the one who could show them a real miracle once again. The purposeful guy noticed the look of the association representative. Her close attention to the recruit's personality was truly difficult to notice. Considering the guy to be his good friend, Seo Yunquan grabbed him by the shoulder and started laughing, saying that the steel which from the association liked him. With the look of a predator, he stated that many men dreamed of hitting on her. But because of this, many of them almost got shot in the forehead when they tried to flirt with her. He noted that this was the first time that she herself showed interest in someone. Iron which Cha Yun is one of the most elite magical scientists in the world, 
Each magic bullet from her revolver causes a huge explosion that turns the battlefield into a complete mess. She is one of the high-ranking government agents, a genius who is not easy to find. Even large clans listen to her opinion, since she has influence on the president of the Korean Association. In fact, she is the representative of this association. Looking at the guy, Seo Yun Kwan again praised himself, saying that he has a keen eye for talent. Within a moment, the guy decided to leave his obsessive comrade, saying that a sudden order had been received from the director to take action. Using several abilities, he quickly rushed forward. Lost in thought, the man said out loud that he began to envy this guy more and more every second, he was serious about getting him before his brother she won. Meanwhile, inside the Winter Palace the situation was very working. Hayoff's workers began to blackmail the snow people, saying that they would not free their king until they found the Eternal Ice Crystal. In addition to Eternal Ice Crystals, these madmen also mined other valuable resources. One of the experienced fighters watched this whole spectacle with pity. Looking at the incredible amount of resources collected, he couldn't believe that people were interested in the Agni Yon. He assumed that the enemies were simply going to blow this place up. As it turned out, this was a general in the army of snowmen. One of his subordinates asked why he was just looking at the suffering of people, instead of taking the throne and saving their species from extinction. The general replied that they had only one king, while he himself was only a miserable servant who faithfully obeyed his master. Those who managed to escape human captivity boarded flying monsters and their commander declared that a servant has only one duty, to hope that his master will return safely. He understood that the people who took their king captive were well trained, so he decided to kill the allied forces of his enemies. Serious-minded snow people headed to the entrance to the dungeon to meet the invaders with all honors. Meanwhile, Li Chang was approaching his target. Using the search rune he scanned the location of the second radio transmitter to find the location where the members of the Hayoff clan were located. He had previously heard that Executive Director Hayoff said that they were holding the king hostage in the Winter Palace. He understood that the race of snow people were loyal to their ruler so they would not obey and would fight to the end. He supposedly had only three hours to descend into the underground shaft of the Winter Palace, find the Eternal Ice Crystal located at its very heart, while avoiding Hayoff and the Bigfoot. Since time was limited, he decided to hurry. But after a moment, the man noticed that there were ill-wishers above the gorge through which he decided to take a shortcut. The snow people aggressively met the lone man who wandered into their domain. They were serious about destroying him. At the same time, Li Chang realized that he did not have time for them, so he immediately turned to activating the flame storm. The technique burst out with all its fury and headed towards the enemies. No one could resist his power, so the path was cleared. The guy continued to approach the snow palace, but remained attentive. Within a moment, he noticed traces of surveillance and felt someone's presence. Strangers could prevent him from carrying out his plans, so he stopped and asked them to show themselves. It was one of the White Tiger Clan members. He couldn't understand how he was noticed so quickly. The assassin who came with him noticed that their target was stronger than they said, so he asked for additional payment. The guy was not embarrassed by such words. He agreed to pay extra in exchange for the fact that they would put an end to his enemy once and for all. The head of the assassination squad asked him not to worry about the mission, saying that there was no person who could avoid death when meeting their dark technique squad. The guy stayed on the sidelines to watch them get rid of his enemy. He hoped that Im Juhan would cope with his job. As it turned out, he was not alone here. Next to him was another long-time enemy of the talented player who had a conflict with him inside the training dungeon. With a sly smile on his face, the guy was confident of his victory, since in addition to the killers, he took with him a gift from the division chief, who also hated the daring recruit. Li Chang Sung saw an entire army appear right in front of him. He couldn't waste much time on them, so he used both legendary blades at once. The guy sharpened his sense of the beast to identify all the enemies that came after his head. 
he managed to find out that there were about thirty assassins in front of him, while another fifty were waiting nearby. Sighing, he found it amazing that his enemies within the clan would go to such lengths just to kill him. After this, the guy turned to his brother, asking him to help reduce the time he would spend eliminating these fools. After passing on information about those still hiding, the guy asked Beck to find them. G. Vil went in search, while the Dark Technique assassins were already close to his brother. As it turned out, some of them even mastered complex moving techniques. One of the experienced killers felt an incredible advantage the moment he found himself behind his opponent. With a sly smile, he said that thanks to the cold snowstorm, he would kill the recruit painlessly. Li Chan, activating his movement technique, invited him to prove it with action. The flying tiger's sliding storm was activated and the guy disappeared from the sight of his enemies, who were ready to deliver the decisive blow to the battle. Within a moment, they received a message from the system that they had fallen into an explosive trap. Li Chan's son did not stand still, he used runes in order not to get his hands dirty on enemies and simply get rid of them with a powerful explosion. Screams from the wounded killers began to be heard from the scene. Watching this, the detachment commander was simply shocked by the naivety of his subordinates. The man with two axes in his hands could not believe that his experienced fighters could not cope with one person. Heading towards the epicenter of the explosion, he noticed that the enemy was one step ahead. A huge snow avalanche was already rolling towards them, demolishing everything in its path. Li Chang's son only watched their defeat, after which the system reported the destruction of all enemies. The gods were satisfied with his cunning tricks and easy victory. Having finished the job, the player called his brother. Beck G. Vil, as expected, did not return alone. He brought with him the two who were in charge of this pathetic operation. In the face of their enemy, they forgot about their pride. There was panic on their faces, in fear of death. They begged the enemy to spare them and promised that they would do whatever they were ordered to do. After that, two naive brats began to argue over who exactly was to blame for this stupid idea. Li Chang's son could only watch as they wasted his precious time with something so unimportant. At one point, a representative of one of the parties to the conflict began to claim that it was the guy in the green jacket who hired the mercenaries. He also mentioned that his father was Director Kim Un's son, and also that the future head of the strategic department Shim Gano conspired with him to give him a strange flute. At that moment, out of all these words, Li Chang's son was only interested in the item that the director's son received. It was a worm flute. It used a special sound wave to control different types of worms. The guy asked if their plan was really to kill him with the flute that controls the worms. The guys were immediately confused because they could not reveal their secret. Li Chang Sung decided not to hesitate and said that he already knew that the white tiger was feeding his charges worms in the training center, hiding them in food. After this, he admitted that he would not fall under the influence of this pathetic trick since he had long ago burned everything that was in him. By activating his power, the guy demonstrated that the time for talking was over. In order not to waste any more time because of these naive players, he ended everything once and for all. After finishing this sudden matter, the guy said that directors Kim Moon Sung and Shim Kyung Ho constantly piss him off and drag him down, distracting him from more important things. He lost too much time here, so using acceleration, he headed towards the Winter Palace. There the head of the Hayoff clan was already waiting for him, Lamish to help her, she suggested that the enemy was already close. Over time, the guy was able to see the palace building. At the same moment, he received a message from the system that he had arrived at the Winter Palace. The building was right in front of him, but the system said that the curse of the ghost cave would activate in forty minutes, so he had to hurry. While Li Chang Sung planned to capture the valuable materials he needed from this dungeon, his comrades moved on. Shin felt an incredible cold, which is why the deity was forced to remind him that he was a magician with suitable spells. The rest of the guys did not have a similar opportunity as he did. They continued to freeze and already doubted whether they were well prepared for the raid on Hayoff. 
On the other hand, his sister looked completely different. Shinyensio was not cold at all. The girl with a huge shield behind her back was ready to purposefully walk forward, but she had to wait for her squad. The guy understood that he was no longer a match for his sister. But remembering the words of the squad leader that they could handle everything, the much-needed self-confidence returned to him. Looking ahead thoughtfully, the girl discovered something strange. She was ahead of everyone, but was not afraid of a sudden attack from enemies whose presence she had already noticed. As expected, Yi Bile and Seo Yunquan also did not miss the appearance of the presence of the Bigfoot. The ambush began. One of the subordinates of the Myung clan shouted to his comrades that all the snow people are subordinates of the Hayoff clan, so their family is simply obliged to avenge their comrades who died at the hands of their enemies. His attitude was serious, but Agent Cha Yun warned that they should not become arrogant, because if they were separated, they would lose to such strong strategists as Bigfoot. A moment later, the fighters saw a flying monster in the sky and the system reported that the influence of magical power began to spread far and wide, holding back the battlefield. The curse of chaos has been activated. An experienced scientist in the service of the state noticed the sudden appearance of enemies and shouted that the Bigfoot were above them. The system announced that the great general of winter had appeared on the battlefield. Despite the association agent's warning, the Myung clan rushed forward fueled only by rage and a desire for revenge. The leader of their squad underestimated the power of his enemy. The great general of winter, one of the bosses of this dungeon, struck with a huge sword. Fighter Myung did not dodge, he decided to block this blow and instantly defeat the enemy. But his sword was not strong enough and the weapon suddenly broke due to a strong blow from the enemy. The cold gaze of the dungeon monster looked straight into his soul. At the last moment, the man realized that he had made a fatal mistake. The great general of winter got rid of the commander of the Myung family detachment, shedding first blood on the battlefield. Within a moment, he noticed the approach of powerful energy. The incredible speed forced him to block the unexpected blow. Looking at the man, he was surprised that it was a girl's shot. Now his opponent is Chai Yu Wung. She is one of the few on this battlefield who could hold out against such a monster. The girl bit her lip nervously due to the fact that their operation again did not go according to plan and they had to act based on the circumstances. Meanwhile, Li Chan Sung had already made his way inside. Seeing the Winter Palace, the snake deity entwining the world began to enjoy the sight of the high-quality works of art that surrounded the player. Looking around, Li Chang Sung realized that the Bigfoot people had developed their civilization thanks to their high intelligence, but they were exploited by the gods and constellations, after which the Bigfoot people lost their power. This dungeon is a fragment of a world that has met its end. The reason why the abominable snowman's hill, unlike the real world, is full of snow bees and has a bone-chilling cold is because of the weakness of the gods and constellations that destroyed their existence. Moving further, the guy thought that he could sympathize with the fate of these poor fellows, but only if they had not become pathetic, soulless puppets of gods and constellations. While going down, he stuck to the information on the map that he received after killing the enemy spellcasters. There was a storage area under the stairs, which is where he headed. When the guy arrived at his goal, he saw how the Hayoff fighters were exploiting the brute strength of the Bigfoot. All this time, the people of humanity were threatening the snowmen that if they did not do a good job, then their king would be destroyed. Li Chang Sen expected a similar outcome, but what interested him most was the yawn of Agni, a resource that the Hayoff were so diligently extracting. At that moment, he realized the enemy's plan. The members of this clan were going to get an eternal ice crystal by blowing up everything here. The time to think was running out, and the guy resorted to using the Jivi vessel. His appearance was still not noticed and work continued. The snowmen hated the arrogant invaders and promised themselves that they would destroy them all after their king was freed. But a moment later, everyone present noticed a huge fiery flash at the other end of the palace vault. The clan fighters and snowmen were at a loss. A monster with monstrous power was rapidly approaching them, 
spreading a huge amount of fire magic. The head of the Hayoff clan, a girl named Eugene, was still inside her chambers. But even at such a distance, she noticed the presence of the one who killed the Scarlet Ghost. The girl began to unleash her terrifying power, while Lamish to ensure that her new follower would definitely bring justice using the power given to her. While she was gathering all her rage to take revenge, Li Chan's son had already cleared out this treasury. The system reported that he had destroyed a huge number of evil people, which is why his balance of good and evil changed a little. While in this place, he managed to achieve the result that the Hayoff clan had been striving for for so long. Thanks to the beast's sense and the viper's eye, he discovered a hundred-year-old cold iron vault, as well as the breath of the Ice King. Looking at his target, he noticed something unexpected. There were as many as eight eternal ice crystals located here. Seeing this as an opportunity, the deities immediately began to praise the player and asked him for a favor. They all wanted to get such a rare item of incredible quality, but with a face that did not understand them, the guy thought that he had no desire for anyone giveaway. At first glance, the quality of this rare item seemed good, so Chan Sung thought that it would be perfect for creating divine weapons. Now it became clear to him why the White Tiger Clan was desperately holding on to the weak Five Star Sword Clan, and why the Hayoff Clan was so desperate to get it on the verge of their destruction. Having touched this crystal, the guy felt an incredible cold, it all came from this object, and if it weren't for the flame of the end of the world Jigui, it would have been much more difficult to cope with it. The watching gods marveled at the spectacle they witnessed. At the same moment, the guy froze up due to the fact that an incredible frosty poison began to pierce his body. The breath of King Frost is a gift from the ancestor of the snow people, King Frost, and it remained with his successors. The gift emits cold air and rays of blue light all year round, and if someone with a low enough level takes hold of it, then the crystal will absorb their power and body. The eternal ice crystal offered incredible resistance so the guy resorted to using the eternal flame Jigui. Moreover, the first form of the end of the world flame was also a necessary thing in order to obtain such a rare divine weapon ingredient. The resistance of the player's form and the breath of the Frost King began to increase rapidly and reached its climax, after which the share of both participants in this conflict was to be decided. But at the same moment, Li Chang's son heard a low and intimidating voice that wondered who he was. Most likely it was the one who left this treasure here. He threateningly asked who this stranger was, who was trying to hold on to his nature, even if he was not his real successor. A serious-minded Li Chang decided to strengthen the power of his fire ability to silence the enemy. Within a moment, the firestorm crushed all the will to resist the king's breathing. Having overcome the protection of this mysterious component of various weapons, the system reported that the guy had acquired eight crystals of eternal ice. Looking around, the guy remembered that he had ten minutes left before the start of the mandatory dungeon from the system. The head of Hayoff was already rapidly approaching him. The girl who gained the power of Lamashtu was filled with the desire to take long-awaited revenge. Li Chang Sung finished his plan inside this treasure trove and thought about how in the remaining time he would have to fight with this crazy girl. But within a moment his plans changed dramatically. He received a message from the system that the boss monster, the Frost King, had invited him to an unidentified location. The dungeon boss possessed telepathy, he suddenly addressed the player with his thoughts. The king of the snowmen wondered who dared to take the life of their founder. He could not even imagine that this was done by a person, and not someone from their kind. The king asked the player not to worry, saying that the king was now just an old man, counting down the last minutes of his life alone. The old man asked the guy to give him a little time, realizing that the man still had a long way to go. Li Chang Sung did not sense the dungeon boss's malice, so he accepted the offer without hesitation. After accepting the invitation, a portal opened in front of him. The calm guy entered the king's chambers. It was the luxurious hall of the king. The old leader of the snowmen sat on his throne. He turned to the young man. 
saying that he must be a good person if he nevertheless agreed to fulfill the last request of his natural enemy. Looking at the old man, Li Chan's son was surprised, because he was level ninety. Sensing the presence of a person, the king of the snow people noticed that many deities had gathered around him. He noticed that even though he had one foot in the grave, his keen sense remained the same. Li Chang Sung was surprised that the old man could see them. The king replied that if we are talking about messages from the lords of heaven, then they are also available to him. He noticed that some of them look very meaningless. Li Chang Sung had expected this. After learning that the dungeon boss was using telepathy, he immediately knew that he was of the highest level. He was sure that such a creature would not fall for the simple illusion technique used by the Hayoff. Addressing the old man, the guy said that he was deceiving his people. He believed that the king of the snowmen was not who he said he was, because he did not look like someone who suffered from hallucinations. The young man's words cheered up the monster, he laughed, considering it a compliment regarding the fact that he still looked good. But after that, he turned to the guy and said that he was mistaken. It seemed strange to him that such a smart person as Li Chan Sung still did not understand where this place was. At that moment the player realized that he had indeed been inattentive and was missing an important detail. To find out what this place was, he heightened all his senses using his beast sensibility. Understanding what was being said, he replied that they were inside the world of the mind. The old man replied that this was a correct assumption. The king was in confusion, he was close to death, so he fell victim to a woman who called herself a phantom. This was the reason why his children began to suffer. Li Chang Sun guessed that the girl must have been very pleased with herself during the death of this exhausted old man. Returning to the main question, the guy asked what the purpose of their meeting was. He knew that in the eyes of the old man he could be as much an enemy as a phantom. The old man replied that he would like the guy to save his poor children, who followed the exhausted king, who could no longer defend his race. It saddened him to see how they had to fawn to save the dying old king. He asked the guy to help, promising that the reward for this would be worthy. After these words, the old man opened his treasury, saying that all these treasures accumulated from the time of the owner of the ice crystals until the thirteenth generation of snow people will go to the player. The feast of treasures attracted the deities. They were waiting to see what the decision of the player they were interested in would be but Li Chan Sung briefly replied that he was refusing the offer. The old man was shocked by such an unexpected turn of events. It seems that he understood why the guy made such a decision. The Bigfoot King suggested that the reason for man's decision is that they are simply fragments of this world, shadows without souls, abandoned on the earth. After these words, the treasury closed, and the man looked at the old man with incomprehension. He wondered if the king actually knew it was true. The old man replied that it would be strange not to know this, because this world is completely empty, and only they are in it. Looking at the desperate king, Li Chan's son thought that even if the race of snow people is highly developed, the monsters in the dungeon cannot realize that they are dummies, because if they knew, the system would intervene for the safety of the dungeon. At this moment we managed to learn the truth that the dungeon is the remains of a world that no longer exists, since it has already met its end. The creatures in it are empty shells, remnants of bygone times. This is why all dungeons must be destroyed by any means necessary. Due to their instability there is no way to know when they will explode and there is a possibility that the seed of the end could seep into the normal world like a poison. The player thought that even if the circumstances of the Frost King are sad, the abominable snowman hill should be closed. If he saves them, the dungeon cannot be closed. Being in the most difficult situation in his life, the old man said that he was unhappy because he breathes, thinks and speaks with a real person, but in fact this is not reality, but only a pretense. He shouted furiously that the real king of cold was already dead, only a trace of him remained in time which made it difficult for him to understand who he himself was. Passing by the old man, the guy said that he did not understand what the king of the snow people was telling him. He named him according to his title, showing respect for the fact that he is who he is. 
The old man replied that the real king had disappeared, but Li Chang's son countered by saying that that king may have been the real cold king, but the old man was no less real. In confirmation, he recalled his words that he continues to breathe, think and talk with a person, which is why it would be logical to say that he is the king of cold. It was difficult for the deities to fully understand his words, but the old man realized that there was a deep meaning hidden here. After realizing the young man's phrase, he replied that in that case, if he exists in this place, he really is the king of the cold. He assumed that he had allowed stupidity into his head because he thought he had developed his mind so much. After this, the old man asked if it was possible to ask the player for another favor. The cautious guy replied that first it's worth saying what we're going to talk about. The cold king replied that he would like to die on his own terms, and not as the system and its endless levels would say. Li Chan Sung understood what was going on and ended his painful suffering as the helpless king of the Bigfoot. He did not doubt for a second that he was doing everything right, because he simply had no other option to help this race. After delivering the blow, he said that such a request was within his power. The old man replied that he did not regret inviting the man into his domain. After that, he thanked the player and returned to his throne to spend the rest of his time on it until the long-awaited moment of relief. The cold king's chambers began to close. Li Chang Sung returned to the treasury of the Winter Palace while the system reported that the boss monster of the dungeon had been defeated. Looking at the guy, Minerva began to console the poor player, who was lost in thoughts. The system reported that the king's order, which restrained all the snowmen, was cancelled and all the snowmen who lost their leader fell into chaos. Phantom was already eager to fight with hatred for her opponent. Her new patroness was nearby and was looking forward to exacting revenge for the Scarlet Ghost, who was one of her most devoted followers. The snowmen attacked the Hayoff fighters, who forced them to work. They were angry that their enemies had manipulated them into killing the king. Due to the effect of surprise and superior brute force, they dealt with their enemies without much difficulty. But soon the clan leader also joined the battle, the phantom began to use the song of the flames of hell. None of the ordinary soldiers could resist this power. The crazy girl screamed like she was crazy, continuing to look for the main culprit of their failures. The snow people realized that it was she who had brought their king down, so they were all eager to fight. But a moment later, a powerful explosion occurred from a completely different side of the treasury. It was Li Chan Sung who was hurrying to meet the enemy. He put on a mask in order to appear to the girl as the one who is to blame for all their problems. The Bigfoot people could do nothing to oppose the invaders into their world. Seeing the enemy, the phantom immediately rushed to meet him. She called the player the Haho Mask, after the item that hid his identity. The clash between the Song of the Flames of Hell and the Flames of the Fire Spirit Jigui began. The girl could not believe that a stranger would have the impudence to appear in front of her after what he had done. But the guy had a satisfied smile on his face, his plan worked without any problems. During the battle, he grabbed the girl's hand. After that, he said that she had fallen into his trap from which she could not escape. The furious phantom couldn't believe that he expected to survive what he did to their organization. In response, the guy said that she would soon see hell with her own eyes. The twenty-four hours expired and the curse of the ghoul cave was activated again, causing Li Chan's son and the girl to go inside the dungeon. She couldn't move in surprise that their location had suddenly changed. At that very moment, the king of this floor suddenly appeared above her. The girl hardly had time to realize that she had been transported to a sudden dungeon. Because of this, she did not have time to react to this attack and missed the terrifying blow. Phantom screamed in pain, cursing the mysterious player for taking her to another place. Meanwhile, the battlefield at the entrance to the dungeons had reached a turning point. The great general of winter was beside himself with rage. While in front of Agent Chai Yun, he said in a low voice that their king had fallen. Trying to protect the senior in rank, Sakte rushed to the attack. 
The girl started screaming at him not to get close to this terrifying monster, but it was too late. He was unable to cope with the incredible strength of the great general of winter and missed the blow. Trying to protect the foreman, he could not cope with the enemy's strength. Seeing her colleague in such a serious condition, the girl shouted to him to save himself. Throwing his sword on his back and looking arrogantly at the man, he said that this was the result that was intended for them from the moment they decided to desecrate their lands. After these words, he declared with hatred that the snow people were now filled with the desire to tear the king of people to shreds. Within a moment, the aerial bombardment began. Using flying monsters, the Bigfoot began to drop explosives. Loud explosions were heard behind the state association representative, followed by screams from people. The girl had to resort to using the gifts of the gods. Minerva, as the goddess of war and justice, granted her her protection. The rest of the gods also decided to focus on protecting the player, the god of war, obsessed with battle, bestowed his power on her. The creator of madness joined them. The last of the list of gods was the blacksmith from the volcano, who could not allow injustice towards this girl. Within a moment, the brilliant scientist Cha Yun quickly rushed to attack. Having reduced the distance with the enemy captain as much as possible, she aimed the front sight of her revolver directly at his head. The great general of winter felt a terrible danger that could kill him so at the last moment before the shot he managed to defend himself with his sword. Even despite the protection, the shot had such enormous force that it threw him a long distance. Having sent the enemy flying, she picked up her wounded comrade. Jean Siakti could barely remain conscious, so he needed emergency medical attention. The great general of winter was able to survive, he admitted that he had not encountered such an annoying person as an opponent for a long time. After that, he shouted that he would personally deal with the Steel Witch. Meanwhile, a fierce battle continued in the Ghost Dungeon. Many fire attacks from the head of the Hayoff clan were aimed at the king of the first floor. The pressure of the Hellfire song was simply incredible, and the monster was forced to dodge. The genie jumped onto the nearest rock and began to observe the enemy, whom he was not expecting at all. He thought it was strange that this man appeared out of nowhere, but it seems that this monster has begun to understand what is happening. Turning to the girl, he said that he hoped that she had brought him something useful from the outside world. But the enraged and impudent leader of the Hayoff clan shouted in response that she would force it to close. Their fierce battle continued while Li Chan Sung regained his strength. Using the stealth rune, he watched as his enemies fought among themselves. Previously, he was worried that they would team up, but in the end, they didn't get along, which was the perfect opportunity to get rid of two problems at the same time. As he took out the Frost King's breath, he was still surprised that Lamashtu had given her the Hellfire Song. Thanks to his cunning move, he bought enough time to complete the process of strengthening the bones. This item contained an incredible amount of ice power, and it seemed that Li Chan Sung was making a fatal mistake. When he swallowed an eternal ice crystal, his body began to become covered in ice due to an overabundance of this power within his body. The guy's body began to resist, the effect of the first form of the end of the world flame and immunity to ten poisons were activated. When he acquired new magical properties, they began to conflict with those that he had previously acquired. The gods watching him began to worry about the player due to the fact that he was in critical condition. His physical strength began to fade incredibly quickly, but he was still confident that he was doing everything right. While in front of one of the elders of the Lord of the Underworld, he heard an offer to swallow an eternal ice crystal and could not believe that this was not some kind of trick. The old man replied that the player should do this, since he was aiming for a big conflict. To eliminate any risks, the guy asked the old man to tell him more about this method, because if it turns out that he lied, then he should prepare for the consequences. In response, the man asked if the young man remembered the basics of strengthening bones that he had told. Li Chang Sung repeated his words that this requires a flame implanted in the heart and a peak engraved with frost. This was true, the old man added that for this, 
he first had to find that very flame that would have to be placed closer to his heart. One of the elders added that restoring the brazier of magical power using the heart as its base would not be a bad idea. But Li Chang Sung feared that in this case his heart would simply burn out. At that moment, the old man replied that this was the reason why he would need to find the perfect point of contact to cool him down. He spoke of points in the body where opposing elements will be in harmony and will not conflict. In addition, the properties of the end of the world flame were fire and darkness, while the eternal ice crystal had ice and darkness. After these long explanations, Li Chang Sung realized that since the eternal ice crystal was created from the essence of the moon that seeped into the permafrost, then the properties of ice and darkness are combined. The common denominator of both elements was darkness. By establishing the ideal point of contact between flame and ice, Li Chan Sung will be able to gain an extremely high level of control over the essence of darkness. The guy's body structure began to change, he transferred the eternal ice crystal into his bones, and the core of the brazier of magical power into his heart. The physical body became as hard as ice and the heart as active as open fire increasing the body's potential to the maximum. The lord of the underworld had warned him that if it so happened that he reconstructed his body, he would have an ability that he did not have before. At this point, Li Chang's son had already restructured everything, including his feelings, cognitive abilities, thinking, physique, and personality. It contained fire and ice, so the properties of magical energy would not be tilted to one side. The player of the human race created an ideal warrior from himself, combining everything necessary for battles. Thanatos mentioned that when the gods see this, they will go mad. And so it happened, many gods watching the players began to react violently, while some constellations were even amazed at the man's strength. At one point, the guy received a message that the twin deity began to show great interest in his personality. It seems Li Chan's son was waiting for this moment. From his previous life he remembered that the twins' names were Castor and Pollux. He had an evil smile on his face in anticipation of their meeting, but he still didn't know which brother he was talking about. Excessive attention from the gods made itself felt. Within a moment, the guy felt incredible pressure, which could greatly suppress all his senses before he strengthened his body. It was a great demon— he reacted sharply to what happened, burning through the underworld with his eyes. The system reported that a great demon is trying to reach the player with its evil hands. Within a moment, the surface under his feet began to crack. The guy fell into a dark abyss, having no way to resist. Mephistopheles' acute reaction led to him deciding to take the player to his divine lands. Li Chang Sung did not expect such a turn of events. Amidst the darkness, he landed on the surface. He didn't understand what place he was in, so he began to activate his reconnaissance abilities one by one, but for some unknown reason they all instantly turned off before they provided any valuable information. At that moment, he realized that he was indeed in divine territory, but he still did not know the reason why Pale had pulled him into this place. The system reported that Pale's terrifying gaze was directed towards the player. A huge omnipotent eye appeared in front of him, after which the forced interference with his mind began. The unimaginable power of one of the deities was so strong that the power of the player's pure mind had difficulty coping with the pressure. In a low and scary voice, the demon asked who the player was. At that moment, Li Chang Sung couldn't control himself and began to lose control. The deity mysteriously uttered a phrase about the abyss that he sees in man. Within a moment, a bright flash appeared behind the player, and the system reported that the owl deity piercing the dim light had descended into the territory of the pale deity. The guy couldn't believe what was happening before his eyes. The goddess of just war, Minerva, came to his defense. Addressing the man, she stated that in divine territory there is no place for a mortal standing in the way of a hero. After these words, she snapped her fingers. Li Chang Sung flew to the side at high speed, breaking through the area. He quickly left the divine domain, but could still hear the conversation of the terrifying creatures. 
The pale constellation asked the goddess not to stand in her way, while Minerva replied that his actions were contrary to the divine pact, and the person who had fallen into his domain had nothing to do with what he was pursuing. Li Chang Sung returned to the dungeon again. He could not believe what happened in these few minutes. With an angry look, he said furiously that it was disgusting. Returning to the dungeon, he decided to go to the exhausted enemies and activated the Jigui vessel. He considered the recent incident a real shame, because he could easily have died if he had not completed the strengthening of his bones, because there was no way he could resist Mephistopheles. Despite improving his body many times over, Li Chang Sing admitted that he was still weak to fight the constellation, he needed to regain his former strength as a shadow god, but to win, he must be able to surpass it. And first, he was going to absorb everything in this dungeon. While in flight, his viper eye ability detected the target. A difficult battle led to the fact that one of the fighters came closer to victory. Looking at the battle, Li Chang Sung could predict how it would end. Yun Yujin is a magician, but the Scarlet King of Murder is a martial artist, so such a battle is difficult for a girl. By the end of the dungeon there were twenty hours left, he couldn't let her die until she told him about San's seven mysterious writings. Despite all her efforts, Zhang Yujin, as expected, was inferior in the battle with the king. Lamish too wondered why he couldn't think of a better tactic, then asked if she was indeed a blood relative of her follower. Head Hayoff planned to quickly defeat the monster of this floor and destroy Haho's mask, but this was too difficult a task. Her enemy continued to anticipate her attacks, he reflected everything, while she, having lost an arm at the beginning of the battle, began to noticeably inferior in terms of strength. Looking at the Scarlet King, she thought that he looked like a player who was trying to defeat the dungeon boss. She was distracted and within a moment the enemy was behind her. The Scarlet King, finding himself next to the enemy, thanked the girl for the entertaining fight. He tried to reassure her that, as a reward, he would make a new vessel out of her. Yun Yujin realized that her battle was over. Within a moment, she flew away from the powerful blow of the boss of this floor. With great speed, her body flew into the rock. The exhausted girl could no longer move after such severe wounds. She tried to use Hellfire Song magic, but her power was greatly reduced. The sad, weeping spirit rose from her seat, watching with pity the fate of her faithful follower's daughter. The Scarlet King was one step away from ending this battle with a powerful sword slash, but at that moment Li Chan Sung intervened. The guy left his enemy, saying that this girl belongs to him. After these words, he launched a powerful blow to throw the enemy back. The genie was not going to stop there and rush to the attack again. He noticed that the man had become significantly stronger compared to their last battle. Sighing with a sly grin, the cold-eyed guy replied that he had become much more than just stronger. A series of quick attacks made it clear that Li Chang Sung had begun to significantly outnumber him in battle. The opponents dispersed to safety, and the Scarlet King asked how he managed to improve his position so much. The guy replied that it would remain a mystery. Suddenly for the player, the Scarlet King genie assumed that the man had come from outside. Li Chang Sung was surprised that the boss of this floor knew the structure of the ghost cave. The genie replied that he had to endure the curse of that place, just like a person. The battle-hardened warrior said that even if Li Chang Sung went outside, he could not stay there for more than one day. He believed that no one would have managed as much as his opponent. With a determined look, he shouted that he must make his enemy a member of his family, no matter the cost. After this, the furious monster rushed to attack. The battle of two monsters led to the destruction of the rocks that were around their battlefield. The frightened ghosts did not know where to hide, they suffered from the consequences of the battle between two monsters. King Jean laughed loudly saying that he could not even imagine that he would have so much fun in this ghost cave. At that moment, he remembered his past when he was human. He was known as Jean, the heir of the Frisia family. The battle with the man reminded him of the feelings he experienced in the battles for Arcadia. 
The exhausted king turned to his enemy and said that this was a very exciting fight. But he understood that he would not be able to give it his all since he spent most of his energy fighting the witch. Looking at the enemy, the wounded and proud warrior asked what the man was going to do to entertain him this time. The guy decided not to play with the enemy and get down to business seriously, so he took out both of his legendary swords. A terrifying purple energy began to appear above him. This time he could demonstrate all his strength, since he was well rested before the battle with the Scarlet King. Swinging the fish gut sword, he activated the ability of the first claw of the Black Lord of the Mountain. His powerful attack was aimed at the wounded king. Unfortunately for him, he was unable to block such an incredible force that requires a huge amount of energy. The wounded warrior screamed in pain. At the same moment, Li Chang immediately used the second claw of the Black Mountain Lord. Looking back, Scarlet King Jean could only watch the unimaginable power. A huge tiger aura was directed towards him. It strengthened the attack of the Black Mountain Lord's ability. After a powerful flash, the battle was over. Near death, the king wondered what had happened. Realizing that there was no way out of this situation, he directly asked the enemy what terrifying force he used this time. Li Chang Sung respected this opponent so he calmly replied that it was a tiger claw. Hearing his words, Jean Frisier began to laugh loudly, despite his defeat, which ruined his plans to return home. Using the power of the Lord of the Underworld, Li Chan's son began to absorb his power, after which the system reported that he had received a huge amount of Biwi's properties. At one point, the system reported that he had now acquired a new ability, the power of Biwi. He had the opportunity to make the Scarlet King a member of his ability, similar to what his enemy planned to do with the defeated Witch of the Hayoff clan. This new opportunity brought an evil smile to his face, as he realized that he would now be able to create a team from the strongest defeated opponents. Biwi is a mystical creature known for devouring the king's tiger scourge in the past. It has a vile character and sometimes tests the strength of its owner. But once the owner achieves the creature's favor, it begins to show unsurpassed devotion. Li Chang Sung knew that he would need the organization's assistance if he wanted to rise through the hierarchy like the Twelve Zodiacs, or the ruler of the Abyss. If the organization grows and its members include gods and constellations, then it will become a full-fledged society. He believed that the absorbed properties of the BV had reached a critical point, which is why he became incorporeal. He had to think about how to get out of this situation, he had to make sure that he had no other motives and then start giving him some of his experience points, but this cannot be decided with a snap of his fingers. He doesn't increase his level so quickly and all because he can't decide on a deity. In addition, he has Beck Jayavel. By remembering failures from the past, he could look at this situation from the perspective of experience. He had lost those closest to him in countless battles before. Li Chang Sung was experienced enough to know where he could go on his own. There was nothing to think about, he might not have been able to cope without a team. Using force, he declared that he was choosing the Scarlet King of Murders as his Biwi. After these words, the ability restored the true appearance of the city warrior. Genie Frisius said he never thought he would awaken like this. He asked the guy if he was really trying to make him a member of his family. Looking at the true appearance of the representative of the big family, Li Chang Sung recognized his strength and asked if he could count on his support. With a cold look, the genie replied that there was no rule against it. After all, this is a ghost cave where the winner takes all. After these words, he added that the recognition of a person as his master will remain with him. Li Chang Sung noticed that most likely Jin did not intend to do this. Perhaps he wanted to rest, but Li Chang could not allow him such luxury. While next to him, he suddenly told his subordinate that he would let him go. After this, the guy suggested that the genie really wanted to return home. The surprised man asked the player what he was hinting at. Li Chang Sung replied that he would not say meaningless things like that he would like to see him as a devoted servant. In return, he simply asked him to follow him, 
He admitted that he could not promise that he would take the guy home right now, but he assured that sooner or later they would visit Arcadia. After these words, he swore with his flame with a smile on his face. Sighing with tension, the man wondered why he would trust a man with whom he had recently fought to the death. Li Chang Sung replied in a friendly manner that if he just couldn't trust him, then let him have hope in his heart, which would make him less irritated by this situation. In response, Jin held his head and began to laugh, saying that Li Chan Sung is a weirdo who is hard to meet. After looking around, he said that leaving this place in any case would be better than remaining in captivity for the rest of his life. Addressing the player, he asked him to be on his guard, warning him that he was not the submissive type, because he hated being controlled. With an adventurous smile, the determined Li Chan Sung agreed with him. The conversation between the recent enemies took on a friendly character, and the genie admitted that the more he gets to know the player, the stranger he seems to him, which is precisely why he considered this person so interesting. After this confession, he knelt before his new master and asked to give him a new name so that under it he could serve him. Li Chang Sung replied that his name would be Jean Frisius. The guy was surprised by the memory of his master. When they first met, he mentioned that he was Jean, heir to the illustrious scion of the powerful Frisius family. Rising to his feet, the man admitted that he had met a very strange gentleman. The system reported that the name of the Biwi is Jean Frisius, and from now on he will be his sword and protection. After this, he asked his master what his first order would be. At the same moment, Li Cham gave him his spear. It was clear from his look what the conversation would be about. Behind them there was a huge number of ghosts. The guy ordered his faithful subordinate to destroy them. Just a moment ago they were personal subordinates, and now he will have to destroy them with his own hands. Jean admitted that Li Chan is even more interesting than he originally thought. Looking at the number of opponents, he replied that this was enough to check his condition. At the moment, Jean Frisia had the first level and he needed to reach the tenth level in order to receive an increased rank. Taking a look at what happened to his majesty, the ghost began to shake in fear. Within a moment, this monster jumped off the slope and approached the army that had previously been under its command. He was looking forward to fighting in the guise that belonged to him in his best times. When unleashing his great family's coarse spear art, he spared no one. The ghosts ran away in fear, they did not understand why their king went crazy after his resurrection. Li Chan Sung finished with this part of his work, and it was time for dessert. He looked towards the exhausted leader of the Hayoff clan. It's time to find out about the seven mysterious manuscripts of San. Noticing his behavior, Lamashtu began to look at the player with hostility, after which she began to curse him altogether. She began to threaten him, and the system continued to send ridiculous messages that interfered with his work. To rectify the situation, he decided to turn to Harold. There was no answer, but Li Chang didn't intend to wait long. Turning to the dungeon administrator who was in charge of surveillance, he stated that if he did not show up, then he would refuse to protect him. After these words, a rift opened, the rabbit was not yet visible but his words were heard that the dungeon leader was prohibited from directly interfering in the process of clearing the dungeon. An excited rabbit tried to crawl through a small crack. He said that his elders continued to find fault with him because of the incident in the cave near the capital of Korea. He had noticeably transformed since their last meeting. Harold's excuse was that due to the incredible amount of stress he had begun to overeat and gain weight. It was difficult to tell whether he was lying or not. But seeing his body in such a state, the deities began to laugh at him. When the rabbit fully emerged, Li Chan told him that he would like to block messages from a certain deity. The rabbit was simply in shock. He could not believe that a pathetic mortal would want to do this with messages from a deity. The player explained to the administrator that he did not want to see them, and if necessary, he could pay with part of his achievement points. The guy's words turned out to be a continuation of an interesting spectacle, and the deities who were watching the player continued to choke with laughter. Li Chang Sung didn't want to waste time making excuses for the administrator, 
so he asked him to hurry up. The excited Harold could not believe that the impudent guy was really going to do this to the deity. He did not understand who he was trying to impress with such impudent behavior. He thought that he could not simply answer that this was against the rules. His situation was difficult, because if this incident was revealed during the inspection, then he would be punished even more. At the same time, Mephistopheles joined them. The system reported that he was looking down on the player and the administrator. The rabbit couldn't believe that the great demon was still showing such an unhealthy interest in this guy. Li Chang Sung couldn't understand what the Abyss Lord was planning this time. Within a moment, the system reported that Lamashtu raised her head high at the will of absolute evil. Mephistopheles continued to watch this indifferently. The incredible pressure of such a respected lord of the abyss forced Lamashtu to maintain his power in panic. The system reported that the great demon reached out to follow the gaze. Terrifying clouds appeared in the sky above the player and administrator and thunder erupted. Pable Sag was shocked by what she saw. During these frightening events, the snake entwining the world only wisely remained silent. The appearance of the great demon silenced Kaja as well. Looking into the heavens, the player and administrator realized that it was all over. The sky returned to its previous form. The system reported that Mephistopheles shook his hand slightly and began to look down again. He addressed the player saying that he had gotten rid of the parasite, so Li Chan could now continue with his business. The conflict was ended by the intervention of a great demon. When it was all over, Harold said with relief that as soon as the player called for his help, his calmness immediately disappeared. It was all over, so he asked permission to say goodbye. Within a moment, the fat rabbit returned to his hole. Minerva took a deep breath while the system reported that one of the twins' faces became very interested in what was happening. Jean Frisius turned to his master, saying that he was just a demon. Freed from Lamashtu's excessive attention, Li Chan's son was able to return to his previous assignment. Looking at the girl, the guy realized that she was starting to lose her mind. He understood that there was no point in torturing her for information. Having finished the job, he thought that he managed to take a lot out of this stay inside the dungeon. The girl, without any resistance, told him where the fifth of San's seven secret scriptures was hidden. He couldn't believe that the White Tiger Clan wanted to miss such an opportunity. If it weren't for him, their plan would have come true and they would have lost such a precise lead forever. Li Chang Sung learned from the system that Jean had cleared the second floor. Even though he raised them, he was surprised that they turned out to be such pathetic weaklings in battle. At that moment, he realized that it was no wonder why he could not take the third floor with them. In response to these words, Li Chan praised him for his efforts, saying that he completed it faster than he expected. Jean asked his master to come to him because he wanted to show him something really interesting. His last job was to extort the soul of the leader of the Hayoff clan. He managed to gain her power by using the purifying flame. He burned this power and increased the level of his skill. After that, the guy went to meet his ward. The Jivy vessel continued to develop and now the movement was even faster. He did not specify the meeting place, so he headed to the palace of the Scarlet King. Jean Frisius was on the surface and shouted to him to head in his direction. He waited a long time for his master to return and managed to prepare something interesting. A family member stated that the gentleman shared with him a very useful ability. In order not to be verbose, he decided to demonstrate what he was talking about. Reaching out to the pacifiers, he gave them the order to wake up. After these words, the ability to revive ghosts was activated. Li Chang Sung didn't understand what was happening. Jean Frisius himself was surprised. He admitted that he thought something similar could work. This ability worked the same way as when he was the Scarlet King's slayer. The ghosts of this cave are the fools who were previously observed by the starlight. People who came here became one of the ghosts, losing their essence. He explained that the effectiveness of this ability is significantly lower compared to when he was king, as there is a limit to how much essence he can absorb. 
demonstrating this, he said that he could resurrect the dead as puppets. But when he tried to make them move, the ghosts lost their magical power and ceased to exist. They were destroyed even before they took their first steps. To revive one fighter, he had to absorb the energy of hundreds of ghosts. But this way he was able to revive at least a few warriors. Among them, Pumpkin was different. Like the others, he is a natural enemy of tigers. He did not receive damage from sharp blades such as spears, swords, and claws. The next weirdo was a warrior called Bamboo Cow. He is thick-headed like a cow, but has the same amount of strength. The last was the bow. It had incredible flexibility, which raises doubts about whether it has bones. The squad looked promising. In addition, the gods encouraged the guy, saying that they were all now rightfully members of his family. The situation did not seem serious, so Li Chan Sung directly asked his comrade whether these fighters would be of any use. Jean was sure that this ability made sense, and then offered to look at their actions. Addressing the puppets, he ordered them to wake up, saying that they were going to the third floor. Jean also advised them to try their best while the master is looking at them, because if they turn out to be useless, then their existence will be in question. It was something like training. The monsters unanimously agreed with the order. After these words, Jean Frisius suggested that the gentlemen go to clear the next floor. Two incredible fighters and their mind-blowing strike force of hellish creatures set out to attack. Their appearance turned out to be quite loud. The conquest of the various departments of the third floor occurred much faster than before. Their low-level guards successfully planted a flag at the end point of Section 9. Li Chang Sung received points, but as it turned out, there were not so many of them, even though they captured all the camps. Still, making the Scarlet King a member of your family was an excellent decision, because together the cleanup went much faster. In front of them was a palace in which the Azure King's Slayer was located. Jean said that technically this place can be considered a real gate to the third floor. Now there are no low-level ghouls there, but it is full of scarlet ghosts, so it will be more difficult to meet the boss. The family member managed to oppress the enemy forces. This was an obvious outcome, such as the difference in their abilities. Moreover, he believed that his squad also deserved praise. It was much easier to fight together than alone. There were four hours left before the end of the dungeon. The player thought that if his new ward is really a member of the Frisia family that he knows, then this luck can be considered a huge jackpot, because divine blood flows in the veins of the Frisia family from Arcadia. They are outstanding martial artists, swordsmen and strategists, which is why an entire nation fears their strength. Li Chang believed that Jean would be the ideal heir so it seemed strange how he ended up in the ghost cave. He assumed that this guy might have touched the mysterious sculpture, hoping to proclaim victory over the other heirs. Remembering that sooner or later he would have to face the apostle of the deity Hadju, he thought that it would not be easy for him to repel the attacks of the spirit of moon sown soldiers. But as long as Jean was with him, there was nothing to worry about. Returning to the conversation with his ward, the guy confirmed his words that the squad was quite good, after which he took out an eternal ice crystal and asked him to finish all the preparations. Seeing this object, the man was surprised, which seemed strange to the player, because there are no such ghosts in the cave. Jean replied that most likely Li Chang had not heard that his Frisian family was quite famous in Arcadia, so he saw all the existing treasures. Despite a life rich in experience, he admitted that this was the first time he had seen such an incredible crystal. He felt divine power emanating from him. Such an item would be an unaffordable luxury for an ordinary person. Extending the crystal to his comrade, he asked him to take it, since he was sure that Jean knew how to handle it. This proposal was a sudden generosity that was hard to take seriously from a guy you had recently met. Jean began to laugh loudly saying that he had never met such a funny gentleman, he could not believe that Li Chang really wanted to leave the fish in the paws of the cat. Li Chang Sung did not mind his ward considering him a real man-man. He was ready to give him even a reinforced bone, but this is impossible, since it requires the strength of a jigui. 
he was confident that the Frisian family's hereditary methods were effective enough to handle this power. Grabbing the ice crystal, Jean recalled his words that it would be difficult for him to recognize anyone as his master, and this title would mean nothing to him. He couldn't believe that despite this, Li Chang gave him such an expensive item. Li Chang's son replied that he does not require him to be a devoted member of his family. The man was surprised that even despite this, he would be given this item. Jean called it surprising how stupid the player is, and then decided to use a rare item. A member of the player's family has swallowed an eternal ice crystal. He was granted cold element magic after the cold air settled in his body. The crystal was completely absorbed and Jean even acquired a new body shape. The system reported that family member Jean Frisius created a new blizzard ability and evolved into an ice dead. With a sly smile on his face, he said that he felt much fresher now. He wanted to try out another ability the crystal had given him. It was permafrost. A powerful ice shot was aimed at the third floor palace, from which the cries of wounded ghosts began to emanate. He believed that such a sudden attack must have made the Azure King's Slayer very frightened. Capturing this palace was not much of a problem, and after half an hour they were right in front of the floor boss. Looking at the long, familiar boss of the second floor, the local king could not believe that his former competitor had become a man's faithful dog. He agreed with his assumption, after which he said that he most likely would not be able to get any valuable answers from the boss of the second floor, which is why it was time for them to say goodbye. The frightened Azure King assassin extended his hand forward and began to beg in hysterics to spare him. He believed that he would help their squad in the future. But after a moment, Jean finished the matter, he believed that this liar could only say some nonsense, like taking over the next floors together. Li Chang's son just watched this calmly, he constantly received messages that he had been awarded points for the battle. Still, this floor was not completely cleared, because there were three more bosses on it. Jean Frisius was not going to stop there, so he continued to clear the dungeon. At that moment, his master understood that there was no point in rushing. The time for clearing was over, the system reported that this time he had been assigned an expert level result. This was different from the previous day's result, due to the fact that the team did most of the work, the reward was a little worse. Within a moment, he returned to reality, where Beck Jevil was trying to bring him to consciousness. Li Chang Sung was surprised how suddenly he returned to the battle inside the Snow Palace. A huge audience gathered in front of him. These were fighters of the Hayoth clan. They were trying to find out from the stranger what he had done to the head of their clan. Even though Li Chang Sung showed them his true colors, there was no longer any danger. Without responding to the enemies, the player called his new family member and asked him to get rid of the annoying insects. Jean replied that he would gladly carry out this order. After some time, the Winter Palace was completely captured. Li Chang Sung thanked his comrade for a good job and said that he needed to look somewhere, so he would go first. After these words, the player returned to the guest house of the Winter Palace. He still wanted to take away what was lying idle. It was about the body of the King of the Snowmen. He was seriously wounded at his own request and after some time, he died the way he wished. The old man looked ugly, but despite this, he had a very high level during his life. Li Chang Sung activated his soul extortion power and used the purification flame to burn the Frost King's body. Looking at this poor fellow for the last time, the guy thought that this king reminded him of himself at the moment when he fell in Arcadia. Addressing the old man who had disappeared from this world, he again repeated his words that he was not a fake. When the body evaporated, he noticed that there was some kind of letter underneath it. Meanwhile, fierce battle continued on the battlefield. The great winter general and agent Cha Yun continued to fight each other using their strongest abilities. Bigfoot's powerful attacks could not hit her, as the agent had incredible speed. After another unsuccessful attack, they found time to talk. Looking at the girl, the General of Winter admitted that she was strong, because usually he ignores all uninvited guests, 
since most of them are weak. But this was a completely different case, and he recognized the strength of the association agent. After that, he inquired about her rank outside the dungeon, and guessed that she was the king of the people. Hearing his words, she was shocked that, being a monster, the great winter general could differentiate between the underground and the rest of the world. Hatred for the enemy who injured her colleague haunted her, and so she continued to attack. A powerful explosion obscured her enemy from view. Looking down at the girl, he declared that even with such amazing power, she was still not the king of the human race. After that, he admitted that he could not understand people. Climbing onto the flying monster, he shouted that anyone who is not a king has no right to fight it. With great malice in his eyes, the great general of winter declared that he simply wanted to kill the king of men for killing his own. He was ready to destroy those inside their dungeon in order to finally meet the true enemy king. After his words, full of terrifying anger, the system announced the creation of a sudden task called the King's Killer. From that moment the players had to stop all the snowmen, including the great general, because otherwise they would bring misfortune to reality. The girl was shocked that now their battle would go beyond the boundaries of the dungeon. If they fail in this task, then a new rift will appear on their planet through which the snowmen will penetrate into their cities. Approaching the girl, Mr. Wu told the agent that they must defeat this monster at any cost. After learning the terms of the task, Seo Yunquan was looking forward to a fierce battle, as he believed that he was the strongest among the people in this dungeon. Within a moment, one of the clan fighters, not paying attention to the words of the commander of the second detachment, declared that it was time to get rid of the general, he could not believe that the Allied forces had still not dealt with the mid-level boss. Seo Yung Kwan couldn't stand their impudence, so he shouted that this monster belonged to him. In response, the two guys started laughing at his words, saying that he was injured and not suitable for such a responsible task. Within a moment, all three suddenly rose into the air. This was the effect of Agent Cha Yun's ability. She turned to the children and said that she would not be able to hold the spell for long, but would try to support them with magical blows so that they could fight the monster more safely. After that, all three members of the White Tiger clan simultaneously attacked the enemy. Wu Yunun couldn't stand by and just watch. He informed his colleagues that he would attack from the ground, after which he used the Ten Thousand Songs technique. The sword master's powerful blow destroyed all the snow monsters in its radius. But this was not enough, because there was no end to the enemies. The concerned man thought about how he could protect his less powerful comrades. But at the same moment, the enemy attacked him and he realized that he had no time to be distracted. He did not have time to dodge and thought about whether he could block this sudden attack. At the same moment, his niece appeared nearby her storm god blade greatly enhanced by the acceleration of her storm run ability. Moving at great speed, the girl without much difficulty got rid of the snow monster that had gotten into her uncle's back. Her appearance was what helped save the head of one of the major organizations from inevitable injury. Having gotten rid of the enemy, the girl shouted to her uncle that he should pull himself together, because he is responsible for all the members of his clan of swordsmen. The man was confused and then said that Hyben is much better than him. As it turned out, his father gave his granddaughter two blades and artifacts worth more than one hundred billion won. Watching her actions, Pabel Sag became interested in the hunting skills of this humble player. The dragon's daughter was interested in helping her learn hunting skills, after which she warned that such an opportunity might not arise again. The girl did not know who she was dealing with. She believed that it was worth asking her savior about this. It was natural that she interested the goddess of the hunt. Being in the first dungeon in her life, the girl absorbed everything she saw. She wanted to follow in Li Chang's footsteps. For her, he was not just a savior, but also a mentor. Pabel Sag watched her incredible abilities with her mouth open. Accelerating her every movement, the air was not an obstacle for her and she could fight not only with the snowmen on the ground, but also with those who flew on winged monsters. The girl could not help but notice the attention from the deity. 
Pable Sag watched with pleasure every move of the talented player. Dungeon battles were something Hayden still wasn't ready for. She would like to enjoy a normal life with her friends longer, but her goal was beyond their understanding of the world. The girl's lightning ability hampered the movements of all her enemies within its radius. The system reported that due to the fact that the player Wuhabin became active, the snow pterodactyls began to lose their ability to fly and fall to the ground. Her actions caused a lot of problems for the army of snowmen, so the great general of the King of Frost drew attention to the girl's actions and ordered his charges to deal with her. Within a moment, a huge number of air warriors from the snow dungeon headed towards her. It was a real aerial bombardment. They used an item called an Agnion as an explosive. A magician from Li Chan Sung's squad came to her defense. Player Shin Jumjiao activated the Uraboros formula ability and created a temporary trap that protected them from the explosions. After this, he turned to his sister for help. Yunseo replied that she would take care of his problem. The girl activated the tower strike ability, causing her shield to begin to increase in size. But at one point she stopped because her magical energy simply ran out. Junj began to blame her for the irrational use of her strength. In response, Yunseo began to make excuses by saying that she simply ate poorly and fought too much. Watching their efforts for the sake of justice, Minerva could not stand aside and express admiration for their spirit. She blessed the girl to fight her enemies, after which she restored her strength and energy. She immediately felt a surge of strength, thanking the goddess for her gifts. The girl activated the Jida effect. Thanks to this, she was again able to increase her shield and use it to its full strength. Using the tower attack, the girl began to run towards the enemies. Her weapon was so huge that even snow pterodactyls were within its range. Watching their actions, Wuhabin began to feel the difference in their battle experience. Addressing the girl, Jumj asked her not to waste the opportunity. After these words, Habin stopped being distracted by her thoughts and dealt a crushing lightning strike to her enemies. The massive destruction of air units caused the great general of winter to become angry towards his incompetent charges. At the same moment, Song Yun Quan was already approaching him to strike him unexpectedly. But the dungeon boss was ready for this. He even managed to shout that anyone who is not a king has no right to fight him. He decided to avoid the intrusive flying warriors of the White Tiger Clan and went to the one who was really causing the most trouble. A magician from Li Chan's squad, Xin Jumj saw that the strongest of the enemies was approaching him. At the same moment, he began to use the Viper Curse and the system reported that the great general of King Frost and his snow pterodactyl were under the effect of the Chaos Curse. But with one swing of his sword, an experienced dungeon boss could easily cancel any negative effect placed on him. Within a moment, the general delivered a strong blow, from which the magician could not resist. His next target was Wu Webin, who was so infuriating with his ability. The new dungeon boss struck her hard with his sword. The girl lacked experience and strength. The difference in their level did not allow her to completely block such an unexpected attack. From a powerful blow she flew into the nearest rock. Because of the last attack, she had lost too much stamina and could no longer continue fighting while the enemy was right in front of her. Looking into her eyes, the terrifying monster shouted that no one dare stand in his way except kings. But the girl did not pay attention to his furious screams, she only thought about whether she could do at least something important, like her mentor. She just wanted to save the people who came with her to this dungeon. For her that would be more than enough. Within a moment, a fiery flash appeared in the sky. The system reported that Li Chang Sung had appeared on the battlefield. The girl could not believe that her mentor came to her aid at the most difficult moment of the battle. Association agent Cha Yiun also sensed his appearance. Looking at the one who prevented him from finishing off the problem man, the great general of winter asked who he was. In response, the guy asked if he had any assumptions. With incredible rage, the snowman shouted that this was the same bastard who dared to kill their king of frost. 
The words of the dungeon boss spread throughout the entire battlefield. The fighters who heard this opened their mouths in surprise. They could not believe that the talented recruit continued to demonstrate incredible skill. Filled with rage, the general of winter asked if the player was the king of men. Li Chang Sung didn't understand what they were talking about, so the general shouted that if he killed their king, then he must destroy the king of people. The monster believed that the death of his master was not meaningless if he fell at the hands of the strongest of men. He tried to the end to find out whether the player was a king or not. Glancing arrogantly at Bigfoot, Li Chan's son ironically replied that their race had long outgrown the monarchy, and they did not use such outdated concepts. Hearing this, the Winter General replied that in that case, Li Chang was no different from other people, after which he attacked him using the Tundra ability. Li Chang's son was ready to fight. He took out his legendary blade and activated the Wild Tiger status, causing chaotic strikes to burst out. A furious battle between the strongest fighters in the dungeon has begun. Members of the various clans of the Alliance could not believe their eyes. They assumed that Li Chang Sung was comparable in strength to the Iron Witch, since he was able to withstand the fierce attack of the great Winter General. Li Chang Sung began to put a lot of pressure on his opponent, which caused the general to decide that he should fight him in the air, where he had a clear advantage. The snowy pterodactyl took flight. The general climbed onto it to carry out his cunning plan. At that moment, the public was no longer skeptical of the White Tiger Clan's new recruit. They were calling on the tyrant to fight and destroy the dungeon boss. The lazy player decided to give his brother the opportunity to show off. Using the shadow trail, Beck G. Vol entered the battle. Within a moment, he reached the enemy leader and struck his pterodactyl. Seeing the shadow energy, the general could not believe that he had to face such a rare power. He began to rapidly fall down, and one of his charges came to his aid, flying towards him on a pterodactyl. He grabbed his hand and saved him from falling to the ground. The great general of winter felt pressure from his opponent for the first time, so he decided to give their duel a tactical pause. He didn't know who he was dealing with, but he considered the enemy a monster, so he decided to continue the battle in the air, where they had an advantage. But a moment later, Li Chan's son appeared in front of him. The guy asked why the great winter general relied so much on stupid pterodactyls. The great general of winter was shocked that his enemy, in addition to incredible strength in battles, also had the ability to fly. A firestorm of jigui form began to burst out. Li Chang Sung changed his status from a wild tiger to a divided tiger, and then his fangs burst out. A huge bright flash appeared in the sky from the powerful attack. After that, something began to fall from heaven. The player was able to throw his enemy off the pterodactyl, after which he struck him with a kick that he could not dodge. Accelerating his fall with his own weight, Li Chang launched a devastating attack. After another failure, the great general of winter began to shout that he could not just die, because he must avenge his fallen king. Li Chang Sung, having a huge advantage in the battle, allowed himself to ask the enemy a question in the middle of the battle. He wondered why the general was so obsessed with the king. Rising to his feet, the monster replied that only by avenging him by killing the king of men could he himself take the throne. He shouted furiously that this was the only way he could gain power because the king is the one who leads his people to prosperity. Hearing the general's words, the guy replied that now he understood why the king of frost decided to do this. The general did not understand what he was talking about, so the guy took a letter out of his pocket and said that the king of frost asked him to hand it over to his faithful subordinate. After these words, the guy threw him to the ground. The general was not afraid of meanness on the part of the enemy, and raised the king's message, he read that the king of frost was giving the snow people to his general, since he had already met his fate and was going to leave this world. The monster's father believed that the great general of winter could lead his people as he saw fit. The system reported that the snow people had a new king. The strongest snowman was furious, he began to shout that all this was just self-deception. 
When he tried to reveal the secret that he and his father discovered while exploring the dungeon, Li Chan Sung struck his final blow. The battle was over, the system reported that the Frost King had been destroyed. The last mission of the dungeon was completed and the location began to collapse, and a rift opened in the air to return to reality. Interested people were already watching this battle, the man asked his ward whether the talented player really refused the blessing of the goddess. The girl replied that it was so, after which the player with blonde hair replied that they should go to Korea. He wanted to satisfy his interests regarding whether a person could really achieve such results without the help of a deity. With an evil smile on his face, he stated that if Li Chang was simply incompetent and was rude to their goddess, then he must punish the insolent person with his own hands. Having completed the task, everyone went home to rest, after which they gathered in the office that Li Chang had purchased. Beck Jayaval thanked his brother for the invitation and began to watch the noisy guests next to him. As usual, brother and sister Shin were noisy. Having calmed down a little, Yunseo separately thanked the leader of her squad for the invitation, after which she showed him a gift. She remembered that he only drank milk tea with raspberries during the Champions League four years ago. The guy thanked her with a smile for such attention. The girl was crazy about his answer, as well as about her idol's new hairstyle. Jumjayo tried to say that he actually brought this gift, but a second later he caught a knee strike from his unstoppable sister. A moment later the last guest came to them. She was a shy girl who had long wanted to see her savior in a calmer environment. Feeling awkward due to the fight and the very noisy environment, she shyly greeted her mentor. Li Chang Sung invited her inside and then said that his office looked a little boring since he had not yet arranged anything. The guys began to eat food from delivery along with pleasant conversations after a difficult battle. While Li Chan Sung went out onto the balcony with a can of beer, he could not afford such a luxury for a long time. Xin Jiam Gyo tried to befriend Wu Haibin, so he gave her a coin, which he called a great item. He said with a smile on his face that this is only given to official members of their team, but for her he is ready to make an exception, and if she takes a photo with this coin and shares it on a social network, she will get access to all the competitions and behind-the-scenes scenes of the leader of their teams including explicit content. A little confused, Weibin thanked her comrade for such an unexpected gift. Pabel Sag looked with curiosity at the coin on which her favorite player was depicted. It seems that she would also like to get such a rare item. Looking at the girl, Yunseo thought that she looked truly amazing. She suddenly asked Mises Wu how she became a fan of their leader in the first place, despite the fact that he is only popular for being too rude. The girl replied that she was not exactly a fan, but most likely a student of the great fighter for justice. Looking at the guy who was secluded on the balcony, she admitted that she wanted to become a kind person like him. Hearing her words, the guy smiled and thought that she had a chance to succeed. The system reported that Mephistopheles continues to calmly observe the player's actions, while the god Kaji yawns from boredom. Li Chang Sung realized that he was succeeding in pissing off the tiger deity who had fallen into a trap. He suggested that the tiger was tormented from loneliness. In response to this, the deity expressed its displeasure. Li Chang Sung still couldn't handle him like that, so he said that if it sounded offensive, then he apologizes. Kaju replied that if he crossed the line again, then there would be no forgiveness for him. Seeing such a message, Li Chang Sung smiled at what a loser his sworn enemy was. The tiger, who got into trouble, was interested in continuing the conversation. He said that where he lived before, there was someone who emanated energy similar to the player. The deity explained that the man was incredibly ignorant and naive, which was the reason for the downfall of that acquaintance after he became a delight for the tired eyes of those around him. Despite such words, Hadja added that in fact, this is why he was respected. At that moment, Li Chang Sung realized that he was talking about his past life when he was a shadow god. Kaju recalled that they first met in a meadow somewhere in Arcadia. Li Chang Sung was surprised that he named exactly the place, because it seemed to him that they only met in the zodiac community. But after a moment he remembered that in Arcadia a very strange man, reminiscent of a tiger, 
had once appeared in front of him. A beast approached him and asked if the gloomy god was the psychotic god of war that defeated Antares. He wondered what he should do to become as strong as the gloomy god. The guy did not care about his envy, so calling the weak god an animal, he ordered him to leave. Kaja had no other choice. Turning around, he began to smile slyly, as if he was dreaming of how he would take revenge for the insolence of the gloomy god. The tiger, having gotten into trouble, silently walked away from him. Most likely, this situation was the reason for his impudent and impudent smile, which the gloomy god remembered so strongly during his trial. Li Chang Sung realized that Haju was first in line when the Ziwei Doshu community tried to kill him. By telling this frank story, Haju wanted to warn him for the future. He argued that the truth about the heavens is that even the stars that seem to shine forever eventually fall. He supported the player and promised that he would make sure that this never happened to him, so he added that he did not need a team that would burden his life. Li Chang Sung agreed with his words, but in fact he believed that not hanging out with other people and being alone to shine like a star was naive nonsense. The system reported that a tiger in trouble says that the guy should understand his words, since he is a very smart person. Li Chan believed that the chance of Haju knowing who he was was incredibly low, since the Lord of the Underworld's defense system was quite good. But he could not say with certainty that the mention of this story was an exceptional coincidence. He believed that if the patron of the White Tiger Clan could not be sure of who he really was, then he should save some tricks for another occasion. Kaja asked what plans the player had for the near future. The guy replied that he plans to become a ranker in just one month. God couldn't believe that the guy decided to do such a crazy and incredible act. He believed that it was impossible, because it takes people decades to achieve such a goal. But Lee Chan Sung is sure that this is not only possible, but in his case it is also very simple. He replied that he knew that with his current strength, it would be difficult to improve his status among the players, so he revealed his goal and admitted that he was going to obtain Sang's fifth scripture. Leaning on the balcony, he asked if the patron of the White Tiger Clan thought that having acquired this power, it would be very easy to become a ranker. Haju was afraid that taking on so many curses was too risky, but the guy replied that the more difficulties, the greater the benefits, and Haju could not but agree with his words. After this pleasant dialogue with the man, the tiger god, who was in trouble, praised the player's courage and endowed him with another boon. Meanwhile, the success of a talented player was the reason for the tears of a real man. He was genuinely sad that his niece left their clan to join Li Chan's son's team, saying that her uncle was a hindrance to her. In response to his indignation, his patron, the nameless giant deity, tried to console him by saying that children become independent without warning. The next day, a fashionable guy with a stylish new haircut met with the blacksmiths. He gave them one eternal ice crystal and asked Oyezi to use it to strengthen his nameless spear and his brother's spear. Because of his words, the blacksmith was again indignant that he would have to work for days on end. But his mood changed after the guy showed a treasury overflowing with gold. After showing them what he could get in the snowy dungeon, the guy asked whether these materials would be enough for the brothers' production to work at full capacity. Oh, Yezi said that Li Chan Sung did something incredible. He understood that it was not so difficult to get, or, but he could not believe that Li Chan had obtained thousand year and ten thousand year ingots, because one such iron ingot the size of a fingernail would be enough to create a new powerful weapon. With an expectant smile, the man imagined that with this he could create anything, he was inspired to create with his own hands a masterpiece that no one had dared to do before. To make sure that everything was fine, Li Chan's son asked the blacksmith if he agreed to the conditions. For the first time in his life, the man did not start an argument and simply shouted that he was definitely in business. The young guy with unprecedented power in his hands once again reminded his subordinate that they must communicate according to the chain of command between employee and boss. Five days later, Li Chang Sung was promoted to the position of team leader of the strategic planning department, and executive director O was waiting for him in his office. When he showed up, the leader of this new department bit his lip nervously. 
Commander Shin remembered the daring guy during their meeting in front of the dungeon where the remnants of the Hayoff clan were located, and could not calm down. The executive director approached the leader of the strategic planning department and said that he could be free, after which he asked him to try not to make a mistake during the business trip. His situation was getting worse and it only increased his hatred for this guy. He couldn't believe that the executive director had offered the new recruit a business trip to the United States along with elders who were no match for him. He thought that the threat from this guy was increasing and at one moment, he could find himself in danger. He wanted to meet Director Lee first in order to gain a better position in the clan. When Commander Shin left Director O's office, Li Chang Sung showed the eternal ice crystal and the old man noted with admiration that it glowed brighter than he had imagined. He believed that even if their patron wanted to get such a rare item, then he need not try to estimate its value. The old man praised the new recruit for his good work and asked if he had any questions, such as how to use this item. Li Chang Sung replied that most likely Executive Director O has thoughts on this matter, and if he needs to know something, he can count on his teacher to share the information with him. With a piercing gaze, the gray-haired man repeated his words that Li Chang was indeed an incredibly smart and capable player. Unexpectedly for the guy, he asked if he was curious to know the secret that his executive director was hiding. Hanju quietly looked at the man with curiosity, while Li Chang Sung replied that he would like to know what they were talking about. Clapping his hands, Director O said that he would now show everything that he was hiding from the others. The system reported that Li Chang Sung had entered the realm of player O. C. Huan's illusions. Kaja looked at his family member's territory with a sly smile, while Minerva began to frown, saying that she was seeing something unpleasant again. Looking around, Li Chang Sung thought that Director O had very simply created such a large area of illusion, but this was not surprising since O. C. Huan is the only great demonic magician in the White Tiger Clan. Around them was an army of warriors sent by God, numbering more than four hundred fighters. In addition, he sensed traces of San's fourth writing. Li Chan suggested that O Sai Wen blew up the clan's research center because he had completed deciphering the mysterious scripture. The man asked the guy what it was like to see his soldiers for the first time. The guy answered briefly that they were really majestic. Releasing a huge amount of energy, the old man laughed ominously saying that he knew they were alike. After that, he asked if the young man knew what rank their clan occupied in the world. Li Chang Sung replied that in his opinion, he should be one of the top 20 best organizations. Looking at the old man, Li Chang Sung thought that he used to hide his identity well on the outside, but in private he didn't mind showing off his demonic appearance. It only meant that he trusted him. The old man replied that in fact their clan ranks 27th, because they don't have anyone who would be rated as a king, and they also don't do anything that affects the world, which is why they were given that rank. Li Chang Sung replied that he did not agree with this general opinion, even though he had never been to another clan. At that moment, he thought that the White Tiger clan was strong enough to be considered a worthy competitor in Arcadia. He realized that since Moon's son, with the rank of Duke, was trying to become king, then it was obvious that they still had a long way to go to achieve their goal. The old man agreed with the guy's answer. He stated that they were still in 27th place despite the fact that they did not pay much attention to the ranking. He wondered what would happen if their ambitions increased sharply. He admitted that he actually had no desire to limit their clan to just Korea. He wanted to allow them to rise much higher and move on. His sincere desire was to make everyone tremble in fear with the mere sound of their tiger roar. Hearing these words, Kaju began to laugh maniacally. The old man added that their patron shared these goals with him, so very soon many would fall at their feet. Looking at the army of warriors, Li Chang Sung guessed that Director O was planning to take them to the outside world, and then asked if the clan leader thought that the world would criticize him for becoming a demonic person despite the fact that he should paths of justice. The old man replied that everything becomes unimportant in the face of absolute power. After showing him everything he had, Oh Siwen wanted to see the same behavior from him. 
After these words, the old man held out an object in his direction that looked like a dream pearl from the laboratory of the dungeon that he had cleared. The guy was puzzled by the man's behavior and asked what it was. The old man replied that it was something that would turn him into something like his warriors, after which he corrected himself and said that this devilish thing would turn him into a greater warrior, adding that all the directors and heads had gone through this process. The system reported that this is actually the lost dream pearl, an enhanced form of the dream pearl that smells like those who were defeated by the tiger scourge. With a malicious look, the old man guaranteed the guy that he would become the strongest if he did not refuse this gift. At that moment, Li Chang Sung was extremely puzzled as to how he should act in such a difficult situation. Taking the item in his hands, he thought that the flames of the doomsday jigui would burn any poison to ashes, leaving only purified energy. But with a closer study of this new form of the dream pearl, he might be able to figure out the secrets of the tiger scourge. When he was thinking about what to do with this rare item, Jean Frisius approached him and said that he would not mind taking on this item. Li Chan Sung asked what goals his family member was pursuing. Jean replied that this way he would become stronger, not to mention the fact that her constellation method is also in his mind. The guy realized that Mr. Frisius wanted to cleanse her in order to strengthen the BV element. He asked how he could give him this item. The man replied that it was enough to simply eat it without purification with the help of the end of the world flame, after which he could take care of the rest. In front of the old man's eyes the guy, without much doubt, consumed the pearl of his lost dream. The enhanced tiger scourge began to spread throughout his body as ten poison immunity tried to get rid of the foreign body. Li Chang voluntarily gave up this passive effect. Within just a moment, the system reported that family member Jean Frisius had suppressed and absorbed the enhanced royal tiger calamity of this item. Mr. Frizy replied that he had finished his work and would share the results later. He asked his master to let him know if he had something similar. Having finished his secret business, the demonic man closed the realm of illusion and returned to reality. Looking at the young man, he asked what he felt after eating the pearl of a lost dream. With an angry and purposeful look, the guy replied that he felt great. In response, the old man began to laugh maliciously, saying that usually everyone is fussing, saying that it was terribly difficult to digest this power. But despite this, the young man was doing great. Li Chang Sun wondered if he could get more of this power. Oh Siwen replied that this is so, because he will reward his student with pearls for every achievement on his account. He added that soon the Zanix Association from the USA will start a global war, and their white tiger clan will take part in it as an ally and show the whole world their exploits. It is known that the players of this association are special in that they train not only to complete dungeons, but also study rare weapons and artifacts. This huge clan is ruled by the Golden King, one of the ten kings in the player world, who is recognized as a real monster. Li Chang's son did not understand what kind of war he was talking about. He thought that it would be a battle for supremacy among organizations. The old man wanted Li Chang's son to use his fame and influence to draw attention to the White Tiger Clan during his business trip. Hearing this, the guy didn't mind. He believed that the more attention he received, the greater his presence in the White Tiger Clan would be. He believed that if the moment of the rise of the White Tiger Clan was played out correctly, something different and beneficial for him could turn out. To absorb everything for free, he believed that he needed to slowly lay the groundwork, thinking a few steps ahead. To accomplish this goal, the guy asked the old man to first allow him to visit a stone desert in which a cold wind blows in France. He wanted to capture her and then head to the dungeons of the City of the Apocalypse, which is located in Chicago. He believed that he could become a ranker after he completed this plan. The old man began to laugh loudly. He declared that the young man would become a real star after he cleared those dungeons that had not yet been captured. He liked the student's plans. He allowed him to act at his own discretion, but warned that there might be unknown dangers there, so he could send an escort with him. Kaju rejoiced at his subordinates' impending difficulties. As it turned out, Shingumbui became a member of the future planning department. He was overjoyed when he learned about it. While the guy joyfully received this news, 
Beck looked worriedly at his slow comrade, while Yuncio tried her best to make him hurry up. They trained to be worthy support for their leader. Looking at it, Gumbui couldn't believe that they started training immediately after their team was officially formed. Li Chan Sung joined him, seeing the head, Shin was surprised that he had a new weapon in his hands. A shield appeared on the guy's back, and a new sword appeared in his hands. He replied that he had recently prepared it and brought it to test it in practice. When Li Chan Sung approached his brother to talk, Yun Seo began to think about how good her idol looked with a new hairstyle, while her brother thought that the two no longer looked like players, but like pop culture stars. Addressing his players, Li Chan said that on this training day they will test their teamwork and for this they will stage a real fight. He said that a sudden case had been received from the executive director in one of their clans, which is engaged in mining, there had recently been a collapse while mining mana stones. Therefore, they were given the task to go there after checking the details of the incident. Meanwhile, association agency Wung and Siakti received the guest. This was one of the strongest representatives of the leading clan in Germany. Chai Yi Wung greeted the Blue Wolf of Enlightenment and said that she was given orders to give him a special task. The man accepted this unexpected meeting with a smile. He admitted that it was hard for him to believe that the Iron Witch, who was blessed by her master, took time for him. He had a good feeling about this trip and said that he would like to meet the tyrant. The girl replied that it would not be easy. She was concerned that Li Chang Sung had become known overseas, even though the White Tiger clan had tried to block all means of contacting him. Although the agent tried to protect the player from interested representatives of more powerful clans, her ridiculous colleague did not understand what she was doing, so he corrected her and said that Li Chan's son was on a mission in the watch and mine. The clueless Sakte ruined all her efforts to distract the wolf. She suggested that he not linger at the airport. Still, as an agent in the government service, she thought that she could not ignore the request of a high-ranking officer who had come from afar because of her personal feelings. She was afraid of the situation around the talented newcomer, because every time she saw him, she had a feeling of danger that threatened her life. While the association agent was trying to deal with the unexpected situation, Li Chang Sung and his team arrived in Wachin. There were more than twenty workers inside the dungeon, and their colleagues could not believe that Executive Director O decided to send recruits to help them. Rumors that Li Chang was already equated with rankers seemed exaggerated to them. They did not trust him, because they were afraid for the safety of their comrades, which they entrusted to a newcomer in this matter. Having learned information about the number of victims, the team began a rescue mission inside the dungeon of the Island of Blue Stones. The guys found themselves on a deserted beach, surrounded by palm trees. Sister and brother Shin could not contain their delight at appearing in such a wonderful place. The leader of the squad warned them that you never know who is waiting for you in an unfamiliar place, he asked them not to let their guard down. To complete preparations for the clash, he decided to use one of the prepared formations. Maid Shim Gimgui used his ability and raised a ball of light. Yunseo, in turn, hurried to cover the team with a shield. While they were preparing, the enemy managed to fire his first arrow. Surprisingly, it hit the magician's head. The injured guy immediately fell onto the warm sand. Seeing this, tears appeared in Yunseo's eyes and she began screaming to her brother in panic. In this situation, she did not have time to panic. Li Chan shouted to his ward that she should hurry up with her part. The sky darkened from the incredible number of arrows that flew towards them. The girl could not let her team leader down, so she returned to the battle. Using the enlargement of her shield, she easily deflected all the arrows that were aimed in their direction. Within a moment, she felt her brother's energy. The core began to violently rage and increase the amount of energy with the divine presence. After this, Shin Gumbui launched a powerful strike into the forest where their enemies were supposedly located. Loud cries of wounded monsters could be heard and it became clear that he had hit the target. Having completed his part of the work, the guy rose to his feet as if nothing had happened and, in front of his sister, took the arrow out of his head. 
The system reported that the snake god was disappointed that a member of her family lacked dexterity. The guy replied that although the patron doubted his powers, he actually counted on protection using the properties of the magic core. Looking at his sister, he began to laugh at her reaction to him falling motionless on the sand. He started making faces, which caused Yuncio to start a fight. Li Chang's son was already used to their stupid behavior, so he decided to ask his brother for help. Beck began to leave his shadow. He was tasked with bringing in one of the survivors of an attack by one of the squad members. Faithful to his savior, Beck immediately went into the forest. A few minutes later he was already returning back with the monster in his hands. The skills of the owner of shadow energy surprised the children of the Shin family. Next they needed to interrogate this monster. His appearance was very reminiscent of a mythical creature. Yuncio and Gumbui assumed that it was an elf, but they could not understand what it was doing in its unusual habitat. Pable Sag was also surprised, but Li Chan's son explained that they were all wrong, because judging by the monster's eyes, he was not an ordinary elf. With a wealth of experience from the past, Li Chan confidently said that this was a gray elf in front of them. Although gray elves may look similar to ordinary ones, they are completely different creatures. Li Chan theorized that the gray elves were interceptors, created by a monster called a parasite to drain the energy of other creatures. The mention of a mysterious parasite puzzled the guys. Shingumbui was afraid that they were their target in the first place. To create a gray elf, the original creature must be an adult. Li Chang found it suspicious that the local parasite was able to obtain a lot of food in such a small dungeon to exploit a huge number of subordinates. Analyzing the area, Li Chang noticed that there are no monsters in the water around the island, but there is a cave with mana stones which is why this place is attractive to people. It seemed that there was no way the parasite could have developed to this extent without being noticed. He had an idea of how this could happen, but it was only possible with the direct participation of one of the goddesses who was supposed to create a dungeon with the intention of destroying this world. Assessing the risks, Li Chang suggested retreating despite the fact that they still had not reached the people who had fallen into a trap. Before leaving the dungeon, he explained that due to the appearance of the Grey Elf, one can understand that the parasite has taken over the island. He believed that fighting against such power without much preparation would endanger defenseless people. After explanations, he chose the option to leave the dungeon, but the system refused his request. The team was shocked. The guys received a task from the system on the topic of finding a boss their connection with the outside world was interrupted until the moment when they could get the demonic core. Addressing the team, the leader said that they will now proceed according to the original plan. The detachment went forward and began reconnaissance and subsequent clearing of the area. Looking at the defeated monsters, Li Chan considered the events very strange. He knew that gray owls were usually created by a parasite, so they did not bleed. But the ones he fought were very similar to the real ones, they had real flesh and even some blue blood. Moreover, the guy could sense fragments of divinity from them. His worst fears seemed to be reality, because only one parasite was capable of such a thing. He thought about the divine tree that grew from a branch of the tree of the world. Only one god could raise such a parasite, it was the goddess of murder and destruction, who was once his good comrade. Her name is Kali. But it was still not clear where traces of her presence came from in this forgotten dungeon. He could not believe that what was happening here could be the work of his faithful comrade, with whom he had fought countless battles. Then the guys went to the caves in which there were mana stones. From that mountainous area came the cries of people who had fallen into a trap. But when they approached the poor souls, Li Chan Sung felt something strange. Their energy was not like that emitted by ordinary people. He had to stop the team in order to make sure that they were really miners and not monsters. In order to safely obtain more information about those in front, Li Chan Sung turned to his magician. Shin Gumbui activated his magic lightning ability. Sending her forward, 
the magical lightning brightly illuminated the cave, and it became clear that it was swarming with unknown dead people who had previously been workers of the White Tiger Clan. It became obvious that this was a trap by their enemies. Li Chang Sung noticed that the roots of a tree were extending from the lifeless bodies. They all led to the same place, where the dungeon parasite was located. Within a moment, the gray elves began to run towards them when the parasite realized that his ambush was useless. Li Chang Sung understood that his flames could easily deal with all the enemies that were here, but at the same time, he was afraid that there might be survivors here who would suffer from such a powerful attack. Addressing his brother, the team leader asked him to create a passage. Beck Jayavil carried out this order with ease. After that, his brother headed towards the direction where the roots that were stuck in the bodies of the miners led. When the guy approached, he could not hide that he was shocked by what he saw. In front of him was the divine tree. The terrifying thing was that the fully grown parasite, whose ego held its roots, had a personified form. These were elven roots, and the system reported that the guy had discovered the boss of the dungeon. At the same moment, he could not miss an important detail. This elf's crown was very similar to the one worn by the goddess of destruction, Kali. Li Chang Sung decided to use his unknown spears while his clan's deity watched the events inside the dungeon with great interest. The guy couldn't believe that his friendly deity could do such a thing, so he thought that one of the divine trees that Kali had grown had simply lost its way and ended up in this place. The assumption was simply wild, but since Kaju was interested in events, there was reason to believe that it was possible. All the news that he could receive regarding his comrades from the past was disappointing. The pattern indicated that most likely the events were not an accident. Combining the spears, the guy thought only about how to deal with this ominous problem. Within a moment, the system announced the start of the raid, and the boss launched an attack on the player. His speed seemed unimaginable, but Li Chan Sung managed to fight back. He was sure that energy emanated from this elven root, which belonged to the goddess Kali. It was the crown that spread the most energy. Not only was its shape similar to the original, he could literally feel its divinity. He believed that it was most likely a copy of the goddess's crown, but it had at least a treasure level, and maybe even sacred. This meant that the monster in front of him was at least a bishop or even a priest from the Kali family. Hadju watched what was happening with great delight. At the same time, the system reported that one of the faces of the twin deities was watching the actions of an interesting player. Li Chang Sung understood that they were showing interest not only because it was just a fight with a strong guy, but most likely these deities have some kind of connection with the god of shadow and the goddess of destruction, which he does not know about. The battle was in full swing and Li Chang had no time to be distracted. He decided to get down to business more seriously. Knowing that the tree has a weakness only to one and five elements, he used the fire element. Activating the Jigui vessel, the guy furiously shouted that he would incinerate everyone. At the same time, his team continued to fight against weaker opponents. The sheer number of enemies was something that gradually improved their interaction within the team. The guys supported each other, and Beck G. Vil was with them. His shadow tsunami was beyond everyone's expectations, so brother and sister Shin thought that he was not an ordinary player at all. The squad leader's brother was truly incredible, he far exceeded all expectations and was willing to continue the battle despite the enemy's numerical advantage. But at one moment he felt the presence of an unfamiliar energy. Within a moment the stranger rushed towards him. Back Jevil managed to block his furious attack with his sword. Seeing that there was a player of the human race in front of him, the guy asked who he was. The excited man replied that he was Lieutenant Park Hay Sunday. He got into trouble again and said he was trapped here while trying to rescue buried workers on orders from the association. After he answered the unfamiliar warrior's question, the lieutenant asked whether his opponent was human. In response, Beck Jayavil stopped protecting his face with a shadow and revealed his true human form and introduced himself as a member of the White Tiger team. Hei Sung had previously heard about Team L. He knew that it was controlled by Lee Chan Sung, 
and then excitedly asked where Tyron was. Beck replied that their commander was busy fighting the boss. The lieutenant asked them to help, since he knew where the wounded were who needed emergency help. Within a moment, they all felt a powerful earthquake. Jean contacted his master's brother and told him that Li Chan had asked him to tell him that they should go first. In addition, he said that chaos would soon reign in this place, so you should be more careful. Beck had heard a similar voice before, but wondered if he could be trusted. Jean Frisius was surprised at the insight of this descendant of the God of Shadows, because the guy easily found out where exactly he was and was able to give an answer. Previously, he believed that Beck was simply a faithful dog who begged his owner for praise. Still, he recognized that this unusual person had his own will and brain, so with a sly smile on his face he replied that whether to believe him or not, he must make this decision himself. Beck G. Ville wanted to continue the conversation to find out more, but the connection was interrupted. He couldn't be sure that the strange man who contacted him was actually telling the truth. In this case, he had to think about what the detachment commander would do in his place. Still, his determination was more than enough to make a difficult decision. He asked the lieutenant to lead their squad to the place where the surviving civilians were located. Let's return to the player who fights the boss to destroy the tree born in fire. He used the same element. The guy rushed to the attack shouting that he would incinerate all the enemies. The elven root could hardly have expected such a sudden attack from the fire element. The guy's flame turned out to be so strong that it destroyed the ceiling of the cave and burst out of the mountain. Despite these efforts, the monster managed to survive. Its body was filled with magical energy and continued to maintain its shape. Like a true ruler, he did not want to waste time on a pathetic person, so he shouted orders to his subjects. The gray elf called his team, and they rushed to the attack. Li Chan couldn't waste too much energy on small enemies, because it took too much energy to destroy the dungeon boss. In response to the enemy's actions, he summoned a member of his family, Jean Frisius appeared behind him. The fighter from Arcadia watched this battle and, without further ado, understood what he had to do. Using his ice form, he dealt a crushing blow to the crowd of Grey Elves. Having gotten rid of the small enemies, Li Chan flew into the air using his Jigui form. He noticed that the monster began to change. After his last attack, the elf's root not only recovered, but also became stronger, the guy realized the pattern between the injuries and the increase in the strength of his enemy. This was a very problematic ability. Li Chan was about to strike with a spear, but his opponent, who had improved his skills, was able to create a wooden shield to defend himself. At the same moment, the player changed his plan and set his sword blade to false hard mode. The monster did not have time to react to his sudden attack and took a critical cleaving blow. Despite the difficult battle, he never ceased to amaze. This time it took him much less time to start regenerating. Seconds later, he was able to completely restore his body to the wound site. After that, the monster struck back with a powerful and fast punch. Despite strengthening his bones, Li Cham could barely hold his own against such terrifying force. He noticed that not only did the dungeon boss recover faster, but the recovered part also became harder. The Shadow God believed that Kali had always been superior to him in terms of traditional martial arts, so he expected that her priest would also have an advantage in this area. Also, because his recovery was only getting faster, the physical difference between them continued to widen. He was able to reach this point thanks to the power of the element, which was superior to the priest's body. He wasn't sure about elimination, but he knew that if he was difficult to overpower now, then he would have to suppress the enemy with such a huge explosion that he would be unable to control it, no matter how hard he tried. In the past, while in the goddess's domain, after another training session, Li Chan's son admitted that it was difficult to catch up with her solely through martial arts. He noticed how her powers suddenly changed, so he wondered what it was and if he could use this skill. Callie replied that this was her last weapon, she asked the twilight to be careful, because this weapon can only be used in case of real danger. 
Thanks to this rule, the shadow god was the only one left alive after seeing her power used. Li Chan's son resorted to using the Himavada breathing technique, which was created in order to replenish oxygen deficiency and strengthen his own energy. Using this technique for the first time in his life, the guy noticed how just one breath had already begun to provoke his hidden power, extracting even more than possible. Even though he was most likely being watched by the ruler of the abyss and the twins, he was sure that they would not be able to understand his technique since Kali said that all witnesses to its use were dead. Using the hidden ability of the goddess Kali, the player intended to overpower the enemy in an instant before a full-scale explosion of fire magic. The system reported that he had entered berserk mode, the hidden power provocation significantly increased all his characteristics for five minutes. Such an unimaginable power was very dangerous for his consciousness, so the guy activated the divine power of pure mind in order to be able to use all the magical powers that were available to him. In fact, those five minutes are the period in which he must use all his hidden powers before he dies. But he was not going to sacrifice himself and decided that he would use this ability for no more than five seconds. The powerful cutting attacks of his spear were aimed at the enemy. Despite the significant strengthening of its body, the monster could not withstand such power. Li Chan's son was going to destroy it before the monster could regain its strength. To do this, he activated the ability of the claws of the ruler of the Black Mountain. The powerful attack cut through half the body of the boss called Elven Root. The last attack was a flame that destroyed everything in its path. A huge stream of fire was directed at the monster which, due to its wounds, could not dodge the attack. Using the maximum power of his techniques, the guy cancelled the breathing ability of Mount Himawat. The system reported that he was able to overpower the boss monster called Elfruit. After forcibly stopping the goddess Kali's breathing, the system reported that during this time, the player had used 45% of his stamina and 61% of his mana, leaving his body in an exhausted state. The snake constellation noticed that the guy was using a hidden power provocation. The deity believed that this usually cripples a person, although the risk is small. The incredible result of using this power interested the deity in the principle of its work. Watching the body of the defeated priest of his comrade, Li Chan Sung could not believe that he had to use the Kali technique against her ward. Having defeated the enemy, he was going to find out what exactly happened to Kali after he was sent to the Divine Court to determine punishment. He couldn't just question his enemies while the twins and the ruler of the abyss were watching him. Within a moment, he saw how consciousness returned to the defeated enemy again. Li Chang Sung was simply shocked by this, he did not understand what was happening to his enemy. The monster suddenly began to laugh loudly and angrily. At one point, the player noticed that the enemy was not looking at him. As it turned out, his gaze was directed to the sky. He said that the gods watching their fight were vile creatures. He threatened them, saying that their dirty and disgusting game would not last long, because one day their dead god would rise again and erase them all. Using all his remaining strength, he began to radiate incredible power, saying that the apocalypse, which the deities fear so much, would come for them along with the twilight. The instinct of the beast and the eyes of the viper reported that this place was too dangerous and the guy began to run. After this, a powerful flash followed and the system reported that the boss monster had died. While at a safe distance, Li Chan Sung saw a tree of incredible size begin to grow above the island. Previously, it was unable to increase due to the fact that this dungeon has too few resources. But this time, the elven root donated the divinity and magical extract within itself to strengthen the parasite. The parasite began to evolve into a completely new form. Looking around, the guy realized that now it would become a divine tree. The people outside were worried about what was happening. They received no news from the dungeon, when suddenly the gate in front of them began to transform. One of the workers was in shock he asked his comrades to quickly call the association, because he knew that a dungeon rupture had begun in front of them. A moment later they saw an unfamiliar expensive car drive towards them. The players, the steel witch, 
the blue wolf of enlightenment, and their colleagues emerged from it. Looking at what was happening with the gate, the girl thought that even with the sudden rupture of the dungeon, the controls were too frivolous. Blue Wolf of Enlightenment believed that judging by the length of the waves of magic, this dungeon should be four stars and above. His colleague asked Sake if this was really the case, but the excited guy replied that in fact it only had one danger star. At that moment, it became clear that the information held by the Korea Association was inaccurate. The guest from Germany was very interested in meeting the famous talented newcomer among the players, so he wanted to join in cleaning up this strange place. Li Chang Sung observed the actions of the divine tree. The system reported that large scale energy depletion had formed in various places in the dungeon. Due to this, the desertification of the area was occurring. The guy was worried about whether his comrades were able to safely evacuate from the danger zone. 